stuff. What else you got there, Steve? Also today, what on earth is high pitch Mike hiding? As the first anniversary of his sickening Siobhan sit-down mm-hmm. stunt approaches, the prize high pitch Mike won is still one big mystery. So, this Howard 100 News reporter showed up outside high pitch Mike's apartment in the Bronx to ask to see if his Ooh. big screen TV is still in the box as he claims. But high pitch Mike, having no part of it, refusing to allow his news colleague in to see the alleged television. Perhaps Why? the funniest line ever uttered by high pitch Mike. He calls news director Brad Driver on the cell phone and says, What is Steve Langford doing here? <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny because High Pitch Mike just came to me a few minutes ago and he gave me tape. If you go to GP2 yeah. in uh, the first column in yellow, he says Friday morning he just comes out of his apartment to go to work and then Steve Langford stands on his corner <laughs> insisting on being, you know, let into the apartment and Mike won't let him in. It's really funny. Let me hear this. Come on, let's go see the seat. You don't need to see it. Why not? Come on. Why not? Because. Let's, uh,. Let's go keep looking. No. Why not? No, 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 no. Why not? Because. No, no, no. Would you go to Howard's house? Would you go to Would you go to Robin's house? Michael, no. Not answering the question. Because you don't need to be in my house to look at a TV. Yes, That's do. fine. No, you don't. We gotta go. No, I'm seriously, Michael. I have work to do. What, what's going on here, Mike? Uh, you're a part of the news department. Why would you care if they see your TV is still in the box? I have made no secret that I won the TV. I've left it in the box. I'm planning to move, and I just I don't want to get fucked up before I move. Yeah, yeah so it's, it's expensive to me. You you had Siobhan's vagina, fake vagina, on your face, and you don't watch that TV for a year. Well, having her sit on my face is the equivalent of paying what that costs. That's four or five thousand dollars for that TV. It's not a big secret that it's in the box. This guy shows up at my house like some sort of stalker. But why would you care? I don't want him in my fucking apartment. Why? He's creepy. Steve is creepy. You're Steve not creepy. Steve is creepy. He is. You're creepy, too. Uh, You're a news guy. This guy walks up to me every day in the newsroom and says, Tu lengua en mi culo. Do you know what that means in no. Spanish? Mm, no. Your tongue in my ass. I don't speak Spanish. Uh, he what scares you, me. Uh, what, what, do your job. Steve, what do you say to Mike? Dude, listen, you know, we all know a little Spanish, a little French, you know. <laughs> what is your phrase that you say? I want, to, I want to put my tongue in your ass. How do you say that? Uh, let me see. I think Mike told me how, how do you El tongue to in pupo. To lengua in mi culo. <laughs> I didn't know you were going to come up to me and, and request that every day, though. <laughs> he scares me. You, and then I Does have he na- really scare no, wait a minute. you? Let's you, be serious. You Steve let, me, let me tell you, I had neighbors let's walking. Let's be serious. No, no, I had nonsense. neighbors walking out of my Reporters apartment. Reporters go why this out guy has... in the field. No, hang on for a second. Reporters go out in the field every day to ask questions. <laughs> if they did not, you would not have a newspaper every day, and you would not have any television or radio news. Y- you should ask questions, wait but my TV sitting in a box is not the case. You worked at ABC News. <laughs> exactly. You say you worked at ABC News. <laughs> this, is another, this is another thing that this pissed me off, Friday Howard. What is this? I went to NYU. I busted my ass to go to school. I pay. I, you know, I paid my own tuition. I worked full time. I interned here. I did Bullshit. And he, in his report, says uh, he says he's oh, giving me. I asked he to says see he's your giving resume. me. Let me speak. Please. Reporters he ask questions. He says he's giving me journalism you lessons. You should know that for a kid that says he went to NYU. Where did you go to school? I Steve. went to school at the University of Western Ontario and Laval University. Where did you graduate? I did not graduate. Thank you. So don't question and where I went to school. Listen, I question everything. That's what reporters do. You, you don't think he that. went to NYU? I just wanted to see his resume. I, I know. I didn't. question everything. He won't believe. Do you think he he's will lying? not believe. No, I don't think he's lying. I, I do not think he's. He will lying. not believe a word no. I say. No, I just want to see. Just show me. But yet he believes the idol guy. He believes the uh, Robin's wrong Morales. guy. Ever since American Idol ended, <laughs> Steve's got like he's investigating the news department. <laughs> and, and let me ask you something, he's Howard. That evil no, but let's news. let's not lose focus here. Shouldn't... People want to know about that television, yeah. and he is we hiding do? something. We do. He's Who cares? Who wants to know about it? It's in a box. What do you want to know? It's in a box. What do you think? What do you want to know about it? Show it. You know what? I don't think he's hiding anything about the TV, but something's going on in that apartment. But let me ask you something, Howard. Should a reporter who demands the truth also so tell the truth? Yes. Okay, so go to Gary Preview, page two in white, if you would, please. Uh, <laughs> this, is the, this is the Michael Moore uh, alleged fight uh-huh. that he had with Steve Langford. And what, what are we, we going to hear? Michael Moore gets a little exclusive out of Langford. 
Are you Canadian? Yeah, I was. Uh, did you give up your citizenship? Um, I don't have a passport. Not to you didn't give up your Canadian citizenship, did you? Uh, not yet. Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, you know, uh, you know what? Yeah. Uh, thing. Back of your head, you know, you're going. Mm, I might need that, right? You're circumventing no. around the no, truth. No, no, no. You should Let, tell the well, truth. Well, if you, you want to play that, perhaps I might answer it. Mm. Go ahead. And the fact of the matter is, I'm not going to get into some big discussion with Michael Moore, who's going out the door about. Whether I left Canada, I mean, come on, guys. Let's get serious. <laughs> yeah, but he asked you if you're Canadian. You said you were. I was. You still are. Mm. I do not have a passport. I'm not talking about passports. You're still a citizen. Technically. I <laughs> left 25 you. years ago. Tell the ago. truth. Why is that interesting? You're a reporter. Tell the truth. <laughs> Why is that interesting? Oh, my Lana one culo. Too lame. <laughs> what is your point? I want to know about this. TV. I think he's being a hypocrite. He's demanding. I think something's going on what's, in your apartment. What's going on in my apartment? I don't know. You don't want Steve to see your apartment. I don't want to creep in my apartment. No, I have to work with him ten on. hours a day in the newsroom. Were you, yeah. afraid, were you afraid he was going to come on to you because he keeps saying he wants to put his tongue no, in? No, I'll be honest. Mm. My roommate has a uh, six-year-old kid. He's, you know, the parents oh, are no, separated. He's not there all I don't the want time. this. Around, I don't want him around a six-year-old kid. He has a kid of his own. <laughs> oh, Wait God. a minute. You have a six-year-old kid. You can't explain in your apartment. On the weekends, the parents are separated. The kid comes over. Are you for real that you're afraid of him uh, around a young child? Mm. Are you, you're not shitting me, are you? You think he's Morales that weird? Full of it. Do you think he's completely sane? Do you think he has all his marbles? <laughs> I, w I wouldn't have a problem with him being in my house. I, I would. All right, well. Dude, I just want to go up what and see the television. What do you think I'm going to do? Send Howard TV up, but I don't want you. Oh, wow. Now we're talking. <laughs> I, do you remember where you work? Yeah. Yeah. Where do you work? Howard Stern, Howard 100 News. Oh, thank you. I sort of hesitated on that, didn't we? Yeah. Don't give me journalism lessons, Steve. All right. <laughs> well, listen, why are you hiding this? What the fuck am I hiding? It's a TV in a box. I don't want you in my apartment. Is that so hard to believe? Okay, we'll send Lisa Jane. <laughs> when I can are listen, you moving? I can listen to Mike's voice all, all right. day. All right. Right. When are you moving? I don't have an exact date. I'm looking. I'm trying to look at places. Are they in your line? <laughs> you can't get that voice down lower? I can, but I mean, why don't you just do it? Why don't you just be like, yeah, can, man. You, can you get your nose down smaller? <laughs> yeah, I did. I, I, I shaved it down. I was a born with this voice. I can't do anything about you it. You won't make it lower? Like, why don't you just, like, just walk around? Let me hear your low voice. We've done this. Let I, me hear I, it again. What do you, what do you want to hear? It's, I mean, it's not that much lower. Let me hear you get as deep as you can get. What, what do you want to What do you want to hear? It's not yeah, low. It's it's, not, I mean, this is my like, voice. Right. It is what it is. But Morales, right, how take about. It easy. How about no, Lisa he just, G? He upset Lisa G. No, dude. Lisa would he, G. Would he show up? At, would you show up outside Howard or Robin or Artie? Of course, or anyone I'm going to go to Howard's place. Would you go to anyone on this show? But I am going to go to your place to find out about the television. <laughs> you wouldn't let me in, so let Lisa G. in if you're creeped out by me. And I live in a primarily me. Hispanic and African American Answer the neighborhood. Question. They see this white guy with a microphone up in my face. The neighborhood was very my nice. Walk by there was no what problem the hell with is the going on? It was a very nice neighborhood. But let Lisa G. in to see the TV. Come on. Is she going to come to the Bronx? Why not? She's a reporter. Uh, she can come by. Thank you. I don't want you by then. <laughs> so, so it's a deal. <laughs> it's what a deal. Is it's, why is everybody so creeped out? Are we going to wait? Are we going to waste the whole day of, of Lisa G's time to come up to my apartment? It's a deal to see a TV in is a box. Is it a deal or are you backing out? I think that, I think you're making mountains out of a molehill. Is it a deal or not? I don't care. Okay, deal. All right, there it is. Lisa G will be going to Mike's high pitch wow. Mike's apartment. And we'll get a report on that. And we're going to find out about that TV in a box. All right, and bring in your citizenship, too. Oh, Howard Stern, exclusive. Bring in your American Listen, citizenship. You've really got you really got to watch these guys all day. I'm convinced. I just I'm convinced this. he's still Canadian. He's. I don't think he's American. I want to see your your naturalization <laughs> dude, papers. Dude, I ran like a wild man. But anyway, your deflection skills need a little work. All right. Mike, do you want to give your roommate the code word to start getting rid of the bodies and the 600-gallon drums? Yeah, I say no way Lisa G makes it back from the Bronx. I don't think she'll come to the Bronx. She, you live in a tough neighborhood? And, and her, of all people, she Friday she's calling me a Jew. She said, why do you have a the TV Jew? in a box? She says, you're such a Jew. Are Coming you? from her. Wow. What's She's that a Jew. Do you guys get any work done back there in the news? I don't know. I don't know. Lots of work like, done. Well, Mike, why do, you, with each other. why do you say coming from her? Well, what, do you, like, yeah, what is that? Why? Because she's like the most Jewish person in our newsroom. She's very right? Jewish. What very Jewish. What, how, what, I think what? she's the only Jewish person in your newsroom. What makes her Jewish? 
Well, she's very uh, conservative with her money. <laughs> um, <laughs> need, need, I, need I go on? Yeah. Uh, I need you go on, of course. I want to hear what more. Else? So she's conservative with her money. What else makes her Jewy? Every time one of these Jewish holidays comes by, she's got to take it off. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, now you're something. If I can work on a Jewish holiday, you should too. Mm. <laughs> wow. Has someone told me you went to Disney World for a week by yourself? Yeah, what the... <laughs> well, he sounds like Mickey. Talk about creepy. I... Did you go up to Mickey Mouse and talk to him? No, I didn't. Hey, what, what, are are just... hey. what are you doing? And the guy's probably like, hey, stop making... Hey, dude, just because you're talking to Mickey Mouse doesn't mean you have to speak in a high voice. <laughs> and then and then Mike goes, no, 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 this is what I sound like. Hey, Mickey. Wait, 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 what do you do there, Mike? Hey, Mike. <laughs> I had... From when I what is it, it Ralph? Wait, let, let Mike explain that. <laughs> yeah, I want to hear. Right. What, did, what did you From do? From when I worked at ABC, I had a bunch of free tickets left. They were about to expire. Uh, I had time off here. I figured, let me just go use them. Who's conservative right. with their money? What do you do On your there? vacation, you use your free Disney World thing. <laughs> what do you do there by yourself? Yeah, you went yourself? It's a bunch of roller coasters and shit. Well, I mean, <laughs> I just went on the ride. <laughs> For a whole week? Did you get paired up with other um, singles? Singles? Yeah, they do. They do do that. You couldn't find anyone to go to Disney World with you. So sad. I mean, that's a great destination. Somebody must have wanted to go. Do you ever travel alone sometimes? I certainly travel alone, but not to amusement parks. Okay. (laughs) So be it. Oh Jesus. <laughs> he doesn't have a lot of friends. Oh, I'm, oh, I'm the JD of the newsroom, I'll tell you. You're up by yourself going to another gift shop. We heard there's a special line for people who go to Disney World by themselves. Right, right. Like, what do you mean a special line? <laughs> yeah, it's a line for singles. They had a, they had a single rider's <laughs> line. Really? So I didn't have to wait in any of the lines. I just went straight to the front. Were, were there a lot of other single people there? Or was it yeah. a line, just a line of two? No, there were a lot of single people. And do you all socialize? <laughs> so, is it like the geekiest line ever? <laughs> Did you ride the loser flu? Anyone in a Darth Nihilus <laughs> costume? No, I didn't see Darth Nihilus. I, <laughs> no, I am Darth Nihilus. <laughs> What did you do for dinner? Did you like eat by yourself, or did you eat in your room? No, I would eat. I would eat in the amusement park. <laughs> <laughs> but you would just go to a stand. You would go to the restaurant. Mike wants to kill Artie right now. For right. Know. He's shooting. Di- you shoot dirty oh, looks over at Artie. No. He's shooting a dirty look at me and Mike. <laughs> Artie, do you ever go to Disneyland by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Already couldn't take the rides, trust me. I'm just saying, you know, I mean, I'm sorry to be laughing, but it, how old are you? 29. <laughs> oh, jeez. It just got worse. Artie goes, I'm sorry to be laughing. <laughs> <laughs> it just, it's odd that you would go to Disney. You're a 29-year-old kid. You got kind of a happening job. You, you, you know who does that? Who? Who? No. Mental patients? <laughs> Worse, okay, don't worse. don't go there. Jeff the vomit guy. <laughs> Serial killers. Yeah, people you want arrested. I mean, they're the ones who would hang out at Disney by themselves. Sure. Can you imagine though the little kid who's sitting next to Mike on the roller coaster, uh, scared? And then you have a six-year-old. Excuse kid me, you sir. Can't explain in your apartment. Hey, shut up! I'm here in the second time, you little fuck. You got a family. I don't. Uh. You cocksucker. Like, you sound like a kid. Yeah. <laughs> like, what were your favorite Little ride? six-year-old kid's like, sir, don't you have any friends? <laughs> no. I couldn't find anyone to go with me. Fucker. Hey, mister, I don't want to grow up to be like you. <laughs> what do you I mean, like, so what do you do? You're like, well, it's, it's 1 o'clock, I finish my goofy shake. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, do you stand there and get your picture taken with the character? No. Like, pretending that you're I'm cool. I'm cool. Oh, my goodness. You're on the ride, the Pirates of the Caribbean Someone by Someone told me you went to a Madonna concert yourself, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> what? So what? Uh, I'm, not, I'm not Mr. Popularity. Really? So what? <laughs> oh, I'm fucking Ralph is laughing. The only <laughs> friends he has are the people he moves with. Artie, this is not funny. I Artie. don't understand that. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> yeah. oh, that's, that's how I'm going to be laughing when he has a stroke. <laughs> Oh, you. Mike's going to kill you. He's looking at you Look like he's going to kill you. you. I'm actually worried. 
Have you ever had a friend? I have friends. I just, I'm friends. i not Mr. Popularity. Well, right. well, I like it. Who in this room is Mr. Popularity? You can't, you can't find one guy that you know that would want to go see Madonna. <laughs> well, that makes sense, actually. <laughs> Next to like I don't know, whoever whoever bought the ticket. Need I remind this guy? He's the one that cried at a fucking Michael Jackson. <laughs> but I wasn't oh, alone. Hold on. hold on, Mike. I gotta ask a question because everybody's out here feeding me information. So you got the TV because the Reverend Ron <laughs> shows your favorite show, right? right. No, that's how you. You guys. Hold on. Did no. you, did, the episode where Reverend Ron's <laughs> wife has a miscarriage. Did you cry? Did I cry? Yes. <laughs> no, but I rewind. It was pretty sentimental. She lost her baby. You cried during that episode. Who says that? Everyone. I said it was sentimental. The woman lost her baby. Well, how is that? But did you cry? So you're not going to let Steve up in your apartment to see if the TV is there. You're going to have Lisa. Gino. I don't even want him in my newsroom. He's right. creepy. Put him in a in a desk Would on the other side. Did you go to Disneyland with him? <laughs> no. No. The Reverend Run Show is your favorite show. It's not my favorite. You guys asked what I watch, and I said Rev Run's house. That well, was... you also said okay. Then your favorite is Little People, Big World. That's a, that's another fun show. The what fucking the, fuck the midget that? show. That, the <laughs> midget show that. Eric the Midget always talks about oh. it's you know this family of midgets. <laughs> what? I love these freaky shows. I do They're too. funny. I like to watch midget shows. I this guy know. needs his own reality show as well. Steve. I mean, the, the, you really think he's that weird that you wouldn't let him in your house? I don't want him in my house. Right. I just love that Steve is like turning on his own people. He's mm. crazy. Slow news day. <laughs> Steve, I, I wouldn't let him in my apartment either. Steve, how do you explain it? the guy who went to Disney World by himself at 29 years old is thinks you're creepy? Oh. <laughs> Mike, you know what you want to get? You ever see those things advertised in the paper? You can blow up this doll and sit it next to you in your car so people think you're driving with like someone. Like an HIV line? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you could bring it to Disneyland. Bring it to the Madonna I don't mind, I don't mind. Like rubber friend. Forget Disney World. I don't mind traveling alone. I like I like you know. Yeah. Being alone. My friend likes La Isla Bonita. <laughs> Do you think oh. that? <laughs> <laughs> My rubber friend. <laughs> I'm surprised you're talking so much. Usually you have your mouth full. Uh, oh. You woke up. I'm sorry. I'm hey, someone told me you're throwing yourself a birthday party. It's going to be a karaoke birthday party. <laughs> I, I love how they feed you. The you're stuff. that into karaoke? No, I said it'd be fun to get everybody together. Yeah. Who? All the, all, all, every time they get together, all they do is play beer pong. I thought we should get together. Who are the karaoke. people you went to Disney World with? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Artie, they're having a reunion. Get everybody together. Get everybody. Get all the jokes in now while you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> Once you're gone, nobody will hear you, buddy. Okay, but all right. So who's everybody? Who would be on that list? Who would you invite? The, the staff here, my friends from school. Hey, Artie, you can sing karaoke at the party. <laughs> I'll sing Madonna. What you mentioned? Why couldn't you ask J.D. to go with you? I'm not going to... He's not going to go to Disney World with me. <laughs> then you guys could go like, <laughs> eat together and have a glass of wine. Would J.D. go to, would JD go to the Madonna concert? <laughs> oh. That's the best ever. That is the... What's going on with girls? Are you getting any girls? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm here like 10 or 12 hours a week. He's like a young yeah, James Bond. Would you go to Disney World with my I would not have. Why? I just, I, I don't know. He's all right to, you know, work with, but I don't know if I'd hang out with him. <laughs> oh, wow. You won't hang out with him? And I even get it from him. Like, J.D., I consider... J.D.'s a nerd. J.D., I consider oh, my equivalent. You. But he walks around with this arrogance, like he's better than me. Oh, whatever. I think because everybody back here rips on him, he says, oh, I'm better than Mike. So, so he even it's like rips on he me. can't hang out with you because he's, he's, he's no. got to be better than someone. Exactly. Right. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, J.D. is like, you know... Jack Nicholson. Compared <laughs> <laughs> to him. <laughs> See, 
Right. You won't hang out with Mike? I would, you guys should be like best said, friends. Try, 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 like if you I, two dudes got together, you might get something cool right. going. Unless you have a team, like you could goof on other people. Yeah, That's okay. true. Yeah. You that, guys that, should unite. Happen. <laughs> you guys remind me like the Palestinians two and the wrongs. Jews. Two two you both downtrodden. You should two, unite. Two wrongs don't make a right, dude. Between the two of us, we could remake Revenge of the Nerds, I'm sure. Yep. <laughs> See the funny band? See, JD doesn't want to be put in your category. Meanwhile, I know. I'm a lowlife. I'm a lowlife to him. Meanwhile, he's, better. he's the same thing as you. He's no better. You're no better than him. I didn't say I was, but I... I, I you know, missed yes, you are. I know. Know. You're saying you won't hang out with him? <laughs> no, he, I have no too... desire to go to Disneyland and a Madonna concert. Why? He's too... He's better I don't than me. Want, I'd rather, you know... Rather listen to home. techno music. Yeah, I would. <laughs> and avoid Hawaii. Yeah, he, all of a sudden, you're better than me. <laughs> but you're one of these characters. <laughs> Go to Madonna, hey, let's have a contest. We put JD and Mike in a singles bar so you can pick up a chick fast. Oh, no, 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 no. We gotta do it. You're doing it. You're doing it. I gotta I gotta say JD is gonna go. Why? I don't know about that. I'm not gonna talk to anyone. Because the voice is gonna like this yeah. is gonna scare the girls off. <laughs> but that's Excuse because me. Mike is talking to people. JD is yeah, come, yeah. come over here, gorgeous. <laughs> JD's such a wacko. Like he'll write he'll he'll see Beth. And he goes, oh, hey, gorgeous. Yeah. Like, like, you know, he thinks he's, like, cool. Yeah. Yeah. I said, yeah. My Ooh. money's on Mike. He might yeah, have the high voice, but he knows how well, to talk. My yeah. voice versus his social skills. Right. right. You know, like, once he opens his mouth, he's got a normal voice. But... Hey, uh, did I tell you girls about the time I went to the Madonna concert? <laughs> 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 hey, laugh all you want, but I got a great story about Disney World. <laughs> <laughs> No, JD, JD JD's on there. I, I don't know. I don't like her. I don't like her. You guys ever heard of Epcot Center? <laughs> I, I drank in all the different countries. <laughs> JD is, thinks he's better than me, but I still have a good relationship with my parents, so that's one thing I've got right. over him. Yeah, what they do? <laughs> that's good for a chick to hear. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you see that nerd over in the corner? He doesn't talk to his mom. <laughs> I do. So if you girls want to choose who to go out with, choose the guy with the mom. <laughs> My mom ain't banging some Hawaiian. <laughs> wow. Hey, that's our friend. <laughs> I got to see that show. No, we don't. Yes, we do, JB. Come on. I'm not going to talk prove, to him. I'm going to sit there. Prove that you're not Mike's equal. I didn't say I wasn't his equal. I just, I, I don't like to hang Fuck out with a lot of people. Fuck you, JD. The new odd couple. I was on Mr. Toad's Wild Ride for a whole day. So go fucking suck on me. <laughs> Maybe I went myself, but at least I was there. <laughs> I had my own teacup. I'm participating in life. You know what I would do? I would shoot. I want to get the script to like Ocean's 13, that buddy movie, and have these two guys star in it. Yeah. This is George Clooney and Brad Pitt. Yeah. One guy be Clooney and one be Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> or just stick you in the movie. <laughs> I'm fucking Angelina Jolie. Go fuck yourself. For a high pitch Eric in there, too. No. Just these two. <laughs> just them. <laughs> There's enough high pitching. Get that Darth Nihilus guy to make an appearance. <laughs> Hi. Hi, I'm Darth Nihilus. Hi, guys. All right. What time would you get to like the park? <laughs> when I would wake. When I would wake up. Where do hey, you I gotta stay? go. What am I doing? <laughs> you want to interview him more? I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> well, it is interesting. You, you'd me. go at the beginning of the day. I'd wake up. You know, it's vacation. I'd wake what? up 10, 11. I'd show up at noon. Well, look at you, Mr. Lewis. Where do you have breakfast? Uh, I never have free time like that. So no I, breakfast? No. You went to lunch? Yeah, I don't eat breakfast hardly. And what do you do? You sit by yourself and you read the paper when you eat no lunch? <laughs> or do you, do you keep yourself busy? <laughs> I mean, I did guess. you have a plan of which part of the uh, park you were going to I would go just to go to no, I just... Hey, where do you want to go? <laughs> oh, there's nobody here. Do you ever get the blues like when you're by yourself at Disney World? No, I love being by myself because I don't have to answer to anybody. I don't right. have to argue with anybody. There you go. You All know, right. it's just I do what I want when I want. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what do you do? Like... Awkward awkward in, in the park there by yourself. No, because there were plenty of other people all by themselves. No, but they were really with me. Yeah, they were like threes, and so they had a single. <laughs> Who do you think has slept with more chicks in their lifetime, J.D. or High Pitch Mike? Mike, have you had a girl? Mike said yes. never. Yes, I've gone on to this on the intern show, but 
Yeah. My sex life now is nothing to talk about. There is no sex life. All right. Really? You're a young man. You're not a bad looking dude. How many oh. girls have you slept with them? Two. Two? Two? And is JD only one, right? JD got one, but from the show. You got him outside of the show, right? Way before the show. Right. He never got a girl before the show. See, you so, got him there. Is JD really has? He just had the one. Is that is that he, official? He went, he went with some. He chicks. claims there was another, right? Yeah, porno chick. Oh, the porno chicks down at Hedonism. Would you fuck a porno chick? If she was tested, yeah. Yeah. I don't want to. I don't want to. We gotta get you laid. Can I have some some of your urine? (laughs) (laughs) Something like. (laughs) Tastes clean. (laughs) (laughs) Let me smell your pussy. See if there's anything wrong with it. (laughs) Oh, this is bad pussy. Another two-year drought. Oh, shit. That's it. You can't be too choosy, man. Yeah. Oh, skip the test. Fuck it. <laughs> Your freshness date has expired. <laughs> You're be tested. Uh, what? You got AIDS? Well, let me think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Want to go to Disneyland? I won't fuck you, man. I love, I love watching Artie laugh now because when he goes home, it's nothing but sadness on the inside. <laughs> Dude, you make me feel great about myself. <laughs> no, no, no more depression. Your depression is lifted. Well, Mike, I understand you don't want Stevie Yass, yeah, so and I respect that. Thank you. Can you I know. call but you I mean, every day? <laughs> Lily Sadigo. Just want confirmation that the TV's still. How about I like. just bring a picture of it? Why does no. somebody? Why oh, do we need come to, on. Why See, do we right? need to waste? No. That makes it sound like you're hiding something. Exactly. Exactly. What are you hiding exactly. up there? Nothing, but Lisa G needs to go to the Bronx. Well, what do you care? Story story there there every day. Hey, maybe the, she'll go out with you. It's the world of Howard Stern. I don't think I'm her type. And you live with a six-year-old kid, you said? On Just the weekends. Weekend. The parents are divorced. and the kid, you It's know, probably nice to get some human contact. You uh, Are you friends with your roommate? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. We've, he had a kid a few years ago, and, you know, I'm the godfather. And Oh, wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Oh, oh, here we go again. Fucking. Hey! Oh. There's nobody in his life, and he's laughing May at me. May your first child be a Mexican child. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the godfather. God. Godfather. <laughs> oh, here, here comes his bad. Uh, Luca, my most valued friend. Here, here comes the bad part where he reenacts every scene from Godfather. Here and I go. hope that their first child be a masculine child. Thank you, Luca. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you don't God. even think to call me Godfather. <laughs> it's amazing how he remembers every line, but he can't remember to stay awake for five hours. <laughs> Hello. Oh, this Hello. Is the, the, uh, this is the greatest show ever. <laughs> I guess the high voice does keep you out of a certain line of work. You could never be the head of a gang. Yeah. Come on, guys. We're going to rumble. <laughs> the Jets are going to have their way tonight. <laughs> the Puerto Ricans grumble. Fair fight. <laughs> Himself oh, up. he's gone. He's oh, gone. Oh, my fucking stomach hurts. Like he's lost. You're it. somebody's godfather. <laughs> People are coming to the house. My wife is upstairs crying. I think you should tell your godfather what everybody else seems to know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I want all inquiries made. I want no acts of vengeance. I want you to call all the heads of the five family oh, no. to set a meet. This war stops now. You talk about vengeance. Is vengeance going to bring your boy back to you? Or mine to me? <laughs> I forget all the vengeance of my son. But I have selfish reasons. My youngest son, Michael, was forced to leave this country. Well, now I have to make arrangements to bring him back safely. <laughs> <laughs> but if some unlucky accident should befall him, if he's shot down by a bolt of lightning, <laughs> or if a police officer accidentally shoots him, then I'm going to blame some of the people in this room. 
So it's hard to get a, a position of authority. <laughs> okay, uh, the, high the next audition for The Godfather. <laughs> well, you know, let me tell you something, Mike. Mike Morales. I actually... Thank you for coming in, sir. Thank you. Oh, my I, I, goodness. Is it true, and tell me the truth, oh, the shit. week you were at Disney by yourself, was it also gay week? <laughs> Oh, if it was what? really gay week, that was the first thing he tried to point I'm out. I'm gonna faint laugh. Was it gay week? That was the first thing he tried to point out. Mm. The dates of my trip, which was before Memorial Day. The dates of my trip. <laughs> You're killing Artie. You're literally gonna get your way. Let this fucking head in. Gay day. It's a day you trip for gay week. Oh my god. He can't survive that. Oh my god. I'm not gonna survive. He's gonna his head watch. He can't survive that one. Oh, please don't be gay <laughs> week. <laughs> Was it by accident? What? <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> Somebody die. get him a cupcake quick before he does. Oh, my God. Mike, what happened? You didn't know. That, <laughs> the days of my trip. I'll wait till, <laughs> no, I'll wait till he's wheezing. The days of your trip. <laughs> the days of my trip overlapped by one day. I was there before it started. The day it started, I was leaving. Was that the best day? So you were there for the kick. <laughs> was it, was, <laughs> you the was it weird? Speaker? Did any guys like, approach you? I didn't even see gays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, so break. you were there for a full gay day. <laughs> the days of my trip overlap. <laughs> Wow. I'm not, oh, I'm not the one. So you were there for Gay Pride Week. <laughs> <laughs> you were there Excuse for... me. Are you here for Gay Pride Week? <laughs> I, lo I love how Artie puts on the macho act when he's the one that got jizz on I'm the guy. I'm the guy goofy fucks in the ass. <laughs> Let me tell you something. A, I admire you. It is very difficult. Yeah, I think to you're the anywhere. greatest you're, guy you're ever. You're a brave young man. Howard, yeah. I see myself like you as you were when you were a kid. You were Absolutely. a loner. You were a loner, were you not? I had no choice. Exactly. Nobody was looking to be with me. That's how I see myself. That's right. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. At 29, though, he had, he had gotten through it. <laughs> he had grown out of it. I'm not gay. I fuck chicks. When, when are you getting married, Artie? I don't know, man. Uh, Actually, when are you getting a girl? I don't know. I, 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 you know what? I, I'm, I'm sorry, but I just... I, you know, and I thank you for this. This was the I got a part of Ocean's Eleven script. You and JD want to do it right now? I, I could just come on, JD. Right. I'd JD. like to hear that. Uh, Here's JD and Mike doing a scene from Ocean's Eleven. Oh I don't know the setup. Now Are remember, you two are buddies. Oh my God. Hey, J.D. You're cool what, and you're you, buddy. You down with some acting right I'll now? I'll do that. Ah. Okay. Hold on. Uh, Hi, Danny. <laughs> you, what do these guys play? Okay. Uh, Danny is George Clooney uh, and right. Rusty is Brad Pitt. You guys <laughs> let Mike flip be, the coin. Let Mike be uh, George Clooney. <laughs> you the chair. Mike, you're George Clooney. Uh, the script? Uh, Gary, where's the other script? They didn't give me two. Oh, okay. Hey, Gary, so what are the guys doing in this scene? Do you know? I didn't read it. i got to tell you. They, they just a lot of dialogue, quick. though. They're buddies. Who am I? You're, uh, you're, you're Danny. Clooney. You're Brad Pitt. You're goofy. <laughs> no, you're, I want him to be Clooney. <laughs> okay, then you're Rusty. You're Rusty. Yeah. No, no, no. No, Rusty Rusty's is Brad Pitt. Pitt. I, 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 All right, J.D., Rusty's you're Brad Pitt. Pitt. <laughs> you're Rusty. All right, go ahead, guys. You're, it's obviously a buddy film, and these guys are good pals, and they, they clown around. Okay, here we go. Okay, someone says something, and the screen direction says both Danny and Rusty look chastened. You're right. He's, He's right. right. No. <laughs> Sorry. No. <laughs> you're right. Uh, action. He's right. Ruben, you're right. Our eyes are bigger than our stomachs. That's exactly it. Pure ego. Pure ego? Pure ego. <laughs> what? did you say? Prairie go? Pure ego. Pure ego. String of Pelopides. I thought you said prairie go. I did too. Prairie go. <laughs> I go, what, what movie is this? After prairie you read go. the line, should I translate it every time? No, no, no. no. We'll, we'll try and figure it out. Prairie, prairie go. Right. Thank you so much for setting us straight. Sorry we bothered you. Uh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it was our pleasure. What chemistry? I've never been to Belize. Hey, nice read. Cut the whole sentence out. We understood it. Wow. <laughs> Belize. So, so he can walk on a rope? More than that. So he can juggle? We need a grease man, not an acrobat. Who else is on the list? He is the list. Kia? <laughs> he, he, oh, he is the list. All right. Very nice scene, boys. Oh, my God. Uh, Mike, you have whoever you want to your apartment. That's up to you. 
You want Lisa G, have Lisa G. Get confirmation. It's so silly anyway. You exactly. do what you want. I'm glad you're on the TV. JD, nice read. Right. Boys, very good. Steve, try and, try and treat Mike with some respect, yeah. for Christ's sake. You know what I mean? Mike didn't do anything. Good luck and great adventure. And Mike, <laughs> I'm going to tell Steve, no more saying, uh, put, put your tongue up my ass. <laughs> yeah, All right. I appreciate that. All right. When is, Steve, are you done? When is Gay Week in Knoxbury for? <laughs> <laughs> gay Week? It was Gay Week. <laughs> <laughs> gay Pride Week. Not the week I was there. Gay... Right. Someone it said it, it, is. it was Gay Pride Week. Well, right, well, listen, well, they call it Gay Days. Yeah. He was, he was there for Gay Pride Week. <laughs> Not the week. I was there. I was All leaving right, the day it started. Right. Mm. Oliver already looks twisted. He just took one day. Oh, I'm in trouble. It's Gay Pride Week. What a coincidence. <laughs> what is me? You're looking kind of hot. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Steve, anything else? Chuck Zito's view tonight, 7 Eastern, <laughs> Howard 101. And if you see stern news happening, call us on the Howard 100 News tip line, 877 Sirius, choose channel 100, or email us at howard100news at sirius-radio.com. All right, Steve, thanks a lot. Let's go over to John. <laughs> Let's go over to John. Johnny, what's up? What do you, what do you have for us? <laughs> Where do I begin? Uh, Howard was concerned about asking Daryl Hammond to do his impressions, but his voices were the thing that Daryl seemed the least concerned about doing here. We'll talk about how he reacted to the interview, try to figure out his marital situation, how he broke his nose, why he's wearing black, and why he was so shaken by the Jay Leno conversation and his reaction to all of the drops. Plus, Shane from North Carolina wanted to see the studio, and his wife, Nicole, was willing to take her top off, accompanied by Moby Dick, to do it. <laughs> we'll talk about how this came together, the fear of her not coming through, the enjoyment of Artie squeezing her ass, and how everybody here helped celebrate Nicole's 26th birthday. And last but certainly not least, it started with him thinking Steve Lankford was creepy <laughs> and ended with him revealing that when he went to Disney by himself, it just happened to be gay week. <laughs> 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 you couldn't write that. Did they make it Gay Week when he got there? <laughs> <laughs> we usually have Gay Week uh, much a couple of months in the summer, but not not no. Uh, they saw him and Gay Week came early. <laughs> we didn't know Mr. Might Morales to, was going to be here. Might want to start Gay Week today. Uh, I'm here to check in. Oh, okay. <laughs> we'll all right, we'll build a week around you, sir. <laughs> right. We'll discuss all we've learned about High Pitch Mike today and whether Artie should be looking over his shoulder when he goes home oh, later. Yeah. All right, thanks. Thanks, Ralphie. Wow. All right, thanks, Johnny. We look forward to that. Yeah, we're running out of time. Jeff, go ahead real quick. Oh, Howard, uh, who do I send a medical bill to when I have an aneurysm? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have ever laughed so hard for so long in my life. I literally, I almost passed out. That, Man, that was the best hour of radio I think you've ever done. It was amazing. I wish we had uh, done it three hours ago, though. Oh, it was worth, worth every penny of Thank you. Series. Was... Thank you very much. Bob, go ahead. You're on. Uh, oh, great show, guys. you got to keep Mark or Mike out of the studio. <laughs> I ran a red light camera. I was laughing so hard with Artie and all that. Stuff. <laughs> that's the hardest I've ever laughed too. I think. I mean, and I've laughed hard in this studio, man. That's the. That's the Artie still hasn't guy. recovered. All right, Bob. Thanks, Bob from Baltimore. Robin's old hometown. Uh, thanks, Bobby. Go Orioles. All right. Yeah. Oh, do I have to take a break? I yeah, just want Robin yeah. to wrap the news up. No, nah, we got a break. Okay. Robin, we got to do a little break. Oh, little right. You said it was a slow right news day today, right? Yeah. Good. We'll be back right after these words. Yep. Man, that was a rough one. I never heard that one. Oh, yeah, that was kind of tough. That was kind of mean. Yeah, because you, you like Ed, I guess. Right? <laughs> sure. Who doesn't like Ed? What did yeah. he do? Huh? Um, we're getting an overwhelming amount of phone calls for radio. That, that everyone wants a high pitch Mike to have his own radio show. Oh, God, yes, absolutely. that's so, a good idea. So Mike has to go into negotiation with uh, him. Steve Lang. <laughs> no, no, with uh, Tim Sabian. <laughs> All right. All right. Um, <laughs> you should put Steve in charge. Mike's actually a very good sport. He you know, was. He was. I saw him outside. He was really cool. He's a good dude. Yeah. Uh, Robin, what uh, what do you have there in the news? <laughs> On his own, but we've got to start with what almost ended the show, and that was high pitch, Mike and Artie. I've never seen you laugh as hard as you, as laugh as genuinely did for as long as uh, a time period than than today. It almost ended the show because Artie almost died in the <laughs> studio from laughing. You know, I got. I just want to take a moment here because I, you know, we don't say it enough. We got a compliment. Uh, we got a compliment our all of our bosses uh, in Howard Stern. 
Howard, this is the only show in the history of of show business that's on now, forget it, but in the entire history of show business where uh, like a 45-minute segment like what happened with High Pitch Mike could happen. To develop. It could, right. And Howard created all this, you know, and sometimes that gets overlooked. Like the fact that he created an atmosphere this long form to where something like that could play out, to where me as a cast member could be laughing so hard where you almost throw up and everybody else has fun with it. Like, that's all Howard, man. Like, Howard created that. And we don't talk, I don't think we mention that enough. There's I mean, certainly people in radio don't mention it enough. How could anybody challenge what he's done for radio in the sense that we were talking about Maria Melito wins the funniest minute in radio award for her rap on the bathroom at any time? <laughs> I mean, it's like... It's just like no other show in the history of show business or or that's on now could ever have a moment like that or an hour like that, and that's all Howard's vision, and he deserves even more credit than he gets. I, that was the most fun I've ever had on the show, and, I, and I've had fun on the show beyond belief. There, you know? there are moments in the history of the show that just sort of happen like this. Right. You know, like I think this is really – I think this is like an instant legend. Like, you know what's a moment that people bring up to me all the time? Do you remember um, the phrase Black Kluge? Yeah, yeah, yeah right, right. And John Kluge was a famous, you know, uh, a media guy. Right. And Gilbert was in, and somehow Robin's Private Parts became a Black Kluge. Right. And it went on for an hour. Well, even uh, uh, another Gilbert moment with uh, doing the Michael Jackson voice with Gabagool. Uh, Gabagool. Right, right. And uh, I used to listen to that as a kid and dream of being a part of it. I literally dream of being. That was more the thing I wanted to do more than anything else in show business. And now being in that room, I mean, you know, Howard really deserves so much credit for creating this. There's no other place in the world where you could have this much fun. And, and, and the audience has fun with you. Absolutely. It's just an amazing thing. And i got to tell you, you can't say enough, John, you, uh, you saw this firsthand today. How that back office operates, like a well-oiled machine. Right, right, right. People from different buildings come over to tell you things about Mike you didn't know. Right. And, you know, we're putting up notes, and, you know, it, it's a, did you know that he went, like somebody said, you know, we put up a note that he went to Disney oh. <laughs> and then, for, you know, by himself, and then that just becomes, you know. By the time a gay day overlapped, <laughs> I don't think. Uh, right, he might as well have been running around in shorts with a whistle, you know. You know what it started to become, like in a cartoon, like uh, when someone's got a, when Bugs Bunny has a crush on a chick and his heart starts coming out <laughs> of his chest. That's what was happening to me. And uh, this is just the greatest show of all time. There's no, there's, and I've been on a lot of shows. No, there's nothing like this in the world. I just had so much fucking fun at work today. Um, and, you know, the best is how it started. He came in right. to Barry Lankford. I mean, that's why Mike <laughs> And the tables can turn. And so all, that happens so often here. When you come in to bury somebody, you better be ready because it could turn really fast. <laughs> and then a lot of that stuff I kind of knew about Mike, the Disney. Well, and But the way it unfolded and how it just kept piling and piling on. Benji had a great line when I just, I go, I'm always a, a couple of seconds late here because I'm cleaning up the studio before, you know, make sure how it's got everything that he needs. And Benji said to me, he goes, it's one of those great moments in the show where there's a fact that's been out there floating around yeah. that by itself isn't that big, and you're just waiting for the right moment for it to sort of land it's on the It's a moment. germ waiting to yeah, land it, it somewhere and, and like, become a huge virus. And everybody sort of had, we'd all heard that Mike had gone to Disney by himself, right. but oh, just man. bringing that up doesn't make any sense. In today's environment, it was like lighting a fuse. Now, I got to do entire Godfather monologues <laughs> in a high-pitched voice. Where else are you going to do that at work? No. And you're, you're, you're complimented for it. All right. What's going on in that apartment? Do you guys think that there's I something there is, to hide? I think it is putting the lotion into the bucket. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I said it's a weird thing. You know, you know, he, he lives with a guy that's got a kid. And I was saying to him, Mike, this is the point in your life where you live without kids. You'll be living with kids with, for the rest of your life, theoretically. Right. Because this is the point in your life where you, you know, go out, you know, stay up all night, drink, get laid, have fun, sleep late. So what are you doing with a kid in the apartment? And it does seem a little odd that he's had... That television in a box for a year because he doesn't want a kid touching it. First of all, you can put it up high enough so a kid doesn't touch it. And the other thing is, he, I said, you're going to keep it in that box so long it's going to become obsolete. You know, TVs, like, two, in two years, that TV's already, like, there's a new, better one. I think you should get together with Justin Timberlake and do, I got a TV in a box. <laughs> <laughs> J.D., were you upset being pulled into that argument and being compared to High Pitch Mike, or do you find yourself you in a different it. category? You love it. Oh, uh, I don't know about a different category. I mean, I don't know. Like, I know we're both, 
you know, nerdy and you stuff. You think you're cooler than him. But say no, it. I don't think I'm cooler. I think I'm more, like, attractive than him. But I don't think... <laughs> hey, Jamie, go out on a limb. I, I'm just saying, I, but I don't think I don't think I'm cool. I don't think I'm cooler than really anyone. But uh, who's less cool than you in this world? Who's less cool? Yeah, you got to be cooler than somebody. Um, I don't. I, don't I, I really I can't think of anyone right now. See, I don't think JD washes properly. That's part of his problem. <laughs> his skin is a little greasy. How's the water pressure? Over I've been there? here all goddamn night. Do you get good water pressure in that yes, apartment? Yes, I get water pressure. I don't know if you do. Now, oh, Mike. Do. Now, Mike clearly has a chip on his shoulder. <laughs> Huge chip. Which came. I mean, he went after Howard with a Jew line. He he's been after Robin the before. Nose with, line. I mean, he definitely. But my question is this: Who has a bigger chip on their shoulder, high pitch Mike or Eric the Midget? And which is more deserved, I guess, because they've both been put in certain situations in their life that they basically can't help. It's hard to say who has a bigger chip. I would say that Mike probably does a better job of hiding it. Eric never hides a chip on his shoulder, ever. And, you know, Mike's got a job and a life of some sort. Well, yeah, I mean, we're comparing Mike to this freakish midget we <laughs> talked to on the phone who fucks his bed and wears pajamas at 32. Stuck in a wheelchair? Well, y yeah. But well, he was allowed to speak his mind for 10 minutes on the show today, which Howard never lets anybody do. Well, he didn't let him either, let's face it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I would have to say that if Mike had a chip, it's a little more... You know, well deserved. I guess I don't know. He was shooting you a couple of pretty nasty looks during that whole segment. Oh, look, man. Yeah, Artie, Artie goes. Yeah, he handles it well. He's got, he goes. Artie goes. I think he's got a good attitude. I think he takes it well. Howard and I are like, no, no, no. He was pissed. That's justifying putting the kid in the locker. You know, exactly. <laughs> he likes it in there. It's roomy. And <laughs> Frankie Muniz loves it in the locker. You know, yeah, you know, it's, I don't know. He's got a chance to study in there. I think he takes it. <laughs> Mark in Jersey City. Welcome to the wrap up show. Gentlemen, congratulations. Extraordinary broadcast today. Artie's riff as Mike Morales doing Vito Corleone was really hysterical, worth every penny. <laughs> My question is, when Howard is going with uh, someone told me, that's Howard speak for Will is putting up on the computer, I think. Now, <laughs> does, is there any hostility that boils over to the back room towards Will? Because it seems to catch everybody else. Does he ever get caught up in that? No, because usually a lot of it Will puts up, and a lot of it goes through me first. So if he's going to be mad at anybody, he's going to be mad at me because I okayed that going through. But in that case, it wasn't a rumor. It was a fact that he had gone to Disney by himself. And Will puts up a lot of that stuff, but you've got Jason, Gary, J.D., Richard, Richard. Sal, everybody back there is contributing. If you're going to work in our environment, Something you got to understand that you're, if you get caught in that situation, people are going to be putting notes up about you. Just because Will is the one who physically puts it up doesn't mean he's the one that that came up that with it. Came up with it, and but but if it gets to Will, as in that position, he has to put it up. Will can't sit there and go, "Oh, I'm not going to put that up. That could really hurt Mike's feelings." Will has no choice but to put that note up. But Will, to his credit, puts up a lot of his own stuff, oh, yeah. and it's it's good. Yeah. I mean, yeah, he, no, no, it's good to have a guy who's a little bit evil in that position as well. That's why John works so well there as well. JD, what were you going to say? No, I'm just saying, uh, I, I, yeah, it sucks. <laughs> I, I totally lost my train of thought. JD Sorry. crystallizing the entire <laughs> operation. Actually, we have uh, Mike Morales on the phone. Mike, is, that, is this you? It's me. I, I just don't have time to run back there because I'm actually doing work now. But I, I just wanted to say I don't have a chip on my shoulder. I love everybody in that studio. It's watching Artie laugh uncontrollably at me that I just feel the need to come back at him. Yeah, no, no and you just, come it, back very well. It's justified. I yeah. love I love Artie. I love everyone in there, you know. Yeah. And I, I, I see why you're getting, why you're laughing. It's funny. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, you went. You're 29, and on your vacation, you went to Gay Week at Disney World. By you know, in all reality, no one on the show is perfect, but all my imperfections came out today. Right. Well, no, I think there's more to go. I guarantee you there's more, but is we'll the, let them roll out slowly. Is, <laughs> is the karaoke birthday party still a go? I don't know. <laughs> Count me in, buddy. Me and you are going to do a duet, Evergreen or something. Awesome. I, I am woman. I'll only do a duet with you, already if you sing Madonna. <laughs> you got it. All right. Bye. Bye, Mike. That voice just speaks for itself. <laughs> Mike online at the log flume. <laughs> I, I should point out, by the way, that Mike um, interned for us way back in the day. And a little known fact about Mike, Artie, Mike was the, and this was his idea, Mike was the first ever male contestant in the Interim Beauty Pageant. 
What did he? Uh, did he win? He did <laughs> he not play win. Or, <laughs> but it was really when he showed up like in leather pants and like a white yeah. shirt with like a, I think like a little bow tie and. He, you know, he competed. There were like four of the chicks, and Mike, he wanted to be part of the interview. I, I like Mike a lot, but it's safe to say if I was his father, I would have stopped talking to him 12 years ago. <laughs> Gino in Cincinnati, welcome to the wrap-up show. What's up, guys? Hey, Gino. Hey, uh, I worked at an amusement park, and we always called uh, guys walking around by themselves solo homos. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you for driving home my point. <laughs> But uh, that brought up another conversation with my buddy. He he insists that two guys that do stuff by themselves, eating dinner, whatever, are look gay. I wanted to ask you guys, if you see two guys sitting there eating dinner, not, you know, looking longingly into each other's eyes, no bullshit like that, but just, you know, two guys doing something, does that say gay to you? It's a, it's it's really a per situation thing. Like, Ordy and I could go out to dinner, and I don't think it would look gay. Yeah. But there's other people who go out to dinner it could look very gay. Right. Well, I mean, you know, it depends on the... There are guys who think the only time two guys should be eating dinner is if uh, the construction job right. goes overtime and they, they get that bacon pizza right. from Domino's. Another thing, by the way, when the guy was talking about when you see, you know, a guy alone at Disney... You know, I used to read all those books from the, the profiler, you know, guys who would profile like pedophiles and stuff. Of course. And I'm telling you, I'm not saying this about Mike because Mike's a good guy. But if when I'm at Disney Whatever. or a place like that where kids are at a fair or anything, and I see a dude by himself, my antenna goes up. Right. I'm yeah. t- oh, seriously, I'm totally keeping an eye on He has a high-pitched voice. He's got the cross eyes. Kind of creepy, cross eyes. I'd say any of that. with a six-year-old boy in the Bronx. I don't know any of that when I see him. I just know a guy alone scares me. And if he the... won't, won't let anybody up to his apartment, and there's a six-year-old boy in the Bronx. <laughs> if the contest happens between J.D. and Mike picking up the regular chick, who's your money on? J.D. Mike. I don't know. J.D. I, 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 I hate to say this. J- um JD wins in looks, but Mike has more personality. Yeah, I I will not talk to anyone if I don't know them. I doing that hottest regular chick. And how do you pick up a girl? Yeah, exactly. I don't. So, but <laughs> hold on. so, so wait. So you're the, gonna fuck? Who do you know? Let's the uh, what chicks do you know? And then one of them is gonna be one you fuck. Now let's figure it out. Let's get the list out. What do you mean? Who? What? So you have to know a chick to talk to her. Well, no, you, no. you know for years that that, that JD's pool was mostly the female interns. That was the pool of girls that he would try to. Right. Talk to, right? Because you have to find somebody at work if you're yeah. not gonna. It would, right. it you're would not gonna leave this. the building and talk to somebody. Just happen to be people that I I hang around within 11 feet of him. It would take <laughs> seconds to infect them with your <laughs> virus or <laughs> creepiness. Thanks. What? Uh, now we had this question before. Have you banged anybody else in your life besides the porn star? Yeah. Oh, good. How many? Like three. So you're ahead of high pitch Mike. But how did you said uh, too. Yeah. Well, did, I, I, most of them were off the MySpace. Like, they would message me on MySpace first. And, well, that's good. That's this generation. What are you talking about? That's like a singles bar. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Well, hey, they, if if the MySpace is a singles bar. <laughs> so you're working it. I guess. So the, the two that weren't the porn chick, what would you give them uh, number-wise on a scale of 1 to 10, roughly? Uh, I'd say at least an eight. You saw Good. the what? You saw the one of my the first girl I had sex with. Who kissy for? No, no, no. Who was? Uh, I don't. I didn't see the. Who was she the, was on the last show. The she hot was porno like, one? No, she, she wasn't in porno. She, but she, no, <laughs> she wasn't a hooker. Webcam. She came no with. She came with the Bunny Ranch people right. for the last show, but she wasn't. She doesn't work for the Bunny Ranch. I don't remember. I don't remember seeing her. <laughs> I'm sorry. She was. Cute. Was she you cute? Okay. Yeah. How would it work? You'd suck her cock or what? <laughs> What? <laughs> Shannon in Nashville. Welcome to the wrap up show. Hey, guys. What's up, Shannon? Hey, just want to give a big shout out to Artie. Woo. Big fan of Artie. Thank you, buddy. Man, I have to tell you, I had to pull over because what a loser. I was sitting there eating my breakfast and I about choked when I heard a 29 year old going to Disneyland or whatever by himself and standing in the single line. What a loser. Man. Solo homo. <laughs> we did, you hear know, that on we, the radio. It's funny. John Hunt and I went to the Met Yankee game a couple of weeks ago. We were talking about just weird things that guys shouldn't do after a certain age. Yeah. And we saw there, were, there was a row of guys that were over 60, and they all had their baseball gloves with them at the game. You're kidding. No, I'm no. not kidding. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's gay, right? Oh, 60 with the gloves. Yeah. yeah. So I say, like, you probably shouldn't go to Disney alone after, I don't know, 13, right? <laughs> I mean, after six, seven. 
I said, Mike's in the news. He's 29. One of them had a first baseman's mid, actually. Yeah, he's, the same age, he's the same age Sylvester Stallone was when he made Rocky. I just wanted to make a quick announcement for Mike because he's in the newsroom editing and uh, can't come in here. But he just wanted me to uh, let you guys know that uh, he loves everyone. He's not yeah. upset. He called. He called in. Oh, he did? Oh, okay. He I wasn't sure. But I just wanted to relay that message he for called. you. We love him. Eric in Daytona, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's up, Eric? Hey, you might want to ask Mike what color shirt he was wearing when he was at Disney. Was it red? Brown. Red. Yeah, red. I think that's more or less the color. I used to work there. And um, most of the gays would wear the uh, red shirts on Memorial He's right. Day. And most of the time we only would open up the singles line for, like, big parties. You know, like, big groups of people coming in. And gay days was one of them. So I think there's a little bit more to Mike than he's uh, letting on to us. I would, I was was re- he wearing a red shirt? No, I just made that up. I was reading online what goes on at Gay Day at Disney. And the reason why I was reading it is because we got some mail here a number of years ago from people who brought their families to the park. First of all, it's not a Disney-sponsored day. You know, gay people get together. With the Internet now, you, you put up a website saying, hey, we're going to celebrate Gay Day at Disney. <laughs> it said, you ready for this, Artie? One single day. About forty to 50,000 people. They tell everyone to wear a red shirt. They said there's nothing more beautiful than you see the Disney parade going through a sea of red shirts. I saw this you picture. Look like an enormous bleeding ass. These two guys. <laughs> Bloody rectum parade. <laughs> These two guys look like they were humping Goofy. And, um, <laughs> it looks like an enormous bleeding ass going down Main Street. <laughs> 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 and they, they want the hundred guys at the end to wear brown shirts. <laughs> John Hyde, Snow White's on John top Hyde of the bloody ass. <laughs> <They're orders laughs> <making. laughs> Home run. And of course, Mike Morales, <laughs> the Grand Marshal. <laughs> well, the, the letters I used to get from people were: Imagine if you go take go down to uh, Disney, and you're there with your five year old and your three year old, and you don't know what day it is. Yeah. And then, all of a sudden, red shirt. The red shirt army. Comes I remember one of the letters complained about a lot of people blowing whistles. Apparently they br- they bring whistles. I don't know why. That was just the start. Or maybe that was a guy's nickname, Whistle. <laughs> Mike Morales' nickname is I am Whistles. A lot of guys were blowing Hi. whistles. I am Whistles Morales. You want to blow me? <laughs> And it's like <laughs> John. <laughs> I am I'm oh. Bubbles Morales. Here's my friend Chauffeur. <laughs> Eric, Eric, you still there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, when you were down there, how many like how many red shirts did you see? Um, this year, this year uh, Disney more or less embraced it. It was, dude. Mike, was where are you going man. to the Ohio State game? <laughs> Yeah, I'm a big Buckeye fan. Oh, I'm a big Red Eye fan. The Buckeyes. I'm a big Red Eye fan. I blow my whistle? Yeah, I told my father I'm going to the Ohio State game. Oh. Yeah. Eric, thanks for the... Then why are you driving south on 95? <laughs> Go Reds! Oh, Ohio State is playing Orlando State. <laughs> Bob Orlando, you're on the wrap-up show. <laughs> How you doing, guys? You know, not all the single guys there that you see are gay. I mean, have you ever noticed uniformed police officers in, officers in the park? Uh, there's a lot of undercover cops that are gay, and we get hit on by gay men all the time. <laughs> all right, well, well any, why? any cop with a story about a high-pitched guy? Uh, they're, hit, they're hitting on you because you're walking by yourself in Disneyland. <laughs> right. Mike in Virginia, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, how you doing? My name is Mike Sparazza. <laughs> All right, Mike, Pleasure. what's your address? Pleasure to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> what's up, Mike? And I fucked Mike Morales. <laughs> I fucked I Mike Morales twice. on the scrambler outside of God. <laughs> on the zipper. On the tilt world. <laughs> I love Mike talk. Mike, go ahead. Go ahead, Mike Sparazza. <laughs> All right, Mike, you're on. Hey, I'm retired from New York, and uh, after 9-11, I couldn't take it up there no more, and I left. And I just needed some place to go just to get the hell out of New York and away. And I ran away down to Florida, down to the Keys, and I said, what the hell? I was down here. I might as well go to Disney World for a couple of days. 
Just to get over 9-11, uh, working up there and shit like that. Was going so you're an example of a straight man who did go to Disney World by himself. Yeah, I just couldn't take it up there anymore, and I said, I can't take this shit. I wound up with a broken back when I worked up in New York and shit like right, that. But, but you realize that you have a very deep voice and a thick New York accent. <laughs> <as opposed to laughs> a very high voice. Yeah, I'm sorry, you aren't wearing a red shirt. You're like shirt a tough guy. I went to fucking Disney. And you're willing to give your whole name, so <laughs> we got your guy. I'm not who I am. Right, thank you. I'm not thank embarrassed you. to enjoy life. I enjoy life now, and I enjoy life more than I've ever did before. Mike, well, if it made understand. you feel better, congratulations. We Seriously. Right. Well, yeah. Absolutely. We understand. Thank you. Keep Th enjoying life. Th thank you, Low Pitch Mike. Let's go to Darren in Las Vegas. Darren, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, good morning, guys. Hey, Darren. Hey, I went there uh, at Disneyland with my family on, <laughs> and happened to be on gay day, and you find out real quick, you know, it's, the biggest role reversal I've ever seen in my life. It's the most feminine men uh, and the most butch women. The women look like they would kick my ass in the heartbeat. Uh, that's like the prisons let out, I swear, you know. Um, but uh, there's this little girl talking to the parents, and she says, uh, Mommy, why are all these people wearing red shirts? And there was a group of guys, you know. And, and I felt like turning to her and saying, because they all blow each other. You know, it was, oh, man. that would have been a bad kid. father. No, Save that no, for your kid. It was. It, it's the funniest thing to see. I mean, we're standing in line, and, and guys are they're like I said, they talk about more things than the girls do. Darren, is, turn, turn your radio down. Go ahead, Gary. Is it one of those things where, like, you know, imagine if you're at Disney and you saw like you know, five or six flamboyantly gay guys? Some people might go, "Oh, look at those gay guys." Are you in a position when you're at the park where they go? All these gay guys go, oh, look at those straight guys over there. <laughs> yeah, did you feel discriminated against in any way? Uh, no, you know what? They're actually, most of them are very nice and very talkative, but they're just, it's it's like a bunch of gangling women. What's up with that it, blue shirt, dude? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> did you feel out of place? If I had a red, if I had a red shirt on that day, I would have bought a, a the biggest uh, black, like black Mickey Mouse shirt or something, just to not, you know, be a part of that group. <laughs> he bought a God hates fag shirt <laughs> <laughs> with ears on it. I, I I have friends who actually booked a trip down to Disney, and it happened to be during that week. And Whatever. They, and they said with their Sorry. kids, and they said they couldn't. Stay in the park, not be, not because of any harassment or anything. It's just that it's it's already it's this sea of red, and you just don't know how to deal with it. Yeah. Because I mean, well, forget, you don't want your kids seeing that shit. It's, it's, you know what? It's, it's I don't. I want to explain to my kids what gay is when I I want to, not when they're three and five. You're like I'll <laughs> well, tell them when exactly. I'm ready to tell them. Right. Now, you then know. you're forced to. Now you're you're forced on your vacation to have a sex talk with your kid. Right. And then if your kid gets on a little league team with a red shirt, you got to make sure he gets on another team. <laughs> Cincinnati Reds. All right, we got to take a break. Hey, Before Johnny Ben. <laughs> By the way, also, a high-pitched mic is here if we want to talk. Oh, to yeah, talk. bring him in. Yeah. Roll him in here. I thought L Yucca was looking a little heavier. <laughs> Mike, I'm a fan of your new segment on the news where you sound <laughs> off about various different things. This, so am I. The Thank one you. about Artie uh, as well. We just played some of it. What's going on here? Well, you know, yesterday when he's falling asleep... <laughs> when he's falling asleep, I just want to take the radio and throw it through, through the fucking wall. Oh, oh a wow. serious radio? You uh, unfortunately, it's serious radio. Yeah, you couldn't pick a serious radio up. But I don't understand why you let him get away with this. What do you mean? Because I thought it was uh, funny yesterday when Artie was sleeping on the air. It's funny the first time, maybe even the second right. time. Right. Well, it only happened once. Well, no, once yesterday. Right. But about ten times. All before. right. But when we woke him up at the air horn. It's called comedy. Look into it. What? <laughs> this is one of the most coveted jobs in comedy, and apparently you don't. Yeah. Appreciate it because you keep falling asleep. Day How after dare day. you? For seven years, I've been uh, awake the entire show. So I, I, I took one cat nap. But that where, was. Where do you get the arrogance or the audacity to sit next to Howard Stern and just fall asleep in the middle of the show? He's well. Listen, he's if, until he tells me different. I'm not going to take my fucking marching orders from you, you little weasel. You don't. You don't have to. But I would show him some respect and stay awake during his show. Well, I happen to have a medical problem. So get it, get it addressed. Well, I can't, get, I, but I, I am working through the medical problem. A lot of people in my condition, type 2 diabetes, if you listen <laughs> yesterday, a lot of people, were, 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 I was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes at 9 and at fucking 1030. I was still here cracking jokes, let's fucker. Be honest, and I was on the wrap-up show while you were preparing your little homo soliloquy let's be honest, in that I den that you have on the Upper East Side. Diabetes is not your problem. Let's be honest, all right? What? You know what your problem is. Let's be What's honest. What's his problem? 
Yeah, I'm not. You know, I'm not gonna. What, really, is it? what is it? You think it's drugs? He's still on something. You think he's on heroin? Still? I'm on Subutex. I don't know if it's heroin, Subutex. I mean, Subutex won't make you fall asleep day after day after day. I'm You're on, on sub- something. I, I, I'm, I'm high on life. Something you clearly are not. And no, I'm, I'm very concerned. Are you angry? If you went to one amusement park with someone else, you might be. Are you angry with Artie also because he ridiculed you on the air and laughed? Oh, no, no. I, I'll take the ridicule. But he did is come out here last week and lied. And said that I walk around saying the N word constantly. No, I said now, we have Yucko, it on tape. Yucko, I appreciate. He does racial humor. That doesn't necessarily make him a racist. You, you he do... said I walk around saying the N word constantly. No. And that's bullshit. And I you said know you've it. said it on the air before. We have tape no, of it. No, you said my high pitch Mike walks around saying the N word constantly. No, I did not say see, that. I'll pull the use... tape. I'll pull the tape. You're lying through your fucking how teeth. How do you use the N word? How do I, I don't use the N-word. You've oh, never used it? Bullshit. The worst thing I've done is the horrible thing I said to Robin. I apologize. Which was one. He almost said it. What did you when say? When the stupid Siobhan event happened. Which I, was what there? Fucking... We were insulting each other's physical uh, attributes. Traits, attributes. Of which you have none. I attacked her weight, which she's beautifully changed. She looks amazing now. Don't right. kiss her. Thanks around. to you. Go ahead. Yes. But, yeah, I'd, I'd like to take credit for that, Robin. Thank you. Um, you can have any credit you want. But, I, you know, I attacked her weight. She attacked my eye. And then I said, you know, if I can't change my eye, like, you can't change your skin color. But what I, I wasn't saying that to attack her race. I was saying, uh, your oh, voice, what would your you voice, be doing? shut what, up, what would you shut be up, doing? Shamu, shut up. Oh, uh, Shamu. What I was saying is, oh, you can't change oh, how you're born. She was born black. I was born with a, you know. Wandering eyes. So what's exactly. wrong with being born black? Yeah, we each have Nothing. handicaps. I right, exactly. That's what you mean. Nothing, you were but... born with a bum eye that makes you look like a Nothing. retard. <laughs> and she was born with uh, as a black person. Yeah, what does that fucking mean? You weren't born a drug addict or a fat ass, but you exactly. turned into one. Exactly. But you turned into one. Well, and I can turn back into a non-drug addict, non Fat well, ass, so do it. Take a few weeks you're off and do it. You're always gonna sound Take like a, few weeks a off squeal off jerking off, and I'm gonna fucking <laughs> go do another movie. Uh, saw, I might do another movie. How many, like how many movies have you been in, sir? I don't. I don't want to be in movies. <laughs> I, I, but, but if I was, in good. Movies, so I that's one less disappointment. <laughs> is it is it possible to win an argument with a high pitched voice? <laughs> Probably not. No. Right. Let me ask you something. Howard, Rutherford. let Steve Langford in your apartment, child molester. What do you think costs more? What? Art, what do you think grossed more at the box office? Artie's Beer League Go ahead. or Weird Al Yankovic's U- UHF? I would say Artie's movie. Wrong. Really? Well, UHF, that had to make, I had a small distributor. This was a small motion picture. We are in the black. We what? are. We, I am getting what checks you, now once you, a month. What do you think grossed more, Beer League or Howard the Duck? Howard the oh, Duck? I would think Beer, uh, Beer League. League. Howard the Duck. I'm oh, kidding. You mean the Steven what? Spielberg directed Howard the Duck, you fruit? That was Lucas. Lucas. Beer League, well, whatever. Beer League or Garbage Pail Kids, the movie? I would think Beer League. That's wrong. A, you wrong. can't beat kids' movies. Well, you you've done do a it. lot of research. <laughs> i got to say. Hey, Howard. Yeah. We have a, a black intern out there. He was sitting watching the screen totally offended that Mike was comparing a lazy eye sure, to being but black. You, yeah, you're right. That's <laughs> and he even did. said, he goes, you know what? That guy could throw in a pair of fucking sunglasses. I'm black, and why is black an affliction? Black is not an affliction. You could, you could put on you sunglasses think, and do I'm nothing but talk you... with a cock in your mouth and change everything. Being black, no, I think you what he's saying of... is I can't change my eye any more than Robin could change her skin color. Correct. And being black, you face a lot of racism in society, whether you want to or not. I face a lot of ridicule because of my eye. Howard, Howard, what? Is... Howard, what? I have a question. You, you ask your question. What's grosser? The left side of Mike's face or the right side of Mike's face? <laughs> <laughs> I pitch my Google eye. It's always looking at dudes. I pitch my Google eye. Check it out, God. I don't know. From the mail. Wow. Google. Anyways, All right. Are really? you angry? I mean, there, it is a fact. You are a virgin, right? No, and I've said this on air. Oh, you're not. And people can contest it all they want. I don't give a fuck what the people in the back think. All right. No. You are not a virgin. Right. You've had sex with a woman. Yes. More than Bullshit. one. Bullshit. Yes. Bullshit. Well, I mean, was it more than one woman. <laughs> Bullshit. Look was the woman you, alive? You think, was you the woman alive? You think ever come back to you looking the way you look? I've moved like, on. I've moved on. But you not, know what? The Artie train has pulled out for Dana Cerrone. She did not Cerrone. dump you because of a dog or drugs. <laughs> she dumped you because of the way you fucking look. No. No, she dumped me because I had some issues that she couldn't deal with. She was immature and she left. Well, she's never gonna, <laughs> it's obvious she's never coming back, so you can kiss that car. I'll be, I'll be, I am getting I'll be fucking, know. I'll be balls deep in Britney Star while you're sitting alone in your apartment trying to figure out how to open your television set.
I and, and put Run's House on TiVo, you fucking Coming homo. up tonight, as a matter of fact. By the way, did you ever unwrap your t- t- TV set? No. Of no, course you didn't. didn't. Oh. He's Boy. A, he's What's a, going he's on? He's a gangly little creep. What it's gonna, it's going to be like, it's going to be old. Yeah, it'll, it'll be, be outdated. Why haven't you unwrapped the TV set you I've won? I've gone through this before. I don't, I don't understand. I'm trying to move. You know, I don't want to. To where? I've still got an Atari in the box, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being handed note that says it is a fact that you are lying, that you are a virgin. All right, wow. so how is it a fact? How would anybody th- th- back there know anything? Because we don't see any, we, there's no women in the last 10 years who have been screaming and walking into Bellevue crying that they fucked you. <laughs> Real, when like, did the, like you're wow. a to women. When I did didn't you, say When that. did you get laid? Was I banged a lot more in, chicks back, than you have. Back in college and shortly after college. When Ridiculous. Reagan was in office. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Who was president the last time see, you got laid? See, at least this guy can pull off humor and, and even racial humor. This guy goes, uh, already goes to the back, Cooper Roast. Thinks he can blurt out the N word left and right. Right, that's all I did. That's all, that's all I did was blurt out the N word. Were you there at the Pat Cooper Roast? No, but I know. Then, then you shouldn't talk that's about it. I, but, but, but I was there, and it's not what. It's already told a joke. I and, heard. Uh, which, and, which was a lot funnier you know than the joke you told. You know why you weren't there? Because you're not in show business. All right, let's go no, to. Mike has uh, admitted to me that he's a virgin. Yeah? <laughs> yes, you have. Stop lying. When have I said that to I've you? asked you point blank. I've asked you to give me details about what a vagina feels like, and you just like, <laughs> shake your head and walk out of the room. The only, vagina, the only <laughs> vagina you've seen is what on fucking Japan. I've also told him that I opened the TV, so I mean, that holds... That holds so you're a liar. Time. Yeah, you're a liar. Wow. And you are, too. No, I'm not. You're, you're on fucking we're drugs. Admit about it. You. Admit it. Check yourself into a rehab today. I'm on Subutex. That's a powerful drug. Uh, that's your codependency, but what's your real dependency? Ooh. What do you mean, what's my oh, real dependency? Wow. Food and liquor at this point, but I'm working on myself. That's the difference. You're not working. You're going to stay. Get on the fucking scale. You're going you're gonna to stay a cross-eyed. Get on the fucking scale. high voice little fucking fucker of children. <laughs> That's true. You're a predator. You're a sexual predator. Yeah, I'm a predator because I went Who on else goes to Great Adventure on Gay Day with a red shirt on? You want it in the ass, and you want it hard. <laughs> That's ridiculous. That's a, an obscene claim. Admit you're a gay guy. Just nobody cares. I'm nobody not cares. Gay, and he's even not. if I was, I wouldn't care to say. You yes, know, you would. The, the same other. way you. Why do you say he's gay? Because well, I mean, well, because Howard. he's got this fucking macho attitude. Because no, but he's look got at a him. Lot, he's got a lot of masculinity issues with his father. And he's, you know, throwing him on a fucking baseball field all along. I know. I, w- I was so tortured playing baseball as a kid. Well, you obviously... You have, would have been, because you are... Would, would it's, yeah, I'm Looking for a place to put I'm the not, bat in your ass. I'm not athletic. <laughs> I don't go to a fucking softball game a year ago to fall flat on my fat ass. Well, I was playing in a competitive you game. Should be playing. Something you should try. Have you, you ever try played... Jumping jacks. Have you ever played an organized sport? I don't need to. I don't is, want is to. Is sucking cock an Olympic sport? Because oh. you'd be you, on the fucking boom, You tell boom, me, you're the one with jizz on your chest, asshole. I washed that off years ago. I tell you, this is an amazing yeah. argument. I, so, I I just think Howard, so you, it's out. not a you lack worked, of respect. <laughs> you worked, you've worked far too hard and Thank come you. come too far. Well, I, so I, let somebody disrespect you day I after think day. I'm not disrespecting him. It's a physical show, affliction. I think the fun of the show yesterday was, you know, sort of hearing the mess that Artie was in, and right. uh, he knows how to turn that into comedy gold. I, I was not offended. Honestly, I wasn't. I weave But I, I appreciate you uh, saying it. I understand how you would feel. I've taken, di- I've taken type mm. 2 diabetes and weaved it into a comedic classic. Right. He has. On the most oh, listened to radio show in the satellite world. You are a comedy You motherfucker. Legend. You are a comedy legendary. That's why you're still sharing stages with Bob Levy and Beetlejuice. I'm sharing the world stage with Howard Stern, what can, fucko. But, as you've pointed out what? many a time. And Yucko is not on my show. Already. Never will be again. Hey, but pick up, Mike. Mike, look. Okay, I know Mike went to an American Idol concert by himself. Right. So that's okay. not so, right. Okay. All right. So and, that, I, and, he, and to Disney. You and, know, he ro- he ran up to Sanjay and hugged him, and took a picture did? with him. You ran up to Sanjay. We have proof of that, fruit bag. See, there's another. He's a we have proof liar. of that, Fruity. Apparently, drug addicts have a tendency to lie repeatedly. You're, you're, what you're, I did the drug you're going to be addicted to is AZT. What I tried to do. Oh, oh, oh. In about 20 years, you'll be dependent uh, on that why don't fruitcake. You, why don't you take a lesson from your father and learn when to quit? Oh, oh. oh. My father was not a quitter. <laughs> He, he, he died. He's he died probably, of an, an he's affliction. He's probably looking down on you right now, sad and depressed at what you've become. One thing we know is you'll never, you'll never be able to look down on anything. 
Uh, there you go. <laughs> side All right, to side. there'll be a safe theater this uh, what, One November? thing you won't have is a kid, and if you did, you wouldn't be able to look down on it. All right, all right. The Listen, fags this is getting, can't now get it's getting married. Now it's getting oh. ugly. Now oh. it's getting Why don't you go to Massachusetts and get married? <laughs> Mike, I enjoy your yeah, you. segment on the news. Thanks. Fruitcake. It, it, obviously, you tell it like it is because uh, this is what has uh, occurred. All I'm it. saying is he would live. I, I, look, I've had issues. I know people in show business very who are secret uh, gay guys. He's not gay. It's an awful life to lead. Yeah. It really is. And I think if you just came out of the closet, you'd have a much more comfortable life. Let We'd me, all accept you. you. We would all accept you. Yeah. Let me ask you something. It would make total let sense. Let me ask you something. Howard's got a news department here. Why don't you pluck out two of your hairs, and Howard Laundry News will take it to an independent drug testing lab. What is that? Have, wh why do you have to find out how much Percocet I well, took I in mean, 1989? What does it anything. matter? Uh, what do you mean? I, people know I'm a drug addict. I'm out. No, you here's said the you're difference. A, you've said here's you're a drug the addict, difference, you, you high pitch little now. weasel. I come out and say everything that's wrong with me. I'm a, I've admitted to doing heroin. I've admitted to getting cum on my in chest for the threesome. In the past, you're still I've admitted, I, no, now I'm addicted to Subutex, and I have type 2 diabetes. You're making fun of someone with a vicious, awful, killing disease. You, my, my friend, had you we'll are you thing. are staying in the closet. You're a, you're you you are not being not honest. Fair. You, you, you don't think know whatever that he's you gay. want to think. I've never. Have cared. you ever engaged in homosexual sex? No. Okay. I don't give a no shit. Just going to the I American Idol shit. is gay. I don't give a shit what you think of me or what anyone else thinks of me. I don't think about but you. Are still a drug addict, and if you weren't, you would pull out two of your hairs and we'll get them tested. Uh, dude, I would ask you to do that, but then you'd be bald. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, turn around. You've got a huge fucking bald spot. Yeah, well, yeah, but no one can see it. Uh, you know, in show business, everything happens from the front on, pal. That's why you're in trouble. Yeah, you know a lot about show business. How long did Beerly go? I know you. Weeks? I know you're not gay because, first of all, no gay guy could dress the way you do. <laughs> gay guys don't. Uh, gay guys don't like Beerly either. They don't like any of my stuff because it's manly shit. I bet you hate Charles no, Bronson too. No, you used too. to be funny when you put out it's the, when you put out it's the whiskey talk and that was funny. All right, look, guys, I'm running out of time and I'm sorry you can't. I can't believe that the animosity goes so Man. deep. I'm, I'm very sorry you can't see eye to eye. <laughs> Oh, no, I didn't mean it like that. Come it came out the wrong Let way. Let yourself free. Uh, free yourself. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being a gay that's guy. That's not fair. That's right, not you fair. You keep saying that, and when you have your stroke on air, when you're dead in a couple of weeks, All I'll right. have my yeah. last All right, thank you, Mike. Right. Well, we look forward to your people segment. People don't die. For, you like know what? That. If I have a stroke on air, I'll continue to call you a fag through the right right side of my mouth. I am wow. fighting that, in right. this. That room. was ugly, but enough about Mike. <laughs> so, All right. Uh, I'll tell you, he stirs me up, that kid. Yeah, Bob. Hey, put Mike on a lie detector test to see if he sucked a dick. He definitely did. <laughs> no, you don't know that. Well, well maybe guess... we could find out if he's a virgin with a lie detector. Uh -huh. All right, I will put him on the lie detector he, and find out. He just admitted, how funny is this, you fight a lie with a lie. <laughs> he told me he was a virgin. Yeah, and I also told you I opened my TV. That's just a, con a liar. He's a liar. No, I will I will put him on a lie detector so he can clear up his good name. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you, uh, Bob Levy. You got it, brother. He's a blotchy uh -huh. little fruit. Anything else, Robin? Oh, my goodness. Well, it was a good segment. Jamie Lee Curtis is weighing in on that the wildfires out in California. My blood, Fred, is boiling oh. from that kid. Uh-oh, <laughs> uh -oh, his blood is boiling. Uh, a lot of blood is I, around I pitch my burst me up. <laughs> you better take a nap. <laughs> Getting into a lot of you trouble. You must need a rest after that. He's fighting with to, everyone. To suggest that I don't respect Howard. You're going through sugar withdrawal. I swear to God, that's what's going I on. I haven't right had now. any. You're right. I think I need. Uh, but no, today I had no sugar. Except for two. I had so two well, the carbs are. Um, look how peppy you are. Kind of hey, prevalent in your diet. The <laughs> I had two. Bagel I had two wine punches. That's no, it. Spunky you did. Bite. Did you really? I had one away. <laughs> don't know what he had. All right, Robin. Doesn't please matter. go ahead. <laughs> And ended with him getting into it with High Pitch Mike, who clearly <laughs> is not a big fan of Artie Lang. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, a lot of the gays aren't. And that's, hey. uh, that's, that's upsetting to me because I, uh, you know, as you know, um, with every bite of the Artie Lang cupcake, you fight AIDS. And uh, we've raised thousands of dollars. Artie, let me, we were just discussing this. Uh, uh, bullshit. We were just discussing this while I was cleaning up the studio. How much of that is serious for you? We know I can tell that for Mike it's totally serious. I can tell that you're tweaking him a little bit, but then it seems like he gets under your skin a little bit, and your tweaks get it's a little not a little less funny, a little more brutal. Yeah, I don't know. No, it, no, it, it, I don't really care that much. It's kind of joking around. Right. It is. Although, okay. although I, I thought you had the line of the fight when you said the drug he'll be addicted to is AZT. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike did not back down. 
No, Mike reminds me of one of those, like, I was saying to the guys, like, remember when you went to high school, there was always this one nerdy kid, and you couldn't, he couldn't be scared, right. he couldn't be bullied, like, Mike's that guy. Like yeah. he's not he's not afraid of Artie. No matter how ma no matter how many times a bully would fuck him in the ass, he'd always come back for more. <laughs> hey, so wasn't the bet? I, I wish Howard had pursued this with with Mike when Will challenged him to describe what vagina is like. Here's and I, I would love to hear. I mean, that's such a great. That, we let that go by so fast. Will goes, well, I know he's a virgin because one time I asked him to tell him what the sort of pussy feels like, and he wouldn't tell me. Uh, <laughs> it's wet. It's great. <laughs> it's like uh, hairy. We got, should let him do that. Where is he, that son of a bitch? Do you guys think Mike is a virgin? Yes. If he isn't, let, let me put it this way. If he isn't, he's as, as close to one. In other words, something might have accidentally happened once or twice. Well, but I wouldn't mean accidentally. I mean, he's just, like, just so lucky. like kind of, No, no, no. no. Sometimes, it's, listen. You, During you, a rape, he accidentally. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> the, 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 sometimes it, it, there's, there's, there's sort of awkward fumbling and, you know, he might have gotten close to it and finished, but it's not sex. Oh, okay, you're saying like he might have had a near sex, near penetration experience. Right, like but if you, like if you, listen, if you put your penis inside of a woman for a quarter but, of a second and you finish, is that sex? But no, I wouldn't. Are you still a virgin? I, I think the, everyone doubts the near penetration just as much as the penetration. I, I think it's just that kind of stuff at all. You think it either is or isn't? Yeah, yeah. I mean, if he gets near penetration, I don't see what the penetration. How, how far do you think he's gotten, Benji? I don't know. I, first of all, I do like him, and actually, he's grown on me. Um, like a wart. Yeah. <laughs> I interned with him actually. Oh, that's right. That, that was your in, semester in in '98. And um, I, I I would believe. I guess if I had to bet one way or the other, I would bet that he's a virgin. Oh, I'm just God. saying. Do you think that might he may have had some sort of sexual experience? But do you think that he's ever experienced like a full lovemaking session where you get the full you know you get the full everything? No. <laughs> how, how are you defining sex, Gar? A penis goes into a woman's vagina, and it's not done in four seconds. Then no. Then no. You but, Art, do you even believe the near penetration? I don't believe. Uh, yeah. Well, under what circumstances would a, a woman, unless the woman was retarded or something, well, I would he's, just, a, he's a smart guy. And he okay? seems to be playing the fence on this that he's, like, going to come out later and say, and I I actually thought, Artie, was, you were a little bit mean about the gay stuff. Like, you're oh, not sorry, man. creating a... A safe environment for him to come sorry, out in. Sorry to be mean. No, I really thought you were on this show. Because well, I know, but he's being—he's saying mean shit to me too. What do you want me to tell you? Yeah, let him come out. We're, we're all friends here. This is a safe place to come out of the closet. I don't know. You berate him for half an hour about being gay. They go, but please come out. We're all friends here. I'm, we won't make fun of you. I'm berating him for not coming out. I'm berating him for not being Artie, proud Artie, of his gayness. Look me in the eye and tell me how many seconds. If you came out of the closet, how many seconds it would take you <laughs> to make a gay joke? I wouldn't, because I'd respect oh, stop. I, I, now, but until his punishment on, for not coming out of the closet is going to be enduring gay jokes. See, I don't think the he's second gay. he comes out, I'll embrace him, and I'll go, now we're friends. I do think it's a good chance, like, I've always thought this with high-pitched voices, that there could be some sort of psychosexual dynamic to it. Huh? Oh, what? You mean with it, a guy? It could be something to do with your sexuality. It might not Which, just be... You mean like he lacks testosterone and that's why the voice... That could be, a, that could be, a, whole that could be a biological reason. But there could also be like some sort of psychological reason, like some sort of trauma that makes him scared of sex, of something, of of, of being a guy to be. Yeah, people who like cock generally have high voices. But you mean like like it could be like a, like a shrink could work with him for years and break down some barrier and, it's they, start, and they start talking normal. Although he does sort of have a masculine persona also. With where, 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 where do you see that? Well, yeah, that what the masculine Amer part is there? The American Idol concert. Going to that yeah, by himself. Like, I mean, that's funny. It's a, it's funny. And it's, a joke, and it's, it's funny joke, when you balance it with. A, listen, it, it, the, the lines don't have to be like you don't have to love football, but there are certain things that guys dig, and like even Howard, we joke around. He likes dancing with the stars, but he's still a dude. Like with Mike, he doesn't like any of those masculine guy type no, I, games. I, I think he might be gay. I do think he might be. I have no idea. I think he's. Think it, I, I think he's that he acts like he is gay, and that's all I'm saying. I think he's asexual. I've never, I have true, yeah, I've never heard him talk about fucking. I don't think he cares one way or another. Like, I, think, I, I think I think he's a sexual predator. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard him compliment a girl or anything whatsoever, like say this girl's hot or right, But I never got the impression that he was also secretly turned on by a guy. I think it's just, I don't think he cares. Yeah, Which know. could also be 
part of the voice thing. That could be some sort of scared of sexuality. He craves dick 24-7. <laughs> All right. Well, you know what? He's not here to defend himself. Well, I'm not. that's not a bad thing. Now you're making it like that's a bad thing. It's not. It's a good thing to crave dick 24-7. What's wrong you're a gay guy. I crave do you really have, I crave don't really have any problem with that, do you? No. I love. I, no, I, I don't. But but he might. I I could care less. But well, some guys sometimes guys whether they're gay or not don't like to be. So you feel like he's I, like a self hating homosexual. I don't know that he's gay. We're not saying he's gay. I'm just saying he he's not here to say whether he is or isn't. No matter what he said he, he isn't, and he may not want to be the subject of all. No matter what he was, he'd be self hating because you know why should he be different than anybody else and not hate himself. He's hateful. He's a hateful little weasel. He's he's annoying. He's loud. He's rude. He's a racist. He's blotchy. He's balding. <laughs> and uh, he's what bringing... The, uh, he's, he, with every step the gay community takes forward, and it's been so hard for the gay community to get to the place where they're at now and accepted in certain major cities, he's taking them two steps back by not admitting that. But don't you think it could help? A gay like, like there's, a, there's a gay guy working on the show that has a, like a prominent role in the show that he could help the gay community. Yeah, of course. That's, that's my point. We're, we're ready. We're ready for a gay dude on the Artie's show. Artie's saying, come out. If that's right. the case, just come out. Yeah, I come think out. He, and I think you're angered by his hypocrisy if you believe that exactly, to be true. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Let's exactly. go to the phones on this. Let's talk to Claire in New Jersey. Just because the cock goes in the back door doesn't mean you can't walk through the front door of life. Claire, you're on the wrap-up show. Yeah, Artie, what's up with your vicious homophobia? Why do you always go to the gay bashing argument? Why do you always? Take any argument and turn it into a fucking, any argument with high pitch mic at least, and turn it into a fucking gay bashing argument. You are one of the biggest homophobes on the fucking show. That's a, that's a shows, horrible fat joke. I'm not one of the biggest homophobes on the show. You are. No, I'm Marty, not. No. Who's bigger? Who's, who's even, well, who's a homo? You said I'm one of the biggest ones. Who else is a homophobe on the show? Uh, actually, uh, you're, you're the classic quintessential homophobe. Are on the you show, gay? Are you, you, you take. You know what his name is, Are you gay? Are you gay? Are you gay? Oh, is this Claire? This is Claire who didn't like what I was saying yeah, the other this day. Is, yeah, this is Claire, the one that Claire. gave you. You were, you mad, gave at, you were mad at the Prada listen, Willie thing, too. <laughs> listen, uh, Artie, why don't maybe you. Maybe I'll become a born again Christian, at, like fucking Dave Chappelle, and that'll be good for my comedy. Yeah, well, career. maybe you're just a fucking homophobic motherfucker. And maybe you're really just a fag. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a good one, Artie. That's a good one, Artie. Maybe uh, you're John, a fag with Prada Willy disease. Yeah, John Hine. <laughs> Get that Hine, is, look, I can laugh John at your Hine, fat John Hine, John, <laughs> yeah. Hine, look, John Hine, look into the 1.2 million. It's very low. It didn't include uh, Central Jersey. It didn't include New York City. It didn't include Philly. It didn't include Houston. Huh? The you... number is very low. John Hine, alert. Look into it, okay? What are you talking and about? Artie, and Artie, fuck I... you, the arbitrage. The arbitrage let me tell you, let me tell you something. You. You're Artie, a fag with you. Prada Willy disease, which means you don't have the chromosome to tell you when to stop eating cock. Artie... Cut the fucking homophobic shit. It's not really even that funny, dude. To some nobody people, laughed it's just funny. To, uh, nobody laughed. Just to eighty percent, nobody I'll laughed. Laugh. Nobody just laughed. Then, Their mics are on. Laughed. There are hyster There are five hysterical people in the corner right now. John, look into the Arbitron numbers. They're very low. Thanks a lot, guys. Got to go. Claire, Claire, I'll low. look into that for you. What are low? What, he's saying he's, he's on a whole different subject. I came in to talk about the ratings, and he's saying that one point two is a low. He thinks it's a low rating for the show. Hey, what are there's what are more my, people listening? Apparently, according to. Claire. One of the best like childhood things that Artie's told us is like uh, when he was a kid, his dad wouldn't let him watch Mr. Rogers because he was worried Mr. Rogers was too fruity. My father thought Mr. Rogers was a gay guy, yeah. He <laughs> seemed acting like a gay guy. You know, back in the day, because of course it was before political correctness, but was your father one of those kind of guys that said, look at that fucking homo? Or, no, he fruit. wasn't that ver verbose about it. He, he was like... Um, he, like, if, if, I'll never forget, there was some movie on, uh, and this must have been ahead of its time, that, that starred that guy, Harry Hamlin. I know, uh, yeah. Falling in Love. Okay. It's, it, and was it Michael Hunt, Michael Ankeen? Mm -hmm. Is that the movie I'm thinking of? Oh, from yeah. The Rookies. Yeah, 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 it was a big deal, because it was the first right. mainstream movie to have a male kiss in it. Right, okay. That, that. <laughs> I remember him very loudly discussing the male kiss and that, and he he just he really he would get like the shivers and he wanted to punch the TV set and and, and throw it out the window. So he would not have bought the rookies on DVD. No, uh, but the, and I guess you know I don't know he he like a lot of inner city kids he wasn't into the gay thing I don't know. I mean, but it's funny. Do you think seriously your dad was you know he was a blue collar guy, but you work in a business. 
You work with a ton of gay dudes. I know. You have to deal with gay dudes all the time. And I've done, look, when I got on Mad TV, uh, we would write sketches, and the gay thing, one of my best friends there was a gay guy. He was a hair guy there. And uh, you really had to watch your mouth. The Stern Show is of such a unique place where we're allowed to just, you know, really go nuts and talk the way we talk. Every other job I've had in Chopin's, I remember uh, someone, it was somebody's birthday and off, you know, during rehearsal, and I said, oh, that cake is gay. And the, the, oh, the cake is gay? I, I said about a cake. Right. That cake is gay, and the hairdresser guy slapped me in the back of the head, and I almost had to go to Human Resources because of it. You're kidding? Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh no, it, I understand the uptight, and believe me, if anybody knows me, I don't hate anybody. It's it's all it's all an act. It's bullshit. Uh, was the cake offended? I mean, I don't even get that. No, because just calling something gay, he was offended by. But he what, thought, but what, he thought it was a derogatory thing. Like I'm using gay as a derogatory thing. But you were. I was sure. Well, which, I mean, I don't think no, it's necessarily it's, it's wrong. The, when, if, when I, it's not sexual. I'm right. something. Yeah. So if yeah. Marty says the cake is gay, it means the cake is effeminate. It's an effeminate cake. It but doesn't it's mean like that, if it's not derogatory. Said, like, like who nigger rigged the cake? It's just as derogatory. I disagree. Yeah, I think that. I think the cake nigger is nigger rigged. What are you talking if about? If someone like nigger, like you ever heard the expression nigger rigged? No, no. I'm not a racist. I'm I've, not I've heard it. I've heard it. It's a, it's it's a really you've heard it. No, I have not. It's I've heard jury rigged. Uh, which Stuttering John swore was used to be Jew rigged, but had moved to jury rigged. I don't think I, I think you're probably one time the, my uncle Tommy told me to deniggerize my car. But seriously, do you think it's the gay stuff <laughs> that's not true. is more acceptable than the anti black <laughs> stuff? That's a joke. What? A serious answer, not like say it again, say it again. Come do on. you think it's more acceptable to to make fun, like to use the word fag in jokes, than to use the word like the the n word? Absolutely. The, to, to me, the n word is the ultimate. Like, sort it, is of thing. one more morally wrong though? No, no, one's not more morally. I, I, I don't think I'm, so either. I'm, I'm so still not sure about what's accepted by society. I'm still not sure that calling a cake gay is derogatory. It's just saying that. That cake is gay. It's an effeminate cake. Yeah, but it's not it, saying it's. It's not saying I hate. The he cake. chose to look at it as you know. I'm I'm calling something gay, and that means something's bad. Yeah, but, you know, but, I, it, but it gets to the point with some of the political correctness that the mere usage of a word now constitutes everybody. Go, oh my god! Oh my god! I yeah. love how we're spending five minutes talking about what a gay cake. I'm just so shocked that, they, <laughs> that, that, that <laughs> you like can get in trouble. No, I did. I, I I didn't have to go to human resources, but he got very mad. And I had to apologize to him. What, what was the apology? Uh, I I'm said, sorry. hey, look, I'm sorry. I don't have anything against gay people. I didn't like the cake, you know. And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and uh, I said, next time, I'll, if I, I, I said, you got a freebie here. If you don't like a cake, you can call that, say that that's a guinea, guinea cake or something, you know, whatever you got to. Uh, but uh, it, it is, I am aware of the business I'm in, and it's why I'm not further along in this business, quite frankly. Let's talk to Alan Buffalo. Hey, Al, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, hey, it's an honor for me to talk to Artie. I'm a fat guy. I've had diabetes for four years. Yeah. I was a man's man who smoked pot and did drugs and snorted cocaine in the 70s and the 80s. Fuck okay? them all. Am I right? Okay. The bottom line is this guy attacked Hardy on a personal level, and I felt like he was attacking me. He sounds like a twat. He whines like a twat, and he probably is a twat, and Hardy's calling a spade a spade. And where else is new, it's a joke. And if you can't take a joke, don't listen to the show. Exactly. That's the Imus thing. He, okay. Imus should not have apologized uh, for anything. He was making a joke. Whether the joke's bad or not is one thing. No, so, your show is the show of shows. Okay? Right. Thank anything you. goes. But the guy, when he whines and cries, he puts. I think he puts a bad name on gay people. Yeah, that's a perp, that's a, to me, that sounds like a typical gay what he's doing. Dude. Mike is not gay. <laughs> well, he sure sounds but, like a sissy to me. Exactly. So he gives sissies a bad name but for now. But it's a joke. <laughs> I need you to joke. And I'm telling you, Artie, you got nothing to worry about diabetes. I've done it for 14 years. All you got to do is only party once in a while instead of partying every day. You got it, buddy. Here okay. we go, man. Okay. I, this guy, I like. Put him through besides that Claire next time. All right. Alan Buffalo, you've got the uh, the secret line. Thank you for calling in. Let's talk to Adam in Texas. Adam, you're on the wrap-up show. Yes, maybe Mike's a, a bisexual. No, that's a good point. Good yeah, that's I mean, I, I, he probably is. We asked Mike to come down, but I know he's busy with the news. It's always listen. We're, it's always fascinating when somebody will talk about their sexuality one way or another. We're just fascinated by it, right? Yeah. You get. We want to know. Just you just want a yes or no answer. Or or or, or what? Maybe or a what? <laughs> or a yes or no or a what? <laughs> yes, Jason Kaplan. Just as long as we're clocking in on uh, Mike's uh, sexuality, I, I'm with Artie. I think he's gay. 
I'm no. just gonna I'm gonna put a vote in the All gay right. camp. You wrote, oh. Hey, what was it? Jason, Jason was Thank coming. You. Jason. Right. Have you, you never really you've never heard the term N rig before. You've never heard that. No, term? I never heard that really. I've, I've heard, heard the, I've heard like a nigger chaser for uh, right. that. I've know. heard. Well, Jason's got a funny story. Jason works someplace. So with him. Well, no, I was I've up, heard that expression before. It means it's put together poorly. I, oh no, yeah, it means it means it's like Jerry rigged it, but you say it's put together like N-word like a, an African American. Right, right. that's together. how they would do it. So. uh... So, no, I'm up at an Elks Lodge one time at some uh, uh, uncle's birthday First party. First mistake. Yeah, I know, right? It's in upstate New York. And you can tell this place had a huge sign above the bar that said, like, uh, if you don't speak English, get out of the country. You know, it was like totally, <laughs> I was totally creeped out. So two of the Elks uh, were, trying to, um, <laughs> were trying to hook up this keg, and they couldn't get it to work. And finally, one of them got it to work, and the other guy goes to me, how did you do it? What would you do? And he goes, I African-American rigged it. Uh. <laughs> So I guess it was just trying to not be racist, but was no. still being incredibly In racist. In these politically correct yeah. times, I knew a couple of kids who used to deal fireworks who were selling African-American chasers, yeah. too. <laughs> it didn't work as well. It didn't work as well. <laughs> Stephen Bayside, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, what's up, fellas? Listen, Artie, that guy is straight-up gay. You should have slapped a fucking high pitch right out of him. I know back in the day, you would have bust a cap in his ass for talking to you like that. No, you are who does he think he is to talk to you like that? You're right. In the old days, I would have be- beat up a gay guy, but now I'm in show business. <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah they're not. I like they're not. They're getting bitch slapped, man. I mean, you know. And he's yeah. lucky. He's lucky Howard doesn't fire me, because then I'd be out of show business, and I could go back to beating the fuck out of gay guys <laughs> like him. Dude, you got to have more respect for you, man. Yeah. Well, the, gotta... I agree with you. For the record, Mike does say that he's straight. For the right. record. Right. That's what I've been saying. Yeah, and I say I'm not on heroin. <laughs> well, you wouldn't give up your hair. Let's go to let's go to Kansas and talk I, to. Would be, how creepy would, be that, would that be? Watching Artie hand his hair to give me mind. your hair. <laughs> how often does someone say that to you in an argument? Give me your hair. <laughs> Gary in Kansas, you're on the wrap up show. Hey, yeah, I wanted to call and give Artie thumbs up on what he said. I mean, you Thank know, you. you take for instance uh, Mike on the show a while ago, even going as low as talking about Artie's father. I mean, why are people calling in and giving Artie a hard time, regardless if his comments and his opinions right or wrong? I thought he's that, entitled to his opinion. I thought Thank that you. was a cheap shot, actually. Artie. It was horrible, oh. but it was a clever joke. No, no, no. no. Mike, it wasn't really that clever. It was a cheap shot, typical of a gay man argument. Mike definitely came in armed for that argument. He had the film grosses going at you. He made uh, that was hard to figure out. I mean, he, he, I did a lot Artie, of research you did, on that. Your movie didn't beat Garbage Pail Kids. I mean, come on, Garbage. You know how hard it is to beat a kids' movie at the box office. <laughs> DW. Ralph, you have an explanation for us? Yeah. Hey. Hey, yeah. Um, I, I, where I grew up, they, they used that term all the time. Which term? Uh, nigger rigged. Right. And that was like when you, it was especially related to cars for some reason. Like when you, like if your exhaust pipe was falling off and you just like tied it up right. with like, like a piece of wire or something, you go, oh, fuck, dude, you nigger rigged it. God, I never heard of that. And I grew up in some legendary race. But, but, you, grew up, you grew up in Jersey like me. Yeah, I, never, was like I, I a, heard I jury didn't, rigged. I heard jury rigged. I never heard. I don't know the, what that means. What is jury rigged? It's, I don't know what the meaning of it is, but it's a different version it's a, of that. No, 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 jury rig is like, I think, loading a jury with people on your no, side. No, because I've heard of this it's jury rig. Jury rig. I think it's I've heard I've, I've heard Jerry rig, but yeah. I've never heard the N word rig. Maybe that's Jerry Curl, African American rig. Stop that! Stop I do that. I do love though that Stuttering John had the theory that Jerry Jerry rigged was an expansion of Jew rigged. No, well the best Stuttering John <laughs> moment ever is when he casually just said on the show, and I wasn't here yet, but he casually just said on the show that he he bought nigger chasers, and Howard, you all went what? <laughs> and he <laughs> went, I know it's offensive, but that's what they call it. <laughs> <laughs> he thought that was like in the dictionary. He's like, what, what do you do with John? What actually, are you saying? He's like, I don't know. I never changed I don't know. What else do you call him? Actually, he did one better than that. That was a little bit later on down the line. I will never forget. We sent Stuttering John out on the street to interview people during <laughs> the old McMahon. No, to, we sent him out to interview people during the OJ trial to see whether they thought I OJ this. was innocent or not. <laughs> and we were just about done. We were almost done. We said, John, go out on the street and find some black guys and ask them questions. And we were just about to come in, and John just goes, um, you know, sort of off mic, just hold on, and he goes into the colored guy. <laughs> uh, yeah. right. Well, that's up there with one of the hardest times I ever laughed ever in the history of the show is uh, who's the lie detector guy. Ed Torres. Ed Torres. Oh, God. Oh, my God. And I wasn't here yet either. <laughs> Kylie backs in his fucking chair, and Howard goes, ask her if she ever slept with a black guy. And he puts it through his filtered head and just goes, have you ever slept with a colored guy? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> I mean, uh, a, black, uh, a black guy. Why is... 
Oh, okay, yeah, that's a serious question. Why is saying colored people bad? I don't understand because that. It's, because it's not what black people want to be called anymore. Well, so they can change it? Yeah. I mean, but why, know, why, why, why is that offensive? Because they've decided that they don't want to be called that anymore, though. I think they should change the name of the NAACP if you don't yeah, want to be Yeah, I mean, come on. Anymore. Well, that's a long that play, you know that that was dated too. I mean, look for whatever reason. But they formed their own organization and called themselves Colors. I mean, come on. Listen, I, I'll call someone whatever they want me to call them. It's like a name. Some guy who wants to be called Pete, I'll call him Pete. Right. You know, I don't know what the fuck. I mean, for the same reason, why is it no longer um, politically correct to call Asian people Oriental? Right. They, they well, change their mind about what they want to be called. I, I, guess, I guess Chink is out of the question then. Yes, it is. Ralph, hold on for this guy. Jimmy in Nebraska, you're on the wrap up show. Yeah, I kind of think uh, Ralph may be a little more geared than High Pitch Mike. I mean, how many straight guys sit there and come up with a list of how many women? Huh? Hello? 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 Jimmy, you still there? That's... Uh, I didn't hang up on Jimmy, but... That was my that was my special powers. Be careful. <laughs> Ralph has people all over the country. Ralph, you had some weird people on your list, by the way. Like, people that that I never thought were hot to be able to get... And people were never on it. It's like, whoever thought Anna Paquin was hot? <laughs> you yeah, know, and she was a kid. I, I'm, I'm saying she was cute, and then you see her now. She was she, a kid, Ralph. We're I, talking about people who were hot no, as but, adults. But Anna Paquin grew up as an adult, and I've just never thought of Anna Paquin. Me well, what, you what, should. She's in all the X-Men. When I go to Mr. Skin and look for good stuff, I'm not looking for Anna Paquin. I'll tell you who, well, she's a friend of the show, but... Oh. I think Rebecca Romaine kind of got a little heavier, and you know. Oh yeah, she, she, but you know she's actually snapping back. Right, she, she's she, getting she, back. I think yeah. Carmen Electra is starting to hit that wall. Oh, yeah. uh, no, I don't know. No. Did you see the pictures of her in the post lately? She's not looking accurate. You know, you know how I compile this, these lists is you, you have to. You can't just look at them on TV or an airbrush picture. You got to look in the rags and stuff and see them how they really are and that kind of thing. You know? But like Mina Savari is one of those chicks that like some guys thought was cute, but I never knew a lot of guys that thought she was hot. She, but she hit the wall. She has I mean, she's a mess. Now. Now. Ralph, you had one today. Tell, tell me a couple other people on your list because one of them, oh, I know what it was. Christina Applegate, she literally went from hot chick. Artie's right. She was a cute, hot girl. Yeah. Then she got weird looking. Then she was like a hot she chick. Got a, and she is now a soccer mom. I told yeah, you, my, yeah. I told you my, my jerk-off story about Christina Applegate, right? Hey, wait. Hold that. I'm going to tell the right. What, Ralph? Oh, that's right. Uh, just one chick I forgot, too. You know that chick, uh, John, she's on that new show. She used to be on the John Ritter show. And Bobby hey, Smart? No, Kaylee Cuoco. Uh, all oh, right, she was the nah, kid. She was she the kid. So on, not, he uh, lost her looks back on that show. Dude, and you're wrong. Her, and they're putting her on a show where she's supposed to, where she moves in next door to these guys, and she's supposed to be a hot chick. They flip so out hot. over. I uh, I uh, was on a plane with her. Shows a bomb. Shows I was on a, a plane with her. She is so fucking hot in person. It's unbelievable. Ralph is a thousand percent right. You oh, look yeah. at that, and you're like, why are those guys fighting over on yeah, that show? I mean, she's she's not attractive. Ralph, what do you what do you I think mean, of the one on Chuck? I don't. She's okay. She's like a blonde, right? The girl on Chuck is. One of the hottest girls on TV ever in the history boot. of She's television. She's got floppy What's boots. Chuck? Jason Gaffel, the new authority on the hot yeah. women on television. When do you guys have time to watch Chuck? What, what, the fuck is, the or or what is Chuck? 8 o'clock on NBC. It's what is it? It's one another of one of these new season season. bombs. Yeah, it's not a great show, but it's... Well, like, listen, so the Christina Applegate yeah, story, right? She gets, she, she hosted <laughs> Mad TV once. And uh, this was when I thought, I was never that into her. I'm married with Chum, but then she went through her... She was on that show, Jesse, at the time. And my uh, dressing room was right next to the wardrobe department's dressing room. So I don't know. I had a, I was in the stupid take uh, take off a Jeopardy sketch with her. So I had a rehearsal with her for like three hours, and I was fucking real. I don't know. She turned me on, and I rushed up to my dressing room to fucking have myself. <laughs> and uh, and uh, I hear out of the I hear that uh, there's Christina Applegate's voice talking to the wardrobe room. <laughs> Literally, the only thing between me and Christina. Christine Applegate, while I was jerking off to her, was a door that was like two inches wide. And I, I jerked off to her actual voice in the conversation. I beat oh, perfect. It. I beat it into a fucking pillow on my couch in my dressing room while she's going, I don't know if this fits. Well, let me try it. I don't like that pattern. And I'm like going, oh, you don't like that pattern. Oh, dropping loads on that pattern. I mean, literally, it was like, and then I had a wash, and uh, then we did the sketch, and the sketch bombed as well. Did you uh, did you tell her I just had you? <laughs> I, I was, you know, I told everybody hey. who worked there, but uh, it was great. That was fun. All right. Thanks, Ralph. Thank you. Talk to you later. Uh, you brought up dropping loads. Let's talk about Nick Manning. Uh, I did tell her I liked Jesse, though. That was bullshit. That was big bullshit. <laughs> that didn't last too long. Um, Nick Manning, charming, creepy, all the above. What do you think? All the above. I, all the above. I, I find Nick Manning to be unbelievably arrogant. 
yet charming in his arrogance. I just I love listening to him on the show. I think he's a really funny he's guy. Cheap. He's he's creepy and ar and and sh he's he's charming. But he's likable, right? Yeah, no, I like him. I'd like. To, he's a guy you want to hang out with. That's a guy who'll step on a pussy bomb and you'll get hit with some trap. You, you know what makes him like? He's so. He's like. He is so fucking happy. <laughs> he's like the happiest guest we we well, ever. Well, why wouldn't he? Yeah, would you be? Uh, yeah, I guess so. And you're right. He's got nothing to bitch about. He's absolutely right. He doesn't bitch at all. His cock gets worn out from fucking. Yeah, I have that. If you missed uh, Nick, here's a clip of his uh, interview with uh, Howard today. Number one, Teddy. You always see those commercials for, like, Levitra and stuff, and they say, well, if you have an erection for longer than four hours, go see a doctor. If I don't have an erection for longer than four hours, I'll get fired. Wow. You're like terminal in that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Are you kidding? But when you're physically inside a woman and you're going in and out and in and out, I mean, I know how good it feels. I'm a dude. It's almost impossible not to go. Man, out. there's times when I'm fighting it off like everybody else, but, you know, usually my cock is just so worn out from fucking all the time that right. I can pretty much... See, Come you're what sore. I want. You need a break. Also, See, he's got that crazy Chicago accent, right. too. I'll get fired. <laughs> JD comes over to me. He's like, there's the Dick Manning line right there. you got to pull that. Well, everyone was laughing at that line. But uh, Robin and Nick, a special little chemistry going there? What do you think? You know, I would. Th she, did, she didn't shut the door. You know what I mean? She's like, no, I'm not interested. In but if you want to join us with some friends, you're more than welcome to join us. So, like, why would she leave that door open that tiny bit? What explanation is there? Would, is it good? Is it good material for the show on Monday? Is she gonna fuck him? I, mean, uh, what's the deal? I don't know. I think uh, the way Robin has uh, been acting lately, the right combination of uh, liquor, and she might she might go to bed with him. I don't know. That'd be great. Robin usually makes you know pretty wise choices. I don't <laughs> see for whatever reason. I don't see Robin. Like, you know, drinking two glasses of wine loads. fucking Nick Manning. Well, live a little, Rob. David, Ohio, welcome to the wrap-up show. What's up, guys? How you doing? Good. Hey, uh, quick thing. Uh, he was talking about that uh, celebrity that he did. Do you guys think any chance it could be uh, John Ritter's wife? Ex -wi or <laughs> wife? <laughs> Who is she? She's not Amy Asbeck. She wouldn't fit. Yeah, but she's not famous. She's not a movie star. Yeah, he said it was yeah, a film she, she was in... Uh, she was in... Uh, that one movie, uh, Parent Trap. Right. But one movie. As, as, the, as, as out of it as that guy may be, even he's not going to mistake her for an A-list star. Right. Hey, Phelan, All right, one more question. Really thought it was Courtney Love, because when we brought up Courtney Love... But she's said, not an A-list movie star. Yeah. She was but, in one movie. But you can see how he'd think that, though. She's she was in one, one movie. She's a, Golden she's, she's a Golden Globe-nominated actually. Well, Phelan noticed a couple when, of movies. When Courtney Love's name came up, just his reaction seemed right. very, like... Uh, I don't see Courtney Love paying to fuck Nick yeah. Manning. I, I do, that's actually you don't see. I would totally see Courtney Love hiring guys. I, can, I don't know. Yeah. I think she could get her I own. Can, I'm trying. Shut up, Benji John. Yeah. Hey, from one Michigan fan to another, can I have some Carson <laughs> Ribs, brother? Yeah. Uh, no, we don't have any. What are you saying yes for, Teddy? <laughs> you don't? Well, Ann Arbor's a whore, then you fucking diabetes bitch. <laughs> wow. Well, Teddy was right. He is an asshole. No, that's, that's your typical Ohio guy. I have type 2 diabetes. Hey. Sir, I have type 2 diabetes. A type 2 diabetes bitch. Yeah, that's terrible. He hung, he hung up. Call back, Dave. Yeah, well, Dave. What was up with that? I'm talking to him, and he's not there. Um, getting, over, getting back to Nick Manning. Now, you guys had a big night planned for Friday, it sounds like. You were going to meet up with uh, your possible... Potential porn star girl and and oh yeah, and, well, and cross have you called her? No, I just uh, got. She lives in Vegas, so you know I'll be in Vegas in and, about two weeks. And I think Richard was suggesting like what it was like to follow Nick somehow because there was a connection. Oh a my nasty god! Connection I don't there. even want to think about that. <laughs> now he thought Robin. How gnarly! He thought Robin was thirty-eight years old. Legit. Good for her. Yeah, I think that's great. <laughs> Let's go to. <laughs> Todd in Seattle. Todd, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. How Hi. are you doing? Hey, Todd. Hey, I was real, real quickly, I want to talk to Artie, see if, um, regarding his weight issue, if he's ever thought about doing hip hypnotherapy. No, I've never thought about that. I don't like Dude, because I, I didn't even I didn't even think about it myself. My, my wife actually does it, and, I, you know, I travel quite a bit for my work. And I just could not eat right. I could not get motivated to go to the gym. And uh, she's doing about been doing it for about ten years. And she said, "Hey, why don't you try this?" And honest to God, man, it works. That's hard to believe. Yeah, I, I got to say, I did hypnotherapy twice. Once to stop eating did not work at all, and once to quit smoking, and it did work. No, I meant that this guy has a wife. Oh, <laughs> it did or it did not work with the smoking. Worked for the smoking. 
How long did you need to do it for for it to kick in? I went to one. Of, I went to one of those like uh, really cheesy sessions at like a Ramada Inn. We did it that night, and that was a little cigarette I had. Can I? I you know, we, we were so saying it did work. That's what I'm saying. It worked yeah. for smoking. Didn't work for eating. We were talking about what was that Courtney loved? Can you believe Courtney Love would pay for it or, or fuck it? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got a great story about. It. Well, bleep it if you think this is libel or something. I'm already worried. Uh, all right. It. Okay. Get on so, the button, Teddy. I'm Norm, about to be very tentative. And, and all right. Okay. All right. Norm Norm McDonald yeah. did a movie. Uh, did a couple of days on a movie she was in, The People versus Larry Fry. Right. Yeah. He played Michael Richards. That's the movie right. that I think of for her. But she was in a couple other things. But anyway, so. All right, I, I, I'll tell it slowly. Well, and now maybe it does, I don't know. So Norm claims that he was uh, on his way back from the set with her, and she goes, she checks like her answer machine or something, and she stops to go in her trailer, and Norm is going right past her, and she, she Norm says that she said that, hey, uh, this guy was supposed to come by and fuck me, <laughs> and he never showed up. Would you fuck me? And Norm was like, uh, all right. <laughs> and Norm was like, uh, okay, I'll, uh, I just, uh, I got to do something in my trailer. I'll come back and I'll fuck you if you want, you know. And she's like, yeah, because I'm dying to get fucked and this guy was supposed to fuck me. And she wouldn't say anything but that guy. And then Norm went to his trailer and then he, I don't know, he's afraid he might get fired or something. So he just didn't do anything. Yeah, that story's okay. Is yeah, that but, the story? but who were you scared of? Uh... Uh, well, off, Norm or Courtney? No, just saying that Court. I don't know. Is that liable to say Courtney? Okay, here's, said a, that? here's the deal. I'm getting the check. It's, it's, it's Norm's word. Nothing happened. So right. the story's fine. Okay, that's okay. That's yeah. it, that's he, did, he didn't fuck her, but he said she kept saying a guy was supposed to fuck me. <laughs> Jack in Long Island, you're on the wrap up show. <laughs> hey, Jack. Hey, yeah. Hardy, you're such a big fat fucking closet queer. It's unbelievable. Everything you talk about is some other guy getting laid. You think I'm secretly I love you, but you're guy. such a dude. You're such a fucking fat douchebag. It's unfucking believable. Why I mean, but get, why don't you just come out and be like a, a, a homo? Really? You think I'm secretly gay? Is that just the, you're one of those guys? Totally, totally. Arnie, totally. is there something you'd like to tell the audience? Right, you're right. I lied. I'm a gay guy. I love. All right, then guys. get over your fat fucking depression and I know. lose I, the goddamn I, weight and I, get I, off the drugs already. You're right. This you're guy fucking here, hiding I'm, something from like your old past, man. Get this over those, it. This is one of those typical liberals, like the end of that movie, American Beauty, like. <laughs> Like that guy, like that character would really be a gay guy. I mean, Hardy, <laughs> Hardy, you pay for sex. Like, you pay yeah, for sex. With you pay with that was broad. That was the jump show. Off and Christine Nigel, whatever the fucker, is right in the next room. You should be just fucking doing these girls and telling us your stories instead of uh, Norm. You're always talking about Norm, like you're up his ass and what? you want to go out with Nick Manning. I, come on, Hardy, get Who said I want to go out with Nick Manning? <laughs> I didn't say I wanted to go out with Nick Manning. You did. You just did. Me oh, and Brittany Starr and man. Nick and his new girlfriend, Robin. We were going to double date. Yeah. Did you, you hear? You wingman, Artie, because you want to sit next to him and fucking smell his breath or something. Come on, Artie. Get fucking real. You think I want to fuck Nick Manning? I don't even know what the fuck you want to fuck. I mean, you're, <laughs> well, I mean I, Artie, you're, you're a very funny guy, but just oh, get you, fucking sir. real, will you? Come well, on. Get real about what? You're not making any sense. What do you well, think I'm not being real about? What? Why are you hiding behind, like, tons of fucking drugs and, and fat? What is your fucking problem? Get fucking real. You think he's gay? You That's where think, he's hiding behind? You, you, right, you think I do drugs and I'm gay? Fucking, get to a shrink. Uh, find out what the fuck it is that your mother did to you when you were a baby or what the fuck your problem That's is. I don't know. That's out of line. Cut the bullshit already. All right, Jack, thanks for that nice call. Let's go My to... My mother didn't do anything to me as a baby. She blew me when I was old, about 11. <laughs> David, California, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, uh, to, 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 con to, uh, to comment on that last caller, there's no way Artie's gay. He's too fat to be gay and definitely not good-looking enough to be gay. Tell that to Bruce the Lanch. <laughs> yeah, you should hey, see our morning team at out here as far as weight and look. Yeah, goes. hello, pal. <laughs> Most of us are fat and ugly. No, I was just saying, the guys, the guys at out are heavy guys that are gay. <laughs> You, know, you have to be good looking to be gay. God, Gary, I, 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 I don't know what I mean. There are coworkers. I, I, I mean, I don't know. You know, Jesus, I don't know what to say to that. Well, hey, hey, talking talking about yeah, that. I mean, well, the gay guys you fuck are probably hot, but uh, we we got a, at where we work, there's nothing but fat ugly guys. <laughs> No, it's funny. I mean, if, if being if you had to be good looking to be gay, that's ridiculous, right? I mean, Jesus. <laughs> what, else, what, else, what else are you gonna say, Dave? Hey, I was actually the reason I actually called was to talk about Robin. 
actually not uh, Artie or any of that uh, crap. But, you know, Robin, you know, I mean, Gary, you've been with Robin for 25-plus fucking years. How do you stand her? I mean, she just, I mean, <laughs> God, she just drives me insane. Well, you don't know her. I mean, you know, all you know is what you hear on the radio. Robin's cool. I mean, listen, everybody's got their ups and downs, but she's cool. What is there not to stand? She well, breaks I mean, the ball. She breaks balls. We break our balls. It's she's you know she's a fun person. She's too private to be on the show. She doesn't oh, that's open not up. True. Dude, she doesn't she, say she, anything on the show about about her personal life. She anything. never gave the full details about her dad fucking her. Dude, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, sir. What do you? I mean, come Robin's on. Give, Robin's given up a lot. Robin told the story. Listen. Sure. If this was the only story Robin ever told, she told the story how she went out jogging and she shit herself. Well, also, and she, her someone... dad fucked her. Oh, please. please. Come on. Robin tells plenty on this show. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Yes. I mean, sir, why don't you get into entertainment? We'll see how funny you are, how entertaining you clearly are. One last question about Nick Manning for everyone. Would you get one of his uh, ringtones? And if so, what I, would it be? You know, I actually went on the website to see what they were, just to see whether... There was anything that I found amusing, and no, you know, I didn't find anything that worked for me. I'm trying to get into the ringtone business. Uh, Teddy uh, hooked me up with one of his uh, fucking uh, friends who rips people off or something. <laughs> I don't know. What is that going through? <laughs> I'm so... <laughs> <laughs> what I fucking that? say, Will. That's well, it. Well, yeah. <laughs> That's it. Did you hear my top ten things that Freddie's going to fuck up? Freddie. 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 <laughs> Freddie. Year and a half, and he calls you Freddie. <laughs> Let's just end it right here, pal. Come on. Commercial break. <laughs> What's the Freddie top ten list? I no, I had... Freddie. We were fucking around, and the, uh, Ted now, uh, yeah. for some reason, goes to these, like, cards that, like, Letterman has on his desk now, for my reminder. And you chew them up and eat them, it and, looks like. And uh, he, uh, he brought it out. It just looks like one of those Letterman top ten lists, so I... I had a top ten things Teddy will fuck up for me on the road this mm. weekend. The I mean, number ten, we're not on the road. Was that? I have in my left hand, Paul, the top ten things. <laughs> All right, whatever. <laughs> hey, uh, we sent the, uh, you know, we we sent high pitch Mike from the news department over to the Angel Bowl last night. That's oh, yeah. uh, Denise Rich's event. You know, a lot of famous people show up. It's a charity event. Uh, he didn't get too many good people, but it's always just funny to hear his voice. <laughs> Here's a uh, high pitch Mike at the Angel Bowl. He gets a hold of Randy Jackson, the judge from American Idol. Okay. This is funny to hear him asking questions. Just a couple quick questions, please. One. All right. Do you think Paul Abdul belongs in a mental institution? Uh, no. Hell no. Not at all. If she does, the whole world does. What's funny about that is too. I mean, like we're used to his voice now, but imagine like you're at, you know you're at some event and some. <laughs> hey, somebody's like calling. Hey, Mickey Mouse over here. Don King was there. He, he's always positive, you know. He must go home and just, like, be negative, but he's very positive. <laughs> Don, Don, a couple quick questions. Sirius Satellite Radio. How are you, Sirius Satellite Radio? A lot going on in the entertainment world. What do you think about the Ellen DeGeneres situation uh, and the dog? That they took away her dog, the rescue group. They took away uh, Ellen's, dog? Ellen's dog? Why? She gave it to her hairdresser, and the rescue group didn't approve of that. So it's now back in the ocean. <laughs> I just love Ellen, you know what I mean? I think she's just a wonderful person. I mean, everything that I think that she does, she's she's bringing it into light, you know what I mean? I love her. Should should Britney Spears get her kids back? Britney Spears is, is American Arcana. And everyone that wants to castigate, vilify, you know, judge not, yet you be judged. And is O.J. being uh, treated unfairly by uh, white people? You know, O.J. is Americana also. Somehow or another, he gets mixed up. What does that mean? Explain that. High Pitch Mike's still going at it with Artie. I, really? got, a, yeah, I got a lot of emails, mostly everyone just saying they don't like High Pitch Mike and how dare High Pitch Mike make fun of Artie. Uh, and Artie's who is, an icon. Yeah, he's, he's Americana. Americana. No, I mean, not one favorable comment about High Pitch Mike. Yeah, I mean... Let's see. In the same way that High Pitch Mike missed the point of Howard's criticism of Columbia University last month, the comedic value of Artie's nap went right over his empty head. Furthermore, who the fuck does High Pitch Mike think he is talking to Artie like that? If I were Artie, I would have throttled that douchebag. I mean, there were tons and tons of uh, emails about people not liking how High Pitch Mike addresses Artie. And, you know, a lot of Artie fans very upset. Mm. And you I don't want to get those Artie people riled up. And I did show restraint. 
Well, I don't know. You went on the he, Artie went on the wrap up show the other day and was really bashing high pitch Mike and calling him gay again. Well, listen. <laughs> do, do you want to hear his report about me though? I I finally heard that. Yeah, okay, I know. Well, I, I mean, know. Hey, what do you want me to tell you? And now he wrote a song about you. Did I'm you launching that? back. Did you hear the song about you? No, I did not. This is like uh, he was really upset that you napped during the show. I know. Again, it's a uh, hello. Rock a bye -bye. You're addicted to drugs and your comedy blows. You're such a fat pig, it's getting so sad. So climb on the roof and follow your dad. Oh, you Fuck you, fat ass. Oh, wow. that's hard. See, I mean, well, <laughs> my God. Wow. I mean, uh, this kid is riled up. This guy gets my goat. <laughs> wow. Yeah, uh, that was a very cheap shot. Right. Yeah, I mean, oh, I was, I was, I was shocked. I mean, that's really <laughs> dirty. Follow your dad. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's dirty fighting. Yeah. That is. I mean, well, the, uh, I mean that's your sensitive that's spot. That's pulling out all stops. I mean, that's, you know, that's just not cool. I'll release Artie Nation on his fucking apartment. <laughs> Artie Nation is yet growing and growing. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, so on the wrap-up show, I'm just defending myself a little bit. <laughs> All right, and please, what else is in the okay, news? Okay, and finally, a very interesting page 69 from Will and Jason. This past Super Bowl Sunday, while most Americans were taking in football, High Pitch Mike found himself at the movies with Richard Christie's girlfriend watching the movie 27 Dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Jason and Will reveal I that not only anything. did Mike attend the chick flick, but that he also cried during the movie. <laughs> this is now a party. All right, all right, fine. Oh, you know what? That doesn't even deserve anything. Nothing I got to tell be you, said. that's really odd behavior. Mm. Wow. I have another name for it. Well, I don't know about that. Right. But... <laughs> <laughs> right. It would, be, it would be absurd to think he's gay. Yeah, why would you make that leap? <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, listen, that's very nice. I'm sure Richard's and it, girlfriend it, it, needed company. <laughs> and the most insulting part, Richard not even worried. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, Richard, I, I, Richard, toe. It's, it's like I, I think Richard should have been worried that uh, his girlfriend could steal Mike from him. <laughs> <laughs> but obviously, Richard's girlfriend thinking about marriage. Twenty eight dresses. What is that? What is it? I don't even know what the fuck it is. It's some stupid movie about weddings. Oh, it is. Oh, my God. Hey, hey, Mike, you're on the air. Hey, now. Hey. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, is Bubba getting invited to your wedding? Hey, you see, Robin told me not to talk about this anymore. It was good advice yes. about the wedding and all that stuff. And But, yeah, Bubba's name came up uh, when we were sitting there, and I said, I would like to have Bubba there. I like Bubba, but, Jesus, this thing's gotten so out of control, like... Because everyone's going to be so insulted not being at the wedding. I said to Beth, I'm almost ready just to, to let's just go get married somewhere. And, you know, the two of us are with Fred that, it's on the safe, fucking beach. Easy. I got well, over you it. Get, you'll, get, you'll get Robin mad at yeah, you. Yeah, right? I got over it, though. Can, yeah. I take, can I take some pressure <laughs> off you? Well, I'm flattered, and I would love to be there, and I'm so appreciative. It, it wouldn't bug me if you if you took... oh, Shut up, Artie. Artie, you're, you're not an a asshole. problem what? to him. You don't, really? you don't solve anything by saying you don't want to go. Well, let's Artie go. Wanted, that's Artie wanting to hear how yeah, I yeah. love him. No, 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 it ain't. No, yes, it ain't. It and it, it doesn't solve any problems shame. for it's him. It's two more spots. I'm going oh, to get married. Do you want to, you're telling me you don't want to be at my wedding? Yes, I do want to be at your wedding. All right, so then shut up. What's wrong with you? But you're sitting here lamenting about it every day. It's not you. I like Bubba. I, I want to invite Bubba. Some shrinks might say this is you wanting everyone to say how much they want to be at your wedding. <laughs> hey, Mike, honestly, high pitch, Mike. I mean, Jesus. I got to tell you something. I've never bought into this whole rap of Artie, like you're gay and all this. So you, you have an affliction where your voice is high. Big right. deal. And I'm the only one who thinks that. Uh, yeah. And, and I'll tell you something. Even when, like, when you were at Disney World with the red shirt and all that. <laughs> I okay, first of all, first of all, I'm going to correct you on that because he says it once on the wrap up show. Right. And it automatically becomes fat. No, it, no, no one thinks that, Mike. I and don't I think, hey, listen, by the I, way, I swear to you, I would never ever think that you exhibit any kind of gay behavior. I, you know, I don't care what. Again, I don't care what anybody thinks about me. Right. I come in here to to tell you what happened. The truth. I go to see the movie with Richard's girlfriend. Not that. I, I tell her. As we leave, I said, when we get to your place, because we're going to see the Super Bowl, I said, tell Richard I cried. I thought it'd be a funny joke. He gets to the Super Bowl party, 
tells everybody. <laughs> and now it's automatically fact. Well, it's a funny joke. It is funny. It. We're right. laughing. So, so, great writing. You didn't miss the Super Bowl. You Kind of like Beer League. Yeah. No. 400,000. It's way funnier than Beer League. Wait a second. So the point you're making is you did watch the Super Bowl. I did watch the Super Bowl and oh. I saw the movie. No big deal. You know. Okay, fine. Well, so, okay. They treated me to breakfast that morning. I wasn't going to argue about what movie we saw. I had already seen Cloverfield. Whatever. What kind of? Why and I hardly know his girlfriend. I said, "Let me hang out with her." You know, she's a nice girl. Oh, yeah, two Mike's girls. full of shit. He's made. He's come up you with did, this You were in the movie with us. Get her on the phone, and you'll see the truth. She, no, she would not lie to me. Like he cried, and now he's trying to deflect it by saying, "Oh, we had this plan to make it all up." <laughs> did he miss the Super Bowl to go watch a, 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 a chick flick? No, we watched the movie before. then. The Super Bowl. Right, so. I didn't go to. I didn't want to see this movie. It's a chick. I went to see Cloverfield while they saw. And it. as long as well, you, you you guys don't believe me if I correct that truth. But can I correct one truth that he said a few weeks ago? Well, yes. you don't want to see the Giants beat the Boston false. Patriots. I can, at the beginning of the year. I told myself, you know what, forget Artie, I'm not going to argue with him anymore, I don't care. Please do. A couple days into the new year, he comes in here and tells you a story at the Christmas party. that I came up to him and I said, oh, I'm sorry, everything I say on air is fake. I'm just doing it for airtime bullshit. You said, what, you, Christmas, did you not come at, up to me and say, At the uh, Christmas party, I was drunk. Will, Will knows for a fact I was drunk. <laughs> right. That you came fun. over to our table. Uh, I put my hand on your shoulder and I said, Artie. I love you, man. Happy holidays. Okay. Well, I mean, whatever. It, it, no, but there was more to it than that. But the general thing was you extended a hand to me and said... And you called me like, pompous and arrogant. You when know, did I you say wanna, that? You At the know. Christmas party? I was creeped out that you were touching Do you want to know what pompous is? <laughs> you walking into your 40th birthday and coming up to a table of Lisa, me, J.D., and Sal right. and telling us, oh, I just saw Gary Delabate's check. Who do you think makes more money, me or Gary? <laughs> All right. Let's not get this into from the guy. No, yeah, let's not get into let's it. Let's not Why get not? into that subject because it's a dead subject. It's a, I never saw Gary. You shouldn't show. be talking about people's salaries. Number one, I and two, talk about anybody's salary. The people that hardly make any money as it is. We don't. We don't care who makes more money. You don't need to brag about how much money you make. I'm not bragging about it. What is going on around? Nothing. Here? He's talking about something. Yeah, he doesn't happened. want to bring it up because he did something unethical. You, uh, you know, you should no, 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 no. It was It was totally different than how you're putting it. Oh, so, how was it? it? Well, it was just different. And secondly, don't try to extend your arm to me in any way uh, at I'm the not, Christmas I'm not, party. I'm not trying to extend it. I was drunk. Don't extend I was kidding your, with your you. Your faggot drunk arm to me. <laughs> that usually that that, that would probably, was probably just on a cock. Oh. Because oh. I don't want cock on my back. Our cock is all over your hand and face and lips. You want to know what? You know what? The inner you want to end the faggot shit? You want to end the faggot shit? Get your sister in here and I'll fuck her right on this couch, yeah. asshole. All right, well, listen, let me tell you something. Wow. That's fine wow. if you made more money. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying you would fuck Artie's sister on right the show here. to prove. <laughs> Dude, you, can never, you, can not, you can never get hard for a girl. You can never get hard for a girl. Now, I won't take that. Stacey Lang is a friend of mine. He's reaching. He's reaching. He's reaching. I do not believe. But will he one... fuck a girl in front of us? I don't will think he can get hard. Him? He couldn't get hard for any girl we brought in here. Artie, what do you do that? Artie's saying this to upset you. This guy's 100% heterosexual. He can prove it. Okay, well, he is. It. He's not gay. Uh, I don't, When's the last girl you fucked? Uh, I appreciate what When's you're doing, but I, you fuck? no jerk off because you just fucking. I've said it on the, the air years and ago. And people asshole. came to me in this organization and said, "Don't call him gay anymore because we think he's gay." <laughs> and you're hitting a fucking spot. And I said, "Okay, fine." But I don't give a fuck anymore. Why are we saying he's gay? Because he has a high voice. Because he's a cock sucking. Because home. I put his movie When's down repeatedly. No, 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 no. A lot of straight people. A lot of straight people hate my movie. He spent four years working on the piece of shit movie. You know. He, it comes out, it flops, he's embarrassed by it, and I point it out. I'm the only one who doesn't kiss his ass around here, and I point out that the movie sucked, and all of a sudden I'm the fag. Listen, no, 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 oh, you're so the fag words, because you have sex with guys. You had, you criticized his movie, so therefore he's calling you a fag. Basically. No. I mean, I guess I'm I I I calling you a fag because you're, you're I a guess fag. I guess I'm a lot of the movie reviewers in this country fags, too. Then. Richard Roper's a fag? Thumbs up? Have you seen that? Let Available on DVD you, widescreen, Artie, by the way. Beer what is your animosity toward Mike? I don't have any. He starts it. He came in here and started with me. But why Lisa, did a, Lisa did a story Criticize about him going work. to see 27 Dresses, right? Yes. Did I say anything? He comes in here and he goes, let me straighten something out with Artie. He started it. Play the fucking tape. So the little faggot's going to get it back. Oh, yeah, because anything you say on here, it becomes fact. No, it doesn't. 
No, it, I wish it did, because people would believe you're a fucking flaming homo. And you are a flaming homo, and I hope you get well, aged soon. You, you want to talk about I hope you facts? get aged you soon. I hope your lover takes the rubber off tonight and fucks you in his ass with an a his age-ridden cock. And you come in here tomorrow with fucking sores on your face. Why are you getting 40 so angry? fucking pounds. What is going on? What is you, know going what? On, you know what, Howard, Howard. Howard, what's going on? Howard, what's going on? Fuck you. What do I want to say something to him? No, let me, what's going on? Let why me leave. So let why me leave before I get a CD thrown in my face. Let me leave before I get a CD thrown in my face. It ain't going to be a CD. It's going to be my fucking fist in your face. All right, get out of here. Because I'm a gay basher. I'm a gay basher, and I'll bash your gay head. What? What is going on? Don't catch AIDS. What happened? <laughs> I missed How did he go for he, he How it always misses it. I did. Yeah, what I missed happened? it. I really did. <laughs> I what didn't just happened? See it. I just knew Artie was like real really venomous. Well, oh, he wasn't venomous, Robin. Fuck you, you fucking skinny bitch. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> what has just happened here? Oh my god. You, you know what happens? What? Is, is Mike, Howard, you're gonna be Mike, forced to Mike, open your eyes one day Mike, and fire me. Mike tries to get in his face and keep up with him, which number one is a big mistake. <laughs> was it the day? Uh, oh, was, no, uh, the, yeah. the, the sister. Stuff. I know. He nothing was, was venomous today. No, 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 no. But, but he also, like, Mike acts like he has no fear towards Artie. And I don't know how smart a strategy that but is. Wait a second, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I always Let Howard Mike talk. He's always right all the time. Throwing blanks. <laughs> I'm, not, no, I'm, not, I'm not defending. I, I just don't know how Why are you so mean to Benji? <laughs> I'm not mean to Benji. I'm teaching Benji. But you're gonna are get, you teaching Benji? Are you going to honor me with your time now? I think so. I think I'm going to have to start teaching you. <laughs> I just wanted to be with you. Then tell Lisa, Mike. then start running this organization better and tell Lisa not to do a story about Mike when I'm in the fucking room. So Mike's going to come in here. He takes the bait, comes in, says something to me, totally starts with me, and then I'm supposed to sit here like a jerk. No, off. no, no. You were laughing at Mike calling him gay because he went to the movies. Right. Right, to as we all right. were. Why would Lisa what? do that story? Because none of us find it funny. No, but he, you did. You started it by calling the guy gay. You're making him feel. No, if he's Howard, not... I swear to you, please listen to the tape. I did not. You did not. What did I, you say? I think Mike did take the first shot, but I don't remember what it was. I did not. I didn't say anything. Now you guys really hate each other. Well, he hates me for some reason. But then you you really shoot back at him. You you love Robin, him. Robin, what do you want me to do? Sit here and take it from him? No. Well, he yeah. does have a point. Uh, Mike started criticizing uh, 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 beer league. Uh, yeah. Beer league. Yeah. Yeah. Really all that, what, what he said, first of all, what he said about my sister is is totally vicious, and it's something that a coward would say. And you know what? I, I, I honestly. Well, not you both sit here were throwing that? it around pretty heavy. Uh, okay, fine. You both were throwing it around heavy. You got to admit. You got to admit. Uh, uh, well, I, I think what I'm saying is based in truth. That's the difference. That's why it hurts. Uh, me. Yeah, I don't think you believe that. I really don't. Yeah. <laughs> I really don't think you believe. You don't that. think I believe he's gay? Yeah. yeah. I don't. I think you're trying. A lot of people I think are gay that you probably fucking think. Of. Uh, What's going on over here? Howard, if, 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 <laughs> this is a crazy show. Let the caller talk. I'm sure he'll fix her. And all the producers in Hollywood hear that. They're not going to want to hire you for anything. They don't want to hire me anyway, dude. First of all, everybody in here is afraid to give anybody a compliment. They liked Beer League when it came out. These these guy this guy has to come in here. Uh, you, you know what? No other. I'm guaranteeing no fag like beer league. We make fun of fags in it. Whoa, whoa, whoa! You, you're being, Are you it's... supposed to be using that word? Yeah, I mean every minute with fag. I, I haven't were, done it yet. You're cutting a public service announcement. Well, I didn't cut that yet, and if they're going to make it retroactive, I might owe them about eight grand. Right. Now. <laughs> right. But right. Uh, I haven't cut the public service announcement. Yet. <laughs> Can you mandate something, please? I heard Gary say uh, yesterday on the Howard 100 News that he was uh, an ambassador to pussy, and it sounded so creepy when he said the word pussy. Like, hey, oh, I love you, pussy. I mean, it was fucking disgusting, man. Can you tell him not to use that word? He's the ambassador of pussy? Uh, I know I know what this guy's talking about. I, I didn't hear that, but it's true. Gary gets creepy when he starts using those dirty words and tries to... <laughs> That's the last thing he says is, I guess we're the ambassadors of pussy. And it was like, what? No. If I was a pussy, I would not feel welcomed by you at all, Gary. <laughs> Thanks for your ambassadorship, but no thank you. Yeah, by the way, about my wedding, which is what I was trying to talk about. <laughs> oh, yeah. I would have uh, Bob at my wedding, yeah. Now, I... Go ahead. And I, and I like Brent a lot, but I don't know if I can go that deep on it. That's what I was going to ask you. Does that mean the whole Bubba crew or just Bubba? Brent would only leave during the reception. Right. And go, go watch. watch a football game. Yeah. Maybe you should invite him out. I just want to dinner plate. I don't know. I don't know really how to break down the list.
I didn't think they were going to get invited. Bubba speculated about how small it was going to be. And, and, they, and all the other guys said, you'll probably get invited, but none of us will. Oh, so they're expecting it. Yeah. See, this is why I don't even want to have this. Don't feel bad about not inviting him. All right. All right. Thanks, Mike. But do you think Bubba would feel alone uh, without somebody from his crew? He's got his wife. Yeah, he's got, he's got Heather. That'll he's got fun. 400 pounds of fat he's tugging around. <laughs> I never feel lonely when I'm fat. Gee, I, I got uncomfortable during that argument. That was very uncomfortable. I, I really got did. very I comfortable. Bad. I, I felt got very bad for both of you. Well, I mean, look, he said some awful things, and I said the some minute, awful things. The minute he waved the sister flag, it's like, Artie is very protective and loving of his sister, and, and I admire yeah, well, But it's like, you know what, Fred, and I appreciate you saying that, right. but a guy like him saying he's going to fuck, he's not going to fuck no, any that's, girl. That's he just, couldn't get hard for a girl. You know what? Uh, it's like, so it's based on... Why don't you guys make why up? Why don't you guys make up? I want a list of the, I want a list of the chick... He, he fucked the that. list of a chick. Yeah, right, there's listen, probably a chick. The guy's not a lady. He hasn't gotten a lot of girls, right. but he probably likes. Not a ladies' girl. man. There's only one other option. Uh, come on, <laughs> come on, animals. Come on. What are you doing? Yeah, he might. I I wouldn't put a bind. Bestiality. Come on. And uh, let him sue me if he thinks everything I say is fact. No. I think you're a fag, Mike, and uh, I'll say it to, uh, to your lawyer. <laughs> I think you fucked. You're allowed to think. You're allowed to think somebody is gay. Oh, okay, good. Well, I think it's, it's just not, a theory. It's not a legal question. It's just, I'd like to see my people getting along here. Let me uh, ask one other. Well, thing. I never have to see him. Do you really think it's it's a, a fair fight to do what to you for you to physically threaten no, no, Mike? No. I didn't physically threaten. Him. Well, you know, you said I'll, I'll use my uh, fist. fist. Right. If you said yeah. something, no. And well, no. Maybe it isn't. Maybe he don't, like a lot of fags know karate. <laughs> Honestly, I'm getting uncomfortable with this uh, fag stuff. Uh, oh my! God. And he's also uh, uh, Hispanic. I mean, listen, what? Hispanic well, fag have a knife. That's true. Yeah, they could have a knife. Yeah. I mean, come on, this is getting silly. This is getting. Silly. I don't know. I'm very self-destructive with this. All right. I'm all going right. through a lot of crazy shit. Right, calm down. <laughs> when aren't you going through crazy? See, shit? Benj, any other organization, we'd both be fired. <laughs> we have good jobs. Someone call in about the guy, Father. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, do you, uh, I asked the I don't know why the fuck that guy asked that question. That was out of the blue. Take a little, take a little break. We'll all come down. Take a break. Take a break. All right. Oh, I'll do whatever you want. We'll nice let's to have know some that fun. Danny Aiello uh, improvised. Every that time you inhale, <laughs> is this the Holy Show? Filling your <laughs> no, body no, with total peace and tranquility. Oh, okay, we got Woodfred's money coming up. We have Johnny Fairplay coming <laughs> in. Uh, Obviously, we can't talk to each other. Let's wow. talk to someone else. Well, you guys can talk. I look. I look. You know what? Honestly, I. You know what I'm learning about myself, and maybe I am not that refined. <laughs> no, I, I mean, I, the sound thing. I was I was out of line. I went to another level that was unprofessional. I threw something. I, I have Mike, to ask this question. I don't know. I, don't I know, know you're trying to set your list for the wedding. Now, will high pitch Mike be invited to the wedding if already goes? No, listen. I wasn't really. Uh, I told you I'm having. Was Mike going one, to the wedding? I don't want right. to. I'm taking Robin's advice. I don't want to talk about this wedding. But the fact of the matter is. No, I was not planning on going. I, I can't invite everybody here. Right. It's, if I had a wedding, it, it would be, I told you, I'm going to do something with my family. It's be Grand Central would, Station. And then I'm going to do something with a couple of my friends. And, uh, you know, that would be some people from here. But it's not going to be everybody from here. And, and this is ridiculous. The only way I pitch Mike's going is if Howard invites his boyfriend. Ah, uh, come on. Oh. Kurt, you're on the air. <laughs> hey, uh, hey, hi, hi, Howard. Hi. First time caller. Artie, I just want to make a comment. You are completely right. High pitch was an asshole. And yeah, he went far with the sister thing, but he keeps pushing the envelope. You got to leave Artie alone. All right. Well, I, I, fair enough. I'm, that's not well, my But, point. Howard, after you said that about my sister, after you said that about uh, uh, something I did work hard on, after you, do you want, is the proper response for me, why am I here even? I have a microphone. What, what, you want me to not say anything? No, no, no. I felt bad that you two, guys, you two guys were escalating right. to it a did. whole new level. It did. It and I was trying to step in and bring some uh, clarity well, to the situation. I apologize for, I was passionate and loud. And loud. <laughs> All right. I was. All right, I'm, well, I'm, I'm just happy to be a skinny bitch. I was just trying to. <laughs> I was just, repeating Benji's. I was trying. A skinny bitch with big tits. <laughs> I was trying to put some water on a fire. That's and, all. And instead, it was oil. <laughs> it turned out to be gas. It turned out to be oil, but I tried. All right, thank and you. And Robin, Kurt. when I think of you, the thank word you "bitch" is the oh, farthest thing from my mind. Yeah, what is it, Kurt? One more thing. Easiest way for the wedding: do a destination wedding. Invite your family. I would Invite never do a destination wedding. Howard is anti that philosophically, Let me tell you and I happen to agree with him. Uh, yeah, this idea of saying to people. I'm getting married in Europe. 
I want you to fly over and come mm. there. It's as good as saying, don't come to my wedding. Right. Well, uh, make it easy. This is going uh, out to the islands. Going uh, on no, the shut up. Take it easy, dude. I, What's I, a listen, destination way? <laughs> yeah, right, just go down to the islands. Like, like people have the time to, to, to fly, because I'm so fucking important, they're going to fly for four or five hours. I mean, See, you actually are important enough to people. I mean, most yeah. people would think that, but and you would never Wrong. think that. But when, you know, I get invited to these destination weddings, and I want to take the person and shake them and say, "You don't want me at your wedding. How dare you?" <laughs> yeah, you want a gift after I spend all that money getting to your wedding? Well, do, uh, what, how do you feel about Jason's destination bachelor party? In a way, it's a lot of his good friends. I'm sure cannot go to. Right, Eric, uh, you're on the air. Yeah, I just wanted to clear something up. Um, Artie is allowed, is not allowed to say faggot, but he is allowed to say fucking AIDS-ridden faggot. That's fine. <laughs> well, that's why, that's why I tried to put some water on the situation, in all fairness. I, I, I don't know, how, you know, in this day and age, Artie, you don't want to, you know, if someone will come back and say, yeah, AIDS-ridden faggot, and you're going to say, you know, gee, that was harsh. And every cupcake... My cupcake. Every my... bite fights AIDS. We've raised a lot of money. I don't mean about my. I'm talking You're so about. You're so duplicitous. I am. I'm, I'm, I com I'm complicated. I don't really feel that you feel that way. <laughs> he about, does. About gay I people. No, I don't want anybody but sick. But, I, don't want, but, but I, I just was. Try he was being venomous, person, and he was. You know. No, I know. But if a gay person tuned in and heard that, they I, would I, think I, you, you know, like if like if a, a black person called in and said, you know what, you're a fucking filthy nigger, or you're or you're a filthy kike. Right. And people would not uh, appreciate that. So that's why I was right. I was trying to say, guys, you're right. Especially calm yeah, down. Yeah. The, not that one guy is right over the other. I don't know. I don't know what the hell you two are up to with that. I'm talking about the the rhetoric was getting heavy. Wow. And let's face it, beer the combination of beer league sucking and me being anti-gay is not helping in this business at all. <laughs> well, I was thinking of that. I was no, thinking. I, I know. I don't want anybody sick. I don't hate anybody. I just uh, he got me fucking very mad, and that's it. I I don't. Like, I don't play well with others. <laughs> All right. Very good. All right, listen, we got to take a break. Come on, come on. We got to take a break. This is getting silly. I know. I got to. It's go an down. hour and twenty three minutes. Everybody, calm I'm down. Yelling. This is Great. now a party. I got to go to boot camp. Splash some water on your face and put wow. some hydrocortisone on there. And see if you can calm down. We'll be back right after this. <laughs> Tensions running high on this Thursday show. Um, lots of arguments to talk about. Benji's asking Howard why he feels obligated to give him such a hard time. We'll get into that. Uh, Tim, the r former wrestler, fails to win Winfred's money, although they both answered of for the Duke Earl question. We'll get into that. Gary Garber comes in. We'll ask Gary why. Johnny Fairplay states his case. Uh, Howard's aggravated by his wedding plans. Will doesn't flush the toilet here. <laughs> Rob doesn't mind being called a skinny bitch. But we should start off with Artie and High Pitch Mike because that was the big fight and sort of carried through. Did it go away after that break, or do you think it well, lingered throughout the throughout the show? It depends on what, how you define lingered. I could tell you that Artie Artie had a great line during the break. He goes, "God, he goes, I had you know, I guess my buttons can be pushed." He goes, "I had buttons I didn't know could be pushed till I got on the show." So Artie was clearly angry. But, you know, i got to say something in defense of Mike, and I'm not taking a uh, shot at Artie. If you call a guy a homo, all bets are off. Do you follow what I'm saying? Like, once you've, once you've taken a shot at a guy's manhood, your sister, your mother, your father, everything's, you know, within reason. I mean, you've now, you've opened the door. Now, Artie didn't start that fight. Right. Mike started that fight. But once you go for faggot... You know, hey, who fights fair? We we should get Mike down here and let him speak for himself on that. But he, I mean, that this started with the page sixty nine. Is Jace here? This started with the page sixty nine story about Mike crying during the movie Twenty Seven Dresses, and which Mike now denies. I know Richard said that was true. And you know, I know why celebrities hate the tabloids now because I don't give a shit whether the story is true or not. In my mind, Mike's sitting in a movie theater with Kleenex, <laughs> watching the end of the movie, well, Mike his himself eyes planted the story. That's what way. he says. Oh, it was a setup? Well, yeah. he claims, yeah. So so he has to take a little bit of fault for it. But why would yeah. he plant the story that he knows is going to go exactly the way it went? He claims he thought it would be funny if he came back uh, to the Super Bowl party and told everyone he cried at the movie. I don't know why he thought that would That funny. would be like me saying, it would be really funny if I went back to the Super Bowl party and tell everyone I just sucked a dick. Well, 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 yeah, well, Captain, and Richard's girlfriend denies that. Well, totally. Cap, well, Captain Under the Bus, Jim McClure, was there, actually. Jim, what happened? He came to my house and was, every, was with Richard and Kristen, Richard's girlfriend, and told the whole story. Kristen told the whole story about after the movie. Mike's eyes were welling up, and there's actually tears coming down his face. <laughs> and Mike just sat there and kind of laughed and literally... 
Will is there, and you know, if you tell Will you just cried at the movies, you might as well just, like, put a kick-me sign on your back. <laughs> and after about three hours of everybody making fun of I mean, everything that came up through the rest of the day, it was, oh, well, but at least you're not a fag like Mike crying at the movies. <laughs> so by the end of the night, he started saying, it's really not true. It, it was just a setup. Uh... So I, I really don't know if, I know Mike likes to, Mike did actually try and work a setup like that with my girlfriend once before to try and make it, make me feel bad about teasing him, so. I don't know if this is Mike uh, Morales coma or if... <laughs> I, I think the bigger issue we need to discuss is how Richard is totally comfortable letting his girlfriend go out to the movies with Mike. What that, yeah, that's true. So page 69 standbys their story. Mike, I'm glad you're here. Let me start with the page 69, first of all. <gasps> it's hilarious. It's perfect for this show. Oh, I, yeah. I did go to see the chick flick. You know, big deal, whatever. Make fun of that. I don't care. Yeah. You want to know what kind of movie I cried in? Sure. Not this one. What, which oh, one? Last movie I cried in? It's White Fang. My little notice. Let all these wannabe comedians get their jokes. Okay, ready? Step up. Hotel Rwanda. When I when I saw you know close to a million people being hacked to death with machetes. Well, no, shut up. <laughs> Michael's very racist. The last movie I cried in was Hotel Rwanda. What other movie? What in this fucking Twenty Seven Dresses movie? Wait, hold on. It was hold a on. stupid Wait, movie. Wait, hold on. How come you didn't make me cry? How come you didn't tell Hillary Clinton that you want people to save the dresses? Mike, no one in this room <laughs> knows what in Twenty Seven Dresses will make them cry because no man in this room has seen it except okay, you. Okay, that's that's the fun of this show. That's the fun of page. So, 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 so I mean, I wouldn't go see that. movie. But you know what? Even Gary, uh, I, I really respect you. I've always looked up to you. Yeah. But even when I went to your office. This morning and said, "Can I go in there and dispute this?" You rolled your eyes like it's automatic fact because Will or Jason said it. No, I didn't. No, no, I didn't know. I didn't say it was automatic. I was no, trying no, to but I got it. the vibe from you. It's just like, oh, yeah, why are you going to dispute but, it? Of Mike, I love you. Don't, don't read my vibe. Mike, I'll, I'll what, tell you how I feel. Right, whether, right. whether uh, I don't think it's a, if you cried, I don't even think. I don't no, think he cried. Be, so if, okay, I don't, I don't even want to go into it. And you're the one who said you cried. And he still won't admit that. If you cried, I don't think it's a big deal. I'll argue with anybody on here, but Benji. Shut up a second. If you cried, I don't think it's a big deal or not. I really don't. But the, but you can't be that surprised it was reported because you're you're claiming that you're the one that told people it's you my did own it. fault. It's yeah. absolutely this is you know the the boy crying wolf. It's, it's, I told his girlfriend. I said I said you know what when we get to your house tell Richard I cried. Let's see what he does. And, what, Mike, and then is, sure enough Richard goes and tells everybody. Mike is Hotel Rwanda the only other movie you cried at that I can that I can think of. You know, I mean. Okay, let's all talk about what movies we've cried at. Jungle Book. Um. Let's see. <laughs> the greatest game. I can't even. Uh, You've never cried at a movie? I, I don't think well, so. I got choked up a little bit at the end of Rudy. I'll admit that. Oh, right. Yeah. You know what? Are you serious? Yeah, I, I, the movie that makes. Uh, Chris Rock and I have the same movie. I read it in Rolling Stone. It's a movie with Michael Keaton called My Life. Have you ever seen that oh, movie? Oh, God. Yeah, there's a part of that movie that makes me cry. That's just brutal. It's not a movie, but the, the last episode of Wonder Years, where the narrator says, like, the next year, like, Kevin came back. And or ten years later, Kevin came back, and Winnie met him at the airport with another girl, right. with another husband, with her husband, and that his dad had yeah, died. Yeah, that yeah, that, I definitely cried at that. JD, I'll say a radio flyer. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no, I, I'm sorry, I started to laugh. I thought you meant radio. No, <laughs> <laughs> radio flyer. Okay, okay. okay. I, 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 that I, I laugh at black retards. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I'm joking. Stop it, Jace. Just any time I watch an old old, old home movie. <laughs> Usually brings tears to my eyes. Uh, of your I don't own. know. No, no uh, like a uh, you theatrical release. I know when Jason starts crying, that Superman song. Yeah, that's he true. said he gets choked up. I get when choked. He hears that. I'm Some more th- than a bird, I'm more than a plane. Yeah. That one. Sometimes when I hear the five for fighting song. Mike, does this right. stir? Yeah. Does this stir any memories? Any of those? Yeah. Any of these movies? Yeah. You know what the theme of these I, movies I, are? They're number, sports related and manly. Number one, I haven't seen half these movies. I don't go to the movies very often. I'm not I'm, big into yeah. Hollywood films. Why don't you just rent them and watch them on your large screen TV? I could do that. Mike, just a minute, you. You cried? You to told movie, people you cried? I, what's I'm, your problem? I'm not here to argue whether or not I cried because you know what? No so matter what's how, the problem? I'll be blue in the face until... You'll until never be blue in the, in the face. face. You're red in the face. I know. And you know what's funny about this page 69? I haven't even told Will this yet. Um, I edit their page 69. You know, sometimes if they mess up a word or something, I'll edit that out. It's, I have to apologize to the listeners today when they hear it because you can hardly hear Will... Over this guy's breathing. He's breathing so heavy into the microphone. He's got that already fat weed right, thing right. going. Let's, I want to move ahead because we, we, we discussed what? this. and it's, Whether you cried or not, we'll leave that up in the air. But let's get to the, the bigger issue today. You and Artie, up until this morning, where were you guys as friends? We've never been friends. You know, he, he never forgave you for the last argument. He does this thing with everybody that, off, you know, he'll say shit about you. You're a hack. Your kids yeah. are fags. And then, oh, I'm just kidding, later on. I've never been on good terms with him. You know, 
sure, I push his buttons and he pushes mine, and that's where it stands. You know, I've never, he calls me a phony. I've never asked him to go see a show, but he did Carnegie Hall. You know, I wasted 100 bucks to go see that. Why was it a waste? Because it's the same as it's the whiskey talk, and it's the same act. A few new jokes. Was today a different level? Yeah, I'd say so, because I, I, it was shitty that I went after his sister. His sister's probably a, a wonderful woman. I had, I had no right to do it, but you know what? He pushed my buttons, and I, that's where I had to go. Well, were, you ever, you? Were, were you ever in fear for yourself physically? Because I, could, Artie? I looked at the monitor. He wanted to beat the shit out of you. Well, Does anybody what, doubt that? No. Yeah. Artie wanted to get up and kick his no. ass. That's, that's why I told serious. Howard. I put my headphones down. I said, I'm going to get out of here because something's going to be thrown at me. But you, you, left, you left sort of angrily, too. It wasn't like you left out of fear. You left in anger. In, <laughs> in fear and anger. Yeah, both. Well, my, me, with Artie, you always seem to like go right for the jugular. You know, I mean, you don't like once you go in there, you don't pussyfoot around. You're just bang. he doesn't back down no. either. No. You, well, you, you know, you know what I think Artie does, what? and you can comment on my sexuality, you know, till the cows come home. I don't care. But when Artie says fag, die of AIDS, this and that, forget the fact that Carrie's brother died of AIDS. I think it's horrible that he even talks like that on this show. But he brings Howard's show, you know, thirty years of greatness down to the level of Imus. In my opinion, by saying you know he says the N word here and there, it's it's not really Michael. The show. Are you the same guy that went on the intern show and said you never vote for a black president? And are you going to tell? Are you going to call Artie a racist? Are you ahead. seriously going to? Are you seriously going to go down that road? And this is what Jason did with the Artie Richard and South fight. He no, tried to, he you, tries to hype the shit up by lying. Did that happen? What Michael? I said on the intern show is I'm not voting for Barack, and I don't think America will vote for a black president. Go pull the tape, Jason. I will. And when you're done logging, go pull the tape because you're putting words in my mouth. But hold on a second. I'm not voting for Barack, and I don't think America will. But why aren't you voting for Barack? I'm asking. You know know I'm from Texas, right? I didn't know that. Oh, okay. I thought you did. Uh, A few years ago in Texas, what do a bunch of white rednecks do? Drag a black guy behind their truck, decapitate him. I don't think America, you know, the Midwest, is going to vote. For Barack, not number one, not knowing where he stands on all the issues because he keeps flipping. But you see, the primary numbers are they're virtually in a dead heat. What does he flip flop on, Michael? They're almost equal. You're right. Hey, Michael, what does he flip flop on? I'm not down here for a party. Yeah, let's not get into politics. Po- 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 hey, hey, but, but you've clearly said racist remarks right. to Robin. That's what I was going to say. To me, already crossed the line today. It's all words, and that's why, uh, to me, uh, that's why Howard ended the argument. It wasn't about like got too vicious in words. It was Howard was worried about. Physical violence. Oh, I agree. Which I think is horrible. I love Artie so much, but but it's it's just it, it to me it's just it's just like a horrible thing that we should be allowed to fully argue on the show without worrying about getting beat up. Well, this is a lot like Survivor. We told everyone. Well, if you piss if, somebody off it, bad enough, they're going to kick your ass. Right. right. But, but, that, but everybody it, knows. It really ruins the whole. It ruins the whole environment of the show. It's I disagree. Interesting as hell to see a guy take his fist and about to hit somebody. But it ruins it. It ruins it. it ruins a lot. It ru- yeah. What it's does it ruin? It ruins what the, it should be. This no, 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 no. I disagree. I think that we're doing. We, when we say that we're doing reality television or reality show, that's the reality. Right. You know, you Steve can't Langford, sense the reality. Steve Langford and I had this discussion yesterday in the newsroom. We said this is so unlike any other workplace in America because you know what? There's tons of feuds. There's tons of shit going on, but you don't hear it. You people gossip behind each other's back here. It comes out on the air, and then you have to deal with it afterwards. But that's why it's like every workplace right. in America. All this is going. I say it all the time. All of this is going on. If we all worked at General Motors, people would be goofing on you behind your back, whether you're gay or not. They'd be right. fucking breaking. I can't believe Will doesn't flush the toilet. We just don't talk about it. We don't have a fucking radio. <laughs> yeah, Will, you're gross. Let's go to the phone. Hey. Mike and Maine, you're on the wrap-up show. What's happening, fellas? Hey, Mike. Hey, uh, I, I want to ask high pitch Mike why it bothers him so much when Artie calls him a fag. And I have another question when you're done answering that question. You know, people, oh, everyone around here calls me gay, so be it, whatever. But Artie does it out of a place of hate and anger, and I'm going to go after him. I'm not, I'm not, I love J.D., but uh, I'm a lot like J.D., I'm the nerd, I'm the loser, whatever. But I'm not going to sit there and take it. He has to take it because he works for Artie. I'm not going to sit there and take it. But do you think that he he goes there because he knows that's what pisses you off? I guess. I guess. With him, it does, but... If John Ein walked down the hall tomorrow and said, what's up, homo, I wouldn't care. You know, I like John. But I respect then, John. Don't you think, though, that, Mike, that the feud with you and Artie at least started out as, like, kind of shtick, like it was like you were picking on him because it gave you kind of an angle on the show. And now I believe, truly believe that you don't like him. But, I mean, it's really out sure, of nothing. No, I, wasn't, I, mean, I wasn't hateful at the very beginning. Artie doesn't pick on you any more than anyone else on the show. No, I wasn't hateful at the very beginning, but you know what? If uh, if the drugs or whatever he's, you know, whatever happens to him... <laughs> 
I don't think I would shed a tear. I might cry. You know, say I tr- cry in 27 dresses. I don't think I'd cry over Artie. By the, by the way, Artie's never called me gay. So. <laughs> Butch in York, Pennsylvania, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys, what's happening? Hey, man, I want to know why everybody's blazing over exactly why Artie got pissed. He didn't get pissed about that other shit. He got pissed about Mike talking about Gary's check because it sounded like something was brought up on air that shouldn't have been brought up on air. That's when he flipped the fuck out. You might be right about that. No, it's 100%. You and you happen. were pretty put off, too. Now, and, about what happened with my check? Yeah. About Mike bringing it up. And on the record. No, I, w- I wasn't that put off about Mike. I, I wondered why Mike had to drag me into the right. fight. No, nah, but... it was a Stacy comment. It no, it wasn't. No, 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 yeah, it was. No, no, it wasn't. Yes, it was. I'm going to no, disagree with Benji. Yeah. On the record, Gary, first let me apologize to you because you know what? Again, it's like Stacy. I, I shouldn't have brought you into it. It's like you did with um, uh, Sam Simon. With yeah, that. you do. You yeah. don't have to explain to me because I'll tell you, when you're in the hot seat, you will grab you at anything to. Exactly. to fucking win that But fight. I do want to apologize to you because cool. I do respect you. Know, you. I, so I'll tell the story quickly. I'm a little bit more. I don't want to get into to the, the, the whole numbers of it, but Artie accidentally got a check of mine. And um, he looked at it, and at, at his birthday party, he was making jokes about how much I made, which was sort of insinuating what I made. That really upset me. The part that upset me more, and I, I you know, I, I'd have to have it out with Artie one day, which Jason told me which, was that what they knew in advance. <laughs> I guess Artie knew in advance that a mistake had been made, and still looked at my check. That really hurt my feelings. Is that true? I, I thought you had told me that. You know, Artie's mom gets, you know, I guess my agent gets a check and he sends it to my house. Artie, uh, Artie's check goes to his mom and she opens it up. And I guess they had called. Maybe you, maybe it wasn't you, Jason. Uh, yeah. Maybe it was somebody else. But I don't remember. But that. I think that th- they told me that they had said, listen, Gary's check accidentally went to Artie. It's a big mistake. Just send it back. No, I, I it was heard, opened up and looked at. I heard he opened it. It was opened right. first. I, I, that's what I heard. And I heard, man, good for you. Yeah, but it was it, the, the whole thing was like like I even said the weird thing about it for me was I didn't even get to see the check like I don't even know what check Artie saw of mine and my check is different in different weeks and I don't know what Artie saw and I don't know what period of time it covered and Artie just assumed that we're on the same pay schedule and he just I don't know I, I don't want to talk about what I make like it's, it's, my, it's my prerogative one, whichever one he saw What's, but it's my prerogative to have that conversation and it sort of bummed me out let's but just I, say, I'll, I'll put bets on it Artie the thing that gets him. His violence, his temper, and I was wrong to say it ruined the show. I just, I think it's immoral what he did, but what? it's comments about Stacy, like, like that, really. that, that fueled the fire. Right. But the initial comment was the one about the check because that's when he said, "Oh wait, Mike's not but, fucking around. He's yeah, really saying shit to piss me off." I'll now. put, I'll put money on it. We can ask Artie. There, there were three. I mean, only Artie can talk about what Gary's talking about, what you're alluding to, Ben. But there were three things that Mike said. I think that set him off. One was beer league, which right. always pisses him off. Two was the check, and then three was the sister. But if right. you his sister, but if you had to talk about what lit the fuse, I think it was definitely the check, no doubt about it. Well, I guess we'll have to. It ask was him. because he he said that issue's dead. He didn't even go there. Right. Yeah. All right, job, let, Mike. Let's go back to the phones. Let's talk to uh, Rick in Maine. Rick, you're on the wrap up show. Hey, John. Hey, Gary. How you guys doing? Oh, good. How What's are you? What's up, Rick? I'm gonna ask this guy Mike a question. So far since you've been on the show this week, just now, you've been so good, Jason. You made a comment about Gary, and you spend all your time attacking Artie. Just what, exactly what comment what about the Gary fuck? did I make? Because I have apologized. You said, okay, you said, I went into Gary's office, and he kind of rolled his eyes. But what the fuck have you done in your life that puts you on par with any of them guys? That you can insult uh, beer league and shit. You do something, Mike. You got a fucking TV for putting somebody's ball sack on your face. <laughs> Oh, he's right. You're a fucking fag. Later, Gary. John, have a good weekend. All right. Thank you, Rick, for that That was call. not a ball sack. It was a ball vagina. <laughs> Apparently, Mike, he feels you're not qualified to uh, make these arguments. So, I'm sorry. I was looking in the halls. I, got, oh. I didn't hear a word. Not Ralph, Ralph Howard's ass? No, he's talking to Robin Quivers, oh, oh. and I don't get to see her ass very much, but she does have a nice ass. For the record, Michael was a head writer on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. Right? Were you uh, a writer? I, again, Jason doesn't get the facts right, but You're I was a researcher. A, I was a researcher, researcher. and I wrote, I, I wrote one question, which was half a million dollars, which I'm kind of proud of. Tell me the question. Uh, which director, or who directed? Oh yeah, who directed uh, Michael Jackson's bad video? Yes, <laughs> Scorsese. Scorsese. Right, but the guy I guessed John Landis because his phone a friend told him to go with it. He lost from five from half a million to down to thirty two thousand dollars. How many questions would you get on a show, roughly? I only did it for the first few months, and then they went writer's guild, so I couldn't do it anymore. Brandon in St. Louis, you're on the wrap-up show. 
Hey, regardless of the fact that High Pitch Mike is an irrelevant, annoying fuck and has no business being on the show in the first place, I don't think Howard uh, has any idea what's going on on his own channel. Which is you know, why? Nobody, no, nobody brought up the fact that in the uh, news or whatever, this fucking asshole gets his own little three or four minute segment where he just does nothing but a continuous slew of ripping on Artie. We've played, we yeah. played those before. A couple of those have been played on the show. Well, Howard sticks up for uh, High Pitch Mike as, as soon as Artie gets pissed off. It's, uh, you know, somebody needs to bring that well, up. Howard's Howard. commented that I've been in the wrong before. When Not I did one on Artie's dad, Howard was like, Mike, I don't know if you should be going there. I get I get my balls busted just no, as much. But, but Brandon brings up a very good point. I thought Artie, and again, Artie not here to speak for himself, so my thought, when Howard chimed in, Artie clearly felt like, why are you backing him up? Like, why you, did anybody else think that? Like, why do you have high pitch mics back instead of mine? What did I do wrong well, in this situation? I, yeah, I think Artie was like, how can you not expect me to react? To what he's, what it, yeah, what, I, but Artie's smart. I mean, listen, Artie's, Artie's got one foot in the docks and one foot here, and Artie's smart enough to know that you, you know, maybe on the docks you guys take it behind one of the barrels and beat the shit out of each other, but you can't, you can't physically hit someone here. But when you're that angry, you don't think like that. He did say, I don't know if it was on air offer that he wasn't going to, like, like him. he sure sounded like he was. I, I thought so too. And and I think I should say it here probably. As far as those commentaries I do for the news, I'm I'm laying off Artie. It's pretty much understood I can't go in that studio anymore without him and I getting into it. Like, I, I would just as much avoid him if I could just talk to Howard or Robin or Fred, you know, in the future. If I pitch Mike the new Crazy Alice, is that what we're saying? <laughs> it seems that way. Why? why? You can go in and, yeah. I mean, why can't you just, well, I guess you said you can't ignore what Artie says when you go but in Why there. don't you try, like, you know, when Artie calls you gay, if you ignore it and move on, then the Same with you and Scott the Pace. The why do you let him get you all riled up? He doesn't. I get him riled up. You, you, you I got think, it trust me, I think... And the same with your fight with Will Murray. You get you don't talk to him for. I couldn't record page sixty nine last week. Jason and I are fine. No, but Will what said, happened here? Will what said happened you weren't talking to him for a whole day last week because a of a whole comment, day. Wow, Michael. Yeah. Because that's, of a comment a you made. On, because of a comment Will made on here. <laughs> Thank you so Will and I are fine. No? We hung out this weekend. I feel like Jason and I are better than we were yeah. before. We hung so, out this weekend. Will's yeah. thinking of going to Amsterdam now. It's a whole rekindling. It's a, mm -hmm. Our relationship has been relit <laughs> and on fire. All right. Will moved up uh, two spaces on your MySpace. All right. All right, Mike. Thanks for coming by and stating your case. Take care. <laughs> Later. Goodbye. Goodbye. Creep. I wish I was allowed to play stuff for the regular show because right now I'd hit the button and play that song. High pitch mics, Google. Oh. <laughs> it's just so hard to take him seriously when he says anything. Now, do you guys think there's more to that anger than he's letting on to? No, I think I think Will hit it on the head. I think Mike kind of started out from a jokey perspective and to get it, on the air. Yeah, he thought well, he had a good thing shit. going. He had a good the, r rapport going. It got him on the air to argue with with Artie, and then. At some point, it became real for Artie, and then it became real for Mike, and now it's real for both well, of them, and it's crazy. The question is, does anyone here really think Mike is gay? I, I don't. I don't think he's gay. I, I would have to say that I'm on, you know, I'm unsure. I, I'm not positive, I but, I, but, but I almost don't care. Like, right. whatever he wants to be, let it be whatever he wants to be. Right. I'm not positive. I, I, I'm 50-50, but I, again, yeah, I'm with Gary. I don't care. I he's think it's possible. Is. I, I think Artie would dislike him either way, though, whether he was... Yeah, right, 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 right. When I say I don't care, it doesn't mean I don't care about Mike. No, I don't care what he does. the only reason I said that is, that is that why he's overly sensitive. I, I always do up. think, if, it's, if there's not, like, a direct biological, like, reason, when you have a high pitch like that, there's some sort of sexuality issues. <laughs> really? Yeah. Based on what? You think that's a stress thing almost? It's like fear of sex or fear of maturing or something like that. I think it... What? The high pitched voice. No, I know what you're talking about. I'm yeah. just I'm just pondering your theory. Like, or a fear of growing up. Yeah, I think it has something to do with or fear of sexuality. Okay. Dave and Canton, you're on the wrap up show. Dave, are you there? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. It's okay. Hey, Ed, so the high pitched bag had already left. I had, I was wondering if Artie had heard his uh commentary from last week about ripping into him uh for screwing up with Dana. I mean, he just ripped Artie a new asshole. What did he say? You know, what did he say? Well, he was saying he was bringing up about the whores in Vegas and the drug use and you know all that. Yeah, he Artie's known that he has drug problems, but you know to keep drilling it in to Dana's head that Artie's a fuck up. I think was kind of wrong of him, and no wonder Artie hates this little faggot. Man. Everything everything you said is interesting, except for the part that I'm sure Artie didn't hear it, but it's still yeah. making interesting. Yeah, I mean, if a guy swallows, then he must be gay, and so I imagine Eric must be gay. Eric? Who? Uh, High pitch Eric. All right. Next. All right. Thank you there, Dave. Wrong freak, sir. 
Uh, let's go to Tim in Delaware. Uh, Tom in Delaware. Tom, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. Uh, big fan of the show. Um, I got a comment for Benji. Uh, I did want to say real quick about Artie. I thought it was kind of shitty of him to call uh, Teddy White trash. Yeah, when, I mean, this is a guy that's a fat heroin addict who's a mess, and, uh, I mean, his 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 dad was a thief. Uh, I mean, he's not that great of a guy, and he's calling Teddy White trash. I mean, is he just being ironic? I mean, because Artie's clearly white trash. I think Artie was doing comedy. Yeah, he's breaking Teddy's balls, that's all. No, I am white trash. Okay, Teddy is white trash. <laughs> that's my where, where, where are you from, Teddy? Hohokus, New Jersey. That's not white trash. You're a rich little kid, aren't you? I, I'm from the... The CD side. There is no yeah. CD side. Ted, of Teddy does not come off as white trash. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like wannabe white trash. There is no wannabe. Yeah, you like to try to live this yeah. thing like come you're on, poor and kind of out of the bag. I think exactly. you're playing down your wealth. There's no CD side of Hohokus. No. All right. What was the other thing you wanted to say, Tom? <laughs> I, Gary just handed me the most depressing letter. What is that? Oh my God! Listen to this. This is really from the deli. They canceled your bagel. Oh. No. What is it's it? It's from uh, Crumbs Bakery. It's not from Crumbs Bakery. You know, my cupcake uh, uh, is is for Gary's charity, Life Beat, which right. is it fights you know AIDS and stuff. And uh, Gary came to me, and you know, I like trying to do charitable stuff, and and uh, said if we have a cupcake named after you, you plug it. All the proceeds will go to this life beat age thing, and since we did that over a year ago, it's been a lot of money. It's been like substantial, like over thirty grand, right? Okay, yeah, go ahead. It hasn't been that much, but they handed us a check for ten grand a couple of weeks ago with more on the way. Right, okay. and I was happy about that. So after the this high pitch mic tirade, I guess uh, it got around to a bunch of people. <sighs> Uh, and this is Life Beat the charity writing a letter to Jason Bauer, who's the crumbs guy. Okay. Dear Jason, it is with sincere regret that I write to let you know that LifeBeat can no longer accept donations from the sale of the Artie Lang cupcake. Whoa. It has recently come to my attention. <laughs> it has recently come to my attention that Artie has made a very offensive statement on the radio regarding HIV AIDS infection, as well as other remarks offensive to the constituency LifeBeat serves. I don't know what that is. A national HIV AIDS prevention organization, an advocate for people living with AIDS, LifeBeat condemns the remarks made by Mr. Lang and cannot in good conscience accept further donations from goods or services that are associated with Mr. Lang. <laughs> Under the circumstances, I trust that you can understand our position. We do appreciate your past generosity and hope that your interest in LifeBeat's mission will continue with other projects. Wow. Sincerely, John Canelli, executive you director. You gotta feel like a real dick. Now you know. Look, I what I a do. Heal you are. And I told Gary, I said, I said, <laughs> you really are. What did you tell him? What the? See, can I, I got to talk about what the comments were because I was in a, a most uncomfortable board meeting where this was discussed. You right. Know? Yeah. And everyone's looking at me because you know I'm the Artie Lang guy. Yeah. So what did you say? You know, so here are the comments. I just shut up. I just be like, look, man, I don't know. Here's what happened. They got, I can't defend it. They got well, emails. they know the comments. They heard it. They got email complaints right. from several people in the gay community asking, how can you work with a guy when Artie said on two different occasions to a guy, I hope you die of AIDS. Right. And that was, and. It's a joke. And I was like. It's a joke. Uh, it was hard <laughs> for me to joke. say that in that room. I mean, well, so I they would have been. They would have taken my money if I said, "I hope you die of cancer." Right. You know. I mean, what is the? I, I was. I was mad at an individual person, and uh, yeah. But you, on top of that, you're calling him a fag. Yeah, right. your right. way of berating yeah. him was to yeah. say, I'll pull, I'll "I pull, think you're gay." I told Gary, I'll pull tapes of him saying the same shit to people. When straight guys it's get true. mad, they do that sometimes. I've heard Gary. Uh, I have. I, or, I didn't about, think I did it, and I already pointed out I didn't. I, he's I right, but yeah, Fred but, plays it all the time. But he I calls think Elliot that, off on a fucking homo, and uh, I think that a tirade of <laughs> yeah, go take another hairbrush in your ass. Yeah. <laughs> you fucking homo. Uh, you so, fucking uh, homo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> have they heard that statement? Do I want to keep working with you, guys? Yeah, you might be off the board now. You trying to get rid of me, or no? I'm not. The I'm whole trying to say. Cock was fully encased what, in my mouth. What I'm saying is this. I'm saying. <laughs> I would be willing to apologize just because... Who gives a shit? Who gives okay. a fuck? I feel bad that they're not going to get the money anymore. I mean, I I, I would he, like them he, to keep the getting thing. the money. Well, here's the bottom okay, line. Can I ask two questions? Because here's what came from the meeting. I really would. Do, are you sorry for what you said? 
Yes, absolutely. I, I, look, I'm not sorry th that I said anything to to that mic jerk off, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> you know, if if look, if someone heard that who has AIDS or has a relative with AIDS or a friend, I realize how that could be very painful, and I'm sorry about that. I'm on a radio show and I say a lot of shit that's offensive. I, I would never want to upset somebody who had a disease like that. No, so uh, I'm sorry about that. If I, I know uh, that what Artie. And again, maybe yeah, I don't agree with Artie's statement, but I do know as someone who tries to be funny five hours a day, and sometimes you get worked up on the air, and you're trying also to be sort of funny. He was it was his attempt at humor, but yes, but Artie has the same had point, a number. He's had George Takei say to him, "You've got to stop this stuff." When did he say that? He said what, that after he, he said that after the same incident, just one yes, time. Yes, but you've continued. Right, see, there was a second. See, there's a guy. Oh, here's what's going on. There's a guy that listens to our show who's gay, right. who's monitoring what Artie says, and then sending letters to the New York Times and the New York Post and oh, all that stuff. Him. So it wasn't the first time. It was, the, it was the second time. You're listening. Time. Fuck you. Get a life. Well, I, this is not my this is not my stance. I don't I don't what about, I don't you, you hope anybody dies of AIDS. I got mad once. Shouldn't and the said top it. priority be to cure AIDS? So who cares where the money yeah, comes from? Yeah, it's good money actually What's because actually? this bad thing that Artie says is raising money for a good cause. See, we don't right. we don't, I could we don't we're not bad shit. I, I could pull a tape of all of us saying bad shit about gay people. <laughs> never me. Well, well not, me. never Robin. I love gay. People. But I think I think <laughs> see, I, I guarantee I can remember one incident with you where you you went over the line. I thought with gay shit. Nah. I mean, uh, what are you going to do? I, I, you know, I, well, I, why I turn all of us in? I'm not turning all of these in. No, I'm why just run saying, it for us? We want a cupcake. I don't want people to think this is my like stance in life. This is my opinion. I hope. Oh, there you go. The but you got to anti-gay comedian. You got to change some of your. Like I, I think you know, I used to use uh, a lot more gay humor, and over the years, I've become more sensitive. You definitely to have. There's I no have. doubt. Well, I, society is. So become... maybe you got to just become a little more sensitive to this. I mean, you know, you watch Eddie Murphy's uh, thing, Delirious. In 1983, he says fact right. about right. two million but times. Right, but it's not 1983. Changed. But that's that it. was also uh, that's the comedy I grew up on, and it's definitely an influence on me. And here's uh, the thing: already snap I, out of I'm it. I'm going to contact Lifebeat. I'm being serious now. I would like you to figure out a way where they could still get money. All I won't, right. I won't would you be my... willing to go to the board of Lifebeat and make out with a dude? In front of them. <laughs> no. Because that's what they've requested. No. This is how pro-gay I am. <laughs> you need to take out your cock and get a blowjob from another man. Do you want me to catch AIDS? No. You guys, not guys, catch guys, it. help me out here. i got to go to these fucking meetings. <laughs> oh, okay. And neither one of them helped me out. <laughs> I know. I, you Did know, you tell them that Artie took a load from a guy in his chest? Yeah, what you know, about, what I told them. I, see, here's the, th here's the thing that's hard to communicate to the board. I know that I've been Artie, the game. I know that Artie oh, didn't no. mean it. You know what I mean? I know. But then, but then I they said anybody to die of AIDS. They said, is there, is there any promise that you can give us? And I don't know how, you know, they weren't asking me to give them a promise, but they, they yeah, said, Fafafu, he's working with you. Are you sure that he would never do it again? No. And I said, I wasn't sure. Was no. That, no. You know what? I could almost guarantee hey, I, Artie, wouldn't, why don't you I, go... wouldn't, I wouldn't wish anybody dead of AIDS. I can guarantee right. that. Why don't you go the other way and make a cupcake for an anti-gay organization like those God-hate fags people? Uh, you know what? We you know may what have mean? to contact them. <laughs> make a Somebody cupcake. will take that money. No, I would never do that. I know. Never. I know. All right, listen. So that's unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that. And you're gonna have to put it behind you. And maybe, uh, maybe you'll this uh, think happens. before I you speak. This happens. I got kicked off the board of my charity. Yes, I remember yeah, that. What was you did? Why? Yeah, because I'm on this show. You know, what charity oh. was that, Robin? Uh, the um, child abuse prevention program. <laughs> but not because of <laughs> specific statement. God. Yes, no, no, yeah. she did. Well, oh, yeah. it wasn't a statement I made. It was statements made on the show. Yeah. I, I know exactly. Can I tell the story? Sure. I, I First of all, Robin did more for that charity. They were like a tiny charity, and Robin got them. To do it at dinner every year, got us all to go to the dinner, right. got us all involved and everything. Yeah, I remember that. And she was really, uh, you know, really did a lot with that. Um, child prevention, you know, uh, child abuse prevention. And uh, we started to do It's Just Wrong That's on the right. show. Wow. And, okay, so it was, you know. <laughs> you mean where fathers and daughters <laughs> well, no, see, each other? It started with husbands and wives. <laughs> right. Right? And then it went to fathers and daughters, but I think brothers and sisters is where they drew the line. <laughs> right. But they didn't even, like, give, they didn't even call Robin and tell her <laughs> that they were upset. They just sent well, the letter actually, like that. Actually, they were calling frantically, and I wasn't feeling well at the time. And I was just like, look, I can't deal I'm with I'm not you. feeling well. I just saw a father disrobe his daughter. <laughs> That's right. I was like, I can't deal, you know. 
know, I used to talk them down because they'd call after every one of these things. Right. And I used to talk them down and make sense to them every time and, and calm them down. But that time I was just like, I'm too sick to, to deal with what they're going through. Well, this is coming and they at, kicked me off. This is coming at a bad time because <laughs> right after I get this letter, right after I got that letter, Teddy handed me my bullet points for my PSA about the end. Not saying it. Oh yeah, <laughs> George Takei. <laughs> I gotta record that. Now. By the way, George Takei got Artie to record a PSA. Yeah. To promise to record a PSA that is that that promotes the fact that you should not gay bash and that you should not use the word fag. And do you right. know why you that faggot? It? it had nothing to do with. <laughs> <laughs> so, You're a fucking loser, faggot. All right. Well, so anyway, losers weren't upset at that statement. So anyway, <laughs> so now George sent Artie bullet points. Yeah. This is for the public service announcement. Yeah, and Let again, the incident that spawned this was when I came out to him. He, oh, yeah. He was so hurt by <laughs> that. a bit that we all okayed. Uh, <laughs> but you did it. Uh, I, I did it fantastic. I should have you it You did it too well. Right, so he was really hurt by that, and he goes, okay, to pay me back, you know, the guilt yeah. trip. Will you do this uh, PSA for the human rights organization? First of all, I don't know where the fuck they're going to air this. He goes, you know, exactly. YouTube. But yeah, nowhere. I, I have to just wing it, but hit bullet points. No television channel is going to put on an Arnie Lang public service announcement uh, promoting not using the word gay or fat. Right. So, but how? But listen to these bullet points. How am I going to me? How Let am me I going to sound? Write it. You're supposed to just riff and use these bullet points. Right. How am I going to sound sincere? Uh, <laughs> words that are meant to hurt people. <laughs> Words whose sole purpose is to say that some people are worth less than others are wrong. <laughs> Over the years, I have made jokes about gay people using one of those words. It was easy for a long time using the anti-gay F word, making jokes about other guys, but not anymore. <laughs> Quite frankly, it's just as easy. But In 2008, I'm resolving to make a change. Knowing gay people, including my friend George Takei, who appears with me on the Howard Stern Show... It's helped me to see that the anti-gay F word isn't funny. I'm going to stop saying that word this year. At the same time, I know I'm not perfect. <laughs> and sometimes I may slip up. So for all of 2008, I'm going to donate $100 to the Human Rights Campaign, the country's largest gay, lesbian, bisexual, and transgender, uh, transgender organization. They're probably not going to take your money. Each and every time I slip up. If you catch me on tape, on ca whoa, I didn't see this part. What? If you catch me on tape, on camera phone, anywhere there's a recording of me saying the word, send it in, and I will make the donation. Oh. Wait, Artie, so I might get to believe that not only is it if you say it on the show, but if I'm at a restaurant and yes. I could catch you at a tirade, I could get 100 bucks a pop? Right. Yeah, you can't even say it in your personal life. Wow. Dude. <laughs> that could be a major... You're going to be broke. Yeah, I know. I hope well, my bookie's going to have to pay me now. <laughs> Tough day you had, Gar, between uh, what's going on with Lightbeat and, of course, going over to overseas with Artie and my boredom. And, ta and going overseas and taking Artie's best friend's seat, which I know you've been reminded of many, keeps, many times. He keeps bringing it up. I, I mean, Artie really is a strange guy because I can't, you know, he may be fucking with me and just, he might go home and go, ah, I was just fucking with Gary. But I really don't know. And it's upsetting to me. I don't, you know, it, if Artie said I'd rather bring my friend, I'd be like, that's fine. Don't you think if he really didn't want you to go, he would let you? He would have let you know by now. I don't know because because Artie's he's already said I could go, and if he, if he had second thoughts about it, he'd never know how to say anything. And I hope I didn't put him in a, like I asked him about going, but right then and there he should have said, you know what, man, I got no more open seats. I'm taking my buddy. Now what happened with Life Beat and how awkward was that to talk about today? It was really awkward. I wasn't sure if Artie was going. I left it up in Artie's hands whether to bring it up or not. You know, they heard comments that were made. Well, they didn't hear him. A guy that listens to the show heard comments that he made about Mike on the show and then last week on the wrap-up show, and he started sending these emails, you know, to LifeBeat saying, how could you be involved with a guy like that? And, you know, started, you know, threatening to call the New York Times and the New York Post. So we had a board meeting and we discussed it and we just felt that, you know, nobody's telling Artie to stop saying what he's saying. Everybody, the, the consensus was, we're going to move ahead and not have the association anymore. Yeah, and Artie, I think Artie's offended by it. I mean, it's pretty clear. I think he is, too. Was there an action? Like, I don't know how it works. Is there an action? Was like, a, did you guys vote on the subject? No, we just sort of discussed it, and we sort of came to, it was it was a pretty clear consensus. Would be. Did the you agree with the move? I did. Yeah. I did. I just, it, it, you know what? I don't, 
See, here's the thing that's really, the, the, this is what's at the heart of it. The comments that Artie made are indefendable, but I know Artie doesn't mean them. Right. But how do you explain that to a group of people and an organization that doesn't know Artie? Oh, he's just fucking around. Right. They, you know what I mean? You well, did the group have a problem, or it didn't have a problem until the guy started threatening to call the New York Times? Well, it didn't have a, guy, it didn't have a problem until the guy notified them because it did, wasn't aware of it. So, so no one heard the show and knew what Artie was saying? That's right. Okay. But, I, but I mean, well, you I, could play, I could play the clip, and, and I don't think that would have made it any better. But you and Ross was, knew. I, I did know, but it wasn't... If I could have said, hey, listen, for, for better or worse, it was under the guise of a joke. Did you think it was a joke that Ar when Artie did no, it? I think what, he was doing a character trying to be funny? No, I think Artie was, was angrily arguing with somebody he knew and went to go hit what he, what he thinks is a sore point on the guy. And I think he went overboard. I mean, I wouldn't say those things. And I think, you know, at, at the end of the day, I bet Artie wishes he didn't say those things either. I hope he does. But I don't understand why Lifebeat as a board is just going to stop... Uh, I mean, Artie was raising money for them. You know, they, he's not the face of Lifebeat. He's not, you know, out there doing commercials. But he for is Lifebeat. when he does when he does the cupcakes. He's out there the raising show. money. And Artie's been, you know, Artie's been generous. He not only did he do the cupcake thing, but he also did. He came to us when we went to Borders Books and did that thing. But it's, it's. I think it's just very difficult to have a person that is when they're doing that. They are not the face of the organization, but a representative. He's clearly a representative of the organization. But they didn't have a problem when Artie with all that queer eye for the straight. Guy they didn't stuff. know about it. So it's all just knowing about it. Yeah, I think if they'd have known about it, they might not have gotten him involved. I mean, I thought I. Between you and I, I thought after the whole queer eye thing, yeah. Artie sort of said to me, "Man, that was really bad. It makes yeah, me sound I mean, really bad, and I'll never do it again." But but he did. I, I mean, I, personally, it is just a personal level. I think the, the queer eye stuff was way more offensive than getting in an argument with Mike. But uh, well, what's the difference? The only difference is that they're more famous than Mike. It's the same rap. No, because. Because the queer eye stuff was totally unsolicited. He got drunk and was screaming and calling them fags and queers but, but, every two seconds. The Mike thing, he was angry at Mike. He yelled at Mike. Mike was calling him fat and disgusting, and Artie called him uh, a fag who he hopes he gets but, AIDS. I'm trying to I'm trying to put this in a different perspective. And 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 say I was um working for the NAACP and I got really mad and I was I was dealing with a black guy in here and he pissed me off and I go fuck you nigger. So well, now should they just forgive me for that? Well, I, I don't know if those are the two two of the same things. I, but, I know but why as, as sensitive that? as like, sensitive as the gay community is, and I understand it that you can't say that the word the f word is as bad as the n word. But it's not. It's just, just not. It's, I got to tell you, it's not about the f word. It's about it's about wishing a guy would die of AIDS. Okay, that I understand. So then, so then how are how are and wishing it on him by the way specifically because you perceive him as being gay. Okay. That's specifically okay. why you want him to die. So when Howard, when Howard goes on the air and prays to Jesus for people to die of cancer, right. so then, so you think you would, if you were on the board of a cancer organization, you wouldn't accept money from him? Like, I, I, just, I just don't understand. I think, I think, I think Artie is cancer... a very kind, generous person yes. who, who now is, I mean, he made it public. They didn't, I don't, don't want to say life be publicly humiliated. No, him, but in fact, life be wasn't looking right. for any publicity. They wished it wasn't out but, there. But now, 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 you know, you're, you're telling the guy, like, look, you, you said the one wrong thing. We're not even going to give you a chance to apologize for it or, or, or clarify what you said. We're just going to cut off any money. Okay, okay so if I already apologized for it, do you think he'd never do it again? I have no idea. I'm not already. Yes or no? I, the, the my guess is no. Okay. I mean, my guess is so, so, no, he probably will do it again. Right. So so now you're down in the same situation down the road in three months. All right. You've got a group of people who are angry that why is that guy a representative of the group? I just think I just think for all of us who work here on the show, this sets a bad president. I, I, I do. I just think... I, I think I think what if, what if, what one day if I'm running for office somewhere, let's just say hypothetically, are people going to go? Well, how could you stand there while you work next to a guy who used the F word and used the N word and degraded women? I mean, you know, I mean, it's just like you know, Artie is not a bad person. I think Mike is blowing his head up. Dude, that's, but like, Jace, that's we were... like every every incident that you you would complain about about somebody if you didn't completely 100 percent know the context. People are offended by it. They have a right to be offended by right, it, right? Absolutely, they have a right to be offended And, by and it. they don't want to be associated with and, that. And, and we all know Artie's a great guy, but they're saying, hey, we as an organization don't want to have a partnership if, if this is something you're going to do. Yeah, Jace, nobody is saying Artie's a bad person. Right. And nobody's saying, you know, like, I don't know where you're coming up with that. They just don't want to well, associate how? with with him Making that one that comment that it's it's that cut and dry, and I, know, I just think it, 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 it it's uh, small thinking on their part. And and, well, and Gary, you're saying like they did not say hey announce this on the show or anything, right? They, they, what'd you say? No, Artie's no the one that, that was they didn't say probably. like hey we want to announce on the show that no. Listen, if they, if if Lifebeat wanted to be complete jackasses, right? They could have you know press released it and got as much press as they could off of it. They they 
wished it didn't it wouldn't have come up on the air at all. And if you didn't hear it, Artie was depressed about it, and here's how he reacted. I was mad at an individual person, and uh, yeah, but you on top of that, you're calling him a fag. Yeah, right. your, your right. way of berating yeah. him was to uh, say, I'll pull, I'll "I think pull, you're gay." I told Gary, I'll pull tapes of him saying the same shit to people. When straight guys it's get true. mad, they do that sometimes. I've heard Gary. Uh, I have. I, or, I didn't about, think I did, and I already pointed out I didn't. I, he's oh, right, but yeah, Fred but, plays it all the time. But he I think that you off in a fucking homo, and uh, I think that a tirade of <laughs> yeah, go take another hairbrush in your ass, <laughs> you fucking homo. Yeah, so, uh, fucking homo. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Have they heard that statement? Do I want to keep working with you, guys? Yeah, you might be off the board now. Artie Lang, you're on the wrap-up show. This was completely out of line, man. What's that? You're saying stupid shit. <laughs> you faggot. Uh, Artie, you said you weren't going to say that anymore. You cocksucker. Wow. You fucking piece of shit. All right, Artie, thank you're you. You're really fucking pissing me off. You really are. I don't know how to respond to that, Artie. You're a fucking loser faggot. All right. Does this mean we're not going overseas? <laughs> Fuck I'm... off. All right, Artie, thanks for calling in. We'll have Crazy Alice waiting. But, but the, the point I'm making is the, the thing that was such a struggle for me in this board meeting was the fact that I knew that there was no answer but the answer that they gave, yet I know that Artie is a good person. And it, I can't explain it to a bunch of people who don't know him. You can't say... Listen, I know these are really offensive comments, but he's a good dude, and just trust me on this one. I, I, th I just think, I just think, don't, don't, don't throw stones. Uh, everybody on the show has said shit. Uh, you, I'm mean, trust me, I found some comments from you, recent ones. You know, I mean, everyone says shit, and then, uh, you know, I, I just feel Artie's getting thrown I, on the bus for this one. <laughs> but I don't think I've ever wished. A Listen, it was, it was an attack on Mike. No, but, but. I'm Mike. He listen. I'm you've Mike. gotten in arguments before. You know how you you see red. You don't even know what the fuck you're saying. And and, and he, he he went for the most hurtful, vile thing he could say to him. But but okay. Here's, okay, here's what I'm gonna tell you. He did it once. Right. On our show. Right. And he was unbelievably apologetic about it. Felt really bad. And then he just did it again. Well. And, and it's gonna happen right. again and again and, and again. I'm sure if if Artie when Gary told Artie about this, if Artie had said, you know what, can you hold off? I want to tell you I'm never going to do this again because I really feel wrong about it. I bet Gary would have said, hey, I'm going to take this back to the board. When I, when I talked to Artie about going, I knew we were going to the board meeting that day, and I told him, I gave a heads up on what was going on, and Artie said, gee, man, I feel terrible about this. He goes, I love being involved with the charity, and I love that I generate money. And if I, He goes, I'm not looking to do this, but if I could go and talk to the board, I really <laughs> would like to do that. You know. And I said, I said, you know, it's, it's really not necessary. And then when I told Artie, you know, when I gave Artie the letter today, he feels bad about it, but he also feels, I think he feels bad that it happened, but I think a small part of him is feeling a little persecuted. All right, let's go to the phones. We'll go with Scott in Chicago. Scott, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, guys. What's going on? Hey, Scott. Um, at any point during the tirade, Gary, were you thinking to yourself, oh, shit, I'm going to hear about this? Well, in terms of what? As like, far as, like, you know, how, you know, as far as with, with life beat, you know, being involved with the show. My, my, big, my biggest fear was that was that they were going to somehow paint the organization in a bad light, because they really are a good organization, and they didn't, so I was fine with that. That was okay. my biggest fear. All right. I just wanted to I one more thing, if you don't mind, is I don't think uh, Artie wants you going with him. Great. And he's afraid to say it himself. Is that, you, so do you think, are you saying that to bust Gary's balls or you really believe it? No, absolutely. I think Artie does not like to make decisions. He's always said, you know, things end badly, like at work. He likes to push people away, make them leave, so he doesn't, you know. So do you, he's just trying to make Gary back out. You think I should just, you help. think I should just step out gracefully, come up with a, you know. Well, you offered to step out gracefully. I know, but, but he, would, show. he would never accept that because that would be him making the decision. There's a part of me that almost agrees with this guy. Like, Artie doesn't want to have to be the one to say, Gary, I really want to bring my friend. Well, I, I think I think he does not want you to go, except he thinks it's the right thing, not just because he owes it to you, but the right thing for the troops. But he doesn't owe me anything. No, and, no, I know. And, and as great as it, it would be fun if I were there, and it's sort of like, it's, I'm like the cherry on the package. I'm not the substance of the show. If I'm not there, this, the troops aren't going to suffer. He, I haven't heard, I just think he thinks that you're, you, you, are good to go for the troops. Like, they would want to see you. I think that's why he's, he says it's the right thing to do. Sal, what do you want to say? Oh, nothing. Oh. Thanks, Sal. Teddy, what do you want to say? I just got a text message from Artie. It says, tell Gary I'm totally kidding about the Iraq trip. <laughs>
let's get back to uh, George. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, George, you uh, yesterday were very anxious to speak with Artie about this public service announcement thing. <laughs> well, first of all, I'm glad to see you here uh -huh. and seeing the same Artie that I remembered from three months ago. <laughs> what did you think was going to happen? Well, I mean, you know, I have an imagination. Oh, good. So I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you're the Artie that I remember. And I want to get your thoughts on what is going on with the <laughs> PSA for the Human Rights Campaign. Well, I, I, I'm not taking it seriously. <laughs> I, uh, uh, clearly you are. All right, well, look. <laughs> you know, but but I, I, look, I, I don't think, I mean, it's just not realistic that I'm going to go. I mean, it's a joke. You know, it but is. But I, I, after, I <laughs> after I came out to you, I felt bad that I wasn't really gay after I said I was. That's a portrayal. Well, you know what I thought? Uh, I could that. have at least fucked some guy. <laughs> <laughs> Do some of, some of your homework, huh? Yeah. George, you, you asked. Let me, let, me put some, let me put some uh, parameters on this discussion. George, you asked Artie to cut a public service announcement denouncing the word fag or faggot, and Artie agreed to do it. And, in fact, Artie said he would pay $100 to this campaign. Every time he slipped. Every time he slipped. Now, since then, you've sent Artie how many scripts? <laughs> well, well there point. was one script sent to him. Yes. And he awful. didn't want to do that. <laughs> that was bad. And he said he wanted to write it himself. And he asked the Human Rights Campaign for bullet points of uh, topics that they wanted him to hit. That's right. And then there's been some conversation between Teddy and Anastasia, who is the uh, staffer that's been assigned. Well, that's as good as no conversation yeah, at all. And it went yeah. back and forth, and then <laughs> even that stopped. Much like Hillary Clinton, I'm flip-flopping on this issue. Yeah, Artie, what is it? You stopped the conversation. Are you now saying because, you will uh, not no, make listen, the public service well, announcement? I made an attempt. Howard, I'm telling you, every attempt just sounded like I was goofing on it. I couldn't. Right. Uh, I couldn't. You know, I, look. And I, why? I, Do you really understand the meaning behind the word Bag and how powerful it is words have meaning. You know, people. Right. Have do you think been... I'm the only one in this room that uses the word fag? No, oh, no, no. But the, uh, you, uh, you probably <laughs> don't know the whole background. Listen behind. to Pharrell and Bubba. People show have become bashed. <laughs> Their skulls have been broken. You know, I know, but I, I'm not for that. What do you? I mean, you think because I use the word fag, I'm so I'm, you I'm... can play a part. You know, because you are who you are, and you. What you am are, I? You are you are influential on no, a lot I, of people. I, I'm not influential. Yes, on you are. I am not. You have no idea the number of people, the masses of people <laughs> that you influence. <laughs> I can't be. I can get people I pay to do shit for. Hey, hey, As jo Artie goes, so goes the world. Yeah, right. Well, you're saying that God a, help us all. George, you're saying there's a huge con uh, constituency out there who will, who go to Artie shows, who love That's Artie. That's right. And if they see the public service announcement, they'll be educated. And, and you, you think that you I, can, by, you, know, you uh, think, recognize your 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 background, how you've been using it, and now you become aware of what the power behind that word is. Does the word hurt you, George, personally? It does. It does. When someone says, "Hey, you're a faggot," it just demeans you because and takes you down a notch. It right? It suggests all of that other, you know, cruelty that's been hurled. I would never say and that to society, you. You know, for example. <laughs> I know you. I was uh, not to me, you know, but it, it is, it's a word that affects a whole mass of people in the same way that black people right. were killed, were lynched, you know. And I mean, what's a rope with a loop around it? You know, it's just a rope, but it has power. It symbolizes something horrific, right. you know. And that's why society has moved to the point where we don't use. The, the N-word anymore. I but, honestly would rather and, quit the show than, than listen to more of this. I would rather go back to Jersey well, where nobody cares about the word. You know, you can count. You know, what, 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 we, I, I, we George, live. I, I, you're asking me to be, like, uh, something I'm not, which is, you know... Uh, that, that's right. Yeah, yeah, so, Artie, you, you, you haven't got the will. Are you officially saying you will not do the public service? I'll do whatever you want. You know what? Why much like, a, much like a broad, what there. will shut you up? No. <laughs> <laughs> My God! Well, okay, Artie, people who suck dick up. won't shut up. All right. will shut me up is if you find that thing in you that what will. What thing? That will. Where is it? Oh God, that will is. There's <laughs> <laughs> will now. Uh, right will is in me. There's will. All right, listen. Uh, is Al here? 
All right, we have to break this conversation. Al Roker is stopping by. Al and we're sort of in the middle of a discussion about whether Artie's going to do George's uh, PSA denouncing the word fag. Well, I don't know. It you know, doesn't it's sound like he wants to, yeah. yeah I, it, high know, pitch Mike, did, did you hear that open letter? That, Artie, did you hear it? The high pitch Mike did an open letter to George Takei demanding that he <laughs> no. not use you for the PSA? <laughs> no, oh, no, well, no, no. It's not high pitch Mike. It's, you know, it's really Artie. Yeah. He's got to really believe what he's saying. Well, you I'm, know, I, I, believe it like that performance of yours right. when you came out to me as a gay man. Right. Well, I'm not going to believe it. <laughs> I mean, so, I, that was I, be so the PSA is off. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, I'll do whatever you want me to do, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's pointless. A PSA is, you know, it's an advocacy thing. Right. And you got to mean it. it there's yeah. got to be credibility, believability. And you think you'll be believable no. in making that statement? No. I Probably mean, not, no. I, I mean, I, I could. I could no offense, joke. George. Also, Artie was questioning where the PSA would air. He doesn't see that being yeah, on where, TV. Where are you going to get that on for anyone to see it? Well, they, uh, they, they have a website. And then, you know, they have a lot of money. And they oh. could put it well, they'll pay on me for TV. It? <laughs> oh, well, you're doing the pain. Every time you slip. <laughs> well, I'm for right. 50 well grand here was High Pitch Mike's letter to George Takei, <clears throat> if you want to hear this. Dear George, while I respect and admire everything you've done with the human rights campaign, I simply cannot support your decision to have Artie Lang shoot a public service announcement for the HRC. It's obvious Artie wants nothing to do with this, as he's already waited over four months to record it. No, I don't want to do it. I don't ever want to do it. And even when he does decide to record the PSA, you know he won't mean a word of what he says. It's going to be uh, hard to do a PSA and be sincere about it. I looked online to see who else had done PSAs for the human rights rights campaign. What kind of company would Artie be joining? The two I found were by Judy and Dennis Shepard, whose son Matthew had his head bashed in and was left to die for being gay. You know, my biggest regret after walking into the hospital and seeing him was I didn't tell him enough as a father that I loved him. For the shepherd's sake, I pray Artie takes his role very, very seriously. It's almost like a bit for the show. I'd urge you to reconsider your decision to have Artie be a part of this PSA. Artie clearly does not belong in the company of these two people who lost their son from hate. I'm not going to stop saying fag. It's a funny word. You know, I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but uh, <laughs> people got to get over it. You know, in, in a perfect world, because your child was gay, you would just worry about them being happy. <laughs> I like now just the way he was. Just the way he was. PSA should be done by people who want to eradicate hate and violence, not promote it. I'm a gay basher and I'll bash your gay head. Uh well, there you go. Uh, very powerful. Uh, you know, pitch Mike. You know what, what's going on here? I mean, Mike, you said uh, you're against hate and violence. I think, you know, on both sides, on your side, Mike, and on your side, Marty. Yeah. You know, you, you <laughs> what need side to, is Artie? No, the, the opposite side. You know, right. you need to c calm down and. Right. I mean, because there's a lot of hate coming from you too. Oh, of course. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. And, but and not, that's not George. That's not, not toward healthy. an entire group of people. You're a weirdo. What? My uh, my hate. <laughs> <laughs> my hate is toward one person. You're an not insane an weirdo. Group of people. You, you should will. probably be arrested for the Filipino kid who's decomposing in your apartment. And, and you know, <laughs> come on, Artie. And quit, if he's quit. if he's gonna call me a faggot or threaten to bash my gay head in, I'm but, gonna walk out of here too. And, I'm, not, okay. you know, I'm not gonna put up with that. You're You're not not walk out there's, a I, there's a point where his humor stops being humor. That's right. And it's disgusting. Well, I don't right. like the fighting between the two. Yeah, of you. it really, I really is. Don't. I don't know how it got this. Boy, if, if, you notice, it. if you notice the last two or three times I've either been in here or the wrap-up show, John Hine pointed it out to me. I can't even make eye contact with him. Who I could ignore, you make eye contact with? I ignore him. <laughs> I ignore him. And, you know, he wants to keep what going are you, at What know, are you looking at right now? Listen, you know, this, listen. This is I, not gonna, uh, you weirdo. <laughs> You know, it's just going to get worse. <laughs> I, I, You've got to be on common ground. George, you're a blotchy your idea faced him, weirdo. <laughs> your idea to put him in a PSA with the honorable yeah, group that was HRC, a mistake. No, that I was a mistake, that as was Gary's mistake, including him in Life Beat. Right. All right, the guy hates gay people. If you haven't known No, I hate no, you. He Are you gay? He, he doesn't. I like George. He, he does not hate uh, gay people. I mean, you say I you're not gay. I hate you. Uh, so, I mean, you know, no, what you are should you? not hate. When you say I'm well, a I gay know, I hate him. when you say I'm a gay basher, I'm going to bash your gay head. You don't hate gay people? No, I hate you. 
I said you're gay. Oh, no. because it makes you sound like the people that bash Matthew Shepard's head in is what it right. makes you sound like. That's what I want to sound like. Artie sounds like he's saying that he dislikes you. Yeah. But I don't know. That's and what you dislike, Mike, you dislike Artie. See, so that's not going to uh, uh, change things. You both hate each other. And where is that going to go? It's going to get worse. Yeah. You got to find some way to have rapprochement. Huh? <laughs> I know I use the I wrong word. <laughs> Words that bar. Yeah. It's a French word that means, you know, come together. Uh -huh. <laughs> come on, Mike, rapper schmall. <laughs> rapper schmall. <laughs> well, let me tell you, uh, Mike, I like you. I like Artie, of course. I like uh, George. I don't know where this is all leading. Is there any way the two of you can have detente where you and Detail. Artie... Yes. Uh, Do you know where it went off the rails? Because I I don't. I don't either. I don't yeah, know that, what, that what happened. That fight that they had, that clash, you know, what what triggered that? He's a weirdo. <laughs> I mean, this was after we talked about, you know, you're doing the uh, PSA. I mean, he... Right, let, it, me, let, me he ask you, let me ask you something, George. He, well, pitch, uh, can we say our April Fool's joke, Mike? We really like each other. Yeah, you're in love. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on, Artie? Can you find it in your way to have a detente here? Yeah, I mean, I, I, listen, it's always been his problem. I, I don't I don't understand. It, was, it wasn't my problem when uh, Ron was sitting right here, and I'm talking to him, and Artie had nothing to do with it. Who, and Ron? Calling, oh, and Ron. he's calling me gay, and it wasn't my problem when I went into the wrap-up show to talk to John. I, I mean, started his that questions. Day. Was so, that what triggered it, his calling you gay? Oh, well, that uh, he, didn't help. He's calling me a faggot well, over a dozen times. You clearly are I'm not. You, gay head. What do you mean you clearly not? How do you, I mean, I'm, I'm not saying you are either way. Well, you but. told me. But, you know, I want to yeah. ask. I want to ask you a favor, Howard. George made a point on the wrap-up show yesterday, which was completely glossed over by everybody in the room, and uh, about how talk like this leads to people getting murdered. And I gave Fred a clip of something that I would ask that you play. <laughs> If you would please, let me ask you something, Mike. What did I say, L Mike? Let, let me let me let me understand something here. Look, you're a bozo. <laughs> <laughs> now quit that. Quit that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> My sense of it. You know what, it, Mike? It what is going it on? It upsets this? me that you, who is a legend in comedy, a legend Thank in you. radio, laughs at a stupid. <laughs> What's Fucking funny, juvenile kindergarten what's joke funny like that. is I laugh at you, too. The two of you fighting yeah, is funny Yeah, you've written to me. some incredibly uh, vicious. rank and vicious Yeah, what about the quadriplegic uh, people out there? That uh, I'm not worried about the quadriplegic. Why not? Why wouldn't you worry about that? Your father had a choice to fall off that ladder. I didn't push him. <laughs> oh, quit <laughs> that. See, I mean, you're just as vicious as Artie. Oh, and yeah. people are laughing at one person, at not funny. one person, not an entire group of people. Well, look, listen. Listen. To me. I don't understand. Really, Mike? Just because you can't father children. Would you please play the clip so you see? All right. What is yeah, this let's clip turn this into the this fucking. Is a, this is a clip. Five <laughs> days but, but, after. But, five but, days after. Artie said, "I'm going to bash your gay head in." <laughs> you'll hear what happens in the clip. It's a clip from a talk show, but you'll you'll see who it is and you'll see where I'm coming from. Okay. I need to talk to you about something that's really serious and really sad. And uh, if you know me, it's hard to talk about sad stuff without getting emotional, but this is really important to talk about. On February 12th, an openly gay 15-year-old boy named Larry, who was an 8th grader in Oxnard, California, was murdered by a fellow 8th grader named Brandon. Larry was killed because he was gay. Days before he was murdered, Larry asked his killer to be his valentine. I don't want to be political. This is not political. I'm not a political person, but this is personal to me. A boy has been killed, and a number of lives have been ruined. And somewhere along the line, the killer, Brandon, got the message that it's so threatening and so awful and so horrific that Larry would want to be his valentine, that killing Larry seemed to be the right thing to do. And she was, the message right, out we get there the idea. So she was more upset about the dog she gave away. She actually <laughs> cried. And she couldn't get through that statement without crying. Right. Well, you're just as vicious to Artie as he is to you. It's escalating escalated into this very vicious battle. Do you guys want to have closure? Here we are, April Fool's Day, uh, I've done the Ralph joke, uh, whatever. Uh, maybe in the spirit of this, maybe there can be some closure, right, George? Absolutely. Yeah. And it, I'm willing, not because I'm it's willing, April Fool's. It's got to be genuine. Yeah, genuine. I'm willing to never speak to or about Artie. Great. If, if I can get that same uh, closure. Oh, God, yeah. Good, good. Now, let me understand this, Artie. You're agreeing not to speak about... <laughs> and even when he's in here, not to address him. 
Well, when's it going to And you know in? what? you got to wipe that smirk off your face. I'm sorry, George. <laughs> <laughs> because there's saying. no credibility in your words when you have that expression on your so face. So great. George is like uh, your mom when she yells yeah, at you. Yeah, get that smirk off your face. <laughs> now, see that street. Artie, what is the you're going to go for this deal? Yeah, I don't care. What do you mean? Good. good. What what is it again? Not to talk to him? No, no. Well, not to say bad and, things and, about and, him. And if you want to hype it up, you know, for the fans, I know you like big. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he keeps Nobody calling, cares he keeps about calling you. me gay, so if you want, I'll take an HIV test on the air. He can take a drug test on the air. Okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll make it a little bit. Well, you, let, let's clear so this you're going to prove you, know, you don't have AIDS? Are you, are you gay at all? No, and, I, and he's going to preach, you know, to the high waters that I am, but no, 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 like, like, you know, and, and I know what you mean by Artie saying you're gay all the time. Like uh, someone told me they ran into you coming out of the movies with a guy the other day. <laughs> what? But so what's the matter with that? No, nothing's <laughs> the matter. Exactly, with that. exactly. And right. you have a smirk on your face. No, as you I say don't. It out. I, no, but I, oh, yeah. you well, were little... they holding no, you? No, 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 no. He right. came out of the movie yeah. Stop Loss with a man. The, the and other half the a... story. The other half the story is I run into Richard and his girlfriend. We talked to me and my friend talked to Richard's girlfriend. Why Richard's off sucking the cock of some band we've never heard of right. at a club. Well, my point being is that because <laughs> Artie keeps calling you gay, as soon as someone sees you with a man, they, they go. Will yeah, start... he called, they call the Howard 100 News tip line. I mean, that's right. how this shit yeah. happens. Right, right away there was a call to the tip line saying, uh, "Hey, guess what we saw walking out of the theater with a man." Right. So, you know, look, you did a vicious song about Artie. Let me let me replay that, if I oh, may. Oh, please do. Oh, I hadn't heard that. Oh, yes. Listen, it goes both ways. These guys are really going at each other. Uh, I believe this is the song. Rock a bad show on the Stern Show. That hurts fat people. <laughs> you're addicted to drugs and your comedy blows. That hurts drug addicts and comedians. Oh, hitting him where he hurts. You're such a fat pig. It's getting so sad. So climb on. Now that's cool. That's the guy cruel. lost his father to wow. a terrible accident. That was bad. No, I'm gonna, I'm, well, gonna, the, the, I'm gonna take the, the high road today. I'm gonna one thing I must I'm gonna say. I'm gonna take the high road today. <laughs> yes, but Mike, you're a wonderful soprano. <laughs> Thank you. Very yeah, he does have a good I'm voice. I'm gonna take the high road today. You're gonna take the Hershey Highway today. All right. So uh, the point maybe is, I, maybe I shouldn't apologize. I'll just shut up. Oh. Uh, Wait a minute, I thought we were Quit. having a... Because Artie, yeah, we're, we're getting close, we're getting close. We're getting close. Artie hears the song and it reminds him of that. See what I mean, Mike? It goes both ways. So when I try to broker the piece here, much like uh, uh, the Middle East... It goes, it, it goes both ways, but you have to admit, even yourself, Howard, the, the rant that has started all this discussion with George and the PSA, there was no humor in it at all. All right. So, I don't know about that. So, anyway, <laughs> let's agree now, if we can. Artie, if you tell me no, or right. Mike, well, you we, tell you know, me no. Well, we've done this before, though. This, we did a truce months ago. And, I see. The truce uh, was broken. Who broke the truce? I think it was Artie. Yeah, I think it? I broke it. It might have been Artie. It might have been he, me. I, I can't even remember. Can't it might have been Mike, yeah. Might have been Mike. Been Mike. You Mike don't even remember. It could have been me. It could have been you. Yeah. Well, as I understand it, it was triggered by you calling him fag. Oh, no, See, no, no. there is... again, that word. Right, that yeah. word is you know, and so it, appropriate. And the thing is, it's not even just Artie. There's people on the rap. A lot of people there's hate people, There's people in your staff, Howard, that have said the F word is not nearly offensive as the N word, as if there's some sort of ranking between black people and gay people, you know. Well, all right, so is there any piece... To be had here today, Artie or Mike? I think you have a good cause, Mike, but you have an insane lack of intelligence, and Not you can't bring that. it across. Artie, no, I'm serious. I think you if you found like that. a smarter, more articulate person with a normal voice and less redness on their face from. Well, I think if what. you could come in four days a week for four hours a day and not shoot up drugs on a Sunday night. You know, you we're coming to work. We're all you know, first of all, I snort drugs on a Sunday night. All right. We all them. have our faults. You know, <laughs> let's recognize that. But right. then we have good things. Robin, I don't know. I, I don't know I what don't to say. I think it's going to work. All right. It doesn't seem to work. Mike, I was trying to get this to stop. 
Uh, you know, I hate to see this going on in our little group. Yeah. We Is there a Colin way? Paul to come to mediate this. Barty <laughs> seems to be the guy who's always at war with somebody. Yeah, he and he loves Remember to... Remember Silent Richard for a while? You were I mean, he just attacked Scott Salem because Scott had an opinion. Well, Scott came know. in there and attacked me. That's true. With a very valid argument. You're bitching and whining because you have to go do stand-up comedy where you make more than most people make in a year. <laughs> and it's a fucking problem for you. <laughs> All right. Well, I can Look see... Look at your shirt. Erase hate. Can we do that? All right. Can we erase the hate? Then? Meanwhile, while Artie's being dropped from charities, I decided to join the charity. This is the shirt of the Matthew Shepard Foundation. What are you oh, going to raise? Nice. So if you want to make a joke about somebody getting what, their head What are you going to raise? Queue, what kind of money are you going to raise for that? There's other ways to help a charity other than just giving money. What are you going to do? Bring notice to their cause. Oh. Uh. All right. Well, fair enough. All oh, right. that's very noble. Yeah, that's very I, noble. <laughs> okay. Look, Mike. George, I, uh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. George, I hope you would seriously reconsider the PSA, too. Oh, yeah. No, You've I, done a lot of good work with the HRC, and this would ruin your you, credibility. George, what is your decision on the Well, PSA? you know, I, if Artie can really genuinely, honestly, you know, say that he he's going to do it uh, sincerely, then be all right. it's worth it. But okay. I don't. I don't think he should do it if he's going to, you know, maintain this posture here right now. What well, posture? Well, I mean, you, you, you know, you, the, the use of the word, the and, and you. Uh, I'm not, I haven't you, said you the word once. Funny? I haven't said the word once just now. I'm calling funny? him a bozo. You, you think the word is funny? It's hilarious when it's used properly. Under, you don't understand. And all well, hands the the word is funny. <laughs> is the N word funny? No, yeah, it, it can be, absolutely. No, it is not. Well, it can be. It's Words have power. Yeah. They have tremendous, or symbols, you know, like... I have a lot a of... I have, you, Artie, why don't you be honest? Do you want to do the PSA No. Okay. I so never, he yeah. never no. wanted to do the PSA. Unless there's sincerity, it's me. All right, so the no PSA is over, Mike. You uh, get your Why wish. doesn't he just... Why don't you... I mean, give him something he can do. He can give your, your favorite charity some money every yeah, time he that? says the F word. Well, no, what know, about that? I'll that, do that. That's what he's uh, said he'll do. But it's, yes, but it was tied money. to this PSA. But what's different than that within a life feed? It's still it's money from All the right. hypocrite. Well, listen, I don't know how to resolve this. <laughs> I really don't, and I almost don't. Robin care. took my money from me. <laughs> all right, you know, you can Artie, give me all the money. I pitch Mike. If Artie can can uh, really get himself into that state where he when he came out to me. As a gay man. Uh, I mean, that was so that believable. State, Artie. That was so <laughs> credible. Well, that was and, comedy. And, and I saw the pain. Yeah. I saw the anguish. I have I, a lot of pain. I He's saw an you actor. He's an actor. He's a wonderful actor. He is. He is. He's terrific. And if you can act He could actually honestly, act. I mean, method acting is like finding gay. something in you. That you know that uh, that is the character, right? Uh, and you're Mr. saying, please find something in you that can make you do a credible PSA. Yes, Mike. Right. Do you have any they more daytime talk shows together. you want to play before you? Well, All right. All right. Mike, uh, thank you for playing. Uh, you know what? Uh, her talk show is more successful than any fucking project you've ever done. I'm we're, on we're the Howard Stern show. On. I'm on the Howard Stern show. This is his show, not yours. Well, you I mean, want to uh, make it yours, but it's not <laughs> yours. It's his. <laughs> okay, come on. All right. <laughs> you know this. They can't. Have All one right. civil word between Mike. You've said a lot, Artie. You've said a lot, right? I don't think detente is uh, going to happen today, but I'm hoping. I for don't it. think you even made a step in the right direction. No, I was almost there, and then I played this, this, this is song. Like, yeah. this, is like, this is like when Robin intervened in the Richard Sal and Artie fight, and she only fucked it up even more. That's why you love her. You gotta love that. Well, at, at least, least effort is for being made. Not detente, uh, uh, not detente, but gay taunt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, High Pitch Mike. Let's hope that in the future more uh, more uh, dialogue can happen. But what does he do? But why? Is, what does he do for the show? Well, he I hope he works, in the, he works in the newsroom. Oh, right. I didn't and know I hope we would establish Mike is not gay. Well, all right. He isn't. He is. Go to the he movies with all the guys you want. Well, you go to movies too. With, I do. And some of them happen to be guys, right? Never. Right. Your friends. <laughs> well, coming up, everyone. <laughs> Maybe I should, before we start the whole news block, maybe I should listen to Artie's PSA. Artie, I thought that you and George had agreed that you weren't even going to record this PSA. What well, changed? I, I don't know. Well, well he all... wanted to uh, continue. He said that he's going to come up with an idea. And I said, well, uh, let's hear it. It's got to be believable. It's got to be sincere. And the public has to. I, I came up with an angle that is, uh, everything I say is truthful in it. All right, I'm on. Uh, how can know. I hear these? Hey, Art, yes. Is it already up to get 
It's just not ready yet. It's not. Oh. That's too bad. Why are they not ready? I don't know what are they. I, again, I'm hearing about okay. this for the first time. All right. I, uh, I, what I did was, it's a, it's a very simple version of right. what we were trying to do. I, it's it got to be a minute. So, yeah. you know, I just... Uh, but everything I say in there is sincere. Okay, so. we'll we'll listen to did it. Did you just do it? Yeah, yeah he just, uh, just did it. Must have put a lot of thought into it. Also, no, I did because I thought uh, I've been thinking about it for the last few nights. I begged George to let me have one more shot because these HRC people now hate my guts, right? And they can ruin your life. Sure they can. <laughs> sure that could be it for you. Well, they, they, they want to put out a big press release right. bashing me. Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> I know. Really? Yeah. I mean, you know, we're educating Artie. Right, George? Well, Hardy can play a very influential role because right. of his history. George, I have you ever smelled bad pussy? <laughs> I have. You have? Yes. So you know what it can be. I know what it can be, and I find it not very pleasant. Isn't all pussy for you bad? What? No, 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 no. Yeah? Mm -hmm. no These ones are tolerable. I, I don't think uh, I... What's, uh, what, I don't what think I'd ever find it. <laughs> what's erotic? It's uh, penis. Something else. Mm -hmm. Penis, yeah. Uh, I don't uh, think I've ever... Uh, I would ever uh, <laughs> <laughs> call a, someone else's penis even is there tolerable. Such a, is there such well, a, well, that's because of your vantage point. Is there such a thing as bad penis smell? Oh, yes, there is. There is. Yes. Just like, you know, bad vagina smell. Yeah. I mean, you know, we're no different. <laughs> right. Oh, we're a little bit. Clean different. ones, dirty ones, uh, handsome ones, ugly ones. Right. Erotic ones, dead ones, you know. Right. Dead ones? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No life in them. But bad penis doesn't smell like bad pussy. Oh, it's, it can be pretty vile. Right. You ever see, like, well, how about when a bad penis is in a bad pussy? Oh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> that's that's, that's bad head. news. <laughs> Right. Well, what can I say? So now I got the HRC up my ass. Oh, no, no. I'm eager to hear what you've got to say. And, you know, because you do have that history, you can be influential. Right. All right. All right. Well, well, we're going to listen to those when they're ready. Uh, let's get Steve Langford in here. Steve, what's going on in the Howard 100 newsroom? As Steve's been covering all the different stories. Steve Langford has a huge penis. Just some of the stories working on in the Howard 100 newsroom. What are the chances of Artie Lang getting paid for his March 22nd performance in Florida? Not an unreasonable question after some digging by Howard 100 News. The group that hosted and benefited from the Artie Lang appearance, the Cultural Trust of the Palm Beaches, a flashy group that has attracted attention recently, not all of it positive. Mm -hmm. Another recent performer at the Cultural Trust's 2008 season, Piano player Billy Stritch telling Howard 100 News his agent told him some of the travel expenses from his February show with Broadway star Christine Ebersol have not been paid by the Cultural Trust, Stritch says. Also, a Stern fan who drove all the way from Georgia, only to find out he had tickets for a 10 p.m. Artie Lang show that did not exist, was promised a refund by an official from the Cultural Trust, he says, but no refund or response, the fan says. This information directly contradicting the head of the Cultural Trust, who emailed Howard 100 News, claiming the man's ticket refunds would not be handled by his office. Manuel Borgna also telling us his group had no contact with Artie Lang or Teddy. All of this was done by a third-party producer, Borgna claims, even though Dr. Neil Berliner claims he wasn't the promoter or producer of the event. And the Palm Beach... He said he was the promoter, Neil, right? Yeah, and that's what He's... that guy's saying, too. And the right. guy, I, I, Look, I don't know... So if this... Neil, Neil isn't accurate. Is what you're saying. According to what Steve just said, according to what Bob Levy, who worked for them, uh, told me that Neil, Neil called me. Neil was the only name I had. And what this guy's saying, and this guy may or may not be shady. If you didn't pay somebody, I totally disagree with that. But for this particular situation, what he just said confirms what I thought, that Neil was the sole producer. And he's right. We didn't have contact with them. Right. We had so Neil owes you the money, then, I would imagine. I would have to think that that Neil is the guy I'd have to go to because he's the only name I have. And uh, everybody I speak to seems to agree with that. Uh, of course this I talk is, about This it. is the Rap and Granny guy? Yeah, he manages Rap and Granny. Oh, <laughs> and that's who you made a deal with. Well, uh, that, uh, listen, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, all right. <laughs> okay, no, I'm just asking. I'm trying, to, I, I'm trying to understand this. So this whole story where you didn't get paid for your concert gig upsets me. I called Artie yesterday. I was very upset about it. Yeah, I know. It was, uh, uh, I don't like it. You know, I, I don't like seeing one of my guys get stiffed. No, he went down there and he did all yeah, the work. He, he, and then some. He did a lot of uh, extra stuff, too. 
So, but you know what he didn't do? What? Is get get a signed contract with all the No, we, 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 we signed the contract. Well, I'm, almost, I'm contract. almost positive there was a contract. Well, then you can sue him. Yeah, I know, but uh, I agree that Neil Berliner is responsible. As far as I'm concerned, Neil Berliner is responsible for this money. You know, I don't know what kind of guy this guy is from the Cultural Trust. If he's a bad guy, I'm not for that. I don't know anything about it. But Neil, right. so you don't you don't have a, you don't have any contact with him. Just no, Neil. that's the problem. Neil right. should have uh, Neil so should have put me in contact so with Neil the guy. Neil should get the money for you. Yeah, right. That's okay. what I think. So put Neil. Neil, you're in charge of getting Artie's money. Right. Well. And the Palm Beach Post recently raising questions about the operation of the Cultural Trust of the Palm Beaches, citing board members past and present who've asked to see financial statements for the trust but are still waiting for reassurance about the group's financial accountability. All right, well, maybe but, maybe Neil can straighten it out for you. That's what we're hoping. This guy referred to Neil as a third-party producer. Yes. As far as I know, that's accurate. So he knows, you know, Neil owes me the money. And Neil Berliner told us that he had nothing to do with this other than inviting you, quote-unquote, uh, inviting you down to perform. Well, everybody disagrees with him, so... Well, why, why did he invite Artie and then not be not be in charge of it? Great question. Why would he do that? And where did the, all the money go? We should what? get Neil on the phone and find out. I know, well, he, I know he listens quite a bit. Are you trying to get him, Howard? Yeah, I don't... You know what? I'm going to let Artie work yeah, this did, out. Yeah, I'll, and, yeah I'll, we'll let the... I'll keep you posted. All right, let me know what happens. I appreciate it. Because I don't know anything about it, honestly. I don't know who's responsible. I don't know. Don't, I don't know, know who to call. I just know it's kind of sucky that Artie did a show and didn't get paid for it. Okay, you did go more ahead. than one, right? Yeah. I did a show and a meet and greet that I yeah. didn't know I had to do, which is more hassle than a show, believe me. Uh, go ahead. Also today on the always busy Artie Lang beat, Artie's set to board a helicopter later today from LAX to San Bernardino, California. But word is the chopper had to be upgraded to a five-seater out of weight concerns, even though only Artie, wow. Teddy, and JD are scheduled is for riding the chopper. Well, that's that, you know, a similar thing happened when I took a helicopter out to the Hamptons to see Petty. They were afraid of your weight? They, oh. they got a <laughs> We showed up and they, they got to wait for a different guy. Because of your size? The, uh, you know, I guess. <laughs> Each seat takes 150 At the pounds. West 30th Street helipad, I yeah. showed up this summer, you know, pretty, pe yeah, Tom right, right. and uh, <laughs> a couple of black guys there in the jumpsuits. So they <laughs> looked at me and went, man, we're going to need the other cop to have man. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to make you want to lose weight, pal. The no. Way a wake-up no. call. It is a wake-up call. Is. That was he's months had, ago. You know, like the, he's, been, he's had a wake-up call almost every day, Howard. So. Oh, well, this was a new wake-up call. <laughs> you know, sometimes, way. Robin, a, a, a great hotel will offer you a second wake-up call 20 minutes later. <laughs> well, let me tell you, uh, wow, I didn't know they were swapping out helicopters for you. Well, th that happened in the summer, so what this guy's saying might be true. Right. Uh, it's just me, Teddy, and J.D., uh, Wow. I'm no mathematician, but Teddy and J.D. ain't the issue there. Right. Probably you. I probably uh, weigh more than the two of them combined. <laughs> you do. Uh, anything else? Oh, fuck you, George. <laughs> Got me in trouble with the biggest gay group in the world, and now he's insulting my weight. <laughs> I calls him as I see I'll be out of show business in two fucking weeks. <laughs> James, you're on the air in San Bar Bernardino, California. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, hey, Hardy, I'm going to come see you tonight. Thank um, you. I'm just a little afraid because you've been bitching and bitching and bitching for the past couple of days about doing the show. Am I going to get a good show? Or am I going to get pissed off bitching fat piece of shit already? Oh, uh, well, uh, listen. Are you going to be in a good mood for the show? Not for this dickwad. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm just messing with you. I love you, brother. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, Artie's you know, always in a good mood at his shows. You're going to get a, actually, no, you'll get a tired, you'll get a below par show. How do you know you're going to be paid at the end of the night? <laughs> no, these guys, no, dude, you're going to, I mean, why would you think I would put on a bad show? By the time I hit the stage, I'll, I'll have been up for 20 hours. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I've done it, I've done shows like that before. It'll be good. Uh, Daphne, you're on the air. Hey, uh, Neil Berliner, that character, was on um, Greg Fitzsimmons' show. He called in, and and uh, I guess Greg was part of that show. Yeah. And um, you should play that. Why? He did, he, did he defend himself? Yeah, he, he came off as an asshole. I mean, that's sort of his... Did I mean, Greg... Uh, did so you should, you should pull it. So no one got to the bottom of it. I, I'll, I'm going to look into it. Did I'm, Greg I'm, get paid? 
Because I don't think he did. No, no, no. He was a, they, yeah, they were like, were, 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 they were just, you know. But I guess and now you have to pay all the comedians. Yeah, well, that's the thing. Because it was right. my show, uh, uh, I I want to pay. I'm going to pay Greg. So and this Ed. thing's going to cost you about five grand now. Easily. Easily. All I, right. You know, I upgraded to a nicer hotel. And yeah, I, I, love, I love you all. And I love all you. right. Thank you, Daphne. Uh, Steve, go ahead. Continue. Please. By the way, I think the information we got uh, earlier this morning was that uh, Brill and uh, Greg have been paid. Well, how is that possible? Uh, I don't know the details. Like, where did that money come from? Because that's, that's the, that they got paid directly by uh, the Cultural Trust, I believe. Really? Really? How come, uh, how come we'll I did <laughs> Why is Artie not getting paid? Big bucks. It's too much, is what you're saying? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, but it's, it's easy math. I mean, people bought tickets, so therefore there's X amount of dollars available. They, they factor all that together. And in the email we got yesterday, uh, this group claims that they weren't getting the money from the ticket agency. <laughs> I, again, 20 years, I've never heard of that happening. Never. Yeah, well, all right. Let, let continue uh, on, and then we'll may hopefully get to the bottom of the story at some point. All right, go ahead. And finally, Artie Lang on Adam Carolla's radio show yesterday, spending most of the interview talking about high pitch mic and gays. The word fag apparently dumped. Artie telling Corolla in show business, Artie has to lie about the kind of guy he is, lie and say he's not grossed out by gay sex. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, you know, Corolla agreed with me. Uh huh. Anything else? So if you see Lang news happening, call the Artie 100 News tip line 877 yeah. Sirius, choose channel 100, or email us at Howard 100 News at Sirius Radio. If you see Artie hooking up a gay kid to the back of a pickup truck <laughs> and dragging him along, please call. Right. You, you and you're going to do a PSA. Huh? I did the PSA. <laughs> this is ready. Oh, what page? Gary, page two, third column in light pink. Well, is, you, is the one marked that, uh, well, you could just play them all. Just put all four of them together. No. All right, let's see. Is this for real or a joke? No, no, no. This is completely, I, I, I thought of an angle that was believable. And everything I say is very truthful. I just hope it sounds that way. So he's going to submit this to the human rights campaign. All right, let's see. Hello, my name is Artie Lang, and I'm a comedian. Some of you might know me from the Howard Stern Show on Sirius Satellite Radio. Uh, my comedy is about many things. It's about religion, race, uh, sexuality, and sometimes it can go over the line and be what some people consider offensive. Recently, I, uh, in a rant on the show that reflects... Uh, completely on my own opinions and not Howard or anybody else at Sirius, I used uh, the word fag when referring to someone uh, who I felt was a gay person. And I understand that that uh, is probably the most offensive thing a homosexual could hear, and I'm very sorry about it. I don't mean any... Uh, where was I at? Like, um, I stopped at 50? Yeah, All right. I'm, about a little over 50. I'm trying to think if I'm <laughs> just retarded. Uh... <laughs> All right. Okay. I, I guess I guess that's, that's the only thing. That I'm enjoying the anguish here. Can I All see right, Mr. Rogers, please? <laughs> Hello, my name is Artie Lang. I'm a comedian. Perhaps you've heard me on Sirius Satellite Radio, the Howard Stern Show. Uh, in my comedy, I talk about many things, and one of them is human sexuality. I'm a heterosexual man, and uh, recently on the Howard Stern Show, I uh, went on a bit of a rant that I'm not proud of. When referring to someone who I felt was a gay man... I use the word fag, the F word, as the gay community uh, calls it. And uh, I just wanted to say that I in no way hate or condone the hatred or violence towards gay people or any other person based on their sexuality or race. Just say you're an old, uh, you should have insulted yourself. I'm an old guinea. What do I know? <laughs> that is not. <laughs> oh, wow. I believe that. Hello, my name is Artie Lang. I'm a comedian. Perhaps you've heard me on Sirius Satellite Radio on the legendary Howard Stern Show. 
Recently on the show, I went on a rant uh, that I'm not proud of. When arguing with someone who I felt was a gay person, in my opinion was a gay person, I referred to them as a fag or faggot. Oh. Uh, two unbelievably offensive terms uh, in the eyes of the gay community, and I understand why. I would just like to say that I have no hatred in my heart towards anyone based on their race, sexuality, or religion, or anything like that. I judge people individually. And uh, the last thing I would want to do would be offend someone who's gay or uh, uh, is infected with the HIV virus. Uh, am I done? This is so bad. <laughs> well, this just, is so bad. Well, 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 get just get, why don't you just go on and say this? Uh, uh, here the, we go. Here's the, the, the one. one. That, is this the one I'm going to use? Yeah, here's it's the simpler. One. Here's it's the one. Here's the one. Yeah, 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 what you think is good. Well, the, yeah. uh, well, these are the takes. You're almost at the point you're going to think, fuck it, I just hate fags. Well, uh, yeah. You know, it sounds, no. Doesn't he sound that way, George? No, George is believing. He no, sounds no. like no. a gun is to his head. Yeah. Well, no, what you ought to say, you know what, recently in my work, I won't even leave my name out of it. This is about you. You just say hi. <laughs> you say hi. This is Artie Lang, and I've used the F word. It's a word that uh, is offensive to gay people. The word fag. And you know what? I'm thinking this through, and I think it offended some people, and I'm really sorry for that. Right. And I'm going to rethink my use of that word. Yeah, but you Goodbye, might good night be and God bless. honest when you say that. I don't oh. think he has oh, remorse. I see. Oh. Yes, I do. Right, he let's, does. Let me hear. You know, you know let Artie, me hear the final DCI. one. It just like um. Uh, let's try it again. <laughs> this is great. All right. Loving the Mets and well. Hello, my name is Sal Governale. <laughs> yeah. And here we go. Hello, my name is Artie Lang. I'm a comedian. Perhaps you've heard me on the legendary Howard Stern show on Sirius Satellite Radio. Right. And I want to apologize for something. Recently on the Howard Stern Show, I got into an argument and lost my cool when talking to uh, someone on staff who I felt was a gay person, in my opinion was a gay person. In my anger, I used the word fag when referring to him and the word faggot when referring to him. And I understand that those are horribly offensive words to the gay community. And I want to apologize for those words. I didn't mean any harm. I don't have any hatred in my heart towards anybody because of their sexuality, religion, or race. I treat people individually. Uh, and um, if I in any way offended anybody out there, I'm sorry. And I will try my best never to use those words again in anger. And uh, it was only a joke. What can I tell you? Thank you. Hello, this is Artie Lang. Mm. I suspect I work with a fag. I don't believe his name is Artie Lang. <laughs> I, I, you know, uh, I like the last one. Yeah, I believe me that. No one's going to hear it know. anyway. I don't you know, know, I think if you know Artie, you know yeah. that's true. That's honest. I would just go on and say, hey, this is Artie Lang from Howard Stern Show. Look, what uh, I miss though oh. is. The $100 uh, penalty for your I said, fuck that. <laughs> yeah, I so there's a that. sincerity there. Well, <laughs> definitely. I'm sincere about that. Uh-oh. high pitch Mike is here. That's trouble. It, it's funny that he's saying he's remorseful now because he's been asked on the wrap-up show. He's been asked by Howard TV. He's been asked by Steve Langford, do you regret what you said? And he says no. Well, and, Mike, I mean, listen, you're not the police. Right. I mean, the man is now That's saying God. something, and he is uh, offering up an apology. I think we should accept it, no? I like Mike. Think he's he's regretting that he's getting heat from groups outside. You feel and it's not sincere. I don't give a fuck about you or Mike. And Mike, <laughs> how do you feel about the things that you've said about Artie? Are you sorry for that? The things I've said about Artie have been comebacks or or retorts. And they were and great. Are you sorry for that? Am I? Yes. He hasn't apologized to me he, for one thing he said. So why I'm would not... I apologize to you? I'm apologizing to the gay community. <laughs> And then he goes on Adam Carolla, who I don't, you know, I don't know how big his audience is, but he exposes a whole new audience of people, you know, yeah, to all right. the bullshit he said about me. And, I, you know, the day before he said he'd shut his mouth. So now he asked me about it. He asked me about it. I so said, I'm not going to shut my mouth. And, and, you know, when you did that ISDN test show, yes. Artie and Gary wanted to keep the secret from you who his girlfriend is. Yeah. She works downstairs at Del Frisco's. <laughs> 
She's the one with the name tag that says Cold Digger. Oh. oh. What? Wow. <laughs> I don't know her. Wow. No, I haven't looked for Gold Digger. Did, is this ever going to end? I mean, what did, what, what did he say? He said your new girlfriend wears a name tag. At Del Frisco's. So now, are you mad at her? It says Gold Digger. Are you mad at her? No. No, I'm, I'm just, just going to keep exposing you. Every time you want to bullshit with me, I'm going to keep exposing you. You know what? Could you bring your girlfriend in because I want to insult her? <laughs> <laughs> He's going to get one. You wait. You know what? I, you I used to work with my... a kid like you. Uh, you mean uh, a guy who no, uh, I used to isn't work with gay? A... No. I used to work with a guy like you. He had trouble getting girls. Hasn't been easy for you. He was an asshole, too. No, he wasn't. He was a good guy. So he wasn't like Mike. He's now married. He has kids. And he was a virgin when I met him. And he got a hot wife. So I know a lot of the bitterness comes from, you know, some social awkwardness. Ugliness. No. No, no, no. You're being cruel. I'm sorry. No, no, no. Let him be Who's cruel. Being Let cruel? him be cruel because I'm going to I'm I'm fucking give it back I'm to him. I'm being cruel? I promise no. you, Howard, I will give it back to him 100%. As long as he wants to go, I'm going to give it back. You feel Hardy's new girlfriend is a gold digger? First of all, she's not my girlfriend. Okay, look at, look at him. First of all, Look at not... him and tell me that she really thinks he's handsome and he's a great guy. Look at him. <laughs> right, I know I'm ugly, but you need to fucking admit your ugliness, too, my friend. Well, when do I, when do I say I'm no not? No girl can be attracted to you the way you look. Wow. She's you're, talking your about, you're talking about my girlfriend? Girlfriend or his? Yeah. Howard, oh, okay. I'm not talking about that. <laughs> of course he's not. Well, listen, Mike. What, what is it, uh, Gary? I'm trying to broker a, a peaceful agreement. But I got a question. I think I speak for everyone except Mike, why are you in here right now? Like, what, seriously, what is your purpose See, for being this, in it? This PSA, he said shit about what me you, that but, I have to, Mike, what did you, what did you want? Day after day after you day. always wanted an apology. So now Artie's giving an apology. You fucking. He's giving an you, apology. You, you, made, you said horrible things about him. You got the charity to fucking throw Artie out. They lost ten grand. I got, I got yeah, the charity you, you to throw them out. Yeah, you complain bitterly. So fine. So now Artie's going to make an apology. I got the and charity wait, to throw them out. Wait, how gonna, did I get the charity to throw them out? By bitching and moaning and stirring it up and everything else. By getting on the air and acting like an asshole and everything like that. Yeah, what Artie said was wrong, but you brought it up and you brought it up. Artie wanted to let you know it go. What, Gary, you gone. know his history. You know his history. I'm you chose to put him in the chair. I'm not interested in his history. You chose to put him in the chair. The guy's fucking apologizing. Go fucking somewhere else. He's apologizing. What can he do that's right? Who is he apologizing he, to? He's apologizing to the gay community. George asked him to do a PSA, and he's fucking doing it. And you're shitting on that. What can he do that's right for you? Apologize to fucking me. He's still bashing me on fucking he doesn't radio. Like you. You. He doesn't like you. I, I, I do, have to apologize to you. I hope you, you die. No, he doesn't. He, right. He hopes you die having nothing to do with AIDS or gay. He just doesn't fucking like you. He said, so I'll bash your gay head in, Gary. What the fuck do you think that is means? Is your head gay? Answer the question. Are no. you a gay guy? I've said no, asshole. Okay, so how am I bashing gay guys when I bash you? If you want an apology, that's one thing. But why are you coming in and shitting on this? You're if a... you have some sort of guilt for putting him in the charity, I have no guilt at all. That's not my problem. I have no guilt at all. That's not my problem. You put him in the charity. You're like the dweeby kid who needs constant attention. I know, and you're Mr. Perfect, I'm not, right? No, you're I'm Mr. Perfect. Perfect. No, you, you act like you're Mr. Perfect. Well, wait a you second. act like you're above everyone. I'm not mad at my... I'm not above everyone. I want a fucking apology for what he so said. So go, go, get it from, go get it from him somewhere else. This is about the charity. This is about the gay community. This is about me being defamed. I have to put up with this after day. You're not famous. What are just did in the PSA is not about you, Mike. Oh, he didn't First just say, all. I called a kid a fag. Even in uh, the apology, he's calling me a fag. God, what, wake up. Wake the fuck you up. You are the quintessential example of love me, daddy. You just yeah. need attention. You're using this show. Well, with your hold it a second. I don't agree with you. I, I don't agree. agree with you. No, I don't. When Artie and Mike fight, they both fight very dirty. Well, you uh, said, Mike, you said horrible things about his sister and did. all that. Of course did. I did. And his father. And, Artie and, and, and Artie's father. Terrible things. First of all, also, okay. that girl down at the first goes is not my girlfriend. Okay. And she's the farthest thing on earth, as far as I know, from a right. gold digger. Right. So, I mean, right. you know. So, okay. That, that, so, so that, here's what so I'm saying. Take it it's, up getting, with her. it's getting very ugly. And what I'm saying is, Artie has, you know, called you gay. I mean, to me, big deal. I'm, I Crazy Alice calls me gay every day. I could kill us. I'm not gay, and I don't think you're gay, and I don't even care if you're gay. It doesn't matter to me. I know you're not gay. Uh, but look, here's the thing. You guys are fighting dirty with one another. You should probably call a detente. Now, as far as this PSA goes, Artie has done something for George. Uh, I believe he's coming from a place where he feels sincere. It really isn't your job to say whether or not Artie is sincere on this. That's a separate issue. 
as far as his personal relationship with you, you two are going at each other in a very low blow kind of way. He, you're saying terrible things and he's saying terrible things. If it's getting very uncomfortable, you guys should declare a detente. Did I not say that two days ago? Yes. Did I say I'd shut my mouth if he would shut his mouth? Right. I, I forget about age, Mike, because I, 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 clearly you're offended by that. I hope you die in like a bad car accident where why, like, why? You, you really like, feel like that way? you're in pain for 10 years. You really years. feel that way? Oh, yeah. What are you saying? Because I don't like him. I think he's bad for the world. I, I hope you become a quadriplegic. Well, I can see where that's coming from yeah. because oh. you made fun of you uh, made fun Artie's of his father. Dad, yes. Now, Mike, so. should he cut a PSA for quadriplegics of America? No. You're a bozo. No, that's cruel. But you've been cruel, too. So you I both did. have to man up now and come to some sort of decision. Now, I'm not I, mad at you, Mike. I'm mad at the fucking kid who let you out of the locker in high school. <laughs> I'm mad oh, at that dude, gooder because oh, you, know you would have died in there of starvation. And you know what? Clearly, hold on. Also, 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 also. also uh, d don't come in here and just try to get attention anymore. Gary's right. Listen, I'm going to walk out. Nobody street. likes Listen. you. I allow Mike to come in here. Howard. Yes. I'm going to say one thing, that I won't come in here and deal with no. Artie ever again, if that's what. Okay. People, everybody hates me around here. That's fine. I, I don't, don't hate care. you. George, yeah. if you ever want to know what Artie really thinks about you, come listen to some audio I have. Oh. Well, wait, wait a <laughs> second. Wait, 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 wait. Mike, what is that about? Mike, what is that about? Oh, jeez. You know, this is getting oh. going from bad to worse. <laughs> Man. You two I, don't, I don't like know what kind of Howard, diplomat you are. You summed it up well. Right. I, that, you know, you, you, they're they're great, both very hurtful that. to one another. Yeah. I'm going to ask you, Artie, as that. a friend of mine, right. I would like a detente here. Right. Yeah. I would like you yeah, to stop, and I would like Mike to stop. This poor it's got to start from yeah. one side. You guys are Tell him to stop fucking coming into my territory. Well, who, you know, and if he says the same thing. So somebody's got to be the big guy, and you are the big guy. Another fat joke? No. no. Ah. Oh, oh, oh. I would like you to. Artie, you take the initiative. Stop and talking stop. about Mike, and Michael, stop talking about you. How's that? Let's do that. Can you do that? Mm hmm. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> that was not a sincere. <laughs> <laughs> now, who are you to say that's not sincere? Uh. Gary the retard is mad at Artie, and he's yelling at the radio. What? Is he? Every yes. retard is so, mad. So, uh, uh, high pitched Mike does have some friends. Uh oh. Gary, if you want to say something, go ahead, speak your piece. You goddamn mate, you motherfucker. You know what? I'm telling you fucking bullshit. I just heard you on the fucking monitor, you son of a bitch. What are you saying? You know, you're sitting there saying bad things. You know what? You need to do some weight. You know what's going to happen if you don't? You're going to have a stroke, you son of a bitch. Well, that's actually very smart. Now, Gary, there's some there's some uh, interesting... Uh, you are a high-pitched Mike fan, I guess. Right. And you feel Artie's out of line. Right, he is. You're the head of the High Pitch Mike fan club. <laughs> well, all right. You, you're, you, so you got mad at Artie, and specifically, you know, I mean, look, both these guys are at fault. I mean, High Pitch Mike has said horrible things about right. Artie's sister and father. Well, I know they've been on the monitor and in the other yeah, room. Yeah, and it, so that's wrong. But again, Mike also has taken a drubbing from uh, Artie. It's very, very, yes. it's very painful to me. You know what? You know what? You need to quit doing drugs and quit missing so much fucking work. Right. I, mean it. I wish you could say something I could argue with. <laughs> <laughs> he's making too much sense. You know you're winning an argument for the first time? Honestly, yeah. He's yeah. Like, yeah. Mike yeah. always says shit I can argue with. Him. Gary's making sense. You That's know right. what? You need to get out and walk more, you son of a bitch. And Gary, what about Another the hot... great suggestion. Gary, what about the hot chick from Del Frisco's? <laughs> Is she a gold digger? I don't know. You don't know that, are you? That girl have a, this girl has a lawsuit, I think. Well, I don't even know who. Who, who, who is he talking her. about? We didn't name her. <laughs> Who's he talking about? I don't even know. I don't, I don't even know, know where Del Frisco is. is. I couldn't point her out in a lineup. Oh, I don't believe oh, any. Could. I don't believe any chick from Del Frisco <laughs> is banging you. So don't worry. Right. I think it's that, okay. that, that, that's true. That's right. All right. Listen. Thank you, Gary. You've made your point, and, right. and it's a good point. Thank you. And, Yes, you need to do something about it. You know what? Next time you miss work, I'm going to sit there and I'm going to laugh at you. All right. All right. Thanks, Gary. <laughs> I appreciate it. Happy birthday. I am all right. Oops. I am all right to say about you. Go back to the moon. What? What? <laughs> Go back to the moon. <laughs> why, did we, why did we take him back from the moon? <laughs> Gary, Artie's going to send you back to the moon. Why couldn't, why couldn't we have left right. him on the moon? <laughs> He was brave, though, on the moon. i got to hear the audio he has where I bash George. Yeah, I'd like to hear that, I'm too. sure it's just your rant. He doesn't have it's any just usual, you know, bashing I'm George. Stick, I'm sure. Ralph, what is it? First of all, 
I don't understand why Artie is apologizing, making these messages. I don't. Anybody knows Artie knows he doesn't mean what he says in a hateful way. He's getting an argument. He's saying something insulting. When you get in an argument and you say something insulting, you don't call somebody something nice. Well, right. you know what? And, uh, you and don't when, use the N word, right? Publicly. Yeah, yeah. You, and it's does. it's got the same kind of meaning, it, it really power. Does. It really and does. Can we stop I here, think, George? I'll be fucking doing something for the NAACP. <laughs> I think that a lot of people are not realizing that Artie and Mike have said a lot of things in anger. You know what? This is the kind of argument you would never yeah. hear on the air. It that's got right. very that's real. That's, that's right. right. And that's so what the, I'm saying the unfortunate is, thing here. It's time to back off. And like Gary said, who the fuck is Mike? What is all of a sudden he's the moral compass of the show? Right. right. I'm not looking for a moral compass. I'm not looking for Artie to be not critiqued. I'm not looking for Mike to be critiqued. It's getting too. It's getting too intense. Yeah, he for always me. starts it too. Mike, he like he 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 grinds at Artie. I mean, he's the one who's starting this shit. All right, I, I agree with all that, right, too. All right, well, th that's why I'm you saying... You called me a fag. Just shut up, you fag. Go away. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Well, I thought we were I stopping fag. we're going to have a Ralph uh, PS. I love how everybody in the room is so... All of a sudden, they never uh, heard the word fag before. Yeah. I mean, what I've heard it, but we're not going to use it. I know, Robin. <laughs> all right, thank you very much, Ralph, for your... Uh, oh, Neil is on the phone, Berliner. <laughs> Dr. Keith Abelow is here. There's a million things to talk about, but this was something I thought we should try to settle some feuds. Every once in a while, we try to do this. We do have some internecine battles going on. There he is. That's the guy, Dr. Keith Alba. Yeah. He's helped us out in the past. Everything he tried to help us with failed, but... Yeah. You and Beth are still together, <laughs> No, Beth and I are still together. In fact, uh, Absolutely. Dr. Abelow actually helped uh, Artie for a while. Indeed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dr. Rabelo, how Hi, are you? Artie. I'm good, Howard. How have are you? you? Have you seen Artie since for any follow-up sessions? Well, you know, Artie's very sensitive mm -hmm. to my disclosing whether he comes in for follow-up sessions. Mm -hmm. Right, so you don't talk about that. But if we had had any, I'd let you know. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are you promoting? Paperback version of Living the Truth, huh? Well, it's that, and we are launching livingthetruth.com, a social network for people who want more authenticity, want to communicate with people on a journey toward empowerment. You know what you got to get? you got to get a TV show like um, Dr. Drew's Celebrity Rehab because I'm telling you, man, I got hooked that into that thing. That was some show. There yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah. No. Listen. You need a show. You talking to anyone? Yeah. Always talking to people. Yeah. Get Absolutely. a show, man. Get a reality show. That's where it's at these days. You'd be good at that. You're good at helping people. You want to try your uh, hand at something today? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm uh, here for. I well, hear that there are a few contentious relationships that we might be able to make a difference in. Yeah, there's a couple of uh, there's a couple of things going well, on. Well, we got okay. some hard cases here. Yeah. All right. We were going to try and hook you up with Yucko and his fiance because we heard that Yucko's fiance had cold feet. It turns out from Yucko she does not have cold feet. And but he says where he, is she? We haven't heard from her since. That's she right. does not have cold feet. Okay, so that's well, off the news. table. That's off the table. She's chained to a radiator. That's right. Uh, Artie and High Pitch Mike seems to be the favorite around here for resolution because Artie and High Pitch Mike, have you heard about this at all? I have indeed. Uh, yeah. Artie was offended when High Pitch Mike said, so. it's hard to even know how this whole thing started. It started out almost like a funny little rivalry and it turned serious. I don't know okay. how, it, I think it started when Artie goofed on High Pitch Mike about going down to Disneyland on Gay Week. Yeah. And High Pitch claims he doesn't even know when Gay Week was. He didn't know anything about <laughs> it. Uh, here's High Pitch Mike. Have you ever met High Pitch Mike? I have not met him before. Uh, remember uh, that day I was here? Hey, brother. Good to see you. Uh, Who are you? High Pitch Mike, do <laughs> I have it right? Didn't it start for you when Artie was goofing okay. on you that day? Remember that day I was the only one in here goofing on you about that? <laughs> <laughs> Last summer, yeah, when, when I heard about the vacation that I took, uh, everybody was laughing, and, and that was not the beginning of the feud. That was, that was us just busting balls. Okay. What started the feud? I, I, would, I would have to, to say, after being called a faggot, you know, well over a dozen times over numerous instances, right. and uh, just <laughs> it, when it went from busting balls to, you know, just verbal attacks. What about when I killed Matthew Shepard? Was it them? All right, so <laughs> you see how well they get along. So, yeah, Mike, right. where are we at? It's, I'm just trying to fill in Dr. Abelow, and he can take over. But 
Where are we at now? Are you talking to Artie at all? Has Look, it... can, I, can I say one thing? I think Dr. Keith would be more effective trying to work out the other disputes in the office because maybe Jared and J.D. can hang out one day. Maybe Scott and Jason can hang out. Artie and I, <coughs> well, excuse me, we'll Go never get along. Some jizz. You know. That's interesting. <laughs> but that's, you know, that's a kind of an invitation to me. The bigger well, no. challenges are the ones where maybe we can make a real difference. Well, I think I'm looking for a resolution where you can feel comfortable being in Artie's presence and Artie can feel comfortable being around you, where at work it doesn't have to be so tense. I don't. I know I would not like to work where it's so tense. Well, we never see each other other than when I enter the studio. So, you know, in terms of seeing each other in the hallway, that, you know. Yeah, but maybe you come to work and in the back of your mind you go, hey, I hope I don't run into Artie. You know what I mean? Uh, yes, but I, again, like I don't. I'd rather not go through with this just because I don't. I Gary, are you sensing something wrong with all the microphones? Yeah, I just, no, Mike just has to stay on the microphone. Yeah, but also I sense something. There's some noise that goes on with Doctor. Yeah, every time someone speaks, it's a, it's a. And I even, and even, but, yeah. it's gone so far. You know, it's gone from busting balls to, you know, threats of verbal and physical attacks and. It upset me the other day when I found myself yelling at Gary. You know, like Gary and I used to get along really well. Um, yeah. You know, so in other well, words, it's bleeding into other relationships. Right. That's yeah. why we need yeah. to stop this. So the fact of the matter is, stop the bleeding. It is, it is blowing up out of control. Right. Where Mike now is fighting with other coworkers. It's it, it is something that needs resolution. So, Dr. Apple, I don't know okay. if you want to, okay. Good, yeah. You. All right. And, and Mike, I totally respect the fact that you have some anxiety about even beginning the process right right have you have you been in I've, this kind of process before i've never been in like a therapeutic setting or okay you know. certainly not in this therapeutic setting or no. crucible all right this okay. is this is a tough setting but all right it's i mean tough, I, but in some ways it's a family so right so we'll work it out so here's the thing often the roots of the worst conflicts they're not inherent to the two people who are engaged in them. Artie, I'm talking about you too here, man. I agree. <clears throat> right? Artie, are you going to eat for your Artie's second? Artie's eating. Yeah. Don't Artie's eating, but this is his defense, right? right we know, right, right, we know right. Artie. My, this is my, my thing I put up. Mike, on the other hand, by the way, right, let's even look at this. Is Artie thing. putting up walls right now? He's got, yeah, there's the, this wall. Right. But, yes, he's eating, etc. Yes. Notice the difference, by the way, Howard, because you're a great student of these things as well. Yes. This man eating and seemingly distracted, he, this guy comes with his heart on his sleeve. He, he says, does. I'm so serious about this, I don't even know if I can touch it. Right. That's how, so, of course, these two guys would find each other mm. and end up in conflict because he represents, Mike, Mike, Mike represents some of the things that Artie fears. About himself. Yeah, this is a guy, he does, he's not defended by humor. Right? He, right. he doesn't raise a lot of shields. He comes in here, maybe close to, uh, I, I can't tell, close to tears? or No, no, no. No, no, no okay, tears, okay. No. But certainly, but certainly with your emotions really close to the surface. You have to understand, Mike, that that is a direct challenge to the defenses of, Artie. of my brother. Boy, that makes a lot of sense, Artie. Did Artie hear any of that? <laughs> Did you, hear, did you hear that? No. No? Where were you? I, what, what is he saying? That I'm him or something? <laughs> yeah, yeah. In other words, I'm what afraid, you're, you're him. I'm what, afraid you, of being an uh, acne-covered geek. <laughs> well, you see, that's hurtful. That's hurtful. And, and listen, let me tell you something. To think like a psychiatrist. <laughs> that's not fair. You, don't, you can't oh. absorb the barbs and take them to be about you on every occasion. Yeah, that could be on anybody. Right, because the truth is that this is at least as much or more about Artie, who finds well, I think he just your called Mike a acne-covered geek. And what? So is Artie saying, "Hey, I'm afraid that I'm going to be the geek, so I'd rather attack you." I think. Well, I think there's some of that, but I think also we've started a dynamic right now. We've started it where I've kind of put Artie on notice. We're not going to settle for. This being just about personalities, about a little conflict between you and name calling, we're going to define this as you raising a shield. Right. And so, what does he do immediately? He starts to fight as if to distract us. I don't want you, and I don't want to get distracted by this. 
And, and I want you to know that you can adopt a kind of therapeutic role. You don't have to come into work and be afraid. You could come into work and say, you know what? This isn't really going to shred my heart because it isn't about me. Keith, I just felt the need to say something funny before 5,000 truckers go over to Z100. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, thanks a lot, dude. Uh -huh. uh, go ahead, Mike. Say what you have to say. Well, I think we're still waiting for him to say something funny, but anyways. Right. Um, yeah, everybody laughing was a bad indication of that. I, I don't know how this therapy could work when no. Artie won't even try and resolve the relationships he's in, you know, like with Dana. Like, what, what do you think would make... <laughs> What you do you are, think? You're well, such a goof. Let's, let's just stay In other words, on. Mike is saying, if he won't, if Dana's giving him, yeah. pardon the expression, doctor, pussy. Yeah, um, he really cares about what he Dana He really has cares to about what Dana has Mike between is her a legs. pussy. Well, Mike's saying, what do I have to offer well, in terms nothing. of... Uh, let's give the answer right now. I'll tell <laughs> you what you have. Not you, a thing. No, it's not true. You have common ground in terms of what? certain things you've suffered through. No doubt, right? Really? Be because these two guys wouldn't have identified each other for this conflict if there wasn't something deeper that could connect them. That's my theory. Let me add one other thing. Yes. People tiptoe around Artie. Everyone that works on this show, including including Howard to an extent. <laughs> and I'm the only one who's I'm the only one who's ever called him out on shit and that's part of the reason for this dispute. Do you yes. tiptoe around me, Howard? I don't believe I do, no, but I Mike does. I'm Mike thinks but Mike, maybe that's the problem. Dr. Robin Keith is sitting into something. You see yourself as some sort of crusader around here who has to call no, Artie not, out. I mean, I'm, not I, I'm here to have fun and do comedy. Me, I don't really look to call anyone out on the show. I, you're, you're an enormous you know. asshole. Oh, well, hold that's on. That's not fair, is it, Dr. Keith? I was what talking to Keith. Oh. Oh. Well, that's, well, that's, that's, that's fair. fair. That's fair. Right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I think you call Mike an enormous asshole. I was talking to Mike. You were talking to With Mike. The, Mike. I'm not trying to crusade anything, Howard. It's just if I'm attacked, I'm going to attack back. Yeah, and Okay, and that's where I was going to go. sweetie. Because we're going to try to open this up a little bit. This is not the first time, no doubt, that you faced what you consider to be something of a bully. Oh, no. I mean, yeah, yeah I in high school all the time. They so were, Artie is never. And again, I so, said this the other day, Keith. I'm not mad at Mike. I'm mad at the do-gooder who let him out of the locker. <laughs> really, that kid deserves to get a fucking smack in the face. <laughs> well, just to continue on, oh, and by I the way, suffocating. take this to be his attempt to keep you at bay in no, terms of your emotions listeners. and humanity. And keep <laughs> listeners no, glued Artie, to their... Artie also has to compensate for the last 20 years. He didn't have that masculine, you know, uh, father figure, so he's got to project this super, you know, macho uh, attitude on the world. What was your father like? My father was fine. My father did an excellent job. Is he dead? No. Oh. Okay, but you I'm did sure have a tough time from with from people there. preying upon you. <laughs> yeah, but not to the extent of this guy. Okay, but... I'm an ogre. When was it? What was it? What happened? Oh, I mean, just a typical bullying, you know, like kids in your class throwing gum in your hair. That kind of thing, you know, kids knocking you out of the way in the hallway. Right. Bullshit like that. Yeah, right, right. But listen, but but it caused you pain. You bet. I uh, hope. No, because I would go home that day and forget about it the next day. Like, what would you do with this? It's it? constant. It's day after day after day after day. It's it's relentless. Right. Right. Now, Artie. Yeah. You're there, buddy. I'm here. What is it about? I have to be here till 11. What is it about him that that uh, makes you engage? <laughs> there's a there's obvious cruelty to your, you know. Yeah, already answered some oh, questions. Yeah, Seizing please. him with. Keep yeah. asking a question. Why him? Why why high pitch? Well, he keeps coming in here. If another asshole came in here, I talk about him. My job is to talk about people. <laughs> Could you swallow before you before you go into <laughs> How therapy? How much more coffee cake? I'm sorry. His but why not? Up. See, I think that why, why not? The least I could do is swallow, like Mike. Oh, oh wow, well, that's so unfair. See, like how long? Like, do I really need to go through this? No, right. you're right. You're don't right. leave. I nah, mean, don't. It's, what's going to happen? I'm sorry to yeah, interrupt. Of course. You. Uh, it's going to keep going and going until one of us explodes. We've seen already explode with Sal, and I'm afraid to see how I'll explode because you know. What right. are you going to do? The, ki the kids in Columbine were bullied, too. You know, maybe. Uh -oh. I don't want to well, come in. Well, right. How do we take, right. do we take that leaving. statement? See you guys. Yeah, it doesn't sound good. <laughs> yeah, no, that's. So. But you would never do that. I would never oh, do that. Dude, but what I'm saying would. is, I don't know how I'll explode. You know, I would never go to that. Yeah, well, how would you. So, Columbine's. What are we supposed to. 
What get out of that look? statement. His yeah. point is that he he's going to kill us no, with a gun. No, he's saying that, but he he's saying explode. he could explode. What, 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 and he doesn't what would want you to kill himself in that in that light. He wants to I don't maintain. Know, I might grab whatever's on Fred's desk and chunk it right. Just I don't know what I could do. You right. know. All right. So at least we've boiled it down to he could throw a paperweight so that we don't have to worry about ammunition. Well, that could kill someone too. So you know, he's saying I I don't want to put myself in a position where I'm going to get angry. He physically assaulted another coworker here, and nothing was done. I think we should call the FBI at this point. Well, let me ask you, what could you, rather than focusing on what's being taken from you, right, by Artie, and I know you feel vulnerable, what could you get from him? What would you like to have from him in terms of support? My car. He's a big guy. No, nah, come on, Artie. He's a big guy. He's very capable. He's got humor. He's got I, I and protection. You have I what would you like solution, instead? I proposed a solution last week that I said, if you can stop talking about me, you know, whatever bullshit you say, I'll do the same. So what does he do the next day? He goes on the Adam Carolla show for 20 minutes, you know, exposing a whole new audience. No one heard that. So, Artie, what would it take to take this kid under your wing, if you will? <laughs> Might as well shove can that you, shot can that out my window. Him, can there you was be also, a big brother to him? We, there was also oh, a mysterious absolutely. edit in the no, Jimmy really. Kimmel show. If you saw Jimmy Kimmel Friday, there was a, yeah. a real choppy edit that I'm wondering what he said. Was yeah, there an edit uh, in the Jimmy Kimmel show? There was an edit, yeah. There was. And what was that all about? I called Mike a fag. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> on the Jimmy Kimmel show? Yeah, no one knew. Who's Mike? And I had to explain. <laughs> Mike, here's the thing, right? <laughs> Okay. Mike is right. The guy's going to uh, shoot Mike, us all. I, I, listen, why can't there be a daytime between these two? Guys? Let the, there, let the there audience wait and let's see what they have there to say. Can't, you can't. know what? I do wonder right. why Artie won't let Mike off the hook. It just seems because, to me. Did I initiate this? Well, wait a minute, thing. Artie. It <laughs> seems to me you have so much more ammo. You have so much. You know, like you, you just come down on him like a, a ton of bricks. What do you think? Time. I prepared this? Uh, uh, is it? Uh, uh, am I to be uh, uh, Dave, go ahead. crucified because I'm witty? Let me hear what the audience is thinking. Dave in New Orleans, we're here with uh, Dr. Keith Abelo, who is trying to help us through a very difficult, tense office we'll situation for real. I love Mike. I love Artie. I like to see these two guys get along. Uh, the paper. Right, right. Yes, okay. Dave. Yeah, this is getting funny because uh, Artie, the one thing that Mike keeps putting on digs on him is that he hires hookers. Well, gee, now he's going to be what, a politician? He does heroin. Okay, now he's up in the same echelon with all the rock stars I grew up with. Mike was saying the other day that he defamed him by saying, call him a fat. Because, you know, they call him a fag. Well, I think being defamed was happening way before, like when that Siobhan sit on his face. Yeah. All right. Well, let's your... Marianne, go ahead. Oh, it's getting way out of hand. Artie, you could be his father. You don't know when to rein yourself in, Artie. You argue with everybody, Artie. You got your, you, you're bigger up there. You got a bigger position. Why don't you weigh off? You're not even taking this serious, Artie. Everything you know. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. Wow. Uh, Axel, go ahead. God forbid the... a comedian Axel... takes everything as a joke. Axel, go ahead. Hey, Howard, how you doing? Hey, now. Hey, listen, this whole thing started because that blotchy-faced faggot was talking shit about Artie when he started falling asleep on the air. This whole thing is a self-serving vehicle for that faggot just so he could get on the air. Fuck him. Uh -huh. Artie, you're the man. I love this guy. I, I love you, buddy. All right, well, there's somebody who sees it that way. Roger, finally, how do you see it? Hey, Artie, I'm a big fan of yours, but i got to tell you, I really am sensing some sexual tension between the two of you guys. I agree. I think he wants my, me to fuck him. Maybe you want no, him. No, it's not that. Maybe he's not gay, so why are you me. seeing him as gay, then? Oh, you know oh that's right. He's not gay. i got to keep reminding myself. Artie, okay. everybody has a price, and I know that you like making money. How much money would it take for you to deep tongue uh, Eric, uh, Mike? All right. Uh, well, listen, I'm Dr. Too Abelow, much I don't think this is going well. Is there any advice you can give me so that these guys, what would you Absolutely. suggest in a tense situation? Yeah, get Absolutely. a bulletproof vest. No, no, here's the thing. I, I, think, I think that what you have is you, really, we've got Artie having grown into the person he is. He's so capable, right? right. He's verbally capable. He's got his humor. He's a big guy. Right. Right? And, and he's got women and everything else, right? Right. And he looks at Mike. Mike has none of them. And, and he's afraid he's going to go back to that. Well, I think that he he has he doesn't feel he can appreciate the good qualities of this person. I Mike haven't is seen that guy because he sees it packaged with some things that cause you some fear. No, 
How about Listen, being Keith, his big let's brother? Simple, let's How about being his big we brother? We have a bunch of normal people. You we yourself. have a bunch of normal people working with a weirdo. And Dr. No, no, Keith, listen. Dr. Keith, but it's a direct question. Can you be you, a big brother? Could to him? you be a big brother to him? No, no I would rather no, fucking no, no. shoot myself yeah, in the head. Wants that. Nobody wants that. What the issue nobody is? Wants, is <laughs> nobody wants that. What the issue is? He's been coddled all his life. Of course, I have. By his mother, by his relatives, even here. Even here, you I know, know, he I hasn't don't... really been coddled, though. See, that's yeah. the thing. I'm not sure you can appreciate what he's been through. I know he can't appreciate what you've been through. How many kids in your family, by the way? Uh, two. I mean, you... two plus myself. Any Three. normal kids? You and two, two others. Sisters. Two sisters. Okay. Okay. Interesting. You don't have a lot of experience with this kind of brotherly Men. thing. Men. What you need to do is you have to be the one, the bigger guy, to put down the gauntlet. Right. You have to be the one, even though... It's up to Mike? It's up to Mike to say, you know what, I'm not going to engage at all. It won't last forever, my friend. And what you want to do is coax this guy to be able to relate to you in a positive way. Don't engage. Don't fight back. I know you were bullied. I get it. So you're ready to defend yourself. I understand that, and people misinterpret it. Oh, he wants to be on so the So he air. should be like Gandhi, in other words. Yes, I was going to say that. No matter yeah. what shit they heap on him, he, he's got to be a man of peace. In this case, because Artie ultimately has a beautiful and great heart, mm -hmm. it's not going to last forever. You right. can break through. I like through. this advice. What about a hunger strike, if he's going to really be like Gandhi? <laughs> yeah, I don't like the strike. hunger strike. That, I, that I could use. <laughs> Maybe you should go on a hunger strike, and Mike will try and turn the other cheek. How's that? Is, Let, that, is that a resolution to this or that thing? Hey, listen, that's fine with me. All right. That's some, that's some uh, thawing in the relationship. But there is. Listen, every time he says to you, you're gay, you're this, you're that, take it as a, as a joke, not about you. And, and think of one thing about him that instead of coming back at him with a barb, well, you were coddled. Uh, you aren't, uh, aren't, aren't uh, in good relationships with women. Find a few things to compliment him about. He'll be disarmed. You say, oh, Artie, you're very handsome today. Oh, um, thank oh. you, Mike. Wow. <laughs> I this can is see that. very awkward. Well, well, I would, <laughs> let me, let's try that. Yeah. Mike, can you well, say I something nice? Try it. Can you Why say something? Let's what see you, if it works. I let's just want to get back. Not even for you will I do that. No. Mike, let me ask you a question. Hold it. Forget, don't do it for me. I just want to get back to where me doctor. and Mike could play softball together again the, and I get beers. I bet you if you said something nice to Artie, it would melt him. I just believe it. And him. not right away, but it wouldn't melt him right away, you know. but it would be a beginning. What's Honestly, one thing you admire happened, about him? I'd probably deck him because I think he's well, Now, him. see, he's telling you not to do it, but don't let him get away yeah, with that. Yeah, he wants to keep it. One, thing, you one would, thing I admire. Well, and make it real. <laughs> it is. Not uh, a joke. It will be real. I admire the way he still is very, very proud of Beer League, despite the fact that it was a uh, horrible, uh, horrible <laughs> box office no, we, we, we won't. We're not going to accept that. Would you look at Keith when you say that? Uh, we're not going to accept that. All right. All right. I'm something something <laughs> really, is Really, really. Look at him. Can, 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 can I give you advice? Yeah. yeah. Tell him you like his beautiful chins. <laughs> right. That's what I would do. <laughs> no, no, seriously. Sincere, say something. sincere. When he's out. I think the show misses something because he has good one-liners on the show. I think he's great on the show. Well, that's very huh? nice. That's there a great go. start. That's there nice. you go. Artie, uh, what do you think of that? Mike thinks you're great on the show when you're out the show. He stalkers. misses you when you're not here. Um, God. What do you think of what he just said? Not much. Uh, it's okay, though. Yeah, what do you think? Let me try to think of something good to say about him. No, I didn't no, ask you to say anything good. Oh, good. Oh, I well, asked you, what do you think of what Mike just said? Honestly, I'm being I'm being real now. Uh, I don't care. You don't care. No. Okay. Well, Why would I care? Right, you know enough. what? And and here's what I would say because we want this to be somewhat of a lasting solution. And you know I'm on call. Uh, but can I tell you something? You see, Artie didn't put him down. He just no, said, I don't care. Right. That's what I, Exactly. See? It works. He said, I don't care. Well, I didn't finish the sentence. But... Well, and see, <laughs> we don't want to call Artie see, out too to much. Now right, you've given right. me help, Dr. Ablo. I'll tell you who got the most help today, me. Now I know how to handle these two guys. Okay. I listen to you. I saw what you just said came true. He is good, this Avalo. I'll tell you why. <laughs> he is good, this Avalo. When you said that, Artie didn't insult you. And then he came back. Then he tried to say, I didn't finish the sentence. But he didn't insult you. Mike, you how do you did, see yourself you killing me. us all? A Glock? What do you think? I never, yeah. said, I never said I would kill don't everybody. Engage. Don't engage. But I know. Can I, what else do you like about Don't go Artie. down to my level. Right, exactly. See, what does he do? See, now I know what to do. Now I know what to do. Yeah, Mike. You, you, you and let me. me say something. Mike was great. To be the bigger man. Huge. Huge. To I say 
that he appreciates Artie. I love this solution, too. So he's going to just keep saying compliments to me, and I can say whatever I want? <laughs> right. Well, That's right. Oh, great. But All you're right. not going to say Keith, whatever you want. Yeah, but you know what, you're Artie? You won't want to. Say you won't nice want to eventually. You won't yeah. want to. You're I'd gonna, send him you're going to feel like a jerk. So I could just sit here while he compliments me? Yeah, yeah. that's right. You okay. can. The right. truth always Let's wins. Let's move on to jazz. I'm asking you for genuine things. You said something genuine. You said when Artie is not on the show. That's right. All right. And you know what? As you as you go through the day today or tomorrow or the next day and you want to maybe send him an email, no, make sure it's no well. I know you say that. Wow, but Mike, that hurts. I know you say that, but d don't react. <laughs> what yet. would I do Think without your it. email? Because listen, there isn't the potential for terrible conflict in a work situation like this unless right. there's the the potential for great synergy. Right. right. For real, real you friendship. You would be so close, Mike. Friendship. What do you think? Really? We need to do a song parody together? No. The two of us? No, no. Oh, no. I'm, just yeah. saying, I'm just saying. Something very interesting happened here. Dr. Abelow is not full of shit. A lot no, of these I, TV I doctors he's are smart. full of bull. He's smart. Artie's intimidated by any sort of therapy. Uh, or uh, uh, Easy, easy, uh, easy. Uh, no, no, Only no, compliments, no, no, no. douchebag. <laughs> I'm going along with it. I'm going along with it. You got to accept uh, this treatment. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, Mike. All right, listen. You Mike, got a tough job, Mike, but I know you can do it. All yeah. right. Uh, yeah. It's a tough... Yeah, tough... Say something nice just so we end on a good note, and I'll just... I've uh, said plenty of nice things. Well, well, let me hear something nice. Let me hear something nice. That's not the no, deal. No, 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 no. Well, that's not what? the deal. I sit here and eat while you don't let nice him exhaust. It. Don't let him exhaust your empathy because ultimately it's irresistible to him. He, he, he's he, trying to... He's going to try to get... He's like the devil. Yeah. He's going to try to get to you. He's going right. to try and say horrible things so that you'll say something mean and, and continue this pattern. You have a beautiful family. Thank you. Oh, oh well, that's nice. Wow. Well, you, you admire his family. Yeah. I've, I've heard them speak when Beardley came out. They, they're they very proud of Artie. Right. His mom and they his sister. Like beautiful yes. people. They're, yeah. they're good people. Wow. Well, very nice. What do you think of that, Artie? What? You know? I'm, I don't have to say anything, right? You don't have to say anything, but what do you think of that? What do you think of what Mike says? He, he misses you on the show him. when you're I, not here, I and he thinks you have a terrific family. I agree with both things. Oh, do you want to say anything to Mike? No, I agree. Okay. Good. That's, this is, and, good. that's crazy. Right, let's move on. It's a start. Marty, I think you're a great dresser. I think you dress. No, now you're being oh, sarcastic. Yeah, 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 you're, you're, see, you're, gonna, you're getting sarcastic. You're getting sarcastic. Yeah. Only nice stuff, ass wipe. <laughs> well, <laughs> see, see? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right, but that's okay. That wasn't that's my okay. fault. I don't want to do that. You fucking All gotta right. go against the deal. Both these guys have experienced <laughs> some amount of emotional <laughs> turmoil and violence yes. in their house. They uh, Debbie, both are very competent. Debbie, though, you're like. on the air. You're listening to Dr. Abelo. His paperback version of Living the Truth is in stores now. I think you need to read it. And you can check out Dr. Keith's self help network at livingthetruth.com. Yes, go ahead, Debbie. Um, you need to get Keith Abelo out of there because, that, because I think it's so too much more fun when they fight with each other. Oh, you like the fight? <laughs> oh, all right. so yeah, yeah, Dr. Abelo, you're ruining no this. I'm loving this. this. But, I, but I do love Keith Abelo's books. Well, there you go. Uh, well, he thanks. likes that. Thank you all, so much. All the fiction ones. Ah, right. All right. Thank novels. you very much. And get out of there now. All right. Oh, well, get out of there now. Don't, don't ruin that bit. <laughs> You're going to ruin this fight. Keith, would you, wanna, uh, would you give us a homework assignment where I think Mike should go home and write down a lot of nice things to say about me, and I'll just, you know, do nothing? Can he just do one a day? Yeah, right. that would be great. Just uh, think of something Candace, nice. go ahead. You can do my plugs. Yeah, there you go. Hey, now, uh, this is bullshit for one reason. I remember when Mike started coming into the studio when he was first, when you guys first came to Sirius, he tried to stir up the pot with Robin about how he hated her and the news person that hated Robin. That didn't go over. Then he saw the Sal and Richard thing. Then he came in with the Artie, and I'm going to be the man to stand up to Artie and said vicious things, hoping that Artie would throw a CD at him. So this is all bullshit. It's Mike. Mike is who he is. He loves this. All Artie did was laugh. Are you saying Mike loves airtime and that yes, he is actually a Artie genius did. behind getting himself uh, on the air? Is that what he is that your uh, accusation? You how he used to come in and talk to Robin. Mm -hmm. and Mike, what about her? that? Is any can, of this? Can, I, can you... I attack this concert? Do I have to compliment oh, her too? Uh, no, you don't have to compliment <laughs> her because she goes that, into every she goes into therapy. every single show on these channels with, with bullshit theories. TV. Yes, is there any part. truth to the theory that I'm you, of course, are you? I don't know what your career goal is, but. I would I imagine offered, you I would offered, like to get on the air. No, and... I offered to walk out of here this morning. No, and actually, yeah, I was just going to say, okay. he said, I don't think this will help. Okay, so but, this is uh, not a true theory. And the theory. difference is that
that he and Artie got it to this level, whereas it was resolved organically between the two of us. This was a lot of hard work. All right. Well, <laughs> yeah. This was a lot of, but you know Jeff what? Jeff the Drunk is on. A lot of potential here. A lot of potential. I, I like I like what you did today. What? Mike is an asshole. Why do you say that? Because he was talking about, oh, all my kids were picked on, too. What the <laughs> fuck does that mean? <laughs> I know, Jeff. I'm with you. Well, what it means is he's saying that he doesn't know what he would be capable of doing if I he was bullied. He's capable of killing everybody. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think yeah, he is capable I'm of I'm with that. Jeff, man. I'd, I'd head for Z-Hills. All right, Dominic, you're on the air. I want to ask Audie one question. Audie, will you ever forgive what he said about your sister, no matter what he does, <laughs> no matter what he says, and a fellow like you, protector of the family, the oldest male, would you ever forgive him? Uh, no. Uh, First of all, you, you know what? You see, Dr. Abelo is saying if Mike really adopts this new philosophy, things that were said in haste, will be forgiven. And he just offered such an olive branch. Oh. He said, you have a beautiful family. Yeah. I, don't think, way, I don't think Mike should be allowed to adopt them. And though. Dominic, like a true attorney, just led the witness right into having to say no. no. But, but the bottom line to it all is, is that what he said... Would you, him, as an Italian yeah. male, ever forgive? <laughs> anyway, as the patriarch of, of the As the head of the family, <laughs> would you... Now ever, you're a first child. <laughs> yeah, I mean, be a masculine uh, child. You know what? <laughs> Never get in trouble have Dominic no. up against you. You know? <laughs> Hey, Artie, if he blows his brains out, will you forgive him? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. All right. Thank you, Dominic, for that beautiful phone call. Well, let me tell you, it's uh, it's been a very tough session this I morning. I do believe there's been some movement. There, there. has been movement. Uh, yes, Mike. Howard. Yes. I think this is a serious... We can't pass up what he said about Columbine. I mean, he is a, that's a serious statement to make. I think you all need to be careful the next couple of weeks coming in. I don't think so. I think oh, that that's Howard, a... You're clear. That, I, how, no. how does he make a comment like that? What he's saying is... Where you, saw people, you saw people were bullied and they did pain. terrible things. Listen, listen to me, you googly eyed fuck. Oh, you made some God. ugly statements about Artie's family and shit like that. We're not... How play some of them songs he made about... Let me make this promise right now. If I go Columbine, it's going to be at your house, so nobody here has to worry. What are you, googly eyed bastard? I'd smack you right. No, no. Well, wow. Wow. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of healing that was done here today. I don't want to undermine that. I think that guy made some excellent points. I think with Mike and everyone, though. Yeah, right. No, but. One person at a time. It's tougher because, you know, when you actually are this close to Mike, you get a sense that this is somebody who has had to endure some amount of razzing and this and that. And, of course, he, f he says, oh, I can go nuclear. You don't understand. I'm the one who can challenge the oh, world. Oh, he's insanely geeky. Well, it's, hey, <laughs> easy, dude. Hey, it's, you just you know, have to listen, my, Artie. I'm but just, I'm no clarifying don't, don't what Keith just to said. That. He has tremendous Pete, strength. Tell him about his family again. <laughs> yeah. Seriously, help you me with this. Help me. Help listen, me. You, the, the source of your strength was evident here today because you yes. were able to AZT. do this. And that, no, don't even don't don't react go there, to that. Right? Mike, don't even go don't there. Let to... me ask you something, Dr. I Jim. love this fucking agreement. Is It'll it... wear you down, brother. Is there something... <laughs> oh, my Mike's a better man there... than I am. Is there something to what some of the... It's just a some joke. Callers... It's just a joke. Well, let me ask you Oh, this. my God. I mean, I'm going to leave if he's going to pick going to the fucking card, agreement. Card, card. Is there something to what some of the callers have alluded to that Mike is used to? This is his interaction with the big guy. With people. And so maybe he would invoke that simply because that's the only way he can have an interaction with well, I think that there's some credence to that. There's some real substance to the fact that patterns get repeated, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? But this is one instance in which it didn't take very much for him to break the pattern. So we tested him. We said, how okay. deeply ingrained is it? It worked. You did it. You don't have to keep going over it. I heard it. <laughs> Mike, it works. you got to listen to Dr. Abloh. And, and you Artie, can call me up. Artie, you, you actually did warm up once uh, Mike was uh, a different way I'm with you. I'm struggling here, too, man. Uh, Jeff, you're on the air. Quickly. Yeah, how's it going? Hey. Hey, every time Dr. Abelow's come in, you've constantly been calling him Abelow. I just uh, think... <laughs> That's his name, Abelow. <laughs> Dr. Keith Abelow. I think it's Ablo, not Abolo. Is your name Abolo or Ablo? Ablo. But oh, I don't like that name. <laughs> yeah, I know. Actually, you're Abolo. <laughs> you're Abolo now. All, that you that works. Right. Kathy Chermel, our 
you know, mutual friend. I always Ablo. likes it. I She's stand, like, I like the way he says that. I stand corrected. Ablo. Oh. All right, just get it right. Thank you, Jeff. You're right. You're right. I should have the man's name right. Uh, what is your name again? Dr. Yeah, Keith right. Ablo. All right, listen, Mike, I don't know if this worked in your mind, but it did in mine. I Do you think... feel a little bit better? Not until I hear nice things. Well, uh, I... again, uh, w were you in the same room as me during this therapy session? That's not the deal. <laughs> it's okay. You're, you're going to be more powerful than that, right? Yes. Ultimately, I'm being we, we saw it. We saw it. He's 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 going to try. He's going to be like the devil. He's going to poke at you and keep trying you to get you. Kill him with kindness. Can, with... can I ask Dr. Ablo a question? Quickly. Is it wrong to qualify all all this hate? Knowing that once Howard retires, he'll go back to being a nothing. Uh, uh, you, did you can't asking, erase it. Can I, can I, can you, I, can you I rationalize it? Now, you know what, Mike? You, back. Wow. you can't take back. What a shame. You can't take back the uh, the shame. very clear from your heart statements that he has a beautiful family wow. and that you miss him no, when I'm he's not those. here. I meant those. And and you know what? Neither one of you are going to go back to being nothings. You, you're both something. And um, you right. wouldn't be talking to each other if uh, there weren't a good reason for what you could do for each other. All right. Well, yeah, trust I'm gonna leave, me. I'm going to leave it on that note. I can see it's hard for you to stick to this plan. I you're you're, you're going to have to be well, the bigger new. man. It's new. How about some? Yeah. How about some willpower, there, buddy? Yeah. All right. All right. All right. Listen. The paperback version of Living the Truth is in stores now, which I congratulate you on, Thank Dr. You, Dr. Keith Ablo. Check out Dr. Keith's Self Help Network at LivingTheTruth.com. This man has. Proven himself to be worthy. Yes, he's in my coming opinion. here and taking on every challenge we've given him. And this one, I didn't even think there'd be. I really didn't think you'd have a solution. I would have just put my hands up and left. <laughs> uh, you stuck in here, and you did have a take on this thing. Well, you've created this that idea, environment. This I, is a family. There's a family that can resolve good. its differences. I got it. I'm giving you my endorsement. Thanks, brother. I appreciate. I mean that. that. I really appreciate. Impressive. That. Thank you, my friend. Impressive work today. I don't know where, what fucking planet you come from, but you're all right. <laughs> really? I, I, you know, what kind of guy is so sensitive? I thought of this solution weeks ago, but I didn't think you'd go for it. Oh, really? Uh, you wanted... you had this in mind? <laughs> I was going to suggest, look, what if I just always insult him and he doesn't say anything? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I thought you guys would think I was nuts. It's different when it comes from the doctor. Oh, well, I'm glad I went through this right. the proper way. Oh. Very strong guy over there, Mike, and, and similarly right, behind Mike, the wall. Mike, anything you want to say before I end this? No, no. Uh, I, I think he did some good. Yes, uh, I agree. Yep. Handshake. Very nice. Fact, yeah. uh, Artie, anything you <laughs> want to say before we end this I session? just want to say that, uh, you know, uh, Mike's verbal bullets are nothing against my armor of self-confidence. And right. you should feel the same way about my verbal bullets. Oh. And I look forward to. Uh, Is he reading nice. your book? And I look forward. That's to, nice. And I look forward I to so. a, a relationship where I horribly, viciously insult you, and you don't say anything. <laughs> oh no! But before he said that, he said, "Don't worry, your armor is stronger than my bullets. Mine is stronger than yours." Basically saying, "You'll be okay. We're going to work this out. Right. We're uh, not going to be that fierce." The, uh, all right. Uh, all right. Well, thank you. Nice. Beautiful. Yeah. All right, I'm going to end this. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Artie. And Dr. Ablo, thank you. And thank you, sir. And we'll be back right after these words. <laughs> High pitch Mike, we'll ask you one question. Are you gay? Are you ready to answer that under? Let me just explain something real quick. Go ahead. Before, you see me as some kind of... Uh... Party pooper. He's not dead or uh, no, no, uh, no, no, no. Here we go. I pitched this a year ago on the air. I said go ahead. directly to Mr. Lang. Said I'll take a lie detector on my sexuality. Okay. If you take a drug test. Uh, he'll, he will answer the questions about his no, new no, not here. answer the questions. If he would take a drug test, he not, was not so what we knew, not so we hear stories. Listen, of what listen, he did. Forget Artie. Stop tying your whole life to Artie. Wow. Are you ready? I'm not tying my whole life to Artie. Are you willing to go in the chair? And answer if you're gay or not. People yes or no, you don't have to answer it. No pressure. Well, I'm just saying, people already have a perception of me. Right. Whether so it's, right, whether it's it right, right or wrong, people are going to view me with, however they right. want. Right, I understand. Can you go in the chair, please? Not make it 27 different stipulations. I don't I, there are no stipulations. Right, good. Forget about Artie's drug test. Let's assume Artie's on drugs. See, the guy has to lie. He's a drug addict. All right, all right. All right. So <laughs> let me just give you... <laughs> Lying is his business. Lying is his trade. <laughs> I'm okay? not going to waste my time with lie detector tests. <laughs> There's two scenarios. One. I'm just going to ask you the question. I, I, you I hear you, and I'm telling you. There's two scenarios. Yeah. One, I say no. Go ahead. And I'm nervous already. Just All I've right. never done a you lie detector. You can say no. Go so ahead. even if I'm nervous, right. he reads it as okay. he's lying. Right. 
Are you willing to do it or not? I really don't care to. Wow. I mean, you, you guys have a perception of me whether or not it's right or wrong. No, uh, I don't, I don't have, any have any perception. Oh, oh yeah. Art is, great. Art, is, Art is created a perception of me over the last Artie, two Artie, years on this no, show. No, no, no. I don't think I've affected their opinion of you at all. I don't know, because we had a we had a pretty decent truce going I on. I pitch my Are know. you willing and to now, just sit? No, and now you're going to Canada. I get emails you're going to Canada and saying shit about no, me. No, no, no. I didn't go to Canada and say shit about me. I was doing my stand-up back. And a guy yelled out your name in a negative way, and I was defending you. That's exactly That's what happened. How, how did you defend him? That's exactly what happened. What did you, what you say to defend I him? I said to the guy, uh, no, he's not gay. And then a whole bookstore of fans in L.A. Right. You, you opened Mike, 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 Mike. Are you willing to sit in the chair and answer the following question? Are you gay? Uh, let's see how the test works. All right, go Try ahead. It. All right, there he goes. High pitch, Mike, throwing oh, the headphones down. He doesn't down. seem happy about it. He doesn't seem happy, but he's willing to do it. The game uh, is a team player. He says everyone's got a perception, but this is a way to this is a way to clear it up. Well, he's claiming that he can't win because he's already nervous. Ed Torian is slapping the headphones on and preparing High Pitch Mike for the question of his lifetime. He looks like he's going to the depths. Yeah. Would, would you have a little fun, Mike? <laughs> like you look like you're ready to hang yourself. <laughs> you want me to have fun? Put some uh, Michael Jackson or Madonna in the background while we do this. Well, so then we don't have to ask the gay question. <laughs> <laughs> then, okay. then this whole test wouldn't be nice. Well, I, I love, how, hey, you you keep, some tests I love how you keep calling me gay when you're the one who had jizz on your chest. Well... Do we have to bring back that up there? Oh, that's a good point. You look like James Cagney at the end of Angels with Dirty Faces. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little Michael Jackson music. And then we're going to get to the main attraction, Richard Belzer, who tells me he was sick. And that's why he couldn't show up at a charity event. <laughs> okay. All right, Mike is strapped in. I can see Ed Torian is almost ready. He is applying the high blood pressure cuff. No, the blood pressure cuff. Is That's it. No, it'll be high in a minute. <laughs> mm, look at this kid. Mike is now having his finger inserted into the lie detector machine. This is a very involved process. Yeah, there's three things. It's it's measuring your heartbeat. Just look straight across your heart. Okay, buddy. That's it. It's measuring your pulse through your finger. Right. And uh, and it's measuring your blood pressure. Right. Ed Torian, you are considered an expert in this field, and I am ready for you to begin the process. I know you're going to have to ask a couple of sample questions. Right. Go ahead. Okay. Mike, are you nervous? Am I n real quick, am I not supposed to hear the show? Yeah, but now you're now, now you will not hear the show. It. Good. All right. Okay, hold on for a second. Ed, he seems a little nervous. He's freaking out. He's freaking out. This is the question of the lifetime for him. Okay. Uh, well, he has to get the control <laughs> questions. Yeah, Ed, please make sure you do this properly. Okay. This is okay. not one to fool around All right, with. Okay. This is very All important. Right. Mike, All right. Very, very That's important. So That's so funny. The whole show is funny. The whole show is absurd. How dare you ask that question? It's so funny. How dare you? Comedy show. Yeah. Ed is ripping paper. Ed is making a fart sound effect. <laughs> to annoy him. Ed is my yeah. favorite expert. Okay, yeah, here we he's go. He's top guy. Go ahead. i got to ask some control questions. Go ahead, Ed. Okay. Ahead. Right. We understand. Did you first name Mike? Yes. He's answering in a deep voice. <laughs> so he's lying about his voice, too. <laughs> <laughs> is today Thursday? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Do you live in New York State? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, here's the big question. You ready, Ed? Okay, hold on. Right. Okay, go ahead, buddy. Are you a homosexual? Ed, you have to ask the question. <laughs> Ed's laughing at the question. <laughs> That's not even a Ed, Ed real open mind. Ed, ask him, are, are you a homosexual? No. All right, just one more question. How about, has he ever had straight sex? All right. Yes. Have you ever received a big cock in your ass? I just like watching everything. I know, I know. Right. Have you ever received a big cock in your ass? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, hold on a second. Okay, Mike. Put yourself together. Come on. Come on. Ed, you're professional. Okay, hold on. Go. All right. 
<laughs> you ask it, Will. No, you no, ask. Go ahead. Go right, ahead, Ed. Right. I need you to do it. All right, okay. <laughs> Calm down, Ed. <laughs> okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> Have you ever received a black hook in your ass? No. <laughs> It was I big, not black. I think I heard. <laughs> it was improvised. No, it was a big cock in your ass. Oh, a big one. Have you ever received a big cock in your ass? <laughs> no. He, he answered no. <laughs> can we, Howard, can we ask him if you ever slept with a woman? I right, ask him, are you a virgin? Uh, hold on. Are you a virgin? No. All right. He is not. All right. Is that it? No. Uh, uh, so are we done with the questions? All right. So have, about, uh, have you, do sorry. you want to see the Yankees get Sabathia? Do you want to see the Yankees get Sabathia? I didn't hear the full question. Do you want to see the Yankees get Sabathia? Do you want to see the Yankees? He doesn't understand. Forget that. Right. Okay. So do we, you, we, we know the answer to everything. Do you hate Artie? All right. Hold on a second. Hold on. Don't move. Go ahead. Do you hate Artie? Do you hate Artie? Yes. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Do you hope Artie dies? <laughs> Go ahead, Ed. All right, okay. <laughs> Do you hope Artie dies? No. No. Oh, that's very sweet. Mm. I think... Go ahead. <clears throat> I think that's it, isn't it, guys? Yeah. All right, that's, that's it. Enough. That's okay. it. Are you All happy right. that Artie's book is number one? Do you find me Ed Torian attractive? <laughs> you attract? <laughs> Did you ever give me a Dutch oven? <laughs> Uh, Ed, uh, tell uh, my high-pitched Mike that he has done very well, that uh, we are ready now to right. find out the results. Mike, right. can you hear me? Can you hear uh... Yeah. Yes, you can. Mike, okay. I congratulate you on completing your yes. first lie detector test. We are about to and find out the answer. And being a team player. All right. Okay. Uh, Ed, the first question was, are you a homosexual? How right. did he do? He failed that question. Oh, oh. geez. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh my. <laughs> oh. Mike, what do you make of that? <laughs> Mike, what went wrong there? Look at this fucking, fucking machine he has. <laughs> All right, wait, let's find out how you did on the other one. Okay, Mike, okay. All right, on the second question, have you ever received a big cock in your ass? No, he passed that one. He passed that, so he's never had a cock in his ass. So he's a top. Big, you, asked him, you asked him if he is, the third question was, are you a virgin? What Did he pass or fail? He told me no, but... Uh, would you tell me no? No, he said yes. Oh, no, he, he said no. He said no. No, he said no. But he was lying. No, no. Oh. I said I'm not a virgin. Right. And it says it, what? Yeah, it says you're lying. It says you're lying about that. Right. And then <laughs> if you were gay, that would make sense. Uh, number four, we asked, do you hate Artie? Was he truthful about it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh, definitely that truthful. was the truth. Yeah, right. That was the truth, really? Well, you can see it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. He went around three times. Yeah, that's clearly the truth. <laughs> <then>. <laughs> We can see it there. Look uh, at that. Yeah. Wow. How do you know that's the truth? Well, you can look at it. Look at the change in his heartbeat and the change of his... Uh, that looks like a you. map of sea caucus. It's like a little thing stabbing Artie. finally, Arnie. we said to him, do you hate... Do you hope Artie dies? Was he yeah. truthful? He yeah, said, he's truthful. He he's true. Yeah, he doesn't, yeah, he doesn't want, want him to die. die. No, he wants him to die. No, he says he's... We asked him, if do you want Artie to die? He said, no, I don't. So he was truthful, right? Right, he right. He was. Okay. Yeah, okay. So, now, now, are you sure, number one, are you a homosexual? He flunked that? He it, it said he was not being truthful? Right. It wasn't. I can show it to you. Let me see. Right here. Look at this. The change in a heartbeat. Look at that right there. Right. He was lying. Right. Right. Well, maybe, I see. You know. Well, we got. Can we ask him one more question? Did he ever blow a guy? No. <laughs> well, Mike, I don't know. You know, I flunked one of those tests once, so it's not really conclusive. You know what I mean? So uh, I believe whatever you tell me. Well, Mike. it's like yeah. I told you. you. People have a perception, and whether this machine is right or wrong, nobody will ever know. Well, you know See, what? These things never are officially correct in a courtroom either. Uh, that's true. And you know what else? I thought it was weird. The machine drew a picture of a cock when they asked you that question. So, who knows what that means? I don't even understand it. Have Mike, you ever blown a guy? Mike, don't feel bad. I flunked it, too. They All asked right. me a, a question, and I got a... Are you, are you going in there, or do we have to get Belzer? Uh, well, why don't we get Belzer, and then I'll go. All right. Thanks, Mike. All right. Oh, sure, sure. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can save that. Um, <laughs> take that with you. So Mike's a gay guy. Well, that's all right with me. <laughs> he says it's still not true. Right. No, but listen, that's okay no. with me. Mike just has that out on a date. Ed Torian. <laughs> Fuck no. All right, where is Belzer? I want to get him in here. Because... <laughs>
All well, right. It's so called shooting yourself in the foot. He missed and hit his thumb. <laughs> All right. Someone's going to come in and. Uh, Benji suggested me during the commercial before we actually have the person come in and make their announcement. Oh, well, there goes that bit. <laughs> oh. We were going to guess who, what the big announcement was and what person was going to make it. You know, but... I saw this person oh. hanging out out there, but I wouldn't have guessed. Yeah. Because oh. he's like, a, I thought it would be one of the whack packers or something. I said to my producer, Gary, who's into pre-promotion, uh -huh. I said to him, <laughs> I said, oh, that's a good idea Benji had. We're going to guess. Who and, it is. And then he just sends the guy in. <laughs> You told him you wanted to do it. <laughs> Bob and Bowie. I, can't, I gotta get a new producer, I think. No. I think he can't handle the success. I think he's carried away with himself like the giant. He's handled it for you. I, dude, I didn't send him in. He just walked in. Well, don't you hold people back? Dude, he, he's not supposed to go in until... No, no, this is something he did on his own. Why'd you come in on your own? I heard you say it's time to do the announcement. Oh, okay. I, I had nothing to do with this. But, Gary, you watch the door. Well, just say, don't go in. To... He wasn't even in the hallway. But say, Benji and them are going to all guess who's coming in. But he's not. Nobody's supposed to go in without asking me. Because I can't control but, that. But, but you walk out, you go, hey, the guy's just thought of something. He wasn't even there. Oh, well, well, he was in your office. How could I talk to nobody? He was not in my office. I Where was he? I was in I Scott's know. office. It's my fault. Don't look, this this yeah, one but, time. But, don't but, yell at Gary. But you know what I would do? Here's what I would do. I'd say, Hey, the guys just came up with my like, idea. Let me you, make sure. Was, dude, he wasn't. Let me make sure there. that it doesn't get sabotaged. He wasn't standing there, and he was supposed to be waiting to be sent in. Yeah, I, I, I hear what you're saying, but I disagree with you. You're in hindsight. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I'm a neurotic. When someone says, hey, this is a good idea, I'm going to make sure the guy doesn't get in until we... That's all right. That's okay, Gary. You're right. We're do... You did the pre-promotion. You saved the bid anyway. So, thanks. Fuck off. I'm sitting here saying to myself, I'm not going to say that for the last ten minutes I've been stumbling over my candle. Yeah. All right. <laughs> what does that mean, Robin? Mike's in the hallway every day. All right, Mike, uh, high pitch Mike. Robin, what, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> right. the, you stumbled over you Mike. Couldn't you couldn't find him. You fucking wallet. You couldn't find him, but I couldn't get past him. Well, that's because you're in Scott's fucking studio, you fucking bitch. Oh. <laughs> and I saw Mike. I saw Mike on camera. <laughs> I saw high pitch Mike on camera standing there. Two fucking Monday morning quarterback asshole. Pre promotion. You're not getting it. When you hear a good idea, you make sure it happens. I wish I had an announcement every day. All right, anyway, Gary, thank you. Uh, thank you. you. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, Mike has an announcement to make. Go ahead, Mike. High pitch Mike. By the way, um, high pitch Mike. All right, go ahead, high pitch Mike. I won't interfere. Okay. So, uh. I mean, I will interfere, but I'll you start. I'm actually going to ask you to cut that off for a second. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, after we did that lie detector test. Yeah, my high pitch mic took a lie detector test the other day on the yeah. air, and uh, it was kind of weird because, uh, as you know, the lie detector said that Mike was gay. Well, the question that was asked. Yeah, they said, and are the you gay? And the only question anybody was interested in. Are right. you gay? <laughs> yeah, and, and Mike, of course, said he was not gay. Right. And, the, and the, the, the lie detector said he was, you know. Lying. Lying. So anyway, go ahead. Uh, so shortly after that, uh, I had a little bit of a meltdown. Right. Outside of here. Oh, really? And I've been going through a very emotional um, month or two because... For the last 20 years, I've been lying to myself, my friends, my family, and everyone here. Um, and I decided that it's time for me to come out of the closet and admit I'm gay. Well, I admire you for that. Matter of fact, I spoke to Mike over vacation. Gary called me up and said, look, Mike wants to come out on the show. I said, okay. And, uh, you know me, that's always good radio. Of so I, I said, uh, look, he, but uh, the thing is, Gary told me the story about Mike's mom. Ah. Uh. All right. And I said to uh, Gary, you know, I think I should speak to Mike because he was not going to come out to his mother. He was going to do it here on the air. Right. And uh, because she said that she would disown him and stuff. And, he, and his attitude was, according to Gary, that Mike was feeling, well, you know what, his mother doesn't listen to the show anyway, and she, she won't find out about it. So I said to myself, I'm going to write Mike a note and say, can I call you? Because 
while I, I would love for him to come out on the air if that's what he's comfortable with, I said I thought that before he did that, he should come out to his mother right. and his father on the phone. Or because they Somewhere, live far away. Somehow, well, they live, they live far away. Yeah. So uh, that's what I was concerned about. So I called up Mike and I said, Mike, uh, he, let me just give you my thought on this. That while I think it's great you want to come out on the air, I said, I don't want you to do anything that's going to cause stress in your life. And one of the things that might is if your mother hears about it. Because even Third she, hand, yeah. yeah, even though she doesn't have, any, doesn't listen to the show, someone's going to call. And he said, stop right there. He goes, so it turns out. I came out to my mother, ah. and he had done that already, and uh, which was his biggest fear because his mother said she would disown him. And Mike, uh, tell everyone what happened when you came out to your mother. Uh, Sunday, November twenty third, a date I'll never forget. I made the hardest phone call of my life. Uh, I called my mother, and we had our normal, you know, how was your week conversation, and then I told her that uh, when I was in school, she said something that has destroyed me for the last decade of my life. And I told her what she had said, that she disowned me. And she didn't remember saying it. But she said, yeah, I would disown you. She said it again. She said it again. She reiterated it. So then what did you do? And I, I, I just started sobbing and crying. And I, I've, I was afraid that I was going to lose her forever. That that was the end of it. And um, I, I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was it, it was surreal. Hey, you hadn't told her yet, right? I, well, I was. Right. I told you her the quote that you disowned me if you were gay. Right. Right. But she said I would disown you, and you haven't even approached. Well, she said, "Is that what you're trying to tell me?" And I said, "Yes." Uh huh. Ah. And and there was anger. Um. And I think disappointment. Mm-hmm. And I said, I didn't choose to be this way. Nobody chooses to be treated like a second-class citizen or right. wants to be shunned by their family. And I just kept crying and crying and crying. And I was about ready to hang up the phone. I told her, if this is what you want, then consider this our last call. I said, I love you, but I don't, I don't want to be like this. I don't. I don't want to lose you, but if I'm a disappointment to you, then consider that this is our last call. And I waited and waited, and I was about to hang up the phone, and she said, I love you. I just want you to be happy. No matter what makes you happy, as long as you're happy, I, I, I want you to be happy in your life, no matter what that means. Right. And she said, I love you more than life itself. Oh. Uh, good woman. All right. So she came around. She came around very quickly. And your father was okay with it? I told my father. No. Uh, my father had a brother who died of AIDS many years ago. So I, w- I was never very concerned about his, his reaction. reaction. It was more your mother. It was more my I thought you'd lose your mother forever. Right. That's what Mike said to me when we were having our conversation, which was surprising. He said that he hadn't he told, told his parents yet. Well, he, he said that his mother might have a problem with it because of what she said, but then he said something that I thought was a good surprise to me, that he thought his father would be compassionate about it. And your bro- you have two brothers? Uh, two sisters. Two uh, two sisters. Si- and both of them would be your father. Both of them were. So extremely. I said, at least you have the numbers and maybe they could work on right. it if that happens. But, you know, I guess that doesn't well, have to happen, which is great. You know? As anyone knows, you were very brave because uh, no one wants to lose their mother and you know what you've been living a secret life and i told you this on the phone i'll tell it to you on the air uh, i'm very proud of you i'm very happy for you because now you can live an open has authentic life has he really life. been living a secret life or has he not been living his life yeah have you like have you been with any guys at all my mother's gonna hear this show right she she wants to hear the show so i'm gonna make sure she does yeah i have been uh in the past with guys right. i don't want to get too it explicit or uh-huh. i know how this show can get um yeah we want to know if you had it in the ass <laughs> <laughs> uh, but i will tell you about the lie detector when the guy said are you a virgin mm-hmm. i said no and he said i i was a virgin right completely right. wrong so right. that lie detector doesn't mean shit that's true um well, well, dep- didn't the thing also say ralph is gay it did say that, yes. Right. Does Ralph have an announcement? <laughs> no, he has is no announcement. Ralph God, I, I didn't see Ralph in the uh, hall. <laughs> so have you ever been with a woman or women just no. disgusting? Maybe that's what he, maybe 
maybe that's what he meant by losing your virginity. Yeah, haven't you lied to us and told us you were with women? I did. Uh huh. So how old were you when you when you uh, realized, hey, I'm gay? Uh, sixth sixth grade, so sixth about grade. eleven or twelve. And that's uh, why I tell you, I, a lot of religious people, a lot of people that are anti-gay, think, oh, you choose to be gay. No, you don't. Right. And are you, uh, are you, uh, so when did you act on it? When you say act, what do you mean when did when I? When did you get, like, when did you start blowing dudes and stuff? <laughs> yeah. When was your first date? Around yeah. college. Around college. So you hadn't acted on it until college. Right. So you must have been going well, I mean, nuts. Um, most kids don't act on things during high school, right. straight or gay, but I mean, maybe some do. No, I did. Sarah Palin's kid, maybe. <laughs> but, uh, Excuse me. I did. Well, a lot of kids start <laughs> acting on things in high school. Right. You know, like they're having dates. And, I blew a guy in high you school. You know, they're just yeah. going to at least. <laughs> I let a guy Second blow me. Second and third base, you know. <laughs> that was me. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so you're saying, okay, so you, you experienced it, but didn't you tell me that even for like the last 10 years you haven't even acted on this because you've just been, been so ashamed? I haven't been dating right. actively because I thought, where would any relationship go? If I could never move Come in out, with somebody right. or have my parents visit and wonder who this, you know, I have a, a guy roommate. Right. But we're friends. Right. Yeah, your guy roommate has a, a kid. girlfriend. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, they, you know, they know him and. Did he friends. know you were gay? No. I, Are I, you in my, love with him? Or is that what you're No, doing? no, no. My best friend of 20 years back in Texas didn't know. Right. My best friend here didn't know. My college roommates didn't know. Oh. So no one knew, really? No one knew. Well, Artie seemed to know. Well, wait a minute. So <laughs> when you showed in up in, in, in Disney World on Oh, I need, to, I need to clear this real quick. <laughs> right. Because there's a lot of myths floating out <laughs> around there. Right. I, and I explained this two years ago. When I went to Disney World, the day I left Orlando was the day that week gay week started. Right. Artie's created the myth that I had a red shirt on. I've shown you photos, Howard, yes. of me at Disney World. I never had a red shirt. But I you were there for Gay Week. No, I was. If I was there for Gay Week, I would have been there for Gay Week. I wouldn't have flown out of town the day it started. I see. All right. So, so that was. Uh, and plus, the people that go to that kind of thing are extremely flamboyant. Yeah, but you must have been very jealous of anyone who could live an open lifestyle. And because, be. Oh, sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. But I don't. I don't want to be wearing a red shirt, flamboyant, and. Don't you feel to, great now, though? Do you feel different today coming like to work? I feel like absolutely it? different. Yeah. I feel, yeah. My my mother told me last night. Um, when I told her I was coming in to do this, she said, uh, "She said I'm proud of you, and I think what you're about to do is going to affect other people." That's what there. I was thinking. That you're coming out and showing how difficult a thing this was for you is going to make it maybe easier for people in their own lives. If I could pay tribute to her real quick, she sent me an email the day after I told her, and uh, I just want to read you a couple lines from All it. All right, go ahead. Uh, as I said last night, I'm so proud of you. Always have been. Always will be. I want you to be strong, happy, and do whatever you want in life. You deserve the best. We both we both love you so much, and we only want the best for you. Please be happy. You're such a special young man. Always be true to yourself and your beliefs, and don't let anyone change you. As a gay man now, uh, talk about how attracted you must be to me. Yeah, who are you attracted to on the staff? A male icon. <laughs> you are on the um, most sexy of OutQ. You, you <laughs> made the cover. Did you used to like go over to OutQ, the gay channel, and like just say, "Oh shit, I wish I could be, like be open around these guys." No, Nothing. no. Like I said, the flamboyant gay is not the is not it's attractive not to me. Right. But is not everyone at over at OutQ flamboyantly gay? I would say so. No, oh. I, thought I, don't maybe, I, thought, no, I don't mean attracted to them. I mean sort of like just jealous that they could all be out and oh, open sure, and living sure. in, I mean, an open life. Yeah. So who who are, you, are the gay people that you admire? Fred. That I admire? Yeah, I mean, are there any gay role models? For Fred, you? Fred, mostly, yes. <laughs> <laughs> trying to think. They didn't hear you, hear you the first two times. Say it again. <laughs> Cliff Floyd? <laughs> Uh, gay role models? I mean, I don't know. Uh, gay Ramon? Are you cutting your own path because there's no gay person that you... Well, actually, there is there is one gay person that I admire. And David Wright? <laughs> no. Wait, your, mom, your mom is the on the phone. Mets your team. mom is on the phone. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Mike's mom. Hi, Mike. Hi. How are you? Yes. I want to just take back everything I said. I hate you. And uh, I'm uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Love you. Bye. All right. Mary Ann from Brooklyn, go ahead. Mike, you're very courageous, and if your mother is listening, you raised a truly fine gentleman. He's one of the greatest people I ever met at Sirius. And, Mike, I only wish you the best. You are truly a nice young man. Joey Boots, go ahead. Hey, Mike, congratulations, man. I did the same thing a year and a half ago. It was very freeing, you know? That's true. Joey Boots came out. 
He actually outed me when he when he came out. He said he thought I was gay, and I was mad as hell when right. he did that. You were mad because he just identified you as being gay. Right. He used his gaydar, which apparently works. Did you find in your everyday uh, life for a while you'd been su suppressing this so long that you would even... Um, for, like they try to forget that you're gay or try to push it away? Oh, no, um, I was never ashamed of it. It just is what it is. But you were trying to come out yeah, in little are. ways. You, little you ways. Really you were, because you were, trying, you were lying about it the whole time. Yeah. Yeah, he, but it seems out like, you know, going to Michael Jackson concerts. And but going to a Michael Jackson concert <laughs> is... Gay. No, it's being a child of the 80s. It's not being gay. And going to Madonna, Madonna concert, yeah, that's gay. That's gay. You were doing a lot of gay stuff. Yeah, I'm not into Michael Jackson. I'm gay. Going to that uh, thriller thing See, a few weeks ago. Gay. Did you ever? Did you ever have? Did you ever go through a period of time where you had to put down gays, like in front of some other people, like make fun of some gay stuff? Uh, probably. Yeah. I, I mean, I like everyone in here. I think we're all equal opportunity offenders. Look at that homo. Well, you know the one thing though I do have to say about you, and even in, in all of the things with you and Artie going back and forth, you would always say there's nothing wrong with being gay, but I'm not gay. Right. So you never took the tact with Artie of gay bashing. Right. When faced are you are you worried about bashing. anyone's reaction to you announcing that you're gay here? The only people I worried about were my mother and my father. And right. uh, any my best friend left me a message that said anyone that doesn't accept you, fuck them. Right. <laughs> and, right. Really fuck. I'm a... and who on the staff have you secretly had <laughs> right, a crush on? Now you, can, now you can finally yeah. tell us. Is it Benji? Uh, no. He's considered a hunk with yeah, those what eyes. Is nobody... Why are you into? Wouldn't it be great yeah. if it was me? Nobody here <laughs> am I attracted to at all. I mean, this. this... Not even Fred. No. Bullshit. No. Bullshit. Um, um, there's guys that are. To Kevin Kraft. Are you attracted no, no, to Kevin Kraft? No, no. He looks like he's young enough to be my son. No. That's what I like. No. Well, that's, that's what you like. That's not what I like. <laughs> Oh, um, God, listen to this crazy gay guy. No, it sounds like you're into twinks. There's Joey. nobody back here I'm attracted to. There is one person not Jared? on the music channel oh. that you are attracted to. Who is gay or not gay? <laughs> Pat St. John? No, you don't say any names. But uh, no, 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 never. Do you uh, know if he's gay or not? I'm 99% I'm sure. Right. So what, now that you're openly gay, he can probably approach you, this guy. Well, I, you know, it's funny. Yeah. A few weeks ago, they announced they canceled the serious Christmas party. Right. And I was mad as hell, and I came in that morning cursing, and I'm, I was like, why can't we have a fucking Christmas party? And then I started putting two and two together and realizing the reason I was mad is because I was hoping to approach that person. And oh. Like, oh, at the Christmas party. You know, By the I, way, I just want to say, if anybody's gay that knows High Pitch Mike, he's ready for action now. An <laughs> what are you open to? A bottom top? What do you want uh, to? Come on. You my parents to... will listen to this. Uh, no. Well, who do you, uh, again, who, who do you like out there who's famous so we'd know what your type is? Probably me. Yeah, are you talking gay celebrities or no? Anybody, you know? You know. Any any celebrity? Brad Pitt. Oh, look. I'm trying to think. Tom Cruise. Uh, Javier Clooney. Javier Bardem. Ozzy Osbourne. I can't think of anyone looks wise. I just don't like Matthew like a, Broderick. Used to be a big uh, uh, turn. No, I, I just don't Plexico like. Burris. I just have no interest in like flamboyantly gay. John Travolta. Men at all. Uh, John peruse, Travolta. Do you peruse gay uh, Craigslist? No. You got to use that to get some ass, man. <laughs> Howard, you and I are two different people. Howard, hey, Joey, today why don't you two guys get it up? No, no, no. Oh, no. that Joey's not as good. I'm friendly with Mike. I like Michael. Hey, Lopez. Joey's a good guy, but nothing. Howard, it's a day of unbelievable surprises. Uh, Mike has come out, and I, I heard uh, Steve Langford's going to announce that the sky is blue. Yes. <laughs> Benji's going to announce he's over. My well, Artie's jokes won't stop anytime soon. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Benji just announced he's overweight. <laughs> Anybody who cares. Can I? Me too. Yeah. Uh, can I announce two more real quick All things? Right. As long as we're announcing stuff, go ahead. Uh, after coming out to Artie, yeah. um, I told him that uh, I was hoping we could do whatever we could to fix the light beat situation because when I came in here and fought with Artie so many times... My goal was to get Artie as angry as possible because of all those things he said to me. Right. And he came out with a rant that we know pretty much lost the cupcake charity. And, uh, <laughs> well, no, I, I feel, I feel as right. responsible Did as... Did you show Artie that letter you wrote to them? I haven't shown it to him, but I wrote a letter I to the it. director of Life Pete. Right. And, uh... Artie was just trying to get him to come out. <laughs> right. And I told him, I said, I would do whatever I could, and hopefully Artie will as well. The resolve that I don't know why Benji. I don't know what to do. I don't know. I mean, Artie's very hurt. That well, they based on what they know money. now, hopefully yeah. they can reconsider. I don't know what getting, they've been doing with the money. Laughing, They're Benji. still selling it. 
Benji, why are you laughing? Uh, Mike's Benji, trying to get him his uh, cupcake back. What's wrong, Benj? Because does Artie really want to plead to them to take him back? No, oh, no. High pitch Mike is pleading with them. Not, Mike, well, well I, I, and I'm willing to. Uh, I don't know what they've been doing with the money. They keep selling that cupcake. All right. But the real go. thing, the real thing is, the two of us put Gary in a very awkward position, and I felt horrible for that. And I also respect all the work they do. Uh, Russell, go ahead and play New Jersey. Oh my God! I cannot. I, I've been a, such a fan of you and everyone for so long, and. This, I, I gotta tell you, this, this show's been awesome today. Mike, hey, you know what? Mike, this, it's great what you're doing. I came out maybe 15 years ago and I, I mean, I have a great life now and I had a, I mean, I have a great partner. And, but, you know, I mean, shit, just because you tell people you're gay, so, you know, I used to think, oh, life's gonna be great, but it's not. You know, it's still, it's still shitty and it's still fucked up sometimes, but, at least you got that weight off your shoulders, you know? Right, yeah. Th 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 no well, there's a consequence to living in the closet yeah. so long. No one's um, uh, imagining that life is going to be a bed of roses now for Mike, but the fact of the matter is uh, he doesn't have to walk around living a less than authentic life and worried about who's going to find out. But do you sit there and, want, and say to yourself, yeah. look at all the ass I missed? Yeah. Well, maybe. Well, uh, I, let me ask you this: this is, is, Was there anything in your apartment that would lead people to think you're gay? And was that the reason you didn't want Steve Langford in there? No, that was just an issue of privacy. Just right. like Howard didn't want him in his house when they did that ISDN right. test show. I'm just curious. No, it's just, I, it, there's a certain line you have to draw. What do you think it was like a big Liza Minnelli poster? Or something? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. Whatever. I'm not a Liza right. Minnelli fan. I don't like Barbra Streisand. Right. No. But you know, Langford would look at every detail and probably. That's the thing. Out. I don't. I don't need him opening every drawer and. Oh, okay. What is this uh, gay magazine I found? Yeah. Do you have gay porn? I don't have any. I don't own any, but I've watched it. Yeah. Did you ever secretly wish? Because we get a lot of gay porn yeah. here. Did you ever secretly wish we? Oh you yeah. Could take start, the whoever's porn? listening that works in the porn industry, start sending in some fucking gay porn. Oh, we have tons please. of it. There's tons of we it, send it. We send it to Eric the Midget just to piss him off. Oh, <laughs> Richard. Has well, Eric the Midget yeah. sent it to me. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, we'll, we'll, high-pitched Mike reads Latin inches for the article. <laughs> now <laughs> now, now we like, know where to send the gay porn. Don't worry about it. Right. So the last thing I have to say, besides life beat, is. Everybody here kind of has their pet charity. Robin has Girls Night Out. You have North Shore. Gary has Life Beat. And I decided today is the day that um, I wanted to endorse a charity that m means a lot to me. The New York Mets? No. <laughs> <laughs> they need some charity help. Season right tickets. Yeah, go ahead. No, um, when I was in college, uh, I remember logging in to, uh, to work on a paper, and I read the news of Matthew Shepard's death. Right. And I thought, we're about three or four months apart in age. We're both gay, and I thought, this could happen to anybody. Right. But he happened to live in a very uh, closed-minded area, and I was in New York, and I thought, could it, could it happen to me? And, you know, people heard the story, and they know it, and, it, and life goes on. But then this February, another young boy... Um, I, want to sh I just want to show you his picture because... And then tell us when's the last time you got some cock. I, I will. Know, I, I, a bit, we'll it sounds like that. a big dry spot. Give me two yeah. seconds, Howard. Two yeah, seconds. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I want to show you I the mean, picture let's of this Let's get kid. down to it. Lawrence King. Yes. 15 years old. I know this story. He gave a valentine to one of his classmates, a male classmate. And two days later, oh. um, two days later, the classmate who got the valentine brought a gun to school and shot him in the head wow. twice. Right. Yeah, terrible and story. And that's 10 years later. And I'm thinking, this never is going to end. People are going to continue to hate and continue to judge people based on their own fears. And uh, so starting today, I, I wrote to the director of the Matthew Shepard Foundation, and I told him whatever I can do, anything I can do, right. I, want, I want to be a part of this. Group. And did he say, who are you? He said, yeah, how about getting, getting some money? <laughs> they want money. They what do they cash. do? What does the Matthew Shepard Foundation do exactly? Initially, his mother, Judy Shepard, wanted to open homes for gay youth. Oh. Where, you know, when they're rejected by their parents, where they could move. Oh. And See, that's a good... You, that's you've good. lived a closeted life, and you've lived in fear, and uh, that makes a, a perfect sense to me that you would start doing something like that. Like, I, I love Life They do very admirable work. Right. But this organization as well you, touches... You feel touches you. It touches me because hate crime continues to exist. People get beat because they're gay. First People of all, get murdered because they're gay. I want you to know something. This is on a lighter note. 
JD has a whole box of gay porn for you. Well, actually, Howard, I have, well, a, given, well, I have a, a gift. Here's a gift. Go ahead. Here's a gift. In honor of this, um, I'm going to give you tight Latin manholes. <laughs> oh, say, wonderful. Hold that up so we can see. There it is. Tight <laughs> Latin. Right Do you like Latin oh, manhole? My. Ooh. Uh, we'll see. I have to All watch right. the video. I, uh, uh, you also, know, our coming out welcome wagon will be meeting you at the door. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, um, the other lesson, too, is probably like, I think if uh, parents like talk a big game sometimes, but like, I don't think a lot of parents would actually just own a kid. Right? Well, a lot of parents do. Well, I'm well, fortunate do. to have parents who don't. But yeah. I'm saying if somebody's in your position, you, you should you should come out because I think that you know, there's, that, there's that's kids. why there are those homes because kids get put out of their homes or they have to run away because kids, they kids, feel so uncomfortable. Kids will commit suicide over things. And like there's this. a high suicide rate among kids. All right, Billy. Billy, that's you're true. on the air in Orlando. Yeah, I was calling. I mean, I noticed that Joey Boots um, kind of picked up with his gaydar that. Uh, Mike was gay, and well, Artie's been saying it too. Does Artie have a little gay in him? Huh? Hey, Artie? Uh, Artie has big no, gay That's a very valid you know, question. <laughs> Artie, you got big time gay Big <laughs> You do. You know what? I thought Mike was perfectly straight. I'm being serious. I thought right. Artie was off the mark. Yeah, I did too. High voice, uh, Madonna. I, 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 you know, I, I kind of picked the, the voice is something. Uh, right. Like I said, you're. Born being gay, you don't choose to be gay. I the predict voice is something voice. I was born how, with. How about this for a prediction? Since Artie's good at predictions, I'm going to make one of my own. I've been known to be right here and there. I predict your voice is going to get deeper now. And, really? and you think I'm joking, I'm not. I think your voice is due to stress, to having a secret. And you wait and see if in about a year or two your voice doesn't relax. Now that is my guess about you, my It'll friend. It'll be Barry White in a year. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. About, even when I laugh, my voice gets deeper. I don't even know about Barry White, but I do know that you will relax. I believe you've been holding a lot of tension. No, the Barry White thing is, I, I mean, he'll be dead in a year. Oh, so. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm telling you. And remember, wear a condom. So. Wear a condom with all that gay sex. Do you sex really hope so? Do you, do you, is, this a, is that torture for you, the voice? I think you seem to be okay. No, I, I mean... It is what it is. I can't change it. I don't want to try and, and change it. High pitch, Mike. I predict it wasn't looking for random sexual partners. I think he's looking for a relationship. A relationship? Part looking of the reason, love? yeah. Part of the reason he wouldn't act, act on his uh, sexuality is because he wants to be in a relationship. And who would be in a relationship with a closeted guy? That was his point. And you, you bring up uh, uh, speaking of relationships, George. I wanted to do this when George Takei was here, right? Because I know it would mean a lot. Oh, George would have loved it, right? Oh, George but would have initiated you. This is the, the other thing with this. Yeah, you would have. It would have been like the mafia. Plus, dude. You, I, I'm telling you right now, when I came out to George, I'm telling you, and I think we saw this at his gay bachelor party, the way he immediately cozied up to that dude. <laughs> yeah. I, I could have fucked George right in Sal and Richard's office. He now, came now. right up to my, Listen, he came right up to my face. He was like, oh, this is, are you okay? And I, if I went for it, I we think he, been... he was like a vampire. He wanted to take your virginity. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think you should wait till he gets here, Mike, because you're talking about some been, famous ass. You know that would have been the greatest bit in history uh, if you ended up blowing like you, George Takei. If you, you blew me. had been able to maintain that, guys. <laughs> Howard, if I, let him, if I let him blow me, would you say I'm the funniest guy ever? Yeah, you would be the funniest guy ever. <laughs> <in there. laughs> the comedian in the world. George, I'm gay now. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I felt so bad because that's why. I, remember, I called you that afternoon and said, "Howard, of all the awful things, he, just, he, he was so compassionate." The like, high pitch <laughs> voice is often a result of psychological trauma. And really? I suggest that Mike has been psychologically traumatized. Has he not had this voice all his life? Yeah. Well, let me tell you something. When you have to live with this, when, well, in puberty, it should have gotten deeper. I am telling you, he holds on to stress. And everyone holds on to stress in different places. I know this. Even when I was an announcer and I first started out, I was so stressed out. My voice was up like this. Yeah, everybody talks about yeah, it. Yeah. Voice and changed. I'm telling you. You wait and see, Mike. If, if I hope you're right. I think there's going to be changes in you that we haven't even begun to Usually imagine. Usually you're right with your predictions. Let's yeah, I also predict tomorrow you'll be wearing a thong. Uh, well, that? no, I'm not, that's the thing. I'm not going to change. I'm, I'm joking. Still, I'm I know, joking. but I'm what still me. What do you mean? You know, because I hear this a lot um, uh, from gay people. Even Joey Boots would say, I'm not into the flamboyant gay Because I think lifestyle. some people are very comfortable in being effeminate and... I believe you will become a, a little bit more effeminate. <laughs> like, I do believe that. Like, I'm out. I'm not You'll necessarily see. proud. Right. Like, You'll become very proud. Like, are, what, are straight people proud? Well, are, are straight people proud? Like, what's there to I be am. proud of? It's yes. Proud. Every time I fuck a girl, I brag about it. <laughs> like, I'm proud to be part Puerto Rican. But, I, 
But I'm not. I'd, I'd be, be more proud to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> You're an asshole. Uh, Dominic Barber, go ahead real quick because we have a lot of agenda, and I'm proud of Mike today. Yes. One an announcement, and then I want to just ask Artie one something. After Mike came out, now do you feel any different about all the things you said and all the horrible things over the years? But me, Dominic? Yeah, you. I told him. I said, yeah, if I knew he was gay, I would have never said all that shit. Yeah, Mike, you're incredible. Thank you. It really, uh, you touched me today more probably than any conversation I've ever heard on the show. Thank you. And the thing about, real quick, the thing about Life Beat is they, they're judging from what they heard on the show and, and when we were at our worst, at our ang anger. But I saw a real Artie when I came out to them, and I hope they take that into consideration. Thank and you. I hope we can fix whatever was wrong. I, Thank I'm, you, Mike. Uh, it's your character. I have an announcement. Leslie and I are divorced. It's all finished. 27 ah. days. The papers were entered. Not that that's anything on the level of what you announced. Yeah, my really. 15 seconds is up. Yeah, really, you. Dominic. We're all finished. And on good terms, and we're still good friends. Yeah, we sure. Divorced. When yeah, you're real good friends. When the, yeah. the wedding? You know what? I got a million questions for you, but this is High Pitch Mike's day. Yeah. I'll, and I'll call tomorrow the next Call day. tomorrow, and I tell you what, I'll have plenty of questions for you. <laughs> All yeah, right. You, you want to be the Avenger of Truth, Mr. Stern? Yeah. Be the Avenger of because I think the both of you need to really sit down with someone in a professional way and we're figure done. out what's going on. Judge well, me. you should have said that to them when they wanted to marry each other. No, no, no. I, even if they're divorced, they should still sit yeah, down. Yeah, but th didn't you know they were crazy when they got married? <laughs> yeah, I, I did like say that. Who, gets, who can get it done in 27 days? <laughs> All right, you win. You, you win. You're, Two you're, divorce lawyers. You're incredibly it. together. <laughs> Goodbye. 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 Who can get it done? One you know, Mike, Mike can only come out once. Dominic can get divorced every year. Yeah, I mean, yeah, like, that's the third divorce, isn't it? Yeah. Come on. Third. Uh, speaking of ruined marriages, there's one last clip I want you to hear. Uh, the day after Proposition 8 was uh, endorsed in California on Gary Preview Page 2, Keith Olbermann, uh, I think, says it more eloquently than I've ever heard. I don't have a personal investment in this. I'm not gay. I had to strain to think of one member of even my very extended family who is. And yet, to me, this vote is horrible. Horrible. Because this isn't about yelling and this isn't about politics. This is about the human heart. And if that sounds corny, so be it. If you voted for this proposition or you support those who did or the sentiment they expressed, I have some questions because truly, I do not understand. Why does this matter to you? What is it to you? In a time of impermanence and fly-by-night relationships, these people over here want the same chance at permanence and happiness that is your option. They don't want to deny you yours. They don't want to take anything away from you. They want what you want, a chance to be a little less alone in the world. Only now you are saying to them, no. All right, well, I, that, could, that, that was, was said, very eloquent. That was said very, very well. In Jersey, we call it Proposition Great. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah, it's a yeah. Good thing. I, I, don't, I don't agree with it. I might go ahead real quick in Louisville. Hey now. Hey now. Well, hey you know now. what today is? I'm a fag. What? Wah, I'm a fag. Uh, oh. I'm, I'm prepared to deal with that. Oh, my God. All right. Do Let's you know go. what today ugly. is? Yeah. Mike, did you know it's World Today's Aid? World AIDS Day, yeah. right. Let's go to Joe in Tampa. Hey, Howard, I uh, would just like to know, since Mike's being all honest today, what really did happen with that plasma TV that he won't let Steve Langford see? It's still in a box. Why? Waiting to move. Oh, you're moving, but you've, been, you've got had it for over a year. How many cars do you have? Probably. I drive them. No, I know, but they sit, in a, they sit in a garage when they're not being driven. It's sitting in a box. Who all right, cares? that has nothing Nobody to do with being gay. Gay. gay Ramon, you're on the air. Oh, no. Hey, Mike, I, I got a question for you, and Howard, I got an announcement on my own. Um, were you ever attracted to me? No. Oh, Nobody on the show or that works for the show. Don't no fucking closet, you fucking faggot. Why? Hey, hey, no. Why are you saying that? Why are you upset? <laughs> I think it's gay humor. I seen him at Six Flags. He completely ignored me. I guess. Wait, I did go to this great adventure this summer with some of the guys back yeah, here. And I saw you, and I said, hey, Mike, and you fucking... Nobody stopped me. No, not a single person stopped me. And Howard, uh, All right. uh, Mark, you're on the air. <laughs> oh, that's a personal thing. It's no great thing adventure is, right is gay without the Y, they say. To Mark the patent attorney, Do doesn't already already realize he's he's being set up here on the ultimate bit. What is it? This, this is all a bit. Is it? Oh, okay. All right. Thanks, Mark. No. You, I don't even know what the the motive would be. Way to drive a conversation into the yeah. ground. All right. 
Uh, Mike, I want to say to you personally that I am proud of you. I'm happy for you. Thank you. And uh, I uh, think you're a great guy. Always have. Uh, the fact that you're gay, if you were straight, I wouldn't carry the way. Do you're... you think things will change here for you with your coworkers or the staff? <laughs> no, and uh, I don't. Uh... Everyone Fred here punched is like, him. <laughs> uh, well, my yeah, people will uh, get. You know what is true? Fred still won't hang out with. Well, you know, <laughs> yeah. yeah. One thing, gay or straight, Fred wants nothing to do with. Well, might be using the bathroom. No, <laughs> let me use Brian Phelan as an example. I've known him for ten years. Which since, bathroom is Mike using? Since I was an intern. Yeah. And uh, he was like Artie. He was very moved when I told him, and he said, "I hope nothing I ever said hurt you or or uh, was upsetting." And I said, "No, because I know you're a friend, and I know." We're joking, and he said, "Good, because I'm going to continue to joke." Ah. Uh. When do you think you're going to go out and celebrate and have some gay sex? How quick can you get that together? Oh, I don't know. You have any well. prospects? Anything on the horizon? Did you go to a gay bar this yeah, weekend? Why don't we have like a gay party? Have Let's you have ever? A, have have you a dance party? Oh. Have you gay, ever, I should have had a naked guy in here for you today. Uh, <laughs> have you ever had a, a relationship with a guy uh, that lasted more than a couple of months? Have you ever had a long romantic? No, never, never a, never a long relationship. Just That's why that song affected me so much because I thought I'm never gonna have it. What's the longest uh, you ever went out with a guy? Uh, I, I, there were guys I dated for you know a few weeks, but I kind of never pursued it because I thought, where is this gonna go? Mm, it right. can't go anywhere. True. Well, I think your life's going to get uh, better, and uh, and good for you. I think this is a big stress off your shoulders, and I'm glad. You, I want to say uh, your mother handled herself very well. I, she I, used to be congratulated. I need right. to praise her and thank her. And uh, that's good. How old are you, Mike? Thirty-one. Right. I, I, I tell you though, imagine it's a different world. Imagine if you would have had to come out like 25 years ago. You know, it's different. Yeah. Well, it's a little easier now, but not much. It's still, Plus, has, I mean, it's still then, not great. Well, look, yeah, look at all these stupid votes that are still. Well, going and on. the thing is, she grew up in a bigoted area, and Who did? people are taught hate. So yeah. if she was taught to hate certain groups, or certain groups were uh, less important, and. She's moved on. Who She's else grown. does your mom hate besides gays? Oh, my mom. My mom doesn't hate anyone. But she should give up my hating everything. My I'm grandfather saying, uh, uses the N word when he was alive. Your he grandfather used... hated everyone. Right. <laughs> and the weird thing is, hopefully, you can... <laughs> so, your mother still can hate other groups, just not gay. If so. you came out 25 years ago, oh, can I introduce the audience to another gay guy, Richard Christie? <laughs> Do you That's think he's who gay? I thought it was. Do you think he's gay? Uh, no, I've spent a lot of time with him and his girlfriend, and I can tell he's straight. But I question why he does some of these stunts. Why he goes right. so far. Well, I was just coming in to say, uh, you know, in honor of Mike coming out of the closet and to celebrate, I'd love you to show him my butthole. Uh, go ahead, show it to him. <laughs> go ahead. He'd love to see it. Now, no, come on. You don't want to see Why are you turning your back? You, no, this is ridiculous. You don't want to see it? <laughs> oh, Richard. What? Come on, Richard. This is your butt. Put that is. away. Look, He's so Do you want any of that action? <laughs> Not at all. Nothing. <laughs> He is so That's so stupid. generous of you. <laughs> That's my gift for you. Are you, you trying out with Mike? Did you know he was gay? No. Are you, try are you, no, were you no just idea. trying to seduce Mike? Yeah. Well, it's like <laughs> coming on to work. You know well, what? I was. Uh, my I, I told a few people was puckering. I told a few people in the back before. I'd is his ass hole nice? I mean, uh, no. Let's move on. Let's move on. No, not at all. Not, not at all. It's disgusting. Ice. Why is that disgusting? That's man. <laughs> it's ass. Richard. Come on. Yeah, but Richard's a handsome guy. He's got man. Look, ass. look. I was right about Mike, right? Yeah. Richard is a gay. <laughs> You're ready to use your gay dog again, are you? <laughs> Richard's a fruit. <laughs> uh, so I told some people in the back office first because I didn't want to do it on air and then everyone think it's a bit or right. something. Uh, but but you know what? Richard did nothing for you. You know what? Richard's first question for me was what. Do you think Gary Delabate is attractive? Because oh, <laughs> Gary, Do you? Gary that, talks. I think that's a, a gay myth. Like Gary's a great guy, a great friend, but like he doesn't do anything for me. Gary me thinks he's God's gift to gay men. He's always bragging about how gay guys right. think he's hot. Well, there you go. All right, thanks, guys, and Mike. Congratulations Thank on uh, being so brave. And I've, I've never asked for a plug on the show, and after today, I never will. But uh, can I just plug the website of the Matthew Shepard Foundation? Uh, www matthewshepard.org dot org. Uh, and if you're gay and uh, you need resources coming out that's the place to go Mike tell uh, Howard real quick about when you told JD oh JD uh, <laughs> I brought him in you? Richard's office and I said uh, I have something I need to tell you real quick if you come in Richard's office and he goes what he goes what do you want come on man He's irritated. And I said, I need to tell you something very serious, Ooh. and I don't want to... Well, he's got responsibilities, you know. He's <laughs> got to watch, watch TV. He started laughing. I had to go. <laughs> I, was, I had to leave for Boston. Go ahead. So, I, so I, I dragged him into, the, into Richard's studio, and I told him, and he goes, 
Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> After I told him I could read a song, he goes, sorry. You know, yeah, yeah. Why couldn't sorry. you take us? I mean, here the man is opening up to you. I did. Why couldn't you say something to him? Do you want to say something to him now? Oh, oh fuck I'm off. Fuck you. Leave me alone. Say, say, no, 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 say something to again. him. Say something. <laughs> Uh, we couldn't hear it. This this room is like a pile up. What do you go ahead and say? I I'm glad you you're, you're out and uh, you're comfortable and uh, you know you can be happy and stuff. And we're still in kind of the same boat, hey. looking for uh, romance. Romance. So maybe maybe we can go to a gay bar one night and a straight bar the next night. What? <laughs> I'm saying I'll help you look for girls. And then you help me look. I don't think either of us will help each other in anything. <laughs> it be funny? I think you're right. You're both Wouldn't destined for a lot of loneliness. If if they went to a gay bar and JD got all. <laughs> <laughs> I think that'll happen. I got, like, I got laid twice. <laughs> Jamie's like, I got to work for the gay basher in Boston. <laughs> hey, JD, what'd you do over Thanksgiving? Did you go see your mom? Uh, no, I didn't. I went to Ohio and she what? wasn't able to make it. So what? Oh. <laughs> what do you want me to do, dude? Whoa, 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 stop. Your mom, who abandoned you, no, and ran off. off with a guy in Hawaii. You made plans this year for Thanksgiving, and she didn't no, show up? No, 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 I didn't. She had to work. She had to what? work the day before and the day after. She told you she was going to be in Ohio, and she wasn't there? Uh, uh, things came up. Why do things always come up when I don't it comes know, to dude. seeing you? I don't know. I don't know. What I, I really don't want to get into it. You went to Ohio. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> you mean you made plans to meet up with your mom in Ohio? No, I made plans to go to Ohio. Why Ohio? Because that's where my dad is and a lot of other family is, including and, my both grandmothers. And she said she was going to come and see you. Uh, she originally said she was going to come out there, but things came up. Wow. What, she call you and tell you? Yes. What would you say? I was like, okay, I'll see you whenever. What did she do instead? She had a Ralph I, in Hawaii. I, I, don't, I don't know what she did on Thanksgiving. She did whatever she did. I don't know. She celebrated. I talked. I, I mean, we <laughs> talked for a little bit. What do you think that is? Mom's always avoiding him? Uh, no. Yes. Mom's always. Shut up. Other stop it. Do. What do you mean, stop it? The I don't is need the kids are into the What you say, I get, and I don't need that getting. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, that was extraordinary. <laughs> <laughs> That was an all, that was an all star time. The, the irony is, I was afraid of my mother rejecting me, and his mother is rejecting, and he doesn't care. Oh, yeah, he's, <laughs> and he's not even gay. JD oh. straight, and his mother disowned him. You see, it happens to others. Imagine if he was gay. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you were gay, I'd own you again. Happy Thanksgiving. So, Bye. who were you with on Thanksgiving? Your dad. I, and who is? Uh, does yeah. he have a? Does he have a wife? <laughs> no, he doesn't have. What's he got? He's got a girl. <laughs> what? Ah, uh, Will is such a douchebag. Will? He's, he's got a new girlfriend. A new girlfriend? Ooh. <laughs> he does? Listen to so that he, laugh. Doesn't it suck? I would hate. How was that, hanging out with them? <laughs> it was fine. It was yeah. fine. What's his new girlfriend no. like? She's fine. She's quiet. We're all quiet. So, you know, we don't really know each other, so. How old is she? Oh, I don't know. She's around my dad's age, I'm sure. I don't does know. Does anyone, do, so when you're all quiet, like, does everyone just sit there and eat and no one talks? Yeah, is it a quiet table? Uh, sometimes, at, at times, yes. <laughs> That's a night. You know what I've had nightmares about? was like if my old man lived and my, her, him and my father, her, him and my mother weren't together. Right. And, like, he had, like, some hot young chick as a girlfriend, right. and I, I I just would want to strangle him yeah. and her. Yeah. Like, is that is that what's going on? Are you jealous that your father gets broods? I, you know? I, no, I'm not jealous of anything. <laughs> You're not? It's it's all good. It's got to be hard though. Your old man, he's old. You well, know. No, he found somebody. You know, who you they found each other. Who does the cooking? Who cooked? Oh, it was like my my grandma and my aunt and. Did they, did they badmouth your mom for not showing up? No. 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 Did, did they leave a seat empty for her? No. Like, uh, no, she wouldn't be there anyway. This is my dad's family. It's all that Midwestern. They don't talk about anything. Keep it all bottled up. Like Maybe you could go on MySpace and find her. That's true. Like Italian and Jewish. I know families. my mom is asking. Italian and Jewish families from the East Coast are all like, "Oh, she can't come. What's our problem?" <laughs> Did your dad find his girlfriend on MySpace? I don't know. They've been going out for a while, supposedly. I know your mom met the Hawaiian guy on the internet. Did your dad meet the girl on the I internet? Don't, I don't know. <laughs> I love busting your balls. Well, was she with the Hawaiian guy on Thanksgiving? Yeah, they yeah they're they're married. Do your grandparents all have dates too? 
<laughs> no. All right. Listen, Everybody go ahead. Everybody has a date with JD. High pitch Mike. Well, not high pitch Mike didn't either, so there. And Amy. You want to be high pitch Mike still or gay Mike? No. <laughs> Funny you ask that. Thank God for this voice. I'd much rather be referred to as high pitch Mike. High pitch Mike it is. Okay, very good. High pitch Mike, everyone. And, uh, and uh, I'm happy Mike. for you. Fruity Mike. I'm happy for you, Mike. Thank you very much. And, uh, and thank you guys for all. Everyone here has been ult, uh, ultra. Your shirt happening. says it best, my friend. Erase hate. hate. Erase hate. A raise hate. Good. All right, thank you, uh, Mike. Thank you. All right. Let's uh, say. Want to laugh more, Benji? No. Yeah. Benji? What is Benji laughing? Benji, in all seriousness, why were you laughing when High Pitch Mike was coming out? <laughs> First of all, I like Mike, and um, I'm glad he. he it yeah, all we, we know out. all that, but why were you laughing? Because I don't think Artie want it, it. It wants to go to the light. Be like, please take me back. Please take me back. <laughs> Do you already? <laughs> of course I do, Bench. What's the matter with you? I'm I would sure love to meet with them once like a week. It. I'm sure Artie doesn't like AIDS, and he'd love to see it eradicated, but I hate he doesn't like the way the Thank you very like much, Bench. I hate AIDS. He's right about that. I hate it. All right. Uh, by the way, uh, we are now ready to award. <laughs> uh, lots of Thanksgiving stories, but we should start with the big announcement today was from High Pitch Mike. Who that Artie's book is number one. Not that. High Pitch Mike came out of the closet and admitted... He was gay, but Gary, we found out that this announcement came as a surprise to not very many people who work here on the show. Well, you know, it's funny. Mike talked to me the day of the polygraph. Mike came in and he spoke to me and he told me that he was gay. And we went over a lot of stuff and he told me about his mom. And it was, you know, it's a pretty heavy stuff. I mean, we like to goof around. It's a pretty heavy stuff. So we talked a little bit and he said he wanted to come out on the show. And I said, that's something you really should think about. And then it got, it got into an area where I said, you know, I started to feel like this great, um, responsibility i was like you know maybe you should talk to a shrink because i i don't want to be the guy to tell him something and his mother never speaks to him again and i said you know take time to think it over so then he emailed me over the vacation um said he really you know wanted to do this and i called howard and talked to howard about it a little bit howard said why don't you have him call me so all this was going on i'm thinking that this big announcement that we're doing today is for the show so Mike goes into my office and I go, you didn't tell anybody else. Did he? he goes, well, you know, I, I did tell Brad Driver. And I was like, well, that's okay. I go, you didn't tell anybody here. Did he? he goes, just will. Then I spoke to John Hine. He said he told you. He told me. He told JD. I don't know. He told you, Teddy? Everybody, yeah. He told Tracy. Right, so I guess it was uh, more for the audience. I was hoping for the reaction of the office. Right. Well, the off yeah, the office didn't give you that reaction because right. I don't think anyone was really surprised, not because of what they assumed about Mike, just because we all sort of knew all. I mean, listen, I'm not looking to exploit Mike, but if you have a great idea, let's utilize it for the good of the show. So you are looking to exploit Mike. No, it's, it's, <laughs> listen, I, I really was. He was when he came to see me that day, he was really in in bad shape. And I, you know, I said my exact words to him were, listen, as a producer, I'm jumping out of my skin to let you do this on the air, but as a human being, I have to really think of you. You know, you really got to think this out. And in Mike's defense, when he told us, you could tell he was sort of not testing the waters, but it made him feel more comfortable telling, confiding in certain people and, and getting it out there. It would have been a little better to surprise everybody. Yeah, I, I agree. But, but before we get into the Mike details, can you explain what pre-promotion is and why you took so much shit for it? I don't know. It's a, it's a phrase we use in our meeting every week. I was pre-promoting the fact that Mike is coming on, or I should have just said, let me promote the fact that Mike is Yeah, what is, I don't, I'm, I'm not busting your balls. No, I, I don't know. It's a phrase we use in our meetings every Monday. We'll pre-promote it, and um, I don't know. I, you know, it doesn't mean anything. And Howard immediately attacks. Actually, Robin immediately attacked, and Howard jumped on it. Yeah, you seem to, Robin seemed to have it in for you, but you got pretty vicious with Robin. I don't know if what Artie said was true, but. Yeah, I don't know what Artie's talking about. That's a, I really don't know what he's talking about. But I have to tell you that I told Howard during the break, if you see this on Howard TV, you'll laugh your ass off. My son, Lucas, had called me right before this whole thing started, and he needed some help with some homework. He needed to do something on the computer. He's like, Dad, i got to get this project done. How do you do this? So I'm going, okay, here's what you do. Right click and then hit save. And I go, hold on a second. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> and I go, was that Lucas? And I was like, hold on a second, Lucas. And I'm putting my hand over the phone. I go, go fuck yourself. And then finally I said to my son, Listen, i got to call you back in five minutes. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. Then I just you know, went off. Now, was Robin <laughs> getting under your skin just like any other day, or did this one stick? No, it's just like, it was just one of those weird you know, weird things. It was, just, it was pissing me off. I don't know why. And, Benji, Howard kept going to you about your react. Like you were laughing when High Pitch Mike made this announcement? Well, no, I wasn't laughing about him coming out. Like, I, 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 I respect him for it. I think he's brave. Whether he'd done it or not, I think it, I, uh, I liked him. But, um... I was laughing at the fact that 
he's uh, making this uh, effort now to get Lifebeat to take Artie back as a spokesperson, it sounds like. Well, because, you know what? You, I, I was sort of getting a little bummed out when you were laughing, too, because you sort of don't know the whole story. And I think Artie feels a little weird about what happened. And I don't think, like, Artie's looking for Lifebeat's forgiveness so much as that I think that Artie liked giving the money from the cupcake to the charity. It was something that he enjoyed. I, and I think he feels really bad about what happened. So I, I don't think I, Artie's listen, begging anybody. I, I understand Life Peace's position. I think they were between a rock and a hard place, like how to deal with it. From what I know about how they deal, dealt with it, I, they, I think they could have given Artie the option of doing it quiet, more quietly. They did. Okay, okay, wait, okay, hold, okay. On, hold on a second. I, I said I'm from gonna, what I know. Hold on a second. This I have to make very, very clear because I, 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 this is just one of those things that just gets under my skin. When Life Beat decided to not go ahead with the Artie cupcake, they didn't want to say anything. They didn't press. Okay. Wait, so listen, hold no on. Let me finish the sentence. Okay. They didn't want to press release it or anything. I mentioned it to Artie, and Artie went right in on the radio with it. They would have preferred that it never come up on the air. Okay, so I said from what I know about it, from what I knew about it was incorrect. But what I would like to ask Mike is, how did he feel before? Why did he feel before Life Beach should take him away or not have him as a spokesperson? Because he was and, mad. And why now does he feel that they should? Because he spoke to Artie, and he thinks Artie, he thinks that... Mike's, you see, you see, Mike wrote this letter to Lifebeat. That's really an amazing letter, and maybe if a letter, we'll post it on the website. But Mike admits that he was trying very hard to get under Artie's skin to get him to say bad things, and that's why Mike said things to Artie like, I'm glad your father fell off a roof, because he was so upset internally that he's gay and he can't say anything and Artie's making fun of gays. I mean, it's not as black and white as it sounds. Now, with all the animosity that went back and forth between those two, were you guys surprised that Mike came out to Artie? I mean, I know he spoke with you, Gary, but Artie, it sounded like, was the next person he spoke to. Well, it was really weird because when he came to me, I originally thought that Artie was the issue. When he said, I'm gay, I said, listen, you should go talk to Artie, especially when he told me the story about his mother. I said, listen, as soon as you bring mother into it, I know that Artie's going to understand and he'll back off. And, you know, Artie really doesn't know you're gay, so he'll, he'll just let it be. But then Mike said, well, quite honestly, it's it's bigger than that. I care less about Artie and more about my mother. But then he went, you know, again, I think he was trying it out. And Artie was the next person he went to. Did that surprise you, Benji, that Mike confided in Artie? No, I mean, I understand. What, no, no, it doesn't surprise me. But here, here's Mike, so I, so I can uh, tell I you. I heard part of Benji's up. question on the way over. Um, when it first happened, when Artie read that letter on the air, I have to admit, I was I was really proud of what life he did. They had to distance themselves from Artie. Then a few hours later, it started to hit me. Who Who's affected? Not Artie. Artie... Artie's really not affected if they cancel this charitable effort that they're working together on. The people that are affected are the people that LifeBeat helps. The the people they they work to prevent H, HIV and AIDS uh, in youth. And I thought there's kids out there that may not learn about things we learn about in school about protecting themselves and being careful. And I thought this is really shitty what Artie and I have done. But at the but time, I, but at the time, see, at the time, I was so. I knew I had let Gary down. I felt like I had let Howard down, and I let myself down. But I knew it was something that I didn't think could be reversed at all. Then, as I started to tell Gary last week, my coming out might have some effect on the things that happened between Artie and I. Yeah. And I want, I want to do. I can't speak for him, but I want to do what I can to try and. But at the time, you seem to be saying like someone saying this stuff, like wishing AIDS on people. Um, using derogatory words for a gay person, that Lifebeat should not have that person as a spokesperson. Yeah, but I think Mike's whole point was that once Artie found out that Mike was gay, now that he knows somebody and he sees how it affects their life, that maybe his attitude's changed on some level. Has right. it? I can't tell you whether it has. What they, what they heard but the person has the ability to say, my attitude's changed. Mike, Benji's looking at it like he's like, no fucking way. No, Do you no, think that... I don't think Artie's Artie ever disliked gay people for being gay. Yeah, Artie I, was I, a, I, right, I think some of the right. words he used, I disagree with. You're absolutely with, right. But... Artie was angry at me. He wasn't angry at gay people or people with AIDS. But he let his anger get the worst of him, and he said things that people could misinterpret. But right. if you thought that was wrong then, I don't see why you think that was okay now. Well, because cause maybe, I... cause maybe somebody's attitude has changed. Whose? Is maybe it Artie's or Mike's? Maybe Artie's has. Maybe Mike's has, too. Maybe both of us. I, I, okay. I, but what's so funny? I, I don't know. In other words, Artie, Artie, do you think Artie stands behind the comments he made now? Now that he knows about Mike, you think he thinks he should, in an argument, you think he'd yeah. say him again? Yes. You think he really means it? I don't think he really meant it then. But yeah, I think in an argument, I, th I think he with, meant it. He argument. meant it then yes, because he, he was angry as hell at me for what I had done that day. But he said things he didn't. He so meant now, me, now, so wait, but what you're saying, Gary, is so 
So Mike's saying the life be make Artie a spokesperson. No, what, I'm saying, what I'm saying may is maybe, no. maybe together Artie and I can help educate other people about I'm, whether it's the, the, the use of the word faggot. I don't know why this is so funny to bet. Usually, maybe, usually maybe usually you and Artie can go on a tour about the word faggot. Nobody's saying that. Usually I love when you... I like when, you, when, when, No, No, I'm saying usually I love when I hear you laugh off mic because right. it, it makes something that's not necessarily funny even funnier. But today is not the case with that. I think I don't, I don't get to laughter. How tough was it in there today for you? Maybe one day you'll understand your attitude will change about the laughter. Possibly. Uh, it, it was a little bit tough, um, but the real, you know, the hard part was talking to my parents. Uh, I wasn't so concerned about what was going on here, but how my parents would handle it. Now, I don't know if you heard this, but before Gary and I were speaking, you told him what was going on, but then you ended up telling a bunch of people around here. Right, was because that... uh, I, I realized I was ruining uh, the surprise of the show, but it, to me, and I know how the show works, I get, I get that, but... To me, it was more about these are people I've kind of worked very closely with over the last three years. Some of them have become very close friends. And I thought I want them to hear it from me and not think, oh, Mike's doing this as a bit for the show. You know, I, I wanted it to be personal and heartfelt, and I, I wanted to tell people on my own terms. Now, did you feel like you had to go on air with it to talk to your – well, you said your mom was probably not listening, but, like, why, you know, why did you decide to do what you did? Because, like, uh, you know, I knew when I was in middle school. I didn't. I didn't choose to be gay. I knew I was gay, and I hid it for so. I tried to hide it for so many years, and I, you know. Did you take a lot of shit in middle school? Did people think oh, you were gay? This wasn't the. This isn't the first place I've ever been called queer, or faggot, or homo. You know, it, it happens in middle school and high school and college, and uh, and there's a lot of people out there dealing with the same issue I was, and I think maybe somebody hearing on the show can. Uh, can benefit from Had it. you ever come out to anyone before in your life? Uh, no, Brad was the first one. Brad Driver. So all these years, you never, you never confided. There was not one. Well, obviously, you came out to the guys that you hooked up with. Right. I mean, that, that, but, but you the, don't, you don't have to really come out. Right. To and, but, but, but you never had a, you never had a friend. I, my, my friend of uh, twenty years, my, my best friend since third grade. I just told him over the weekend. Surprised or not surprised? Not so surprised, but he also never really judged me one way or the other. You know, we're, we're friends. And, and, was, and the lie detector is what brought you to this point? No, no. Well, the song started it. Actually, no. My parents' anniversary and Howard's wedding started it. You took I mean, a lot of shit for that song, Mike. I, you know what? But I, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not here to try and please people or whatever. The song hit me in a way I'd, like, I, I can't describe it. I broke down in my apartment just crying because I thought I'm never going to have that kind of love or have a relationship that would mean anything. And, uh, you know, if, if we're going to be honest on the air, I was being honest on the air. Let's go to the phones. Daniel in Pennsylvania, you're on the wrap-up show. Hello? Hi, Daniel. Hey, I have a question for High Pitch Mike about Artie's, uh, Artie's sister. Okay, ask your question, Daniel. Stop backing up and ask your question. Is, what, sorry, my question is, would you actually bang uh, Artie's sister on the show well, now that you announced that you're gay, are you going to apologize to Artie for saying that? Uh, no, and I actually, it's funny you bring that up. I should have addressed that when I was talking about life feed and everything else. I owe his entire family an apology for things I said about his sister, things I said about his dad. You know, as much as Artie owed me an apology and whoever he made comments about when we were fighting, you know, I, I regret everything I said to him because it was said out of anger. Jamie and Worcester, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, how you doing, guys? Hey, Good Jamie. afternoon. Um, hey, high, uh, high pitch. Since the weight of the weight is off your chest about coming out and everything, and, and you're dying to find true love, if Howard proposed a dial-up date uh, in the future, would you uh, participate? May you know maybe um, like if they if they parade in like three guys straight out of out to you and. Their porn star, you know, like that's not what I'm looking for. Well, we've got three, three. What you, if you gave us, you know, what you liked, and we get three gay guys. Like in other words, I know what you're saying. Maybe we don't want us to put three gay midgets behind a curtain. <laughs> yeah. Well, what are you looking no. for, Mike? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, this is all new to me. Um, you never named on the show. They asked you, like, do you have a celebrity type? Oh yeah, and like I'm, I could, yeah. I couldn't think of like. There's no celebrity I'm attracted to really. It's like, do you, is there anyone that like celebrity wise you ever like? Do you fantasize that you've uh, you know pleasured yourself to thought about? A celebrity? Not re not really. I mean, like, I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, I'd have to. I think I'd have to give it some thought. Gary, in North Carolina, you're on the wrap-up show. Oh my God, I'm just now tuning in. Hypit Mike is gay. 
That was the announcement this morning. I'm, I'm kidding. Congratulations, <laughs> I guess. Hey, um, guess. one other one other thing, um, Gary. Something that that you do that is hilarious to me is when you say something that's kind of dumb, and Howard picks up on it, and he starts picking a little bit at you. You aggressively deflect. It's so funny to me. That's funnier than anything else. You immediately try to change the subject or or bring up something else, and to me that's so funny because it's. It's obvious that that's what you're doing. Well, welcome to the show, my friend. That's what <laughs> yeah. We, I mean, I mean, one of the greatest games on this show that Stuttering John was a master at that we love is when the heat is on you. If you could somehow figure a way to point it at someone else, it's awesome. Yeah, and pre-promotion, that's, that's a very redundant term, by the way. All right. Thanks, man. All right. Yeah. Thank you for your call, Gary. Let's go over to Dale in New Jersey. Dale, welcome to the wrap-up show. Hey, what's up, guys? How you doing? Good, Dale. Listen, I just want to say to High Pitch Mike, who cares? Go suck a dick. Everybody's gay. <laughs> Everybody? Come on. Are you? Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's coming out of the closet. I mean, come Dale, on. Dale, are you gay? Uh, only on Tuesdays. Oh. That's, it's funny he says everybody's gay because this weekend I was waiting for the subway train, and I, I looked at this guy, and I'm watching him, kind of like a macho, just typical guy in the rocks. I'm looking at him checking out two other guys. I think th- I think there's a little gay in everybody. Probably. Maybe he just liked their suits. <laughs> now, uh, Gary, why did Richard say that you you're and I quote uh, God's gift to gay men, or you think you're God's gift to Richard, gay men? Richard, come down here right now. Richard's going to explain it. We had a discussion. <laughs> Richard's going to explain this because Mike, you said Gary's nice guy and all that, but just not your not your. Yeah, guy. I mean he, he's a he's a handsome guy, and uh, it was just Richard asked me, "Are you attracted to Gary?" I was like, "No, I'm not attracted." To but him. over the years. And I don't know, if Gary, if you lost it. I don't think you have. But over the years, like typically when we've asked uh, a lot of gay people, especially when gay was like like more unusual, they have often picked Gary. Right. And I would say a reasonable amount of the time. I think I lost a lot of my luster when I shaved off the mustache. Oh, the mustache was. The I don't know thing whatever that, uh, the mustache seemed to be that more brought like. him in. But Richard, Richard has something he'd like to say. Richard Christie now joining us here on the wrap up show. Richard, you said Gary believes he's God's gift to gay no, men. No, he said Gary walks around all day <laughs> claiming he's God's gift to gay men. <laughs> Gary's so cocky when it comes to that. How so? He, well, he's always bragging, oh, you know, this <laughs> there's a there's a certain singer who's gay. I won't say their name. I'm I mean it might not even be a big deal to say who it is, but it's a certain gay heavy metal singer. Who Gary thinks this guy was hitting on him in his office? He was, day. and you brag about it all the time. Yeah, I think it's funny, but but I never have I ever uttered the words "I'm God's gift to gay men." <laughs> well, not in those exact words. That's my. Don't words. you want to apologize to me? Because <laughs> well, I never said anything like that, Richard. But that's not. A, I will make your life hell. That's I not a swear put down. to you. I will make your life hell. Don't do not put words in my mouth like that. But it's not a put down. You should be proud it's that gay men find you attractive. That's you, that's fine. That's not the issue. I don't care if gay men find me attractive. I do not walk around saying <laughs> I am God's gift but to gay men. But he's saying you act like you're God's gift. You kind of act like I you do are. not. No, no, no. I do not act like I'm God's gift to gay men. I but you seem Tai-Gi's very, you or... seem very proud when you talk about how gay guys always find you attractive. You got a smile on your face. I think face it's and... funny, but I don't say that. A lot of gay guys don't find me attractive. Would you feel more confident with gay men than with straight women? Like in a situation, it's like not a, a contest, Benji. <laughs> Richard, are you jealous? That I Gar- am. I'm always jealous when anybody finds somebody else attractive. I wish gay men thought not that I'm. I'm not a gay guy, but if a guy, a gay guy, if Mike thought I was attractive, I would be flattered. But the point is being missed here. It's I. I if if gay guys find me attractive, I think that's funny. If gay guys don't find me attractive, I could care less. It's not about how I feel about what gay guys think about me. I do not walk around. <laughs> Saying that I'm God's gift to gay men. Well, not in those words, but I think you're very proud of it, and you kind of flaunted a little. I am bit. amused at times, but I do not think that I'm God's gift to gay men. And you said you were coming down to apologize. Well, oh, I apologize, but I still think that you're very <laughs> proud of your, you know, how gay guys are smitten with you. Like the out cue guys, I think were on wrap up show one day, and and you were all proud. You're like, oh, do you guys find me attractive? And uh, I think one of them, I don't. Know for sure, but I think one of them said they did, and you were all, you know, proud and cocky and stuff. <laughs> yes, I'm proud and cocky. <laughs> and you could say the singer's name. He's out. He's uh, yeah, totally I out. know, but maybe he doesn't want people to know that he's he okay was... with being gay, but not 
flirting with Gary? Well, yeah, he doesn't want people to know that he was flirting with Gary. And I don't know. I Listen, I don't know that he flirted. All I know is the guy came to the radio station and didn't talk to anybody. And then I walked in the room and he was overly friendly to me. That's all I'm saying. Well, well Richard, that was a heartfelt apology that you gave to Gary. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gary. Uh, Mike, Richard, uh, I guess, gifted you with uh, his butthole. Oh, what a gift. <laughs> it sounded like you didn't want no, any part of that. Richard's, Richard's a great friend, and uh, I don't need. Yeah. I see his butthole enough on Howard TV. I don't need to see it. Yeah, but you got to see it in person. You got to see it in person, hairs and smell and all. No, no, thank you. It's very clean, though. I mean, you probably like a clean butthole, right? Give it to your girlfriend. (laughs) Well, girls aren't as girls aren't as into buttholes as gay gay guys are. I guess so. Uh, Kevin in Texas, you're on the wrap-up show. All right, Kevin, you sound like wind. Let's go to Brian in Vegas. Brian, you're on the wrap-up show. Hey, I wanted to ask Mike if he thinks his uh, gayness is a chromosome thing because he he does some girly stuff. Like what? What does he do that? You like, can... like, like the concerts and whatnot. Like the concerts, yeah. Like no, the, I mean, the thriller the dance. I don't get how the thriller dance is gay or straight. Like, I, I still don't follow that logic. But I, 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 I got to, I got to jump in on this one. There's not a lot of straight guys who would go to a thriller dance a thon, or you know, in other words, like even I, if you I watch guess, it, even, I guess. even if you watch it on TV, and you think it's funny. I like I I've seen the thriller dance. I've never tried to emulate it, and I certainly wouldn't go with a group of other people. Or if I did, I would think that they right, would be all gay or like. Chicks. I still live in the '80s. I love everything out of the '80s, and Michael Jackson is one of those things. So, whatever. If people think that's except gay, it's for so Mike's weird. voice, and I, I'm not talking about his persona though. Is pretty masculine. Like I don't think he has a feminine persona. Well, I said to I was telling Mike when he told me he was gay. Well, I wasn't completely surprised. I was saying it's amazing how if you plant the seed of doubt, he has. Denied being gay for so many years, I, I thought that Mike was like asexual because he never talks about being with girls. And I just figured he wasn't that interested one way or another. And as long as you keep saying, I'm not gay, I'm not gay, the doubt is always there. This might be a project for Howard TV, but I'm curious to see how many times on this show, even as an intern, I was probably asked if I was gay and I said no. Well, well I, I can tell you the first time it was. Mike, is, first of all, th- this is the first time I thought Mike might be gay. Mike was the only. Male contestant of the intro beauty <laughs> pageant in the history of the contest, and he came in that day. Okay, it'd be one thing if he came in in a suit, but he had on black leather pants. And in my mind, I remember a bow tie. Yeah, we wearing a bow yeah. tie. It was like a it was like a vinyl suit. Yeah, yeah it, was very, it was very Chippendales. And yeah, we had to dress up, so I, I, I went all out. John in Toronto, you're on the wrap up show. Hey guys, what's up? Hey John. Now, Mike, would you allow another transvestite to sit on your face now no. that you're out? No, no, no. That was disgusting, gay or straight. And that was a one-time occurrence. I'm not going to do that I, again. I got one more question for you. Go ahead. Would you, would you guys allow someone to be put on fire like what Bubba did there a couple weeks ago? Do what? Like on Bubba's show, he set someone on fire there last two weeks ago. Why would I want because to set they someone came on out? <laughs> right. <laughs> come on, come on. What were you saying, Gary? No, why would I want to set someone on fire? All right, thank you for your call, John. And by the way, Rich, if you think I'm going to reveal the name of that guy, you've got another thing coming. <laughs> Let's take one more call. <laughs> you, you would be breaking the law if you did. <laughs> John, you're on the wrap-up show. John, you there? Yeah, you there? Yeah, we're here. Hey, man, I was just saying, you know, I kind of, I was laughing, too, when uh, he was talking about Artie and last week. I'm with Benji because, you know, Artie was saying the same thing when they told him he wasn't, they weren't going to take the money anymore. He was like, the only person that's hurting is them. And I don't know why Mike all of, a, all of a sudden feels now that because he's gay, it's okay. It's not because I'm gay, it's okay. It's because I saw a side of Artie that I'd never seen before. I saw somebody off air without a microphone in their face who showed true compassion and, and different feelings than I had ever seen on air. You know, maybe he doesn't want to show that on air. Uh, you know, I, I can't change what was done. All I can do is try and fix the, the mistakes Artie and I have made. Hello? Okay, John, thanks for your call. Don't, don't, we'll save it. All right. Tell it on here. Mike, what, uh, how are you, man? Everything I'm good? good? You look good. good. You, do you, what are you doing after work? Uh, I do public relations freelance, like, during the week. Yeah. And then, uh, I won't say what company on air, but I, I work for an airline on the weekend. Oh, you do? Right. Just so I get free travel. Oh, good. So I'm going to Europe, like, next week. All right. For free. That's worth it, then. All right, we'll get into this. Uh, this is the uh, Artie Lang Uncensored Podcast. Dan, play our theme song. My opening theme song, just if you don't listen, I don't have enough money to uh, pay for a theme song, so my theme song is my air conditioning uh, unit. <laughs> uh, it's the f- 
Put the fan up high, Dan, so they can hear it. This is, uh, I don't have to pay for this. Uh, and it's, uh, yeah. You got that? That's the sound of disappointment. There we go. That's the Artie Lang band. I swear to God, I, I gotta get a picture of Dan holding that microphone. Boy. That is just this, that is just a look of like what happened to me. Do you think this, Dan? Do you think this is more sad for me or you? It, it looks like he's dr- <laughs> it looks like he's drying the mic. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, let Rod, did Rod, did you get a shot? On that? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh, well, that's the opening theme. I like the uh, the the. Uh, the middle solo part there. Uh, uh, I uh, again, I want, if I can afford a song, I would uh, I would play it, but I can't. On the show today, very very big show if you're a Stern fan. First of all, Jason uh, Lawhead is here. What's up, buddy? How are you? How are you? The, you're one. Of, this guy's one of my favorite comics. I love his. Thanks. I love his energy. I love his uh, style, his passion, and his comedy. And he's one of the few guys who does 1978 Yankee batting stance. That's right. Uh, <laughs> and I wore, I actually underneath this, I wore my Mr. October shirt for years. <laughs> I, I love Mr. October. That's going. That's going well. Uh, and uh, of course, um, uh, Rod from Bayside's here. What's going on? Is, is Mike? His mic's not on. Rod. Hey. Hey, what's going on? Rod uh, pranks uh, Mike Francesa. There's other things. But of course, the big guest here. Uh, my headliner today is Mike Morales, high pitch Mike. From Stern, who me and people think we're enemies. We were enemies for about ten minutes, and uh, you know we got on each other's nerves. But uh, you know that that passed, and uh, we're friends now, right? Absolutely, but <laughs> it amazes me that I'm the big guest. Forget about the mic on the air conditioner. <laughs> well, you're because I'm the big guest for Stern trouble. fans. Certainly, you're the big guest. I mean, you know, you're a, you're a, in, in Howard Stern lore. You're officially you have your spot in that. In that history? Sure, sure. How long after? I, I left, of course, in December of 2009. Uh, and you, how long after that did you leave the show? I left about a, a year ago, a full year ago in the fall. The whole news department got disbanded, or is Shuley still there? Uh, Shuley's still there, but the news department kind of disappeared at the beginning of this year. And I just decided, um, you know, I wanted to do other stuff. Right. So I'm nearing 40. Right. Um, you know, I had a great nine years there, plus interning. You were there nine years. Yeah, I interned. Okay. Oh, I, all right, all right, okay. I interned with um, when Grillo was there and KC, you know, I, right. in, in the heyday. So I just I decided I wanted to do other stuff. Well, Mike Mike uh, came out on the Stern Show. I mean, that's uh, as big as a uh, point in your life as you can imagine, right? I mean, yeah. obviously, uh, Howard Stern, well, you said it. I mean, Howard said you should say this. You wanted Howard to say you were, you were gay. Yeah, I mean, uh, I just got sick of the questioning on the show and... And now, you, and I, I, you and I were going. Well, at I was going to say, did I did my attitude towards uh, you uh, your uh, your life stuff like uh, going to Disneyland and all? Did that? <laughs> it, it, well, we didn't know he was gay, and I, I you know, being a guy, he I was, sounds like Mickey Mouse. <laughs> well, he's he's high pitched Mike, uh, but um, I I, uh, I I noticed that you went to you told you went to Disneyland Disney World, and happened by to be myself. And ha- by yourself on Gay Day it was Gay Day. <laughs> And then if you wore a red shirt, that meant you were looking for a gay guy, and you happen to have a red shirt on. I never had the red shirt. That's the oh, part. I'm sorry. That's the part that the fans called in. And were you red shirted knew- at Rutgers? Is that what I'm thinking? <laughs> 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 no, no. Okay, we're right. We're right. We both got all misconstrued because I started laughing. And then I said to myself, wait, what if he really is gay? Then this is horribly offensive. And then you came out. Right. And even when I did come out, I did it before doing it on the air. I came out. To, to your people, parents. To, to parents. To your mom, because you're, I think, you, I, I, actually, that was an example of Howard really knowing about life, like you were, he, he, he said you should come out to your family. To the family you know? first, right, and yeah. then do it on air. And, and how did they react? I mean, was it... Uh, they were great about it. My, yeah. my father didn't care. My mother, um, she was sh- kind of like shocked, and not upset, but just shocked, and didn't know what to do at first. Right. And now, then, like, like a lot of gay guys who come out later in life, you really came out. I mean, you flew out. You were Yeah, I mean, I... Within seconds, there was a video of you at Fire <laughs> Island dancing <laughs> dancing topless on the beach. Yeah. You I were mean, probably... I could think you were probably happy as hell. I had to be like a weight lifted. That was, was insane, right? It was. And yeah. like, even... It's funny because now I have different jobs and meet different people and... Right. I have to come out again because some people don't realize I'm gay. Like, I'm not. You know what you do? Just play the tape of me and you, I think. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know, if, play the list. Go home. Tell your coworkers. Go home. Listen to this. And then you can ask questions. Yeah. I mean, but that's like, the most sensitive way. <laughs> <laughs> but like well, even coming out of my 30s, I thought that was late. But like, look at um, look at today. Now we got. Bruce Jenner becoming Caitlyn Jenner. Like, you know, that, uh, first of all, to, uh, I don't, see, that's not even a gay thing. That's just to me. 
And again, I don't mean to sound insensitive, but it's mental illness. I mean, at 65 years old, you decide you want to be a woman, but you're not a gay man, but you're a heterosexual man. I, do you understand that? I, I watch the show on Fascination, Yeah, but I don't understand it. And I think the mental illness is not the fact that he wants to be a woman. It's, it's the fact uh, that he's a Kardashian. Right, no, yeah. exactly. Family is all, I mean, a man goes in that house and uh, loses his mind. He was, bro <laughs> he was browbeat into that right. mental illness. I mean, illness. listen, yeah, maybe if I lived there for a couple of years, I'd want to be a broad dude. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, Lamar Odom, I mean, look, he might have been a crackhead anyway, but I think the crack certainly escalated by the Kardashians. I always you know, say, I always say, I wonder if around their house they uh, refer to Reggie Bush as the one that got away. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of linebackers, though, that's for sure. Well, you know, exactly. That's what I mean. If you're, listen, if you're going to Thanksgiving dinner and, and Scott Disick is always there, you're probably going to smoke crack or become a woman. <laughs> Uh, so now you do watch that show because every woman in my life watches it. Every time a woman complains about the Kardashians, I said, "Shut up! You're not allowed to because you're the fucking reason." Yeah. Every woman, no matter what age, uh, education, they love it, and you love it too. I mean, not. I don't care for the 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 main show. I just watch the one with Caitlyn because it's like, what the fuck? What is, is that? On? Keeping up with Caitlyn? <laughs> um, it's a spinoff. It's called I Am Kate. Yeah. It's it's like the Jeffersons. <laughs> It's all in the family. Except the Jeffersons was funny. <laughs> yeah. So what is that? It's just about him being just him. a woman? Yeah, and they basically... I would watch that. Aftermash. Post-op. <laughs> Post-op with Caitlyn Post Jenner. Post-op with Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> Oh, it's hilarious. Yeah, is that so? What, I mean, I would say I would say one two-hour documentary would cover it. I don't, yeah, it, I don't know if it's a series. No, exactly because and yeah. I don't. I don't think he knows that yet though because the what first, does he do? It's just him with random transgender people. They paired with right, them, right, not even friends. And yeah, conflict and no drama, kidding, fake conflict. Now, do you do, do you feel like uh, do you feel that's when you feel the gayest? Do you think watching that? When no. you're watching Kaylee. <laughs> I mean, you understand that that's, to me, that's gay guys and women. Right, I right. mean, I don't have any, it must be a heterosexual gene. I'd rather watch highlights of basketball at the sports <laughs> center. I'm trying to think, like, even that's not the gayest. Like, the gayest is, what's the gayest? Well, I when mean, you're actually having gay sex, I would assume that's the gayest. That, that yeah. would be gay. Yeah. Now, do you have a lot of gay sex? Uh, here and there. <laughs> I mean, so how's it going? Do you, Once I mean, in a while, I have straight sex. I know sex you, notes. since you came out, uh, how is the dating life going for you? Good, I mean. Oh, wait, you have straight sex, too? No, I was joking. Oh, you thought, okay. That was a poor attempt at a joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, since you came out, so now it's been about five years. Yeah, easy, right? five or six years. Have you had luck with relationships? Dating, um, I've had some horror stories. I joined a dating website. Yeah. You know, like everybody has that grinder. Do you do you, grinder? You do that? Oh. If I go to a new city, maybe just to see somebody, you know. Right. But no, I, listen, sometimes I'm tempted to kill time to see what's have, going on in Grindr. <laughs> when I have Tinder, you could do Tinder, which is I, st I started a new thing called Clugger. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it lets you know uh, who the closest is to you who uh, wants to talk about uh, Jack Klugman. the actor. <laughs> Uh, it's always is, uh, an odd couple. Uh, right. It, it, it lets you know if there's someone within 20 feet of you who knows everything about Jack Klugman <laughs> and wants to talk about it. There's also, uh, for the black fans of uh, Jack Klugman, there's Kligger. <laughs> and there's uh, Clocker is for gay fan. <laughs> Clogger. Clogger is for gay fan. Clogger. Uh, I, uh, I uh, had those websites uh, uh, patented. No. Uh, so what, what, have you done Grinder? Like, say you're in another city, you do Grinder. Oh, yeah, yeah. And mean, what you, happens? Like, what, what does it say? You get on Grinder if you like each other's pictures. There's a hard you... cock 20 feet from you to your right. Basically. 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 And ready to fuck. Ultimately, yeah. I mean, anyone who's on there is saying, oh, I'm that's just insane. looking to date. It's like, why but are you on here? Don't you think that's dangerous? Of course it's dangerous, but like, Everybody's different. I'm very cautious and use protection. Right, okay. So, but, I mean, but maybe use protection is one thing, but uh, you never know who's going to be there. Like, it could be a, could be a rapist. Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Right. Like that. There was a reporter from ABC Radio who met some... Right, kid online, and it ended up in a murder. No kidding, you know. Well, I, I'm I'm getting good at that. I use Uber, Tinder, and Grinder all at once. <laughs> uh, the other night at 1 a.m., I uh, I was uh, I was paying a chick to watch a guy fuck me in the ass in the back of a town. Car. <laughs> <laughs> she Instagrammed. <it. laughs> no, so because I have thought about you. We keep the, in touch on uh, texting and every once in a while, and I was glad that you reached out for me. And uh, I just wonder if you're it's a happy life for no, you. No, it is. It's yeah. definitely happy. I like last year. I I quit. I took a few months off. Right. And I worked since I was in high school. 
took a few months off and went to Thailand for a week. Now, what what happened about, there? Talk about the gay scene there. Oh, well, that's it's, it's, it's the all like, gay. It's yeah. like Caitlyn Jenner times two hundred. But it could be a boy too. You got to make sure it's not a kid. Like, I mean, do, do they open? Is there, rape legal? I mean, is statutory rape a thing there, or can you fuck a kid? I think it's illegal. I would think it's illegal. It, okay. I don't know because a lot of a lot of guys are like seem to like fucking kids move to Thailand. But you go through the town square, like in Bangkok, or we went to an island off of Bangkok. And even the name, Bangkok. Right. Like, <laughs> yeah. Come who on. were you? That, that was a, whoever had that, that was writing the money. <laughs> who were you with? You went uh, to I went week. with my best friend. And now, was he a gay guy too? Yeah. All right. So, and you're not lovers though. You're no, just no, no, platonic just friends. friends. But walking down the street, you have these women like hitting on you, grabbing you, trying to get you to go see. Women, the right. show. But are well, they gay men too? They were too? men. Oh, they, they were, were men. men. Wow. Okay. Wow. Oh, okay. So it's like the Asian. Wow. Girls. So are you gonna? Would you move there? Did you have fun there? It was fun. I would never move there. I mean, that's a lot of people do. Like uh, one of my when I was on Man TV, there's a kid who did uh, hair, uh, and he uh, you know openly gay and had a, a partner and everything. And they as soon as he got enough money, he moved to Thailand. Wow, that, I mean, it's beautiful. Wanted. Like it's if there's a place to die, I would like to die there because well, yeah, it's, sure. The scenery is sounds amazing. like there's plenty of ways to die there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, listen, I mean, it, it, it's, it, do you find it? Is everything more open there compared to here? Are we more uptight here? I mean, like drugs is a big thing there. Sure. You, big here too. There was that movie where the girls get locked up and for life because of you know right. marijuana or something. But, but are they more strict with the drug laws? It's I, it's odd because places known for drugs are more strict with drug laws. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. I didn't research too much into the right. legality of it. I was just like, where's? Do you do drugs? I don't do drugs. Right. My roommate smokes weed, but did he? Does like, your roommate take ecstasy when he gets fucked in the ass? No. <laughs> Is he a bottom? I, I mean, I'm not is in he the a room. bottom, your room? I'm not in the room. I don't know. Do, do you know if he's a I, bottom? Make sure the door is closed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Are you a bottom or a top? I've, we've talked about this. I think while you were still there. I know. I don't bottom. You don't I'm bottom. I'm not interested in it. So, me. well, that's interesting. Is it, hard? oh, yes. sorry. No, is it the, harder to yeah. find? Like, is that, I don't know. Yeah. Is that, is there like a harder to find? You know, a bottom guy. Is that hard to find? Is everybody, is it like... On it gr- sounds is- like that's really must be hard to find, yeah. Yeah. In like, any walk of life. A, someone I mean, willing that, to get fucked in the I've head. met people who enjoy doing it, and they say they're, you know, they'll never be a top, but... Um, well, there's a lot of straight guys. I mean, an asshole's an asshole. I mean, a straight guy who fucks a chick in the ass, if, I mean, if he doesn't know it's a chick... <laughs> It's the same feeling, I would assume. All I'm thinking about is 2008. Different diet. If you would have told me you're going to be doing a podcast years from now (laughs) where you're talking about bottoming and topping, I would have subscribed back then. And you were my head guest. (laughs) Head guest. No, I I, I mean, listen, I'm I'm doing a show in my kitchen. It's a tough business. Uh, but I enjoy it. I enjoy it because we get to talk openly like this. Let me turn the tables. Go ahead. You seem very happy. I am very happy. Yeah. And that's good. That's important. Uh, well, I mean, I'm happy creatively, business-wise. Uh, I, uh, I broke up with a fiancé about uh, a year ago. And um, so that saved me a lot of money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> honestly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, but from a, a career, career standpoint, I'm very happy right now. Because I found out a way to make this. This turned into a business here, this show, which I'm happy for. And my stand-up is going well, you know, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I would say for the first time in your life, you don't have a company you answer to. That's the best thing, yeah. I don't have anybody uh, to censor me at all, which can also be scary because I can say whatever I want, which right. you get escorted out of show business. But, but uh, no, I, this is the most freeing thing. Like, uh, it feels great. Good. It feels great. And I can have anybody on I want. Like, you know, I have you on whenever I want, you know, which I like. And I like to have friends on with an open invite. Like, Jason, for instance, Jason has a story. You were just t- starting to tell me a story. You about how rough this business is. Yeah, well, you're, you're doing a podcast out of your kitchen. Yeah. I, There's I slept, levels. I slept on a subway the other night. Which is unbelievable. Uh, I mean, you have to call me <laughs> if you're going to crash somewhere. It was one of these uh, things, man. It's like this business, right? Like, you know, I, I'm relatively unknown. I'm working my way through this thing. And so I'm out here for the New York Comedy Festival. I'm doing a Access Live tonight on Gotham. But I came in Tuesday and I booked uh, a, a room or three, or three nights initially. My right. first three nights just to get them out of the way. Uh, on uh, schmotels.com, I believe it's called. <laughs> and uh, I don't want to say, I don't know if right. I'm Shmo- legally allowed to say, but Shmotels. it's schmotels.com. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. And, uh, you know, you give them your money. I'm working off of a debit card most of my whole life. So I, I'm, I, I, I booked the room. They take your $600, $700, whatever it is. And uh, I come to town. I fly right into New York. I go to the comedy club first. I do a set at the Gotham, a great set. Thinking I, you have a room, right? Yeah, I think I'm going to go check in after that. Like, you know, I got my bags and everything. And it's one of those points of your life where you're like, I went on before Judd Apatow. 
Right. Judd is uh, in town. I mean, I know I, I've been rehearsing with Judd this week to do this HBO series, and I know that he's doing Carnegie Hall Saturday night. Yeah, he's part of yeah, the festival so he's, doing he's, Carnegie. He's so. warming up with stand-up, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I was supposed to close the show. Uh, he, they popped, they called. He said, hey, he's on his way in. Go you know, go do a tight ten in front of him. Who knows how long he'll do. Great. So I got to do it. I said, he goes, he sees me later that night, like not even much longer, he tweets at me. You know, Judd right. Apatow, he never really met the guy before. He saw me do stand-up t- that night. He tweets at Jason Law, really funny set. I'm on the top of the world. You know, yeah, you're I mean, great. again, I don't want to burst your bubble, too. I was, I, like I said, I've been rehearsing with Judge, and I know his assistant tweets for him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> his, assistant did That's ask me, his assistant did ask me how to spell your last name. <laughs> That's no, great. I'm sure. It was, knowing him, I'm sure he did. And it is him enjoying your set. Yeah. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. Is I, it, all I know is, it, you know. Did it's it a, say it's the a, real Judd Apatow? It said it was checkmarked 1.3 million followers, <laughs> well, that's right? probably yeah. him, yeah. So you figure like, hey, that makes you feel good. You know, right. this business kicks you around. You got to. But so, so, you can't show that tweet to the front desk of the hotel. <laughs> no, you can't show that tweet <laughs> to the front desk at the hotel. Absolutely not. Will this get me anything? Oh, my God. So, Miss, Miss Jackson? <laughs> So I go to this hotel and they've overbooked. They've overbooked. Oh. So hotels not gonna, and they're they're all like, one blames the other. Right. They blame of the, 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 the the website. The website blames. Oh well. Where was the hotel? Manhattan. Yeah, it was yeah. Manhattan. But they say that. Oh well, you know when you're booking, there could be four rooms left and five people booking at the same time, and, and the, the the you know the the websites get confused. They take right. you think so now. I'm they're sitting bullshitting there, you. Yeah, and, 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 exactly. Right, right. So now I'm sitting there going, well, fuck that, you know, but it out. Well, we'll refund you. Obviously, you're not staying here. Well, I'm working off a debit card. The refund comes through bank oh, days. So oh. this is Tuesday midnight, 1 a.m. Right. Uh. Uh, now I'm, I'm not liquid at all. That, that, that thing took my, my uh, debit uh, account down to about 58 bucks. Oh, my God. I had a little bit of cash in my pocket from the spot and whatever I brought. Yeah, but yeah. you can't get a room with cash. Even if I, I had enough, you right. can't even get a room with cash. So now I'm sitting here going, oh, shit. Now, I, ha- now I did travel. I was a late minute traveling. So I traveled with a large check from a gig that right. I was going to put in the bank Wednesday morning. Right. OK. I don't I don't pay attention to holidays. Right. I don't know that Wednesday's going to be a Sunday this week with Veterans Day. Well, now, of, course, of course not. Right. Now I'm yeah. Now I mean, I'm the first year we've had Veterans Day. Why would you know that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know that they I would. Don't they observe well, the, holidays? Don't they always say like the best, some of, banks do Monday, stay open. Friday or some, but some banks do close. There's no mail on Veterans Day. I'll put it, put it that way. Yeah. But some banks might say we observe it on Monday or Friday. I've never right. heard of a, a bank observing it in the middle of the week. I just never heard that. So now I'm sitting give, there with Well, after that. the show, I could give you a lot of examples, or I could give it to you now, a list of banks that do observe it. <laughs> <laughs> well, the actual, every bank. The actual observe. Day. Actually, every bank already observes Every bank observes you try. <laughs> Western Union observes There are several like, banks in Jersey that uh, don't. Yeah, so now I... They're I, run by the Lucchese family. I'm stuck, man, and I'm not going to call people. No, but no, gonna, but again, it's 12 30 in the morning 1 a.m i'm like so i just literally it was raining that night i uh, call my girlfriend on the west coast i tell her my problem she tries to transfer me some funds through chase they don't take it because it's already the holiday now at tuesday night they're not they're not gonna transact anything till thursday morning uh, so i'm i literally got i go down on the e-train right by uh, gotham uh, and i just ride the e-train from 3 a.m. till 8.30 a.m., just back and I used forth. to do just that when I was younger, but I had fun to have fun. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had fun on I the train. A, yeah. I had a carry-on and a, and a bag, and I'm just trying to stay awake so I don't get robbed. And I'm wow. Going back so then I go. Then, then this is what I realized. I By go, the way, in the 80s, early 90s, 70s, you would have been. That's, you, that's, been you might as well just go right to a funeral home and say, embalm yeah, me. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I'd have been dead. And, and so, that, not, you know, I, 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 so I, I'm still assuming that. It's, I'm not, I don't know yet that the banks are closed. So I'm, I'm like, I'll ride this thing till about 8 a.m. And then I'll go hit a bank at 9 right, a.m. Right. So I ride it all the way into like Midtown at this coffee shop oh I know. God, and I go hit because I know where this chase is. I go, the doors, I'm like, what? The guy out front is like, oh, yeah, it's Veterans Day. They're like, oh, my God. So now I go to a coffee and I got to call my mom and dad. I'm four, I just turned 43 years old. Of course you did. I know. And I'm calling my mom and dad to get me a hotel room in New York on a day. I, I'm sitting here with no money. Now, the awful part about that, too, is when you call your girlfriend in Los Angeles Ugh. with with a, with a problem like that, you're just reminding her of your situation. Oh, I and, just told her. And, I don't know and, why you're going to. I don't know why you're still with me. Like halfway through the phone call, she probably go, listen, I'm going to go outside and throw a rock. <laughs> and whoever I hit will probably be better. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Well, is she an actress? The no, LA she's not. What she's, is, how, how would you, how'd you meet her? 
uh, she saw me perform last year, uh-huh. and uh, you know she's like, you know, and that's the other thing is like I- I'm calling a girl for money who's 15 years younger than me. Oh my oh. god! You know You're what I mean? Calling a millennial for money. <laughs> exactly. Did her parents? And the sad have, thing did is, her is, parents have no, to give you money? No. The sad thing is, is she's got it. She's uh, like, how much do you need? Like she owns her own business. She's basically an esthetician. She owns her own business. She's got her shit together ten times more. What than is she I an esthetician? Esthetician. Like they mean? do like facials and uh, oh, uh, like uh, waxing no and I, oh. She, and in Southern California, those women well, pay high dollar. I mean, absolutely. She works constantly. Like, you know, I always do a joke. I go, you know, the girl's booked five days a week, hour after hour. I go, it's pretty humbling. I've been doing stand-up for 10 years, and she's got a better following than I do. Of I mean, course, it's fucking yeah. ridiculous. Well, now, you know? it, what's it like dating a Korean woman, though? Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mike my, my They got fa- money. Also. Uh, uh, <laughs> Rod, yeah. Rod from Bayside is, uh, is throwing in some gay jokes from the uh, grassy knoll. <laughs> 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 There's extra gay jokes coming in from the grizzly. Thank you, Ron. You got it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's it. Listen, man, again, next time, please give me a call. Oh, uh, you man. Can, I guess Dan knows I have two rules. No black comics here. That's and, hilarious. Uh, you're fine with that. And of that's course, hilarious. no gay comics. That's hilarious. <laughs> I'm kidding. That's hilarious. Anybody could sleep here who was, who was my friend. Wow. Uh, it was just one of those things where you, and then you're up all night just riding these subways, seeing all, like, you're just you sitting there coke? thinking to yourself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. At least I, be happy I, on the train. I, I, I had $58. <laughs> yeah. Like, literally, ex- dis- dis- well, 50 like, bucks, you could probably 50, get a coat. $50 uh, yeah, bill. Yeah. I can at least give you that number. Yeah, at least give you that exactly. <laughs> yeah, Artie sent me. He said uh, when I when I stay there next, he'll, he'll hook it up. Uh, um, yeah, you want me just, to put some money in my credit, yeah. in my account for my dealer? Can yeah, I'm, sure. I'm, just, yeah, yeah, just, uh, can you just, can, can, can you just PayPal him for no, me? No, because honestly, people who are anti-drug, I always say, if you're in a bad situation, why not be high in that situation? Like people, like I said, I had a girlfriend who always wanted to go to Hawaii. And I would say, I'm getting Hawaii delivered here. You know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's going to be, you know, I, I, people, I've been to Hawaii, I've been to Maui. Yeah. And uh, I've been, you, you asked me if I'm happier, not high in Maui or high in Sea Caucus on a February <laughs> night where it's raining. And I'm always happier in Sea Caucus. So at the very least, you could be happy yeah. on the train. Yeah. Well, you know, the good thing was, is I did have, uh, I did have a little bit of an edible. Uh, yeah. That I brought because I like to fly. I like to take a little portion of edible when I fly oh, yeah. just to relax. What does that mean? Edible? What do you mean? Like a marijuana? Edible. Oh, marijuana! Oh, 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 oh right. Oh. Yeah. So I, I had a little tootsie roll edible. So I just oh. I cracked that. At least I enjoyed the the different faces and the, all yeah. the all the other losers like me on the train from I'm fucking ta- three a.m. to eight a.m. Uh, all the way through through every borough in New York. I'm talking about way happier than that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, listen. I honestly, I, I'm being honest with you. If, if, please call me if you ever have that situation. I will. It's just I feel one of those bad where you're like. Like, you know, people, because then, you know, people on the outside, your close friends or stuff, they see what you're doing and, you know, you, you, you do some stuff and I've opened for Bill and, you know, Bill Burr. Just, you know right, Bill Burr and, and, and I've, I've done some cool Bill stuff. Cosby. No, yeah, no. <laughs> that would I'm be better. Saving him for you. At least you'd have but, a lawsuit. Uh, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> But no, and then you sit there and you go, man, I'm like, you're like, it's like that movie Blue Jasmine. Yeah. You ever seen that movie of Blue course, Jasmine? The course. example is how close you are from the top to the bottom. It's right. really his point right. at the Absolutely. end of it. And you yeah. sit there and you go, Man, like, I was, like, just in the heat of it, you know, performing with guys like Roy Wood Jr. and Judd Apatow and getting, you know, big laughs and people. And now I'm, I'm sitting here not knowing if I'm going to even have a place tomorrow night. Well, what, say, well, you know? well, what does that do to your spirit-wise? I mean, you're 43. Man. Do you, what, do you have – I mean, see, see, the problem is you stay in this because you know you're funny. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, and, and, and it's hard to leave when you know you're funny. Yeah. Like, I couldn't honestly – in good conscience tell someone like you to quit comedy because I think you're a funny guy right. and you constantly see people who aren't funny make it yeah and it's very frustrating what, like so what does that do like does that set you back at all mentally a night like that at this yeah, point yeah it, it, it does like last night after I finally got did get checked in after hours of just not you know sleep ever and I finally got to the room and I called and I had a, a long enough conversation with my girlfriend it was like one of those like you know, do, do I, are these signals, you do know, you are these things to quit, you know? And, and I've thought about it. I mean, I, I believe me, in the last year or two, you, all those examples that you cited, you see others and, you know, I never try to get upset with someone else's success. It's not oh, mine. I it's do. not person. Oh, God, I do. <laughs> well, I do. I said I try not to. Right. And because you have to try to not compare it, you know, they say that, uh, uh, what is it, comparison is the... The thief of happiness. While like, you're sleeping something. on a subway car, Chelsea Handler's on a private jet. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a lot of, and even just a lot of other. That makes people. you murderous, murderous. Yeah, I'm gonna yeah. Kill somebody. So you know, you think you know, you know. I just turned 43, and and I know I'm funny, and other people have recognized it. But the ultimate, 
you know, the ultimate next step has not been, uh, you know, you sit there and you feel like you just, you hit a plateau. And uh, even though you're, you're writing more stuff and you're becoming a funnier comic, that plateau is, you're only on a, a, someone else's plateau. Right. And, uh, yeah, it's frustrating, Artie. You know, I mean, I, you know, I've, I've uh, you know, I'm not a hack comic. I'm not out selling bumper stickers you're after the show. You're far from a you know, hack. You're, not, you're not, definitely an yeah, original guy. Yeah. Know, I mean, I'm not. Maybe that's what's hurting you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know. You know, I don't, you know, but that was one of those nights where you eat some humble pie and you have a lot of time to think to yourself about a lot of things. And her and I had a long talk. And I mean, she's the last person that wants to see me give this up. She's she met me on, you know, she saw me on stage and yeah, a lot of free weekends. You're not there too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> exactly. She loves the distance, you know, <laughs> no, I, but I, no, well, how she, serious are you with No, her? we're really serious yeah. like, where we celebrate a year next week. And, uh, do you I, feel like is she's the, the finan- one, the financial burden of uh, like stopping you from getting married? Too? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, of course it's stopping me from taking her to, uh, nice places a lot of times that I'm scraping along and, and trying everything. So then you sit there and you go, well, what do I do? Do I, you know, I'm a big part of, me is is uh thinking i'm just quitting the road next year you right. know what i mean like just saying at least i'll try to stay in town in la do some spots I, I i got a little following in san diego so go down there and try to get paid a little bit do some spots maybe audition maybe pick up something maybe drive for uber i, yeah. I don't know just uh, no, but, but just... clear my head for a year and right. not like hey if bill picks up the phone and says hey you want to open somewhere i know that financially that's smart i go out for a few shows or or well, maybe like a... bill isn't down at the garden right. who's opening for him Verzi, paul's opening oh, for paul him. Verzi. Yeah, yeah, oh, paul's yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Paul's a great guy, and he deserves it. It's so he's got town. a few guys that he uses. Yeah, he's thing. got a few guys, and uh, you know, I, maybe I might do. Maybe I mean, I'm not getting. I'm not. You can't make a living opening for someone right. unless. They, well, you can. Well, you can, but I don't. It's got to be every. I, show. I might do. In, I might do. 15 cities a year right. you're not going to make a living right, like right. that you know you got to go hustle your own so how so. can you take off for a year how can you take off and just you know do not go on the road when all well you I, like i said maybe drive for uber maybe i have to get a job maybe i have to oh, s- so get another stick job out. maybe point. you know I'm, I'm trying to submit some writing stuff and i just don't ever hear anything and i don't have any representation i mean i've gone, gone to some festivals i've tried to beat down some doors but uh you know I mean, uh, I'm a, 40, you got no I'm age. a 43 year old white guy that uh, talks about basically his life and other things that I observe, and uh, I, I mean that's all I know. I'm not gonna go out and uh, comedy is you know, the come one, up with some shtick. Comedy because, is the one business where if you're a black guy, it is easier to make it. It's the one. It's not. not I'm not talking about insurance companies. I'm not talking about right. You know, the world of finance. But in, in comedy, a black if you could use that black accent. And, and, yeah. and say the N-word like Chris Rock can. You, yeah. It opens a lot more. Yeah. Have, like I, I remember when Titanic was a big hit, I would say this is a great time to be a black comedian because you just have to put black people on a Titanic and you got a, a <laughs> yeah. good bit. Like, you know, yeah. you, now, Brothers was on a Titanic. Yeah. That should be different. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Fuck the bitches and children. I'm on the lifeboat, you know. Right, right. Yeah, you no, know, I mean. A white guy no... has to come up with something more clever. Yeah, and it's, you know, I mean, there's now there's all kinds of like uh, – you know, diversities that are just, they're just grabbing any diversity. It doesn't even have to be black. There's well, Russell the, Peters is East just telling every old American joke in Indian. Yeah. That's what so, he's doing. You know, yeah. <laughs> You know, he, you know and, it's, uh, that's, and now he sells out the garden in, in you know, Thailand and yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, Bangkok, right? I mean, you know, uh, and it, London. It, you know, I can't waste my time getting, like, upset or letting that kind of bother me. You have to, you know, everybody's path to success is different, I guess. But it's just, yeah, you, you, you get punches in the gut, man, that sometimes that knocks the wind out of you for months, man. And you just sit there and go... What am I doing? By the time you can grab your breath, you have to figure out, am I doing this? You know, because I don't want to be on the other side of 45 and have to possibly worry about that type of experience happening or or have to worry about where I'm going to get work, you know, and and I love this girl. So hopefully that. (laughs) You know, I want to take that to the next level, but I, I mean, and she's oh, she's twenty, so she's twenty five, twenty eight years old. I'm forty three, but she turns twenty nine next in a couple months. So. Are you worried about her? She, no, she's, she's loyal. In love with you too. She's a loyal girl, and she's not like when I met her. Um, she was not. She's not a party girl. She doesn't I mean she like you know we'll have a glass of wine, whatever. But she doesn't go like it's not going out with her friends is the least important thing on her mind. It's building her business. It's being, uh, uh you, you know, want that. If you want your girls, she, miss, uh, the person you cheat on you with to be her business. Yes. That's a dream. Absolutely. Woman. And right, that's who yeah. she is. And then that's who I cheat on her with is comedy. And we, right. we have that understanding and she has ambitions and she sees, you know, what her value is. And the great thing I love, what I love about her the most is, is that she don't need me, but 
she 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 keeps right, me. Right, right. You know, well, so and, and I'm so lucky you, that way. So that's but. a big big positive. Yeah. So then when you, all these punches in the guts happen, you go, well, you know, uh, is she she's worth so much? She's so valuable. Is does she deserve? The, the you know to have the burden of you the burden of this absolutely or, or what's going on in she my doesn't head. I'll answer she doesn't yeah she doesn't but, but it doesn't matter if she's in love with you it doesn't she matter. doesn't she yeah. puts up with it and she that's listens, what love is she listens to those shit man she listens to the shit that I complain about and she listens to the lows and she's she's happy for me w- with the highs and uh, that's what love is yeah, absolutely yeah. It's, it's about and a that's why faith. I know she's the one because all of it you know she you know um when i first started hanging out with her she saw me on stage i headlined this one nighter in san diego and she saw me and uh we kind of hooked up after you know a couple weeks after we finally started dating and then after like by christmas of last year we were really kind of you know things were rolling we knew we were special and i told her i looked at her right in the eyes and i said you know we kind of know each other a little bit is that hard with korean eyes She's actually half black, half white, so she can't stay here oh, either. So no, no, I'm just of she I'm can. kidding. She can prove it half white. She I'm can. kidding. She, she's she's great, but no. What I said to her, and I looked her, and I, I wanted her to be serious with her because I knew when she met me, she saw me headline in a comedy club, and then you know we got to know each other, and she's like, oh wow, you're like this is like you're really good at this, and guys like Bill Burr have you open, and other these names, and you've done this, and you've been on this show, and whatever. But I had to put her in check, and I looked at her, and I sat across from her one night when we really knew things were going well, and it was close to Christmas, and I said, listen, I said, uh, you know, there's going to be times all the time I'm going to want to get you something nice, and I'm going to want to take you to Hawaii. Right, right? of course. I'm going to want to do things like that because I really like you. I go, but I want you to know that this is a difficult business, and I'm, I'm not getting rich off of it, and the best I can do is maybe give you a foot massage at the end of the day. (laughs) And you know what? She stood up, walked over to me, and this is after hanging out for like a month and a half. Right. And she walked over and she put her, I was sitting down, she put her hands around my head. Right. And she kissed me on the top of the head and she goes, I don't care about any of that. that's great. That's great. She's like, you're going to make it. You're funny. You're going to, that's, don't even worry about that. That's not why I'm here. And I'm like, that's when I knew I was able to breathe. Like, that was the first time like I've ever like, Opened up to someone else. Like I've had some girlfriends, but very superficial. You run, well, that I, is rare. Which I run happen, them in happens, and out of yeah, which happens rare. Yeah, yeah, I run them in and out of my life in the last seven or eight years. You know, and they, they, they and never would I ever look at a girl and confide that I don't have like I don't have a lot. Like I would never. I, I'm not putting myself out there like going, hey, you know, I don't make that much. I, I was always fronting more right. with other girls because I knew that you have to. You know, but this girl, I was just like, well, this is it. I mean, I'm it's gonna fronting I'm, like topping her bottom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what. Front, tell me what I front do, is. I, it's bullshitting. Yeah, yeah, it's bullshitting. You know, I'm just like, you know, fronting. Like Putting I would up never, a front, you know. Yeah, I would have I would have played myself off to be more successful than I really am. Where I, as this one, I, I retreated and I said, look, this is really what it is. Because I knew she was really special. And I was like, I'm not going to mislead her for a day. If she wants to walk out, of, out on this now, I'll, I'll let her. I'll let her go, oh, well, you know, if she thought that she was getting in, you know, with some guy that was going to take care of her, she needed to know that. And... That wasn't it. And that made me just, for the first time, like exhale with someone and just go, all right, now I can just kind of go live my life with her and I don't have to worry about her thinking a certain way about me or sure. perceiving me in a way because she's here just because she likes Jason and uh, more than the guy that she met when she saw me on stage. She likes the guy off stage way more. So right. I, I, that, Well, that's key. Dude, that's All key. my girlfriends have always liked the guy on stage way more. And me, me, me too. Yeah. And that's why I've had to put on the front. Right, well... Right. And know. it's a difficult because they, they, they want you to be that guy all the time and then they want the luxury of that lifestyle. They want to live this lifestyle, this lifestyle that they think you live or they perceive that you live or whatever You can is. roll into New York at any time and get a spot on the E-Train and for five hours. And- <laughs> yeah, exactly. You want to ride the, <laughs> the E-Train? The Marriott's book, but the E-Train does have a spot. The E-Train, yes. Uh, no, and you're right. I mean, listen, the- you, you describe the dream situation. In some yeah. ways, you describe something that most people in the world would rather have yes. than, than a good job. You're right. and uh, yeah, It's true. It, it's dawned on me. It took me a long time to find. And, you know, she's from Chicago, so she has that you know, Midwest mentality. She's not a Southern California girl. She didn't go out to Southern California to be a Southern California girl. She went out because the weather sucks in Chicago and her job, that's where the money is in in that kind of the beauty, the healthcare, that kind of a thing with women will spend top dollars. So she's happy. Yeah. Oh, she realized op- op- opening up a, a spa in Cabrini Green Projects was probably not going to be <laughs> exactly. a money. <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, you know, I, I well, so, Mike, Mike is a guy who's come over a lot of adversity in his life, too. What do you think? I mean, Jason's pouring his heart out here. Oh I appreciate God. it. And Mike, what do you, you have any advice for him? I mean, I mean, no, he's doing the hustle. 
you know what what kind of comedian like gets out of college and just makes it big but, well but he but he's been you know i'm not I, uh, yeah. he's 43 years old i didn't so, start yeah. until i was 32 it is oh so, really well, yeah, yeah i started really late and you want to it's like you do want to see some sort of money back after maybe five years you start to think okay yeah you know, and like you, you say, to, if you start at 22, maybe late 20s, you know. You yeah. have to respect the hustle because sometimes it's all about being in the right place at the right time. Sure. Oh, definitely. Some, sometimes it's about blowing the right guy at HBO. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Unfortunately, listen, it is. You're right. And listen, I, I've had moments where I, ha I have been in the right place at the right time. I've had uh, I've been lucky to have certain things happen to me in this business. It's just, the, you, like you said, making it financially is a really difficult struggle and I'm not unique there's a million guys out there that are as funny or funnier than me that are in the same situation or if not worse um, because it's a difficult it's a difficult road and you have to have and you know I'm, I'm hoping that this girl now maybe she's the support system that takes me to a level that maybe gets me somewhere because I've been doing this as a lone wolf and a lot of times you can get really dark in places without someone else to help you say you're okay or it's okay or it's going to be better and you know so I'm hoping that you know that she and this experience helps me navigate it a little bit and gives me a little sense of direction of where I want to go but yeah I mean you know you sit there and you think man I mean maybe these are the signals that tell you to, to, to do different stuff so I mean I, I you know, do you have any skills besides? I mean, like you say Uber, because I don't. I'm telling you, I don't. No, I, I, I can, I can run. I, can, I can cook. Okay, uh, like I, good enough to work at an good. Applebee's or like good, a, good enough to o open my own catering business is what I really want to do. Want that, talk about hours. So well, well, here's what we talked about is what what, what I talked about with her is uh, because there's so many small budgets now going on in like especially LA and there's so many with all the different uh, you know production schedules and produ production companies. They need craft services. Okay, wait a minute. Let me stop you right there. They need Just craft really, services. Really think about this. Mm -hmm. though. Yeah. I would think twice. Now, do you really want to work? Do you really want to serve food to people who are doing what you always dreamed of doing? You realize that? I, I don't know. Like, mentally, I would get out of L.A. and oh, maybe cater to car people in Detroit. Or, yeah. Like, do you really want to <laughs> well, really realize that uh, not only are these people not as funny as you and made it, but now you're right. serving them egg white omelets? Right, right. Well, uh, that, would I, I drive, will, that would drive me partially crazy. You here's know? what I do. You might kill Johnny will... Galecki one day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as he tells you, there's onions in this egg white omelet, Jason. I was told you were funny. But is this a joke? Can uh, I expect this joke every morning? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> when I, I love get my cooking. Uh, Big I love Bang Theory script. My one thing is, is I love cooking. Like I can do it for I do it for free almost. It's comedy to me. Like well, that's I, a I've, bad business model too. Don't do it for free. Well, I know, but you know what I mean. The mentality is. So that you would, I that love, would be your first. Have, would you I, go to catering first? Well, here's what I if I if I could you know if I could make my own if I could build my own business and and and, and clientele kind of like my girlfriend has done in her niche. Uh, I, I I know that that's something that I would that would get me out of bed. Right. Okay, good. You know, I know that's something that would get me out of bed and get me to work knowing that that's where I'm going to get my money. And this is something I love to do. I love to create. I love to cook. I, I do. I, I'm a tailgate legend, supposedly. I mean, I, in I, Cleveland. I'll, oh, I, I, any, anywhere. I'll go. I'll, I'll go pop open. You, I'll, I'll go pop open a tailgate. That's an interesting blow business. What about, your you, mind what, what about you just say, I, I'm your tailgate party. Like you go back, to. you go to a, a football market and you say, when you tailgate, you don't have to worry about cooking. I'm your tailgate party. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I cook for, you know, me, Burr and a couple other guys go to the Rose Bowl every year. We've right. been six of them. And I, and I tailgate. Yeah, you guys texted me from there once. Yeah, Billy, yeah. Bill texted me from the Rose Bowl once. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. So we, uh, we, I tail, I throw the tailgate. I throw, I cook a breakfast. I cook a, a snack. And we, we get there at like seven a.m. It's a two thirty kickoff. Wow. I cook. We, we, I set up three grills. I get the breakfast grill going first. I cook omelets, breakfast sandwiches, all kinds of stuff for these guys. We start boozing early. We got the Crown Royal and the Budweisers out. And as the, you know, the day warms a little bit, I get the, I smoke. I, last year I smoked a uh, uh, four pounds of baby backs. The year before I smoked a, a, a seven pound pork shoulder. The year before I smoked a prime rib. Uh, so I'll smoke for dinner and we'll eat right before that. But in between, I'll, I'll cook snacks either like like uh, last year I cooked lamb lamb sliders with a, a goat cheese. This year I'm going to cook these uh, these citrus glazed wings that I made. So we we cook early in the breakfast. I've always got stuff going on the fire. Who, who pays the 20 grand for all this food? Uh, it's a yeah, lot of food. Yeah, it's a lot of food. Yeah. It's, yeah. No, we I mean, the grocery bill last year, I believe. Yeah, we try to throw in on it a little bit. Bill, 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 Bill's. Uh, he pays uh, for it. It's a Bill. We, Bill Burr Company picnic. Is what OK, we call that's, it. Right. that's what it should be called. <laughs> Bill Burr Company picnic. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, last year's groceries were you know probably close to 600 bucks, I would think. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, and then, you know, we smoked some ribs. I made some uh, homemade uh, 
I made some uh, 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 stuffed baked potatoes with them. Um, smoked some, some, some potatoes. I crunch up Frito chips. I throw them in there with some salsa and some shredded cheese. They're unbelievable. So I, I, well, let me ask you this. Are you, would you be ready to make a move career-wise and do this? Yeah, you know, I mean, at, at my age and everything, you know, we'll, we'll see. I mean, uh, you know, I still, I don't want to stop doing stand Well, then, of course, then don't. That, that's, that's the big question. Of course, I just you don't, don't want to stop. I just don't want to, I just can't, I can't afford the, the You'd travel. be doing sets in your head. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if you're funny, you're going to keep thinking of funny shit. You yeah. go, I know this would get kill somewhere. Yeah. It's frustrating. No, I know. I just can't travel, like, uh, on these dimes anymore. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm losing money, like, this year. I looked back at uh, this year and literally everything I made and then travel expenses. I, I mean, I didn't make any money. I'm not. You can't. You, well, you, made, you mean you were no you weren't in the plus column money wise. I, I wasn't. No. Over the over the course of the year, I was in the plus column to a point where you can't do it that way. Right. You know what I mean? Like, no, I, I mean, you got, sure. rent, you got bills. I mean. You, know, you go two straight weeks on a road and then two weeks off the road and whatever that was and expense. I, now, I'm, now I'm underwater if I don't work every single week. If I don't work every single week, I'm definitely. Well, I can't believe there's a, uh, as many people in the world nowadays that refer to themselves as comedians. And that's the only way they make a living because I, I do the math in my head and I go, I know what I need to live. And uh, the money I make is, I mean, compared to most guys, I'm extraordinarily lucky. I mean, I, I can't, you know, I'm very, very lucky with what I make in, in show business mm -hmm. and in stand up. Uh, and uh, again, I was at the right place at the right time when, the, you know, certain people needed to, someone to do what I do. But I can't believe some people say I just do this and they're yeah. not willing to admit that they get money from somewhere else. Yeah. You know, it's hard. It is hard. And it's, it's, uh, you have a conscience, you know, you, I mean, you, you, your parents, I'm sure did they, what did they think about the career thing? Like they, they love it. About like it? they love it. At first my mom was a little like at my age, I started at 32. She's going, what are you doing? You know, what, what's going on? And when I decided to move to California after starting four years in Cleveland, cut my teeth there, they were like, really? Yeah. <laughs> and she was a little, Got, but now, you know, they've seen what I can do. I mean, you know, I talk about them a ton on stage. Right. They, they're, they're hilarious. I mean, they're crazy as all shit, but they're hilarious. They, um, they you know, they're together 58 years now, and uh, I'm the youngest of seven, so that's all fodder seven for Seven people. Yeah. Wow. You're the youngest. I'm the youngest. I'm opening with that bit tonight. I do a joke about it. you can't love seven people. It's impossible. You just, it's, you just can't do it. Dan, is our game plan just to let that ring? <clears throat> Shouldn't you pick that up or something? The machine will answer it. Well, it's, it's in the middle of um, the interview, though. Just well, Can we take it off the... That's the music. That's the new music for the show. I thought somebody was calling He's to laughing. book you. <laughs> <laughs> That's show business. Yeah. Well, d d didn't you see, hear how incredibly annoying that was? It happens every day. Like, shouldn't we take it off the hook or something? You told me to keep the ringer on. You I did? liked it. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. I'm going to reverse Do you want me to unplug it from now on? I'm going to reverse that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> it is annoying. Yeah. Who was that? I'm just making sure it's not one of my family in trouble. Uh, oh, oh, a call from a, these fucking telemarketers. So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I just, I, I wish I could give you advice that yeah. made sense, you know? Well, there, there really isn't any. You have to What just, do your brothers and sisters do? Uh, anywhere from teachers to software guys to my sister's like a college faculty. I got a, you know, they're all, my parents were both educators. So a lot of them went into education. I got a brother that's in the tech software, another guy, another brother that's in, uh, um, medical field, but yeah, they've all taken that, you know, regulative, Regular life. Regular thing, kind yeah. of life. And that's for whatever. You know, my dad was a legendary high school basketball coach that's right. in, in Ohio. Yeah, okay, yeah. And my brother, one of my brothers, you know, followed in his footsteps and went into coaching and stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, I was always, you know, I was the youngest. I was the mistake. So I was kind of the one that was, you know, going for the attention as a kid. I was in my mom had her first six in like six years. And then I came almost six years later. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So, so I was always like the one, you know, literally at dinner, right, when I was a kid. I was like about six years old. There wasn't enough chairs around the dinner table. So I would literally stand at the end of the table because I was the perfect height. It would, you know, the table would come to my chest. And, and I had to wait till my oldest brother went to college for a chair to open at the dinner table. Like I literally was eating off the end of the table. It's like a spot off. on the bench. Your father was really a coach. <laughs> yeah, he was really a coach. I was, I was activated. On the, I, was, I was put on the active roster in 79. Um, so like literally I had to do like that. That was like part of the, like the whole. So I was back here. I would be up here and I was free to walk. So I would like imp do impressions of my parents arguing or right. 
right, my dad right. coming down the stairs, and I would, uh, and I knew I could make older people laugh at a younger age. So I always kind of had that in me a little bit. But it took me because I was from that family that was like, go to college, get something good, come on there, be right, a teacher. Sure. It took me till thirty two to really have the the balls to go. All right, I'm going to try this once and for all. I'm going right. to go down to the comedy club in Cleveland. I'm going to get a job. So I, I was already in the restaurant. Did business. you go to Hilarities? Where'd you go? Hilarities. Oh, yeah. Nick Costas. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I worked for him as an employee and just cut my teeth there before I decided, uh, you know, I'd hit that ceiling and just decided to move on to, to uh, the West Coast. And, uh, you know, it's gotten, like I said, you know, I've done it the way you should do it almost, you know, cut my teeth, right. got kicked in the jaw, worked my sets, worked my material, came up, got noticed when you're, you know, people recognize you. Oh, that guy's funnier. He's funnier than the last time I saw him. He's right. funnier. And slowly move up that pecking order you're of people. Better. Yeah, and then, and you know, uh, so all those things feel good about the business. It's just that there's just, it feels like there's a plateau and you just kind of just keep going. And, like, I've already done Access Gotham Live. And, you know, uh, just because things were stale, I went, your buddy, uh, I went, I did, I was one of the top 100 in last comic standing this year. I've competed. And I thought if anybody was going to like me out of the three judges, it'll be Norm. Right? Oh, Norm. Oh, what happened to Norm? Hated me. He hated me. you? He hated did? What did, what did he say? He goes, I, I don't get it. I don't like it. <laughs> he just said, I don't like it. I don't like you. And he looked down and started reading his paper. <laughs> well, that's very dismissive. Yeah. So, but, you know, Roseanne, like, I didn't move on. They didn't really show any of me. Except did Keenan like, like you? Keenan loved me. Called me a great comic. Really? Uh, Roseanne really liked me. So Norm me. was the one who ruined your life? Norm, Norm was the one who probably... But, uh... Whatever. I'm just saying, like, so you do, you, you hit that dead end. You're like, oh, man, I'm going to be one of the top 100. I'm competing. They don't move you on. They don't really show any of you on TV. So right. that, that doesn't happen. So I'm here to do live at Gotham because things are just going to, you know, hey, why not? Do it again. I'll burn another 10 minutes. Uh, I got plenty of material, uh, something just to give me something, you know, to get going. So if somebody sees it, if, if, no, if somebody doesn't, you know, whatever. I just did a comedy festival in Big Sky, Montana. Uh, I, ha- I had a great set. Yeah, didn't win it. Thought I was right there. So uh, you're on the road a lot too. Yeah. I was on the road a lot this yeah, year. Yeah, you know, I mean, you well, know. I thought this was going to be Mike's chance to bitch about life, but this has been your. <laughs> Mike, are you bitter I'm that Jason not overtook to bitch. you? No, but you know, I have admiration for all of you guys because I would never want that nonstop rejection. Yeah, it yeah. seems like a tough life. It, it seems is. Like... It's a lot of. It's not even the most successful people. It's ninety yeah. percent. I mean, even you know, well, uh, like I saw Amy Schumer open up. For Madonna a few weeks ago, right? Like I'm sure she had her share of rejection. Oh sure, and or maybe she did. She put a lot of years in, or maybe she blew the right. Dude, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Amy put a lot of years in. <laughs> no, no, no. But um, it just seems like a tough life. A lot of years, yeah, of struggling. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, don't you feel like Jason? Ah, I mean, yeah. She I put mean, a lot those, of years. She of struggling was a, she was a feature for about 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> she was a feature as long as a feature does. <laughs> does um, that aggravate you? I mean, I know because people, other, Aziz and Zari, you got to want to kill them. <laughs> I know. I'm just looking at that river. <laughs> I'm looking at that river right now and just looking at how great that river looks with all this talk. Just, I wonder how deep the bottom is. How deep uh, do you think it is down you see, there? See, that's what happens. Uh, um, you got to be careful. Don't. Uh, no, I know. I, I, you know, I, my, I, I'm sorry I went to Mike there because you mentioned probably people that depressed him more, Mike. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> no, but you sit there and you go, I mean, you know, Bill, and Bill Cosby raped 50 there, women. But see, that's it, good. To bring that millions. up, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, we it's, found that out after he made his money, but Yeah, it's not even so much that you, you, uh, you, 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 all the failures or the, all the rejection. It, now I find it, it's like, it, there's so much halt to the momentum. Is like, now you've had the rejection. That was, I started the rejection. Listen, I'm, I'm the youngest of seven, two t- teachers. I heard no my whole life. No, you can't have that. No, you're not getting that. No, shut up. I mean, that was what we heard our whole life. Right. I want that. No, no, no. You're right. not getting anything. You're wearing your brother's <laughs> clothes. You're, you're using your, your brother's bath water. Shut up. We're poor. You're not getting it. I, that's fine. It's just that when you do start accomplishing things and you get a little streak of momentum, how quickly that momentum gets just cut off. Bam. And then, it's, and then, you, feel, then you feel rejection without even people saying, no, you're right. just sitting in a, a level of nothing. Right. right. I mean, you wish somebody would call you to say no. Nobody's calling you. Yeah, and that's even, the worst. Even when you finally make it and you get your own sitcom or you get your own project movies, and then it, you, you, you well, get there's the, the other pool. side of that too. Yeah, yeah, you can make it and then you go you back know? down. You're back down the hill. Sure. Again. Yeah. They say they say the only thing harder than getting on TV is staying on TV yeah. or whatever. Getting on, you know, is staying. You know, so right. 
And that's what that, that's just that that's just that chug along. It's just always that 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 I I, I think I can. I think I can. And she it's like that book never ends for me. There's no he the train doesn't get yeah. I, I just the, the pages just keep turning on, on that. Well, for know? comics, it's easier because once once you get a name for yourself in comedy, at least we know how to do stand up. Yeah. Like actors got to keep waiting for jobs. We can keep doing stand up at least, you know. Right. Uh, and that that's comforting to know. Um, but, uh, you know, technology such where there's a lot of opportunities. But on the other end, it's so scattered now. It's splintered the business. There's so many different things going on that money is is drained out. And, uh, you know, uh, getting on TV as a regular on a show now is not as hard. But because there's so many networks, but there's no money like there used right. to be either. Uh, there's a lot of ways to, like, drive yourself crazy. But, oh, you know, yeah. Uh, but again, you do have a solid thing at, uh, with this girl, though. That, that, that is, is really good. a unique thing. It really is. Yeah. You know, uh, it, it, she's, man, I, I'll tell you, she's, uh, she's kept it together for me this year a lot. You know, I mean, I, I, listen, good things happen to me a lot. And, uh, you know, um, sometimes you need someone else to help you recognize. Oh, that, absolutely. You know, because you get You need so a positive, involved. you need a tree, you need a fucking rock. You need, yeah. you need someone to lean on. You yeah. Need to go, I, I need you here. Yeah. You know, it's very difficult to do it. Because you lo- don't have that regular life where a no. job is going to happen. And, no, because when you're, when you're by yourself in this kind of a business, you have two people talking to you on your shoulder and they're both negative for it. You know, they're, right. they're, they're both, both the negative. devil. They're both yeah, the they're devil. Yeah, they're both the devil. Yeah. And when you have her, like she's got two good positive angel voices in my ear. Like an animal know. house when Tom Hulse is deciding whether or not to have statutory rape yeah. added to his uh, record. <laughs> And uh, he's got the devil saying fucker and the one guy saying, no, be a nice guy. On our show, both shoulders are saying fucker. Yeah, yeah exactly. Both, both shoulders are saying <laughs> fucker. Fucker, fucker, fucker brain. Fucker out. brains right, out. Right. Yeah, treat her like shit. Right. Exactly. Uh, um, well, let's take a break because this has sure. been a very, uh, I, I, uh, it's, uh, it's emotional. It really is because I, I relate to you in every way except for the failure part. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I love you, Artie. I love you. That's, well, you can't no, and I'm insanely yet. lucky, too, uh, and I'll explain that later. But, of course, so the big news is uh, RZA had a party from the Wu-Tang Clan and someone was shot at his house. <laughs> uh, that's, the, uh, that's the big news. <laughs> oh, Did you see this in the New York no, Magazine? A true, true story. Uh, a, a true poll in the New Yorker Magazine. I'm not making this up. They asked people that if they would kill Hitler when he was a baby. Like, if you had the opportunity to kill Hitler as a baby... Would I saw you, a hashtag about did that. Did you see that? Yeah. yeah. Would you kill baby Hitler, they call it. Right. And uh, most people actually said yes, they would. And look, I, I mean, I'm doing some quick math, and I think, you know, it's probably better to kill him, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, sure. I don't know. Would you kill Hitler as a baby? Well, yeah. I mean, if I knew, if I knew, I, I wouldn't kill Hitler as a baby if I, if they, if I wasn't, no, you're you know, just, privy, no, if no, I wasn't privy to no, the no, info. No, no, I'm assuming right. you know he's going to yeah, start of course, the Holocaust. Of course I would. Of course I would. <laughs> you of would. Of course I would. Now, what yeah. about you, Mike? Uh, you know. You're killing a baby regardless. Of course, you have to actually murder a, a baby. baby. You, you have to, yeah, right. So I'm have, gonna I'm gonna be controversial and say no. Wow. wow. See, to me, to me, I'm with Jason, and to me, I don't even have to think. To me, that is a no brainer. Killing right. baby, I would kill baby Ryan Seacrest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you still I can. Would, I would, still can at his height. I would kill baby A Rod. <laughs> That's hilarious. I would kill baby everyone on the View. <laughs> <laughs> Every one of those women is babies. I would kill. Brutally. No, <laughs> half of them, I don't even know who they are. Right. And I'm gay and I watch Yeah. Them. <laughs> Raven Simone. Baby Raven Simone I would kill. Uh, no, yeah, baby, you got it. So even knowing that he would go and start the Holocaust. And he killed like a million gays, too. Well, every, yeah, Jews and Gypsies gays, yeah. And, and Jay, uh, every, gays well, and he killed six million human beings. Let's just start there. We'll categorize them later, but six million people. But I don't, I don't even... Knowing know. a baby would grow so up... So wait a minute. That. He didn't kill six million Jews? <laughs> I didn't know about these gays and gypsies. Wait, so are you saying if you're gay, you're not Jewish? <laughs> well, I've seen a few gay Jews. So right. There's a lot of them, I would, <laughs> would assume. So you wouldn't kill... And they're kill very them. tight with their money, too. <laughs> Would you not kill? You really wouldn't kill baby Hitler? No, because uh, this is my quick rant on genocide. I have this. Well, pre- no, it's not genocide. It's one baby. <laughs> You're sure. preventing genocide. Yeah. But, I was just <laughs> but you learn about you learn about the Holocaust. You learn about Hitler in every history class, every grade. You know. Right. Well, not every one. Sure. Some. But I mean. in our lifetime, you know, like Rwanda, a million people are. You're right. Butchered. I'm not saying that's as nice either. And nobody batted an eye about it. Like well, a million people dead. Because all those Rwanda people didn't come over here and start banks and become our managers and agents. <laughs> Uh, and Mary Soon Yi. Uh, Rod, what about you? I'll go to you. Uh, I don't know why, but I will. Would you kill, before we go to break, would you kill baby Hitler? 
Yeah, I think you gotta kill baby Hitler. Mm-hmm. But also, do you think like if you kill Hitler, then it like the butterfly effect? Do you think like you kill Hitler and then someone worse comes? Uh, well, interesting hit, point. His right hand man was Himmler, who was well, they say was just kill, as bad. Well, baby, baby, uh, Himmler, uh, baby Himmler, baby uh, Mengele, Mengele. That's the other guy. Baby Gehring. Okay, yeah, those are all the guys in Nuremberg. There's a right? comic named Joe Machi who got, has a hilarious bit about this. Uh, he would go back in time in a time machine and do it, but then he'd have to kill. He had that same question: if I kill baby Hitler, then yeah. I have to kill. And then it would be like I'd be a bloodbath of me killing babies, and I have to explain <laughs> to people: look, I'm, I'm doing this because <laughs> <laughs> Joe Machi. Uh, baby he's funny. Uh, go ahead. What about baby Bill Cosby? Well, I think there's a lot of women uh, starting with uh, Gloria uh, Aldrin. Uh, starting with Gloria Aldrin. There's a lot of women who would say, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I killed baby Bill Cosby. I, I wouldn't. Uh, the, the pudding's too important. Exactly. I, would, I wouldn't. I'd wait. Baby to, Malcolm Jamal Warner, I'd kill. Yeah. <laughs> I'd wait to kill Cosby at, at like. Can you kill Cosby at like twenty eight? Because he did some really good stuff. I mean, like thirty two. I'll right kill Cosby the, at like thirty. Whatever after himself. I'll somewhere kill between the first. Somewhere between the second album and the first rape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, he did give us something. Yeah. You know what I mean? On that, we'll take a break. Yeah. <laughs> Hilarious. We uh, we ready? I right, welcome back here. Uh, you know, uh, let's uh, to get to the reason Rod is here. One of the reasons uh, he made a few more uh, phony phone calls. And uh, what should we play first? Should we play the one you just said first? Uh, or you could play the... i got Steve Summers also. You could play that one first. Uh, you got St- Steve Summers, the overnight guy in WFAN. Uh, it's an easy guy to torture because Steve seems to be in a coma when he's on the air. Do you know who Steve Summers is? No. Like he's, an old, no. he's a local sports guy <laughs> overnight. And he's you know, got this crazy voice. But he doesn't seem to know what he talks about a minute before we call him. Like He seems to forget stuff as soon as he says it. So uh, what, what's the premise of this, Rod? Um, well, th- this was back when the Mets first made the World Series. Okay. So I, I called him and I let him know that I just got back from Europe and I saw something pretty crazy over there. Oh, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Dan, by the way, is a big fan of a guy named Rick Steves. Oh. Okay, he's a, well, Dan, we have to give him backstory. He's a travel guy on PBS. Okay, okay. It's not playing, Rod. It's not playing. All right, can, can you? I, I want because Mike is here. I want to know if uh, Mike, you know, do you feel a gay man has gaydar better than a regular guy? Oh, certainly. I mean, yeah. I, I think somebody in this room is gay, but I'm not. Oh. You know, I, I can't just out somebody. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know about outing people, Artie. You is know? it Dan? No, it's not Dan. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think that? No, I'm, I, I don't think anybody Do you know who Rick him. Steves is? I haven't heard of Rick him. Rick Steves is a travel guy that Dan cannot be in the same room with. He gets the shakes. Really? He get, like, like he's a big fan of his. And he gets the sweats and he gets the shakes. <laughs> that's what and, I would do with Reggie. Rob, I was in the same way room with, with Reggie. Reggie Jackson. Yeah. Okay, that's what a heterosexual guy might do. But this is a guy who's a travel guy on PBS. And um, if we can't play the phone calls, let's play some Rick Steves. Uh, and I want to, Rick Steves also claims to be straight. I don't want you to hear what he sounds like. Are we going to play uh, Rick Steves? You know what? You're going to. We should stop because I need a second. I need a minute. Oh, okay. All right. Well, why don't you tell the, the Gilbert story, okay. Rod? Oh, so so uh, last night I went to see you and Gilbert, obviously at the uh, Caroline's. We did the podcast. Yeah. So you know, great show. <laughs> Thank you. Couldn't stop laughing. That right, was funny. So uh, you know, I always hear these stories about how cheap Gilbert is, and right. you know, I think that they're over exaggerated. But last night, I actually saw it in action. Okay, what happened? So I was sitting, like, right where you guys come, and right when you leave the stage to go backstage, I was sitting, like, right next to that area. So Gilbert's walking back after the show, and then the guy who was sitting directly in front of me goes, Gilbert, can I get a picture really quick? Right. So he stands up with his phone, and I was there. I was like, oh, you want me to take the picture for you? So the guy is about to take the picture with Gilbert. I have the phone in my hand. I realize it's in selfie mode. Uh-huh. So I'm like, I go to ask the guy, how do you, you know, put it in, you know, regular picture-taking mode? And uh, <laughs> and when I when I say that, Gilbert goes, "Oh, oh, it's all right. I'll take a picture with you out there." And he points to the lobby. Right. So um, I go. We're leaving the show, and I see the guy taking a picture with Gilbert, and then he's handing Gilbert ten dollars. So Gilbert <laughs> charged him to take the picture. Oh my god! No, no, he didn't. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> He said, and he said, he realized he was going to give one away for free. Right, exactly. He was like, oh, wait. no, no, why don't we take it out there? And the guy thought maybe he was being a nice guy. It's too crowded in here. Let's right, yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
Ten bucks? Yeah, I think I think it was ten bucks. Ten bucks? I'm kidding. People don't want to. People don't want to pay me seven bucks for a whole month of fucking podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> ten yeah, bucks right. for a picture with Gilbert. I right, think. Should we take a break? Yeah, let's take a break. All right, Dan needs to because I want to play Rick Steves for Mike, and to see what he thinks. Because Rick, of course, I'm a, a fan I, of. I wonder if I could pull that off. What? Just saying, ten, ten bucks. bucks? Well, it depends. I don't think so. Not with most. <laughs> uh, I don't think anybody. I, that's that's crazy. Yeah. Uh, all right, let's take a break. Hey, we'll pause and we'll come back with technical uh, issues uh, taken care of. Go ahead. W- what's the problem? Uh, my, the output from my computer just broke. Oh yeah. So. Okay. It was not. It just happened. Yeah, Europe. Yeah. What I'm talking to somebody who has money. Like something Russell would say. Yes, it is. So yeah, it's about it's about him crashing on comedians' couches. It's exactly okay. What it it's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's my life story. <laughs> Are we back? We're back. We're back. All right. Some technical difficulties are taken care of. Now, what did what did you get? Did you got just the phone calls? Yes. You can play anything off the computer, or just the phone call. I can play anything off my iPad. I just have to I'll have to search for Rick Steve. Oh, okay. Let's, uh, let's go through the phone call first. All right, okay. So this is Steve Summers. You right. Get, okay, go ahead. James is calling from Montclair. James, you're on the fan of New York City. What's happening? Schmoo. James. How's it going, brother? <laughs> James, I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait, too. It's been a great week for me. I just got back from Europe. Uh, I met Europe. my idol there. Yeah, Europe? Yeah. What? I'm talking to somebody who has money. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Europe? I, I, I met my idol, uh, Rick Steve, you know, from PBS. <laughs> okay. He's, a, he's like the travel guru there. I, wa- I, went in, I, was, I was in uh, Vatican City, and I go into the bathroom, and there is Rick Steve oh. giving Dan Filato a Roman soldier helmet. Okay, see, I, I, you know, and I knew, well, I was hoping he was going to have a punchline that we he could have uh, heard and kind of chuckled at and line. said, hey, bro, pretty interesting, that pretty creative, that. pretty clever. <laughs> but that really came out Very of the, like something Russell would say. Russell would say. It's not what I would say. Yes, it is. Now we can stop. Can't. Right? Uh, no, that's fucking. Okay, again, we have to play Rick Steves for the guys here. Uh, again, it's it's just odd that Dan is so into this guy, and we have no explanation for it. Dan just says it's because he can negotiate well in the hotels, right? I mean, what is your reasoning for liking Rick Steves so much? He has uh, this gene in him. Uh huh. That Gene he who? can, <laughs> <laughs> that he can go to Shall Europe us. and ask questions that I'm not very good at asking. So because of that, Dan can't shakes around him and gets the sweats. Does that make any sense? No. To you? Okay. I, 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 that hasn't made any sense to anyone at all. But Dan is very adamant about it. Mike, what do you think about this? It sounds a little bit gay. But <laughs> who, who am I to judge? Okay. Well, when you hear Rick, maybe you'll judge more. You'll want to judge. I feel Dan is, uh, I don't know, again, but Russ Maneva, the comic, was in here. He got the furthest with Dan out of anybody. He said that there's something about Rick Steves that, you know, brings comfort to Dan, like a blanket or something, and he can't choose what it is. Dan claims it's because he can negotiate deals at hotels, but a lot of people can do that. Yeah, that's just a, that's a odd attraction. Well, maybe you it's need, just an odd maybe you I need, need Rick Steves with yeah. Rick Steves. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, exactly. No, th- there's no question about the fact that he's a skilled guy. Europe through the back door. That's the name. right. Europe through the back door is the name, his actual name of his. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is this Rick, Dan? Mm-hmm. Okay, here's here's a clip of Rick. Every neighborhood has a time-honored gathering place. <laughs> Petank, also known as Bull, offers the perfect escape for friends. <laughs> This competitive yet convivial game where friends toss metal balls with the same precision their fathers provides the ideal antidote to the pressures of modern life. He said metal balls, get, like he accentuated the gayness of that. I'd stop for a second. Uh, Riviera, okay. on the banks of the... Okay, Mike, what is your... Is there any chance Rick is not gay? Um, I would say he's definitely had... A hundred times more gay sex than I. Have. Okay. <laughs> and well, he, he sounds. He is very, well traveled. I mean, he sounds very conservative and proper. Right, he is definitely. Yeah, but, but I, I would say he's taking it in the ass. Okay. <laughs> Does that sound like a voice that has come out or not come out though? 
Oh, that's a come out. Well, he hasn't he's, come out though. Well, that's he, a voice. Not, but he hasn't. No, he's not. A, no, 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 he's no. very much married and oh, very. Okay. He's got kids. That sounds like a voice full of commas. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 listen, I, you're saying it, not me. Of course, I am saying it. Uh, so now, what would you think about a guy who can't be in the same room as Rick and shakes? Just be, you think it's more than his negotiating skills, right? Yeah, I mean that's it, it is a little bit odd. I I don't know why shakes and. And I don't, I, I don't know. I'm just meeting Dan, but. but now you said, you said you have your gaydar up for someone in the room. All right. Okay. I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Dan, how do you explain this? I I can't explain it. Okay. I wish it. You know, I wish I could explain it. Uh, for Jason and for Mike, I have been in radio and show business since I was 15. I just at some point got sick. Of athletes and and rock stars Street guys. and all. <laughs> Once again, Mike thinks someone in the room is gay, and I'm just that's all I'm gonna say. And it ain't me. Oh, okay. So I, I just at some point I just it's oblivious to me. And Artie knows I have no problem going up to people. I have no problem going up to people saying, "Come on the podcast" or. Come on the what TV show mean? when we were doing the TV show. I had no problem going up to the celebrities. I don't care. It doesn't make a difference to me. But there was just, you know, I had watched Rick Steves for 20 years on PBS. And he and I've gone to Europe for 20 years. I was born in Europe. I have relatives there. Right. And he has this ability that I don't like to get, you know, three bedroom suites for $80 a night. And he has the ability to blow off a line <laughs> in a museum. You know, that I don't have the ability to do. And I'm in awe of that. And when my wife was asked to host his, uh, to she was a chocolatier. When she was asked to host his wife an was event. A chocolatier. I, I couldn't, I, I, I could not. <laughs> she makes chocolate. Okay. okay. We'll say right? that. Yeah, because that's we don't a, that's a fancy word. Chocolatier is a very gay word. Okay, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I just could not. It's on. I see that on Grinder all the time. Chocolate here, <laughs> job. Chocolate here. Someone who likes black eyes. <laughs> That's that answer though. That that was like a very congressional. Like you sounded like you were answering in front of a congressional. I, the, I was like, the same. Like I was the like, same. What's way. even odder is you feel comfortable. I was sharing the same this with way. Uh, well, because I thought you know you were my friend. <laughs> <laughs> but no, we are your friends. I well, mean, I, I, I would, we just find, but see, non-friends would keep it in and go, well, that's weird. You know, no, talk they, behind your back. We're talking to your. To your I face. was the same way around Bruce Springsteen a couple of times. Now I've met Springsteen but later, that makes sense. and that makes sense. he can't get deals on hotel. Ask, he cannot. <laughs> no. He has somebody do it for right. Yeah. Exactly. He gets Rick Steves. He calls. Yeah, right. he does. You mentioned Bruce Springsteen. Let me ask you somebody about who I think gets very gay yeah. around Bruce Springsteen. Yeah. Governor Chris Christie. Yeah, he does. What yeah. is that about? And, well, he's just a big fan. Yeah. Now Springsteen is one of those guys where a lot of people don't like him because of his fans. They're like they, he's one of those people where it's not about his work; it's about his fans act stupid around him. And I get that. I understand. I'm a big uh, Bruce Springsteen fan because where I'm from and all that stuff. But uh, I, I understand. Well, they had a falling uh, out within the last couple of months. Well, it's well, they couldn't be different uh, on, on more different ends of the spectrum politically. Right. That's for sure. Springsteen is very, very left, and of course. Uh, uh, Christie isn't, right and on. and Christie said uh, Springsteen goofed on him about the uh, you know t- uh, the Bridgegate Bridge thing, yeah. yeah. But he also said in a recent interview, Christie said that his new favorite musician of all time is John Bon Jovi, right? And uh, well, that's that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So he, a flip he might be good. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Uh, now that is gay. Well, that's I, gay. I mean, again, yeah. if I said I was be- that way about John Bon Jovi, I walk right up to him and talk to him about uh, baseball for forty-five minutes. Dan, yeah. the Rick Steves thing is just no. You should stop telling people. It. <laughs> I'm telling you because it's it's odd. Okay. It's not odd. It's very, Jason. Is it odd? Well, to to, to get nervous. Yeah, and yeah. shaky. Yeah. yeah. I I mean I you know, maybe I have to see this Rick Steves. I, I, well, you heard him. Play a little yeah, bit. I don't play a little bit more. And what I heard is I really Ever want to see it. Yeah. Listen, it's like a deep thought with summer, Jack Handy Paris voice. city government like closes a- an expressway and brings a colorful urban beach to <laughs> it's, its like- people. They truck in potted palm trees, hammocks, <laughs> lounge chairs, and 2,000 tons of sand to create this popular fun zone. It's a perfect chance to see Paris at play and play with Paris. Wow. 
Chocolatiers come away from the river. Parks provide another peaceful oasis. <laughs> Great for enjoying the moment of okay. friends and family. There's no way in hell he, he has a wife and kids. He does. He does. A wife and kids. And Dan is very, very adamant that he's not gay. Dan doesn't think Rick Steves is gay at all. Because he can never have an idol who's gay. Because right? <laughs> you're very... You're very loud about how you don't like gayness and you, you love women. And you're very loud about when a hot chick comes on the TV, yeah. make sure he yells about it. <laughs> Look at that ass. <laughs> My God, I'd like to give it to her. <laughs> Come on, guys. What, what are you all gay? That's exactly. How <laughs> right. hot that chick is. <laughs> then when you go, why are you yelling that? Oh, what are you saying? Look at that guy. Look at her tits. <laughs> I guess I'm the gay one. I'm the only one who noticed your tits. It's <laughs> a great Chicago. I don't know. I'm just 48. I, I'm 48, and I acted like this when I was 11. <laughs> Come on. Look at the fucking gams on her. I, well, is, no, I'm the only one here who likes chocolatiers. <laughs> I guess I'm the only chocolatier lover here. Whatever. Fuckers. Uh, All right. Well, let's hear the, no, the phony phone call number two. This is the uh, pet sitter, Frank. Uh, Frank. You want me to set this up, Artie? Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, you know, you have that clip of uh, Mike Buschetti talking to Stacey Pressman's cat, Snuggles. Right, Mike Buschetti, a comedian from Staten Island, uh, has been emasculated by this woman he's obsessed with, Stacey Pressman, and he talks to her cats in a... You know, he sound, makes Rick Steve sound like James Conn. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> pretty much. So, so pretty much what I did was uh, I took those clips and I called a guy who has a pet sitting business... <laughs> And uh, it's kind of also a look into the life of what it would be like if Dan and Rick Steves got married. Oh, great. <laughs> Jesus. Well, let's hear these. Another peaceful oasis. <laughs> Hello, pet sitter. This is Paul speaking. Hi, Paul. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? I'm How am I speaking with? I'm super. Thanks for asking. My name is Dan Filato, and I just moved. Hi, Dan. Hi. I just moved into town with my husband Rick, and we were looking for a pet sitter for our cat Snuggles. Awesome! Uh, awesome. Uh, how much do you charge per hour for your services? Twenty dollars an hour. Uh, depending on the details, we could do more or less. Oh well, twenty twenty dollars doesn't sound too expensive. <laughs> Um, now, if I hire you, there's a special service Very I would need voice. you to provide, yeah. and I'd be willing to pay a little extra if you could accommodate us. Well, that depends on the special service, but uh, I'd be <laughs> open there. Hopefully, I can help you out. Well, myself and my husband adopted a young man with Asperger's syndrome named Michael, <laughs> and uh, he believes our pet cat Snuggles can talk. So our old pet sitter would actually pretend to be Snuggles on the phone and talk to Michael because it helped him at school with his outbursts. Okay, uh, okay. I don't really know how cats talk. I'm sort of uncomfortable, but I'm, I, I'll give it a try. How well, cats talk? It's not too hard. Just You just talk like a person. He, he believes that a, a cat talks like a person. So l let me just put him on the phone, and you'll be willing to try you that. You can bail on that accent next time, Ron. Now? <laughs> yeah, just... Uh, yeah, just to give it a shot. This way, you know, because once we get this out of the way... you want me to talk to him now? Oh, <laughs> uh, okay. Give it a shot. Okay. Michael, sweetie, pick up the phone. Hey, Snuggles. Hey, hey, Michael. Hi, baby. How are you, baby? I'm good, I'm good. Just, you know, walking the catwalk. Okay, oh, you walking the catwalk. Yes, you too, pal. You're a good big boy. You're gonna get a scratchy toy. Yay! You're gonna get a big scratchy toy. Yay, scratchy toy. Love you, scratchies. Love you too, Mike. Niggas are stupid and violent. What? Niggas are stupid and violent. Oh my God. Uh, that, that's not nice, Michael. That's not even true. And, uh, Snuggles, Snuggles doesn't, Snuggles doesn't like that stuff. Niggas are stupid and violent. This is not true of white people. This is not true, period. Fuck this. <laughs> Hello, Senator no. Paul speaking. Niggas are stupid and violent. This is not true of white people. This is not true, period, man. Um, I don't know who's telling you this, but that's wrong, kid. The cat's I, I have a huge nut sack. <laughs> I highly doubt it. You should go play with that. Don't fucking call me back, you little racist retard. 
Is that it? That's the funny. Oh my god! So that was Bichetti from the after you after you go to get the kid. Every voice after that is Bichetti. Right. Yeah. Talking to the, oh yeah, my yeah, god, yeah. god, that's hilarious. Bichetti. What we had Bichetti do is I, I made him read when that that kid shot all those people in the theater. The, no, the black people in the church. <laughs> yeah. He he released his racist manifesto. It was like oh. five. So I told Bichetti that it uh, it was our job as as non racists to read this to show how awful it is. So I made Bichetti read his manifesto. That's where we got the clip of him saying this. Oh, was stupid god, and violent. <laughs> <laughs> so we had his so voice. You splice the the him talking to Stacy's cat, and, and then, the, then then that. Right, right. 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 We yeah, have yeah. we have a clip of him talking to Stacy's cat, and then out of nowhere telling the cat that oh, niggas are super high. Oh, Jesus, that's hilarious. <laughs> oh my god, that's uh, okay, dude, that's okay, Rod. I got to tell you, man. I don't think I usually. I, I got to tell you, after spending thirty seconds with you, normally I don't think much of you. <laughs> <laughs> but that is absolutely that's fucking. That's the funniest thing I've ever heard. Oh, has has Bichetti heard this? No, no. Uh, no yeah, he's the time. one. He's the one guy, ironically, who would not get it. <laughs> <laughs> that is oh my god that is un the guy going the guy when the guy uh, makes the decision in his head to talk like the cat uh. And then goes, hey, God, he wants that twenty bucks he goes, an hour. He wants you, that twenty bucks goes, an hour. What are you doing? <laughs> walking the catwalk. <laughs> he said, walking the, walk the catwalk. Okay, buddy. <laughs> and it's it's Stacy's cat, and Mike is so like he's in love with this Stacy girl, and he's doing anything to get with her, and he's embarrassing himself like every he's embarrassing himself for every man. And uh, he's you know talking to her cat like he's snuggly. He talks to her on the phone. Uh, he talks buys to the, the cat. cat. Oh, yeah, he talks to the cat for twenty an hour. I think Gilbert would do it for ten. <laughs> <laughs> Gilbert, Gilbert would undercut him. <laughs> that is fucking. I can't even imagine how funny that is. I, that, that's a level of funny I can't get into my head because it's real. That is just unfucking believable. Uh, again, we still don't know why Dan can't be in a room with Rick Steves, but uh, never know. We'll never know. I mean, you're not. Uh, here's my only point, Dan, and I'll leave it here if you want me to. But we have, you know, Mike is homosexual, and he, uh, I don't know who he thinks is gay. Maybe it's me. I don't know. But uh, you, you, I, I, what's amazing to me about it is you think it's so, it's so normal for you to think this way that you find it very easy to share with other people. Like you openly share, tell people you have this thing about Rick Steves. I don't tell people on the street. Well, but I, I don't give, you know, tell people on the street uh, anything. People don't tell. I'm talking about you know we know each other for maybe six months when so, you told me this. So, like I would never tell. And I didn't person. know it until my wife. He we got invited to this PBS fundraiser, okay. right? And I was speechless. I couldn't okay. talk. That's what I was going to ask. I was like, so have you have been in the room with him to get to this point? You're yeah. not. You're not yeah. assuming this. You yeah. okay? This did. Okay, happen. you don't know anything. So you, you, so you probably don't think Dan is gay or whatever. But you know, Rick Steves is probably gay, Mike, right? Oh, definitely. You Come can't. On. Be, so, Mike, Dan, what do you think of that assessment? Do, I, do hey, you whatever? I don't. I don't care. But the fact I, that you can't understand that, like, like why someone would think it. After how he speaks is astonishing to me. Like what? You like you can't understand why Mike and and us might think. Like I he's was gay. It was assumed I was gay. Forget about Disney and going to Madonna. I, I, but, Just but, the voice alone. Got what, what happened with me? What happened with me and Mike was and again. I the, the argument I take. I, I take the blame for it because I started it. What happened is, you know, where I grew up and the time I grew up, you know, guys, you bust each other's balls by calling each other gay. And I didn't register that Mike really might be gay. So he had a high voice. And I said, and I was doing the same thing, you know, on the air. That was the Stern show back in the un-PC days, you know. Mm -hmm. That's what you would do. And then Mike came in and, and told us he happened to be, you know, by coincidence, <laughs> was at Disneyland on Gay Day and, uh, and, um, <laughs> and, and uh, went to a Madonna concert by himself. Uh, I saw Amy Schumer recently open for Madonna. Were you by yourself at the Madonna concert? No, no, no. I went with friends. <laughs> <laughs> right. uh, and I would goof on that. And then what happened was, re in my head, I realized, oh, my God, he really might be gay. And that's when I felt terrible. But by then, Mike had already been mad at me for a good reason and said some stuff that got me mad. And it's probably the worst. Uh, it's the worst stuff I've ever said in my life in anger. And I, I do. A but I, I take a lot of blame, too, because I said some awful things. Well, no, well you, you, you found out my trigger was like, you know, stuff about me, my sister and mom and my dad falling. And you said that. But but I realized I was saying something to you that I didn't realize how insanely personal it was. It's and it is. That's it's a terrible thing. So we understand each other now. But uh, so I don't want to. I don't want to have the same problem with Dan. Is my point. Like I don't want to be doing this and then find <laughs> that, out that that will never okay, ever right. ever happen. Because you would never come out of the closet. There. <laughs> <laughs> 
Dan comes from a very Italian Listen, family Dan, in Chicago. Very, very never Italian. never happen. His you father's have, a real guy. Like, you know. You let him wear later hosen, though. Dan, you have my number. You can text me if you yeah. need advice okay. uh, coming out. Would you? Do you want... Should me and Jason and Rod leave the room? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the person that should stay is the one that he suspects of being well, gay. Not and it's to, not me. It's not you. Who is the it? week I'm having, he probably thinks I'm gay. You know. Is it, 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 do you think it's Jason? No, I, I thought it was Rod at first. Oh, you yeah. did? Yeah, Because he's like super friendly and stuff. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> But since the show it, has gone on. You like, thought it was Rod? <laughs> yeah. Well, Rod has a smoke and our funny. girlfriend. He does. He has a, she's just a beard. Yeah, and Elton yeah. John she, had a wife. That's true, too. <laughs> but Elton John also had $400 million. <laughs> Rod has nothing. Uh, no, I, uh, I, uh, okay. I understand, Rod. Uh, try to be a little less friendly. I will. Um, I, I, I thought pinching his ass was a nice thing. To do. <laughs> is Elton John, <clears throat> you think he's a top or a bottom? He's a bottom, <laughs> right? He said he's, he's a girl. He says he's a little girl. I, you know, that's a good question. I never really thought because about I, that. Because when I, he's singing Candle in the Wind, I never thought. You think, take it in the ass? <laughs> you think the guy with a billion dollars would be the top? Well, when well, he uses his yeah. husband as the piano Because I, I saw <laughs> that, uh, I saw that uh, Michael Douglas Liberace show, that movie. That <laughs> oh. I, and again, can you get... Okay, that movie, for example, again, I don't want to sound insensitive, but I can't get Matt Damon... Yeah, that's what I was over getting over Michael Douglas's shoulder <laughs> with that wig on, <laughs> ramming him in the ass. Yeah. I can't get that out of my head. <laughs> yes. Like I can't watch Michael Douglas films. I can't watch Basic Instinct the uh, same way. The worst is like after uh, the worst. If I if I was Matt Damon, the fir first off, I would have been pissed because I think like three months after that that movie came out. Um, that, that Michael Douglas claimed that he got mouth cancer from uh, from eating out her, her pussy. Yeah, he so out, didn't, he didn't have, yeah, yeah, like HPV of the mouth from Cunnilingus. But he had to be married to Catherine Zeta Jones. Could be get any, it. the whores he was fucking. Get it, uh, get it. But he admits that he got this thing from kind of. And then if I'm Matt Damon, I'm going to like we kissed. Oh, oh, you think what? I'm like, not, dude, wait a minute. We kissed on set three months ago. Now you're telling people that I, you had I, mouth, I, your page that's PV, a good mouth point. shit. Like, do you think Matt Damon? Like, if, I would. I don't know. Maybe Matt Damon didn't say anything. Do but you I, imagine I, you get? Imagine this. This is frustrating. At least Michael Douglas got to eat out Catherine Jada Jones. <laughs> yeah. Do you imagine getting cancer from Catherine Jada Jones's pussy? But you <laughs> did it by kissing Michael Douglas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That is the worst for heterosexual. That oh, is the worst, the worst of all scenarios. What if uh, I'd rather <laughs> sleep on the subway. I got cancer. From Catherine Zeta Jones' pussy. Well, at least you got no. No. You understand? Via Michael Via Douglas. Via Michael Douglas. <laughs> 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 you might have had it from Ben Affleck already. <laughs> that's like getting uh, that's like getting cancer from Car Carmen Electra's pussy by making out with the guy from uh, Cypress Hill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ah man. Uh, well, listen, I, but, uh, Mike. I do wish. Have you dated at all? And has anyone been a serious thing in your life? Because no, I, I do wish you happiness. No, there. thank you. Yeah. The same goes. Um, yeah, we all wish that, right? I mean, that's why what Jason has is very unique. And it, it, you don't want to be alone in life. You no, know? no, no. Yeah. And, no. Um, even leaving the Stern show, like, I realized as long as I'm happy, I don't care if I'm dirt poor. Right. You yeah. know, I don't care if... Um, if I'm working at an hourly job or if right. I'm working in an office. Whatever, like, yeah. Mm -hmm. As long as I'm happy doing what I want to do. You know, I'm trying to travel. Uh, well, it sounds like you, it sounds like you're happier than me. I work like crazy. I don't have time to go to Europe with my friends. I mean, you're, you know, I did, but I got arrested. But yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, what, I mean, I you mean, sound like you, you're very happy. No, I, I am. And like, um, I got involved with some charities that uh, I've become a little bit of a nut with gorillas in the last year. What do you mean? I always loved gorillas. Yeah. I to, <laughs> this, is, this, is like, this is like the opening to the Disney story. It's right. Like, no. it's uh, again, I'm going to try to be, I'm going to try to be calm. <laughs> but I always lived by the By gorillas, too. you mean, not, you don't mean dating black guys. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know, because we call us bears with hair. You maybe you gay guys are very insulting. No, I fucking love gorillas. I would never call a black man a gorilla, but maybe, you know, gay guys can get away with it. So no, you wouldn't mean gorillas, like, like, like in other words, like. Like the, gorillas in the wild. Right. Okay. Know? Why is so, that. I mean, <laughs> it's just it's. I live by the Bronx Zoo. You know, okay. they have these four little baby gorillas. Yeah, and they have. That is my nickname. You know, baby gorilla. <laughs> I know that, and and I remember um, somebody bought you a, a membership or something in Diane Fossey. They did, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they, people go overboard with them. But <laughs> next year, I'm trying to go to. Um, Either Uganda or Rwanda. Right. Uganda, where they kill gays. Yeah. Or Rwanda, where why, they Why? Why do you want to like to start a movement against killing gays? No. Um, don't get killed in Uganda. No, no, no. Please no, no. don't not, do that. I'm not even fighting for gay rights here. I'm not going to. I do mean, it over do there. they That's still kill gay right. people? They, there's a documentary um, called uh, I think it's Love from Uganda, but it's all about you know these people that are fighting. Well, there's a whole thing on Fox News. I was just watching about honor killings that still go on. 
In the U.S. recently, like about 10 women, daughters of a Muslim men, have been killed, brutally killed by their parents, mostly their father, by shooting, by beheading, yeah. because they're dating Western men. They're too Westernized. Well, why did you move them here? You're in Arizona. You don't want the chick to fucking maybe go to the mall? Yeah. And if the, this one woman asked for a divorce, the guy beheaded her. <laughs> you know? Same. Well, why get a lawyer when you could just do that, right? But I mean, the human rights, like... Uh I guess atrocities that yeah. go on. Like so in that's this a, thing, that's, that's a, why when you mention Kill Baby Hitler, it's like, that's not 60 years ago. All that stuff goes on. Kill Baby Idi Amin. Kill Baby, you exactly. know, anybody. Yeah. I mean, these Muslim guys come here, they have the balls to move to Phoenix or St. Louis and wonder why their kid's westernized. What the fuck do you want them to do? Uh, so what, you, you're going to go oh, for I, gorillas? What I want to wanna, um, climb up the mountain. There's a mountain. You basically climb up for half a day. Mount Cock. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, and you um you know when you're with park rangers and they take you to the gorillas there's no and wait, so there's nothing in there's between you no and the gorillas there's no barrier no fence it's on if so you, you want to get eaten by a gorilla no they they're gentle animals no they're not no they are well, they I've, really are did you see king kong your asshole tell a different story <laughs> did you see king kong they it's, are vegetarians but they, that doesn't mean that they won't maul you right there was a, you that one woman whose face got ripped off by him no, that well was that, a, chimp, that, was that chimp, chimp was given Xanax. that was a chimp and that was in a chimp's not a gorilla. House. A chimp's not a gorilla. Yeah, well, she was no. keeping a chimp in her house yeah, in like, Florida. That's, yeah, that's, that's the that, stupid part. That, of that would make me go crazy too. But the, the gorillas in the wild, they take people. They take like eighty people a day. Costs like six hundred bucks to get a government permit. But there's other examples of like, what about like when uh, Chris Brown attacked Rihanna? <laughs> 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 I love mm. podcasts. But go ahead. So, uh, you, you, so is, does part of you secretly wish a gorilla rapes you before it kills you? <laughs> oh, I would love to make love you, to a gorilla. That, is that true? I mean, if these, you, guys, if these guys weren't here right now, I'd probably... <laughs> <laughs> well, this gorilla's dangerous. And I'm eating. No, but... <laughs> but no, you... you, you uh, <laughs> wait a minute. Is that... Would you... you sound, are you physically attracted to a gorilla? No, no, there's no... You're kidding there, There's no... Uh, You're kidding around. Bestiality. Uh, I, okay. But no, they're, they are really gentle animals, and they bring humans to them every single day. You have to stay like seven feet away. Seven can, feet? That's they can, all? They can catch human disease. If you have a cold, you're not allowed to go into this mountain area. Right. <laughs> but, um, and, Do you realize we, we found AIDS way up a gorilla's asshole? No. Like AIDS, that's where God hit it. AIDS. And we found it. Allegedly did come from chimps. And, yeah, up and their ass. Eggs. It was way up their asshole. Well, they say that gorillas have the best of what humans' emotions are, like you know, crying sensitivity, mm -hmm. whereas chimps have the jealousy and the rage. That's why yeah, chimps, chimps, are chimps have like the worst of so what chimps humans. Chimps female? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're very cunning. No, but that's what they say. Chimps take on the, the, the human aspects of it. They, they get those emotions. Why are they chimps are so different than gorillas? I don't understand that. Well, they're very, they're the smartest, you know, all these. Chimps are the smartest. Chimps and gorillas are, are the smartest. And they, they actually possess human emotions that we possess. But they say gorillas take on the best of human emotions, sensitivity. They'll cry like they taught that one chimp. To love that cat, and then the cat that they sign oh, language. Coco, and Coco, Coco the so, like he, he cried, died. he felt bad, he felt bad. But like chimpanzees take on like jealousy, anger, rage, resentment, like that. They showed, why? Wow. They yeah. showed um, Coco the cat crying when Robin Williams died. Like, imagine what his agent was doing. He's not <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Coco the cat died. Who's Coco the cat? Which Co the gorilla. Coco, Coco the, gorilla. the gorilla. Why? Why he knew Robin Williams? He met gorilla? Robin Williams. He met, had met like Betty he White and Robin yeah, Williams. Where? Yeah, video of it. They, he basically is raised in this California research. Yeah. He was a facility. fan of Robin Williams. Well, they taught him sign language, so they they taught him like all these things. Like, and he, they taught he, like he actually cried when Robin Williams died. Yeah, they cried when his cat yeah. died. He had a cat. They died. They broke him the news to him in sign language, and he cr like he was signing. Crying Did he know he could talk to that? Guy, that guy would talk to him as a cat. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what, what what happened? No, yeah, like um, I saw they had like a documentary about it. Um, they had um, like a documentary, about yeah, it. <laughs> like one. It was like a short clip. It wasn't a full full movie. So they were showing Coco Robin Williams movies, and he would actually or she would actually watch the movies. And then Robin Williams came in to visit, and was oh, actually so through watching the movies, right, right. We should, you know what? Here, we got to do this, Dan. We have to show a gorilla all my movies <laughs> <laughs> and see if it's just about how good the movies are. Like right. maybe he'll hate me. <laughs> like will he hate? Like if you if they're bad movies, will he hate you? What, Listen, what if you show like, like a if, yeah? What if Boat Trip is his favorite movie? Yeah. If a gorilla loves beer league, will you do a sequel? <laughs> <laughs> I might have to. The gorilla will direct. Two opposable thumbs up. What? What? Um, uh, he was sitting on that one. Uh, no, wait. Get, go back. That you love gorillas. So how much do you love them? What you, so you go. What are you going to do when you're seven feet from a gorilla? I mean, basically, people just go there and photograph 
Um, Are you going to do that? Thing. You get these amazing, you know, like I hate selfies. I hate people who post selfies. Right. But imagine a photo of like me with a gorilla right behind me this close. Like it's imagine pretty what? neat. Okay. You know, to, in Thailand, to, in Thailand, to you, I mean. <laughs> when I went to Thailand last year, I got to ride an elephant. Right. Uh, and then they, once the ride's over, you get in the pool with it, you bathe it. Like it's, you you know, washed an elephant. Yeah, you pretty much do things. Wow. I played soccer against an elephant. You did. That's the most sports I've done in my you life. Soccer. Now let me elephant. ask you something. Uh-oh. If you, if Diane Fossey walked in this room, would you get nervous? Yeah, because she's dead. But, <laughs> <laughs> but Dan, I Dan, you're not. Nervous. He's gay. Mike. He's gay. You're, Is you're she the girl in the mist gay. woman? Yeah. She's, yes. Okay. Yeah. She did uh, Sigourney Weaver. Right. 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 Movie, right. But. First of all, you getting like that around anybody at this age is odd. <laughs> Honestly. I mean, it was it was t- ten years ago, fifteen years ago. Okay. So you figure now you'd be okay. You met Michael Jordan then. Yeah, yeah, yeah Michael. I, I would get like that with Reggie, but that's only because he watched his but home w- runs. But would you really though? Well, like, I, mean, like, I, mean, I mean, maybe not. Not. not, I, not I, but I would. I mean, I would go like, oh my god, Reggie's like, okay, but he's still, in the same at, room. At like, this age, you know, still Reggie doesn't fix your hotels. dot com issue. No, right? exactly. Right? Right? In know. between, like, listen, I, I, you have adult listen. issues now that you don't yeah. care about. In when you're between the stadium, no. This is where you're wrong because in between the stadium, the stadium in Paris, and the hotel where you were going to meet Springsteen, you were nervous. And you told me to keep Barry Sobel away from you. (laughs) (laughs) That any human being would say that. (laughs) I was nervous, but when I got in the room, I I didn't didn't run out. I didn't run out sweating. I I talked to him. I I talked to the guy. We had a nice talk. We we talked, and it was nice. If if Rick Steves walked in here, I would be able to talk to him now. I I just couldn't. I don't think so. I don't think so. I think so. In the bedroom, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> is there anybody besides Bruce that... No, like, I mean, I, there's ever... no one in the world who I would run out scared of. No I didn't else. run out. I just didn't have anything to say, and I just kind of... What'd you went... do? You didn't run, you, you sort of saunter. <laughs> I just kind of... You went... gotta see Dan run, by the way. He looks like, I mean, it's oh, the most effeminate yeah, okay. run. He looks like Emma Stone. <laughs> <laughs> it's such an effeminate run. Because Dan does everything by the book. Me and Dan could not be more different. Like, I, I don't care about rules. I'm a typical New Yorker. Like, when the light's gonna turn red i just walk you know um, you know like i walk all the time dan <laughs> runs with a little knapsack that he has and when he passes me it looks like a, a kid a chick selling brownies it's unbelievable <laughs> let, it, it, let it, me ask dan one question because go ahead we keep going to get, back yeah, to yeah, this rick Steve. It, it's hard to get out of that yeah did Not, you click on the link when it said justin bieber dick pictures released no. you know when the paparazzi <laughs> no you never clicked on the link he no. doesn't care about justin bieber no, no. no. If, if it was rick steve's Naked pictures released. Would you no, have clicked on it? No. But there's also another mystery, because there's another guy named Joseph Campbell who you love, who's also very effeminate. There's Never a second guy. Joseph Campbell. He wrote a Star him. Wars book again. What is he it? He wrote The Power of Myth, which Star Wars is based on. So he can't the be Power of him. Bottom. Power. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's another guy who I found out is on his, uh, his password for iTunes. That <laughs> Now you can't say the name because... Huh. Why not? Someone's going to figure it out. Oh, who cares? We'll change it to someone better. <laughs> did you give your phone number the, the out? The email, right? Yeah, I did. <laughs> uh, all right, well, forget about the Rick Steve thing. We'll go back to Mike Love and Gorilla, <laughs> <laughs> which wasn't as fascinating as Rick Steve. That, somehow that's weirder or less weird. It's than, less weird than Dan. Than, less no, weird. I'm, t- I'm talking about it than Disney World alone. On Gay Week. Yeah, that's more weird than Gorillas. Thing. Gorillas yeah, thing. I mean, if you're at Disney World Gay Week and you're gay, it's nothing weird about it at all. Yeah, I mean, because like, you were gay at Gay yeah, Day. True. I thought I was laughing because I thought you weren't gay and you happened to be there on Gay Day. <laughs> Wait, so that really wasn't a coincidence? No. Of course not. Well, now we find out he's gay. I right? tried to explain this a thousand times on the air, but somehow with all what the jokes. What happened? Yeah. I it's had... hard with Fred playing sound effects. Exactly. Right? <laughs> I went not knowing when Gay Week is. Oh. I left Orlando the, the day it started. Oh, okay. The so it, there was a bit of a coincidence. It, it, oh, was, all right. it was good timing for the for the comedy. Aspect. Right, right. I would, absolutely. But I really was not there for a gay week. If people are interested in what the clip where he tells me this, this is not where we had an argument. I, but this is where Mike first started to hate my guts because he was gay, and I, I don't blame him for hating my guts. I, I laugh harder than a human being could laugh on the Stern Show, and that's why people like it. I'm, I'm <laughs> hitting the wall. The yeah, yeah, I was. I couldn't stop laughing. It just hit me right. But my world came apart when I heard the Rick Steves Dan thing. I, 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 to me, it's the, I've lost sleep over it. It's the most fascinating thing ever. It just is. Now I want to go home and watch. It's, I hope he's on Netflix. Or... Oh, he's all over the place. He's on all the time. I see him now that I know the name. It's on all the time. I, I'd never heard of him before this. And then now I see all this, like on PBS, I see a show on the internet. Right. I see all this stuff with him. On the guide, it's, uh, you, they put it in lavender. You can see it. 
<laughs> and uh, did, did, whenever I uh, go out here, Dan is always watching the Devil Wears Prada too. That's on right now. On, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, I'm kidding. Dan loves Adrian Grenier. <laughs> yeah, Grenier. <laughs> uh, well, well, Jason, uh, again, I, th this is. I'm glad you uh, vented though too, because yeah, I, I don't want. Uh, I, now, f actually, Friday we figured this out. Jason might come with me Friday. I got a gig in uh, upstate New York at a theater. Maybe he'll come work with me. Yeah, I'm, I'm and all you for crash it. Crash here. Yeah, I'm all for it. Do you mind crashing? Because Dan's here I too get... with the Rick Steves thing. Does it make you odd <laughs> sleeping in the same place as Dan with the Rick? No, Steve just or... leave. Just make sure the Rick Steves isn't on the TV when I'm crashing <laughs> there, so he has any reason to come out. Or no. the yellow feet. Dan, do you mind sharing a bathroom with Jason? I, I find it a lot less effeminate to have my girlfriend pay for things. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen. That's fucking a really good point. She, she finds it more effeminate that she has to pay for it. Of course, you have Well, listen. No, maybe you could say that's more masculine. That's a real man. A real man does get That's like almost a like a pimp. That's exactly a pimp. What, 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 more masculine than a pimp. Bitch, bitch, Make get, the money, bitch, and pay for everything, bitch. bitch. Get that money over here. I don't mean to say that in a black voice. No, a pimp could be white. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what do you think of the political correctness of commercials? I was talking about this uh, last night. Um, the only place I've seen in the last 30 years I've seen a white man rob a house is in a commercial for a burglar alarm company. <laughs> 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 it's always like a black, a black family, a very proper black family with white features uh, and a $2.3 million house in the suburbs. Or the guy's like an engineer or something for uh, Sibagagi. And, uh, and, and, and a white guy who looks like a 1930s uh, Irish thief. You know, he's like, <laughs> where do you keep your silverware? <laughs> yeah. uh, hey, where do you keep them? Where's your dough? Where's your dough? <laughs> uh, and then the black funny. man goes, I'm calling the police, honey. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, hilarious. RZA, RZA from the Wu-Tang Clan. Uh, RZA, that's RZA. See, I didn't know that was RZA. I've seen him in a lot of movies. And I, did you know that was RZA from the Wu Tang Clan? He looks a lot different now. Yeah, he's like he that RZA used to have like all like the crazy braids and shit back. Right, right when he was like, in the Wu Tang. Clan. Yeah, yeah. Do you know? Do, are you a rap fan, Mike? No, not no, really. yeah. <laughs> well, you're well, you're, you're forty, so you're not from that. You look no, young. I mean, by the way. you look very young. No, you're, like when I was in middle school or high school, the Beastie Boys were big, and is that rap that, back well, then? Of course, it's rap. Yeah, it's hip hop. Run that's what DMC. they call it. Sure, that was all yeah. the legendary I'm a rap huge stuff. Wu Tang fan. Are you? Yeah. I mean, well, I don't like rap, but I also don't like guns. Oh well, that then the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, who wants a rapper with no guns? Uh, but what, uh, what do you like about Wu Tang Clan? Uh, would you consider yourself a Wigger? Were you a Wigger ever, Rod? You uh, look at like Wigger high, ten in high school. Yeah, yeah you were a Wigger in high school. I wouldn't say I was a full on Wigger. Like I didn't do. Would like, you say I, dope? I'd go like yo, man. Like if your it? friend said, "Let's go to the party," and you would say, "Is it going to be dope?" Would you say stuff like that? Uh, no, I'd probably be like tight. Tight? tight. What does that mean? <laughs> I don't know. Like, okay. so, <laughs> when your cocks and your friend's ass, you go yeah. tight. So there's exactly. definitely another gay person. In this <laughs> tight. It's tight. actually a, a wire. Uh, Let's. Uh, this wire. is a big, big story. Very. Uh, two people were stabbed early Saturday morning at rapper, producer, and Wu Tang Clan founding Wu Tang Clan founding member Riz's Millstone, New Jersey home. Uh, where is that? That's down by Philly. Where's Millstone? I did a gig there once. Uh, Ridstone, uh, RZA himself apparently wasn't home. That's a very black thing, where there's full-on yeah. parties and you're not home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you read a lot of these stories, there's only black celebrities where there's a huge party they, they, and just, they're not there. I just watched a, I just watched a Kareem Abdul documentary, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's documentary, yeah. and there was a couple people killed at his house in his 70s. He and wasn't he, home. He, he wasn't, was not on a road trip. He wasn't. There was like 20 people at his house. He wasn't even there. Yeah, party start and you're not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, two people were stabbed at a massive party. Riz is not there. If there's ever a party in my house and it gets fun and crazy enough for people to get stabbed, I'd like to be there. <laughs> yeah. That sounds like a fun fucking party. Uh, well, listen, I, I wish Riz the best. I do like his work. I've seen him. He acts in a lot of white movies. Like, he's in Funny People. Uh, he does uh, scenes with Seth Rogen and Funny mm -hmm. People, and he's very... Californication he was in, too. Did a show. What does he do in that? Uh, he was like a rap producer. He went, you know. Oh, okay. Well, that a, makes sense. Did a bunch of sketches for Chappelle's show back in the day too. I think he did like. Oh, a he did. Yeah, he did like a handful. They did some. Oh, the racial draft. The racial in. draft, yeah. and yeah, a couple other ones he was in. Yeah. Oh, all right. Well, it was uh, one eighteen a.m. Saturday, and uh, they were filming a burglar alarm commercial. <laughs> 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 Got out of hand. <laughs> a white rapper was ripping off RZA. Um, uh, well, how about what about this? This is what, what does it bother you, uh, Mike? Polit are you pol political at all? Uh, you know, the, I watch the debates and well, stuff, do people but... like Ted Cruz do, do like uh, Tea Party people being gay? Do they scare you? Like, uh, people, being gay? right? People, well, people who cater oh, to me being gay, I, yeah. thought, meant, I well, thought you were outing Ted Cruz. No, I'm like... saying, what do, do you get scared of his policies? No, I mean, after the gay marriage is legal, 
and offense. Well, that the woman in thing. Kentucky, for example, who oh, wouldn't she, give a like a crazy person. She's a, an idiot. Uh, yeah, you got. I mean, come on. To me, here's the argument. Obviously, you're born gay. That's an obvious thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, and no one should know that more than a straight guy. Like, if you like pussy, you don't understand how you don't. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to be born that way. So that make that means that uh, gay people should have every right that someone has who's born. <laughs> I mean, so it's like marriage, everything. I mean, there's no argument for it. So a woman like this doesn't give out the license just because it's going against her gut. God, whatever the fuck that's scary to believe in that fairy tale that it's specifically even, it's even scarier that the pope will sit down with somebody like of that. course because he has to because he has to cater to crazy people and the reason pol- politicians do is because they vote they fucking vote those people so does it scare you that people like her exist and there's sympathy for her from people like the pope and politicians like uh, you know they they all cater because mm-hmm. she votes sure but i don't think any of them have a chance in hell of winning like it's I fun to know, watch. Man. I don't know, man. I don't know. Yeah, they, you never know now. I mean, you know, it, faith is faith is is stronger than fact. Right. And when you have a lot of people that are faith based and they are the electorate and they do go they to the go. polls, they they, go. they don't miss they don't miss the, the because it's raining. They don't miss out. the sermon. They don't no. miss the church. They go to and, fucking you know, and, and they, they 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 vote based on faith, not facts. Because once you give up, the, uh, once you stop believing in a god, you get lazy. You do. But like Trump, every other word out of his mouth is dummy, loser. Right. All right. right. Yeah. You know, it's like, is that the person you want with, well, with access to the uh, I guess nuclear a lot, weapon? A lot of people do, I guess. That's scary. At this point. You know, look at Ben Carson. He's 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 rallying faith based voters. They don't care that he says a bunch of lies and that, that he says that I mean, the pyramids, crazy guy. That the pyramids think, were, were, were built for grain. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they go, OK, yeah, you're right. If he said that God built the pyramids for grain, then they, that, that's what he and, did. And where are we at? He, he's going to the media. Look, I stabbed somebody. They're going prove it. No, look, I just believe me. I stabbed somebody. Yeah. Ben Carson might have been stabbed at Ritz's house. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not. We're gonna have to cut out that racist. <laughs> uh, well, that's the other thing. Yeah, Republicans don't care if you're black anymore. They used to be a real no-no. Mm-hmm. <laughs> now it's just how crazy are you? Are you crazy like us? Do you have the Bible? Can you quote scriptures? Mm-hmm. Who cares? I mean, you know, can you quote the tax code? Ted Cruz pointed out at the debate that the tax code has more words than the Bible. What does that even mean? People applauded. Yeah. What the fuck does that mean? Yeah. The tax code is way more complicated. And so does the Warren Commission file. I mean, right. well, well, yeah. What does that mean? It doesn't that's make just, any sense. Just, that's just... Yeah. There's a great... Um, Do you vote? I haven't voted since 2000. After Bush and Gore, no. I gave up. I was mm. like, this, it's not who the people want. It's, it's not because of any... Uh, you don't know, like a black president or anything like that. <laughs> no, okay. But um, there's a great GQ magazine article from the 90s. I don't read GQ. I know you do, but I don't. Back then I did. I was trying to pretend I was straight still. Go ahead. Um, um, by one of, they interview one of Trump's ex-wives. Right. She says he used to have Hitler books in the bedroom. No. I swear to God, really? it's in GQ. I mean, that's what Hitler, she says. Well, he had Mein Kampf. That is a page turner. <laughs> if, if you don't agree with it, if you make sure that you don't agree with it, he does that make some interesting points. <laughs> I'm kidding. Mein Kampf is his only book that Hitler have. Is he is he like John? Oh, no, it was a book. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was a book Hitler of speeches. Books, it was a book. Well, of a book of his spe- other people have written pro Hitler books, but Hitler himself wrote one book in prison. Right, uh, Mein Kampf. Uh, and uh, yeah, well, listen, I, I, you know, I mean, look, I mean, he really is saying some shit about deporting the people. He really thinks he could deport 11 million people. He's not going away from that stance. There's kids involved, right? My like 11. Worried. Yeah, is she here illegally, you girlfriend? No, she's not, but I don't know. I don't want to get in this situation about her. Then why is she worried? Huh? (laughs) Why is she worried? Maybe her maybe her relative. (laughs) Okay. It was Vanity Fair magazine and it was a book of his speeches. Oh, okay. You're right. You're right. Okay. What 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 that's a game magazine. It was a book of Hitler's speeches. Hitler's speeches. He kept it in the bedroom. Well maybe there's you know maybe he's not not content or words, maybe he's going with uh, performance. Because Hitler really was... You ever watch a Hitler speech, a full Hitler speech, the way he... The build? It was amazing. He just sits there away, three feet from the mic and, and waits for dead silence. And he just... He starts off like... He walks up to the microphone and there's dead silence for like two minutes. And there's like rumbling and shit. No one's talking. Then he like touches his mustache. And he does, fixes his hair and just starts off. He goes... And you hear that... And then he's like, uh, real time. you know, it's like Sam Kinison. It's like a set. I was just going to say, he's like doing a, he's it's building like, it's you like up. It's like a Sam Kinison set. That's yeah. what it's like. And then he starts to scream and the place goes nuts. He's an excellent performer, which is odd. You know, I mean, he took over a country. 
with the. I really think his, this is how scary I think it is. I think there are only about seven people who really believed in what Hitler wanted to do. The rest were all scared shit. Yeah, and that's what I really you think. Know, seven guys went along with, it and the other people were like, oh, "We're scared of them." Fear is the easiest thing to prey on when you when you when you want to great, you know, especially when you want to get that leadership role in a right when you when you have a country that's uh, vulnerable. You know, they were and, they, were, uh, they were really vulnerable at yeah. the time, and. Uh, you know, that's why a lot of the people that, you know, we're not, our situation in the United States isn't in anywhere near the vulnerability, but you have enough people that have fear in them in right. this country. And a, lot a of guy fear. like Trump can prey on that. Fear of the ball fear rolls. Of, fear of illegal immigrants, fear yes. of gay people, Gays. fear of black people, yes. fear of whatever. Exactly. You know, fear of taking my land, yeah, taking absolutely. my gun. And, and, and you, it's like, you know. You, 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 if you, you can know. exploit that, you'll get them to vote. Yes, you, you will. will. Absolutely. You will. Well, it's the same thing like with t- how they use terrorism to make all these new rules of being able to spy on people. Oh, mm-hmm. well, that's, well, you know, like Bush, when, after 9-11, that. Bush said, hey, it's open game now. Right. Yeah, it was, it was fear mongering is what it was. Why do you want my aunt's uh, information? She's a terrorist. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Fuck her. <laughs> Uh, well, I don't know. And you, you would never move to Thailand, Mike. No. I what mean, if you met the love of your life there? What if you met a gorilla that was like... <laughs> <laughs> now, what if you met a guy in Thailand who said, I love you, you love him, and you go, he goes, I, you know, I have a very successful... Uh, Whatever they do over Business there. or something. Yeah, ping pong ball no, business. I, mean, I, I make, ha- you know, uh, mud <laughs> huts. Soup. I make the ping pongs that they sell to the strippers. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which, which, you know, has, that's a big turnover. That's there. a big turnover. Now, and a guy, he says to you, move to Thailand. Will you do that? Yeah, I, I guess I would consider you it. You would, right? For, you know? for love. Sure. If love, you know, like everybody's looking for the right person, the happy relationship. What is your criteria in a man? What, what do you, are you picky? Uh, I'm good looking helps. See, that always, that, that people get caught in that shallow shit and it always like, goes bad. <laughs> right. But I'm the same way. Good looking, um, funny. Funny. funny is a, is so a, you're trying to find a good looking, funny gay guy. So far I've described you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm saying a good looking, funny gay guy, uh, Mario, yeah, you, you they're gotta, out there. Pick one of those things. And then, um, yeah. you know. It's narrow in the field, man. Mar- Mario Cantone's a good looking, funny gay guy. Actually, you're right. He's all of those things. I love Mario. He's great. You know, but he's, he's, a he's handsome. Actually, I mean, like, I'm not gay, but he's a handsome. Yeah, he's he's a been handsome married queen. for a long time, though, Mario. Oh, I mean, but he? he's on The View. Don't oh, I know. I love Mario. Um, uh, I don't love anyone on The View with a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, no, Mario has been married a long time. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah, he found uh, someone found Mario, which is a catch in the game. He's guy. married to a black guy, I think. Uh, he absolutely is. Absolutely. It's sad that I know that, but it's right. basically his Italian uh, father basically uh, killed himself in 1978. <laughs> no. no, he was actually uh, his guy. His funniest bitch, Mario, about growing up in an Italian sort of mobbed up family. In the, in the Wait, Mario he... Cantone is gay. <laughs> Him and Rick Steve. Uh, yeah. So, well, listen. I mean, the funny thing, absolutely. See, that's the thing where men are different. Like, I, I'd love to. Find, I, I would date a good-looking girl. I don't care if she's funny or not. <laughs> No, I like people. That, I mean, I'll I tell mean, her she's funny. Yeah. That's a lie. You I, know? Sur- I try to surround. <laughs> yeah. Do that every day. Yeah, you're hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> I try to surround myself with people that make me laugh. Well, okay. Well, as you were describing all this politics bullshit, there's so much misery. There is in the world. You're right. You know? Well, that's the great thing about being a comedian. The, the people you go to work when you're there, it's all funny people. It is fun to talk to. Uh, they can be assholes. They can be backstabbing, but at least they're funny. Yeah. You know, uh, but. Uh, I don't know. I, I just uh, hope you find that. I do. You know, like, uh, I wanted to ask you earlier in the show about somebody you brought up many times on the show, Shia LaBeouf. Shia LaBeouf. He's downtown. You see this is as a piece of art. He's Shia watching La- right. all his movies. He's at the Angelica Film Center, which is a you know, indie film center in Manhattan. A legendary place. I've seen a lot of stuff there. It's on uh, Houston Street. Um, it's on Houston near West Broadway. Uh, on the corner and Shia LaBeouf I uh, pitched this to them he goes I want to sit in your theater mm. and watch every movie I've ever done on a loop for how long 24 three, hours three days three, three straight days. days three straight days he's going to watch all of his all Shia LaBeouf movies and why are we supposed to care about that it, well because it's a piece of art like he's filming he's filming himself doing this yeah it's on he's a, filming it's on himself, himself watching self, all watch, his movies so you're gonna so he expects people to watch him watch look, looking at a himself, screen himself yeah and, and just reacting? Doing, I don't know how many people are doing it online, but people are showing up at the theater. Like I was to be with him? Of, yeah, to watch with him. Right. I get, maybe that's what it's about. He wants to see people showing up and their reaction. But think of the money they're losing only showing Shia LaBeouf movies. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean... Uh, that's just strange. Paulie Shore's doing a similar thing in L.A. of all his movies. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is... What is that? Well, we, the sh- I hope there's more to the art piece. I, maybe there's just a piece of it. 
But so, supposedly this is what he's doing now. I don't know. He's, I mean, he's losing his mind. He got arrested on Broadway. No, he seems drunk. to be really crazy, Shiloh. I, I think he is a little bit. He has a little bit of a... Well, I know he, he, someone told him uh, that I mentioned his name, and he was a fan of the show. I he know. is. I, I, yeah. um, when Wall Street 2 came out, right. that was when Michael Douglas had the cancer. Mm -hmm. I say the cancer. Right, the cancer. Like a, a there he is. There's a shot of my, Shia LaBeouf. This is live. That's, that's right now? That's happening yeah. right now. He's just sitting there... He was falling asleep yesterday. Look, look yeah. at the kid know. behind him. Like what? So wait. Wait, if ever you want to, if a kid ever decided to shoot people in a the theater, worry about right now. <laughs> <laughs> now that would be art. But You'd I only got, kill three people. I talked to him on the well, Wall yeah, you Street. Yeah, you did, um, right? On Wall, Wall Street to set? red carpet. On uh, the red carpet. Since they couldn't have Michael Douglas right. stop, they promised all the media Shia as if that was. We got it. Thank the you. um, the big get. And what'd you night. talk to him about? No, um, his publicist didn't want. To let me speak to him. Oh, I said, okay. I'm with the Howard Stern show. She goes, I'm sorry, we can't. I said, I just waited here two hours. They right. promised Shia to everybody. <laughs> and she goes, if you say anything offensive, I'll kick you out. Oh, I'll have you kicked out. Oh, my God. So then when he hears my voice, he's like, I know who you are. Oh, no kidding. I listen to you guys every day. I miss Artie. You know, oh, wow, that's right. Yeah, oh, someone yeah. told cool. me he did that. Yeah. He, uh, well, that's nice. he loves you. and I guess he is crazy. And he listens to the show, but but uh, well, so I, 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 that's the thing where I guess you know he's a kid. I mean, I, I hope he's not losing it. Maybe he isn't. I don't know. He does seem to be losing it. A but Joaquin bit. Phoenix seemed to be losing it, and then he did, wasn't losing it. I don't know. It was he, but it was Joaquin Phoenix trying to beat up cops. He was he was, he tried yeah. to beat up a cop yeah, about a month ago. Said he was a CIA agent or something. Well, that makes him a college student now. Yeah. He got put in that Silence of the Lambs kind of face mask. In, Shia LaBeouf did? Yeah, by yeah, the NYPD really? because he spit on a cop. Ah, wow. God. He told this story on Jimmy Kimmel, but uh -oh. he's lost it. I Whoa. guess he so. did the same thing in Chicago at that Walgreens. And, uh, he spit on cops? Yeah, Chicago and Michigan. Wow. What is he? LaBeouf, what is that? What is that? Uh, That's Episcopalian. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I don't know what it is. LaBeouf what sounds is French. Shia LaBeouf? Is that LaBeouf? It sounds like a it sounds like Israeli. It sounds like a French. It sounds like a French cartoon skunk. LaBeouf. It sounds like a Bugs Bunny uh, character. A, a terrorist skunk. LaBeouf. <laughs> <laughs> Shia. La Where are you going, LaBeouf? <laughs> All right, well, still, again, as this is all fascinating shit. Nothing even close to the Rick Steve stuff. <laughs> uh, I, well, listen, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll end here. We've been talking a few hours. I, uh, I thank you all for coming in. This was fascinating. A lot of stuff covered. Mike, come back anytime. I mean, you have an open invite, Mike. Thank Seriously, you. I want you it was to come a lot back of fun. Anytime. When you come back from Thailand, give us an update. Come on back in. Okay. When uh, you, uh, I Europe, mean, Europe. Europe. When you get back the from gorillas. Europe. Gorillas. Uh, but what about Rick Steves? Will you use Rick Steves in Europe? I'm going Dude, home. his books are amazing. I'm probably going to go you. home and jerk off to Rick Steves. <laughs> <laughs> if, if he looks like he sounds. He's got a lot of money. That's husband material. Yeah, okay. Maybe you could take him away from his wife. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sure if you Googled it far enough, you could probably find Rick Steves near gorillas. <laughs> like somewhere in the, you know, some vacation he went on. The Berlin Zoo. Mike, yeah, it's, Ber Mike it's Rick. I'm getting back to you. I heard you like gorillas. I've made a list of places. <laughs> There's a place in Brussels just outside of a deli area where you can get a gorilla. You can stand six feet from these gorillas. Uh, it's a different law. Get back to me. I'm afraid to dance. <laughs> That's hilarious. Me and my wife, who's a female, will be chocolatier. <laughs> my my female chocolatier wife. I'm thinking you can take your cooking skills. There we go. And we can open a, you and I can open a restaurant or a chocolatier Why called not? Chocolate Queer. <laughs> Choc <laughs> chocolate Queer. See, like that's that. a, that, that, that's a, a chocolatier does say that to me, but that's sort of you know. Yeah. Actually, Chocolatier should just be renamed Chocolate Queer. <laughs> I mean, it is the, the regular. Chocolatier might be gay. Yeah, I think it's gayer than Rick Steve. What do you got uh, plug-wise, Jason? What do you got? Uh, you know, I got my own podcast, Lawheads Court. If you, uh, Great. you can get that on iTunes. My website's there, too, JasonLaw.com. I'm doing uh, tonight. I don't know when this publishes, but I'm doing live at Gotham. And Later be, tonight, yeah. Yeah, yeah 10 o'clock live if you're on the East Coast, 7 p.m. live if you're on the West Coast. That's Access TV. And they'll rerun that a few times this week as well. Uh, I think uh, you know Bill, Bill Engelvall's hosting. There's a few comics going up. Um, I have a big show again uh, where we 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 have a little history. Uh, I'm from Lorraine, Ohio. Oh, and, in that uh, theater, Lorraine? yeah, okay. Lorraine Palace, December 26. If you're in Northeast Ohio, listening, uh, tickets are on sale. Lorraine Palace. Dot org and uh, they're like fifteen and twenty bucks. It's a beautiful theater, so I'll be headlining that the day after Christmas. And uh, yeah, man, just kind of. That's about it. Making just it grinding. Happen. Just grinding. Friday night, Jason might be with me at the theater yeah. gig. 
Uh, so look for that. Yeah, man. I, I hope good. that Thanks happens. for having I me. I love you, you I love you, too. Anytime. Rod, Rod, again, that phone call is unbelievable, man. I'm really, really happy you did Best work. That is your Thank best you. work. And that's saying Thank a lot. You. I love you. Best to your girlfriend. You know, Dan, why don't we end the show with playing that one more time? Because we were laughing. Let's that, play it one time. From yeah, let's play it one time, uh, the, 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 the Snuggles call. Uh, just not... With that, without us laughing in the background, just clean so the people could hear it as we go out. And uh, another fun week of podcast, guys. We'll see you next week on a Monday. Later. Let's, I don't want to take like that's your last. One. Hello, pet sitter. This is Paul speaking. Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Who I'm am I speaking with. I'm super. Thanks for asking. My name is Dan Filato, and I just moved. Hi, Dan. Hi. I just moved into town with my husband Rick, and we were looking for a pet sitter for our cat Snuggles. Awesome! Uh, awesome. Uh, how much do you charge per hour for your services? Twenty dollars an hour. Uh, depending on the details, we could do more or less. Oh well, twenty twenty dollars doesn't sound too expensive. Um, now, if I hire you, there's a special service I would need you to provide, and I'd be willing to pay a little extra if you could accommodate us. Well, that depends on the special service, but uh, I'd be open there. Hopefully, I can help you out. Well, myself and my husband adopted a young man with Asperger syndrome named Michael, and uh, he believes our pet cat Snuggles can talk. So our old pet sitter would actually pretend to be Snuggles on the phone and talk to Michael because it helped him at school with his outbursts. Okay, uh, I don't really know how cats talk. I'm sort of uncomfortable, but I'm, I, I'll am i give it a try. Well, it's not too hard. Just You just talk like a person. He, he believes that a, a cat talks like a person. So l let me just put him on the phone, and you'll be willing to try that? Uh, you want me to talk to him now? <laughs> yeah, just... Uh, yeah, just to give it a shot. This way, you know, because once we get this out of the way, then we could hire you. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll give it a try. Okay, Michael, sweetie, pick up the phone. Hey, Snuggles. Hey, hey, Michael. Hi, baby. How are you, baby? I'm good, I'm good. Just, cat, just you know, walking the catwalk. I miss you. I miss you too, pal. You're a good big boy. You're going to get a yeah, scratchy we... toy. Yay! You're gonna get a big scratchy toy. Yay, scratchy toy. I love you, Snuggies. I love you too, Mike. Niggas are stupid and violent. What? Niggas are stupid and violent. Uh, that, that's not nice, Michael. That's not even true. And, uh, Snuggles, Snuggles doesn't, Snuggles doesn't like that stuff. Niggas are stupid and violent. This is not true of white people. This is not true, period. Fuck this. <laughs> Hello, pet sitter, Paul speaking. Niggas are stupid and violent. This is not true of white people. This is not true, period, man. I don't know who's telling you this, but that's wrong, kid. I'm, I have a huge nutsack. I highly doubt it. You should go play with that. Don't fucking call me back, you little racist retard. I'm a fucking fag. James is calling from Montclair. James, you're on the fan of New York City. What's happening? Shmoo. James. How's it going, brother? James, I can't wait. Uh, I can't wait, too. It's been a great week for me. I just got back from Europe. Uh, I met Europe? My idol there. Yeah, Europe? What? I'm talking to somebody who has money. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Europe? I, I met my idol, uh, Rick Steves, you know, from PBS. Okay. He's a, he's like the travel guru there. I was I went in, I was I was in uh, Vatican City and I go into the bathroom and there is Rick Steves giving Dan Filato a Roman soldier helmet. Okay, see, I'm, I you know, and I knew, well, I was hoping he was going to have a punchline that we could have uh, heard and kind of chuckled at and said, hey, bro, pretty interesting, pretty creative, pretty clever, but that really came out of like something Russell would say. It's not what I would say.